smoke, but no visible signs of fire. Looks more like signal flares. Gonna say this is probably a false alarm or a prank. Copy that. You're clear to proceed. Ah, I told you this was a prank. I don't see any fire. <sighs> who in their right mind finds this kind of thing funny? People who enjoy causing a commotion. Huh. Hey, check it out. What the hell? Hmm. Oh, shit. Ugh. Can't we just report this one in and go? Come on, man. You know we can't just leave this be. In Japan, 99.9% .9 of criminal trials end with a guilty verdict. That makes the odds for a defense lawyer to get an acquittal about 10,000 to 1. But I beat those odds on a murder case. It's a hell of an achievement. Unfortunately, it came with a price. The death of an innocent woman. The shadows of truth escape the courtroom, and when they do, Someone has to drag them back into the light. The reality is, the law is neither as perfect or as fair as it's supposed to be. So I've made it my job to give those without a voice a chance to be heard. Hey, uh, talk. What? Man, I'm bored. It sucks. How about you hit me with some trivia then? That would pass the time. Oh, I mean, come on, man. You never know how long a stakeout's gonna last. Even Keiko chan's losing her mind. I'm sure she is. Give me a sec to come up with a zinger, okay? <laughs> Okay, sure. You think up a tough question, and I just leave you to your thoughts. Wait a damn minute! How does that even solve this problem then, man? Um, Kaito-san? I don't think I'm really in the mood for trivia at the moment. Okay, fine. We gotta spice this up somehow. So, Keiko-chan, this internet boy... How'd you end up on the raw end of a scam like this? How is this spicing things up? Besides, we don't even know for sure if it was a scam yet, right? Exactly. Kaito-san here is just jumping to conclusions. It'll be fine, Keiko-san. Don't worry. At Yagami Detective Agency, we make sure our clients' hearts are at the heart of our business. <sighs> That's so great to hear. I know I hired just the right people. Damn straight. Sunshine and rainbows with us. Kosuke kun did say he always eats fast food for lunch. Yeah, but after 20 minutes, I think he'd be done by now. I don't know. He always makes me worry, even his eating habits. Say, kick a chop. How a sweet girl like you get roped in by some dude off the net, huh? I wouldn't call it that at all. Would you believe me if I said we took it slow at first? I'd say his patience paid off. Maybe it's hard for you to see, but he is a caring guy. So he drags you to the shadiest dive in Kamurocho and calls it a date? <laughs> Sounds like a real catch. 
He was just trying to impress me. He, he couldn't have known what would happen. Then he sticks his own girl with a bill? Dickhead doesn't begin to describe it. I mean, he is still in college. And besides, he said if we didn't pay, they'd call the Yakuza to collect. So they bled you out of 800 grand, 400 still to go, for a total of 1.2 mil. It'd be practically impossible to pay all that in one lump sum. Exactly. That's where Kosuke Kun's idea came in. He said I could make some easy money working one of those clubs. Yeah, I'll bet he did. Did he say anything about working with those Yakuza from the start? Got this girl, they go out, he racks up a tab. Next thing you know, she's on the market to pay it off. Same shit, different day in this town. Now you're just jumping to conclusions. Besides, a business taking advantage of people like that would have gotten shut down in no time, right? <sighs> Afraid not. Some lines the law just can't cross until it's too late. But I do owe you some credit for turning to a man like Genda Sensei. He's been defending the city a long time now, and his team's rock solid. Yeah, and when things get too dirty for them, Genda calls in guys like us to clean it up. Good for you, I guess. Listen, Keiko-chan. I hate to be so blunt, but Kosuke's totally been gaming you from the get-go. Until you see that for yourself, there's not much we can do for you. Ain't that right, Tuck? Well, let's not jump the gun, Kaito-san. We don't have proof of anything yet. Speaking of which, there's our man of the hour. Kosuke kun I'm gonna need to follow him. You two stay here. Hopefully we'll get this all cleared up. <laughs> About time we saw some action. Careful out there, Tuck. Hey, Tuck, you read me? You gonna be okay tailing this guy? Or do you need the detective basics, man? Kaido-san, please. I can tail him in my sleep. <laughs> the manual says to keep your eyes open, actually. Alright, let's go. Kaito-san, you made contact with a new face. I'm gonna get a shot as evidence. Good call. Kaito-san, just sent that photo to your phone. Any sage advice? Yeah, I see it. It's a perfect shot, buddy. So, who's Kosuke's new friend? Any ideas? That's what I'm gonna try and find out. I'll be in touch. Man, I haven't seen you in forever, Sakura-chan. It's because you barely show up to the club events, Kosuke-senpai. I probably wouldn't have seen you today either if I hadn't mistaken someone else for you. Sorry, I've just been so busy. I know, I gotta make time for the club. I know you've got a busy schedule, but it's not the same without you, Senpai. A lot of girls quit because you stopped showing up, you know? Oh, damn, that sucks. Uh, guess I better make some effort, huh? Yeah, that'd be great. But Senpai... While we're on the subject... Yeah? I hope you won't do anything that'll get those girls' hopes up either. I don't know if you know this, but the girls had a few big fights, actually. All that anger could boil over in your direction at any time is all I'm saying. 
Yeah? Wouldn't want that. I'll be careful. Well, I've got to get going to my next thing. Okay. Make sure you stop by the club, huh? Yagami. He's the detective who reported Anaki's affair to his old lady. Yeah, fuck that guy! Anaki got so pissed, he took it out on us! Still fucking sore about it! Yo, Yagami! Just your luck to be passing by us today. You're a dead man, bro! Man, this neighborhood never changes, does it? Cash. I guess I'll stop by the Popo. Kaito san, I just sent you a new shot. Take a look. Yeah, I see it. Not half bad. Huh? What the? Yo, talk. Be real with me. Kosuke's guilty as all hell, right? That's way too much money to just cruise around with. A withdrawal for any amount wouldn't prove anything. Gotta be fair here. Just wandering around town. Pretty much killing time like your average college student. Any idea where he's headed? Good question. Actually, he just ducked into a building. I'm going after him. Hey, buddy. You new here? You can't just go waltzing in. And why not? Because I said so, that's why. Now beat it. 
Hey, didn't I tell you to leave? Don't make me call the cops on your ass. Isn't that a little excessive? All I wanted was to look around. Well, there's nothing to see here, so go look somewhere else. There's definitely more to this place than meets the eye. Hey. Suspicious. No way that's gonna work. Yo, Tuck. You hanging in there, buddy? Uh, kinda hit a wall here. What's that supposed to mean? You didn't lose the guy, did you? Look, my hands are tied right now, but everything's under control. Oh, uh, hey guys. Didn't mean to interrupt. Hey, who's this clown? First time I've ever seen him. Oh, you see, I'm, uh, Kosuke's guest. Guess I took a wrong turn somewhere. Who the hell's Kosuke? Ah, uh, that's the kid who keeps hanging around. You'd think he'd have wised up by now. Wait, then he'd be on the fifth floor. So what are you doing down here? Seriously, it's like he got me lost on purpose. You mind, uh, pointing me in the right direction? Take the stairs to the fifth floor, then head all the way back. Your friend will be in the tatami room. The tatami room. Oh, of course. <laughs> Should've known this wasn't it. Before you go, I'm gonna need to verify your membership. Kosuke give you a card? Uh, he should have? Shoot, I can't seem to find it. <laughs> Not so. Well, now we got a problem. Sorry. I'll be more careful next time, promise. There won't be a next time, dumbass! We don't carry cards here! Now who the hell are you, and how'd you get in? Better start talking! Ugh, here we go. Tell me, what's Kosuke doing in the tatami room? We're not telling you shit! I'm still in that building with Kosuke-kun. Had a little run-in with some watchdogs. And apparently, Kosuke's no stranger. Right now, he's in their tatami room. Oh, he is, huh? What do you think he's up to? Well, a betting man would say he's gambling. If it's a members-only building with goons posted on every corner, I'm telling you now, the tatami room ain't no tea shop. Huh. Not a bad theory at all. It's like you're speaking from experience, Kaito-san. You've got questions? I've got answers. I said we have an intruder! I don't know how he got in! Say what? <laughs> what happened? You there? Tell me something, Tog. Why is a college kid hanging out with a bunch of gambling lowlifes? We're seeing this kid's true colors now, if you ask me. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt until we catch him red-handed. Innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> Is that some lawyer creeping back into your detective work? Well, whatever. Just don't get yourself caught. Unless you want to fight on your hands. Believe me, I don't. A minute. I heard we got an intruder in here. Let the others know for me. Yeah, okay. Okay, that makes sense.
Taking that, bud. Hey, don't just stand there. Shut the door already. Come on, I had you! Ugh. Why does this always happen? Come on, folks, who wants another round? Everyone place their bets? Now or never! You know you're on a losing streak, Kosuke. Why not be a good little boy and go home? Are you kidding? I was just getting warmed up. Huh? Didn't know you were such a high roller. Where are you, uh, getting all that cash from, anyway? <laughs> Can't say too much about it, but I got me a pretty good hustle. <laughs> Another girl with stars in her eyes, huh? Jeez, go ahead and tell the whole room. Hey, even if the secret's on you. All right, Kaito-san, you called it. Kusuke-kun just blew all his earnings on Chohan. <laughs> Told ya. So, what do you say we do? Because I say we cut to the chase. And have us a little one-on-one. -on -one. Huh. My thoughts exactly. Good. I'll bring the car around. College boys about to learn something they don't teach in class. Hey, man. Hold up a sec. I think you dropped something. Huh? But I've got my phone on me. What'd I lose? Well, it could be any number of things, to tell you the truth. Maybe your conscience, or even your integrity? You feel like you might have left those somewhere? Huh? What's your freaking problem? Does scamming a young lady ring any bells for you? You've been working with a crooked bar to make her foot a 1.2 million yen bill. What in the hell are you even talking about, dude? Have you conned so many girls you can't even keep the scam straight anymore? You better back off me. I've got the full support of the Tojo clan on this thing, man. Still think it's wise to talk shit? Tojo clan? You mean the Yakuza? Heh, <laughs> pissing yourself yet? You're about to be real sorry, asshole! <laughs> the Tojo clan thugs got disbanded ages ago. If name dropping a long dead gang was supposed to scare me, I'm not very impressed. Son of a. Let's fucking go! I wouldn't do that if I were you. That excuse for a punch told me all I need to know. Fuck you, man! That last one was just a warning shot! No more chances! The gloves are coming off right now, bro, and you're gonna get fucked up! I hear you, kid. So, I can take the gloves off too, right? The fuck? You for real right now? Well, I pump iron at the gym once a week, my man! You're going down! Don't say I didn't warn you! Is that all you got? Son, over here! Please, you gotta help me! Kosuke, what happened? This guy giving you trouble? Yeah, he just started wailing on me all of a sudden! He did? Well, what's your problem? This gentleman you're harassing is my client. Client? Not a tatami room term for gambling addict? <laughs> gambling addict? Who told you about the tatami room? People only get in through me. 
And I sure as hell don't know you. Look, I don't have time to play around right now. Too late, asshole. You just signed up for a beating! You're really asking for it. Kosuke-kun, are you done? <laughs> you can't help yourself, can you, Tom? For being a lawyer, you sure like to settle things with your fists. A lawyer? How the fuck are you a lawyer? Yagami-san, you're not really a detective? I'm a detective, all right. As for the badge, I still have a license to practice, so I hold on to it. Is it safe to assume, then, you used to work at Genda Law? Yep. Hit the nail on the head, actually. These days, he hands off the gigs that are better suited for detectives, like him. Now it's making a little more sense. Did you catch all that, Kosuke-kun? <laughs> huh? Well, if you want a closer look, I'll be more than happy to accommodate you. Yeah, care to go for a ride? <laughs> We're gonna be buds, Kosuke. Whoa, time out! Guys, this isn't funny! These damn things off me! I swear this is all a mistake! Kosuke-kun... Uh, Yuko-chan! Don't let these assholes con you! Believe me, I didn't do anything wrong! Who the hell are these thugs? Who is Yuko-chan? Uh, well, My name is Keiko, you jerk! And to think I trusted you! Here's the deal, Kosuke-kun. First, you're gonna cancel her debt to that bar. But that's not even my call! And second, they'll be returning every yen she paid. Plus a little extra for us having to deal with your bullshit. You're out of your freaking mind! Do you even know who you're- I have a pretty good idea. And I don't think very highly of con artists who prey on innocent women. 
You tell him, Talk. Hey! That's my phone! Dial up that bar for me, would ya? What bar? Drop the act, kid. That scam is the oldest trick in the book. You don't have any proof. Proof? Do we need to spell it out for you? We've got you by the balls, you little shit. Who even are you people? <laughs> Some of Kamarocho's finest. The Yagami Detective Agency. You mean, you're detectives? It's a name. Smart guy, huh? Everyone in town knows us. They do? You're goddamn right they do. Don't talk like you've never heard of us. Give the guy a break, Kaito-san. We're still getting our name out there. There... Uh, no. Look, I, I get what you're after, but give it up. That money's as good as gone. The guy who runs that bar's ex-Tojo clan. I was lying when I said he's Yakuza. Yeah? Well, I used to roll with the Tojo myself. I might even know the dumb bastard. You know he's all bark and no bite, don't you? The Tojo clan got disbanded. Yeah, but he's still a criminal! Just because his clan broke up doesn't change a thing! He's just a dickless ex-Yakuza strutting around, flashing a pin that don't mean shit. Still, even an ex-Yakuza is dangerous, right? Are you sure you'll be safe? Yeah, got this under control. Danger is our specialty. So, which number is the bar keeps? You really shouldn't. Still worried about pissing off an ex-Yakuza? I'd worry more about the one right in front of you. Or, would you rather try your luck? Uh. Yo, what's up, Kosuke? Hey, uh, Chief. <laughs> you wouldn't happen to be back at the shop, would you? Yeah, I am. Why, you, uh, find yourself a new chick, huh? Keep reeling them in, don't you? <laughs> Not exactly. No? Well, hey, at least you still got Keiko unlocked. Yeah, you broads will do anything if you know how to squeeze them right. You could make a fortune milking her. Bastard. Wait a minute, though. What happens when Keiko brings you the money? Oh, <laughs> that's simple. First, we take the cash off her hands. Then we slap on a last minute late fee and send her sobbing all the way to the soap land. <laughs> right, sounds like you got it all figured out. Wait, why'd your voice change all of a sudden? <laughs> Took you long enough. Wait up, who the hell is this? I suggest you remember this voice. Because I'm about to come knocking. And this time, you'll be the one paying the price. Holy shit. You're kind of insane, man. Sorry to break this to you, Keiko-san. Kosuke-kun had you fooled. No matter what lengths you went to for him, all he ever thought of was using you. You were just an easy mark the whole time. Don't get me wrong, Keiko-san. This did start out as business, but now I've seen... Uh, the light. <laughs> no! That's enough out of you. Come on. Let's get you back to Gendas before the fireworks start. Trust me, you'll be safe there. <laughs> okay. You wouldn't want to see what we're going to do to that place anyway. <laughs> it's going to get ugly. You mean you're going to take them on alone? <laughs> That's always how it goes down around here, for some reason. Let's go, Kiko-san. Gendo Sensei's office is just up ahead. This is Genda Law, where I got my start as a lawyer. The owner, Genda Sensei, is like a father to me. He's been a well-respected figure in Kamrajo for years. Genda Sensei... Huh? Where is everyone? Oh, Saurakun and company are down at the courthouse. 
Those two are always putting in a hard day's work. It's good to see you. Oh, I believe we met the other day. It was that con artist case. How'd it go? Did Yagami get that solved for you? He goes all in on his cases, but that's about his only redeeming quality. Yeah, he's really gone above and beyond. <laughs> Sorry to impose again to Sensei, but can Keiko-san stay here a while? Fine by me. It was getting a little too quiet around here anyway. Speaking of which, it's rare to see the office this empty. You guys working a big case? Yeah. <laughs> big enough to keep Saori-kun and Hoshino-kun out of trouble, I suppose. It's not a murder case, is it? No, no. It's an anti-nuisance ordinance violation. Huh? Oh, you mean... It's a groping case? She's a smart one. This happened two months back. Some good Samaritans at a train station pinned down a groper who was trying to make a getaway. Wouldn't you know it, the culprit was a cop, of all things. Makes you wonder what this world's coming to. Naturally, the press had a field day with it. It was all you saw on the news for a while. Oh yeah, I remember hearing about that. It was all over the internet. Anything that stops the trains during rush hour makes the news. It was all they talked about. Probably because he was a policeman. The judge is handing down the verdict today, and I don't expect he'll be pleased with it. Every answer he's given has been, I don't recall. Like, that'll do him any good. Stop! straight in court, please. <laughs> A bad attitude isn't going to do you any favors. Does it even matter? It's over. The verdict has already been decided. Your demeanor still has consequences. The worse things are looking for you, the better an impression you need to make. Leave an impression. Huh. Well, if I were the judge, I'd be happy about having an easy day on the job for once. This is no time to be cynical, either. Besides, the judge hasn't... It's decided. Guilty as charged. <laughs> this also means it's almost time for the curtain to fall until the grand finale. What? And so, let's get this show on the road. Like I said, we should have a verdict coming down today. We only really needed Saori Kun at the bench, but Hoshino Kun insisted on joining her. Truth be told, I still can't tell when he's trying to help or when he's trying to impress her. <laughs> then he'll need to pull out all the stops. Saori Kun's no slouch. Plus, she's got ice in her veins. Speaking of, how'd you end up on the hook for defending an active duty officer? Well, another firm had it on their plate first, actually. Comro PD, they have their go-to guys. The plan was to get a confession, earning the defendant a nice retirement package and a simple case dismissed. You mean 
he'd be found innocent? Bottom line, yeah. On the condition he left the forest anyway. Correct. But the plan fell apart when the cop kept insisting he didn't do it, in spite of the evidence stacked against him. So, once Comro PD's lawyers decided to throw in the towel, the case went straight to Sao Raccoon, who just happened to take the call. Huh. Makes sense. I'm sure they'll be back soon if you wanted to stick around. I would, but I gotta tie up a few loose ends. But let us know if any new requests come in. Restless as always. You ever heard of a vacation, Yagami? <laughs> That's exactly why I turned my hobby into a job. Besides, I like staying busy. <laughs> Fine. You never did listen to your elders. Anyway, I shouldn't keep Kaito-san waiting. Thanks again for looking after Keiko-san. Hey, ready to wreck shop talk? <laughs> Not gonna be any bottles of beer on the wall when we're done. Let's get to work. That's what I'm talking about. Well, this the dump you brought Keiko-chan to? It is! So could you please just let me go? Not a chance. You get a front row seat for when your boss shows up. What are you, crazy? He'd murder me on the spot! Then he'd murder you two for dessert! Huh. He's that scary, huh? Yes, actually. Not to mention all his boys. All the more reason to put him in his place. Pricks like that need to learn how to treat a lady. Agreed. Oh, hold on. Sugiura. Really? Could he choose a worse fucking time? Talk about a buzzkill. Hey there. You miss me? Jeez, it's been what? Half a year? Everything good over there? Good as it gets. Well... Got some good news of my own I wanted to give you, man. Tsukumo Kun and I have our very own detective agency. Wait, are you saying you started a detective agency? Meaning, now you're a detective? Yep, got our own office and everything. It's in Yokohama. Didn't want to muscle in on your turf. Man, I don't know what to say. No, and by Tsukumo, you mean... The one and only. At least, the only one I know. Thought his hacking might give us an edge. Never figured he and I were on the same wavelength about stuff. Wanna wrap this up, Doc? Anyway, we got a pretty big case. And to be honest, we're in a little over our heads. So that got me thinking, why don't we call up the pros? So they can show us how it's done. Uh, do you need an answer right away? We're in the middle of the usual. Oh yeah? More sneaky shit? Yep, I'll tell you all about it later. Oh, come on. Give me just a hint. Sorry, buddy. You all set? <laughs> then let's roll. Kosuke, care to explain what the fuck's going on? It's... Uh, not what you think. We're here on account of a woman named Keiko Hamada. She says she's been threatened by an illegitimate business. Oh, I see. You're the guy who had this dipshit's phone. Yagami Detective Agency, at your service. Yagami Detective? Yo, wait a sec. You the kid Matsugane-san took in? There! You see? <laughs> I told you people have heard of us. Huh. As for me, the name's Kaito. Used to wear the Matsugane <laughs> myself. Oh, well, I've heard plenty about you. You're a real celebrity, buddy. <laughs> a man 
it's gotta have a reputation, right? Masaharu Kaito. Ugly as an ape and just as dumb. Let's an amateur thief get the drop on him that forks over the family safe? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're a real legend. Don't talk like you were there, jackass. You want an ape? I'm about to go ape shit here! Come on now, don't give him what he wants. Fuckhead. Now that we're past introductions, we're here to get Keiko-san's money. And we'll be tacking on our fee on top of that. Just business. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> Hear that, boys? The detectives come to collect. You know the best part of breaking ranks with the Tojo clan? The freedom. No more paying cuts to guys upstairs. Makes us even tougher. And guess what I spent the cash on? This is damn good soundproofing. Meaning whatever goes on inside, stays inside. You'll find out just how convenient that is. You hear that, Kaito-san? He says we're free to cut loose. Oh, yeah. Best news I've heard all day. I'm gonna open up a can of... Hey, uh, hold that thought a minute. Greetings, Yagamishi. Did Sugiyoshi call you a second ago? He did, but look, Tsukamoto, now's really not a good time. Oh, so you really are just busy? He said you hung up on him, so I wanted to make sure. He didn't offend you, did he? I hate to think he upset you, you know? But if so, we didn't mean it. On behalf of both of us, I offer my profuse apologies. Yep, no offense taken, man. But you see my point, right? Sugiyoshi and I are a team. Our actions reflect on each other. Any responsible member of a company, I mean, any responsible member of society, it's, it's a matter of respect. Okay, I get the picture. We'll continue this later. Okay, but when is later? Should I call you back? If you have an estimate, I can set a timer. That way I'll know when it's convenient. Right, uh, where do we leave off? You gotta be shitting me! Yeah. Pretty lame talk. That's it. You jokers are dead meat! to thank the both of you for all you've done. Well, I'm just glad to hear they got your money back. These two are something, huh? Oh, yes. I don't know how I could possibly repay them. Oh, don't worry about it. Besides, those thugs paid our service fee and then some. <laughs> nice of them to eat the cost, huh? Beg your pardon? Oh, uh, nothing. I take it all back. Anyway, what happened to the crooks? If they're smart, they're skipping town. Doubt they'd reopen after how bad we wrecked the place. As for Kosuke, I made sure to tip his college off about his little side business. Should help him rethink his life choices. So I'd say this case is closed. Well, I've sure learned my lesson. It's a scary world out there. Oh yeah? Mm hmm From now on, I choose the place when meeting boys online. And I should probably change dating apps while I'm at it. That's your big takeaway? Really, Keiko-chan. You're laying this all on the app, not the sketchy internet dudes. Oh, I don't think so at all. Plenty of people these days meet their match online. It's true, Kaito-san. Apparently that's a thing now. You see, if you don't seize the opportunity when it knocks, it won't be just the times that leave it behind. Fine, fine. Hear you loud and clear. Saori-san and Hoshino-kun sure are taking their sweet time. Now that you mention it, they should have left the courtroom a while ago. Maybe they stopped for a quickie somewhere. There's nothing between those two. Nothing real, anyway. These old eyes can tell that much. Wisdom comes with age, huh? 
Damn right it does. And I've got more than you kids on both counts. You talking about Matsugane-san? Yep. The lawyer and the Yakuza. Best of both worlds. Though we came from different backgrounds, we were brothers in arms. Both trying to make it in Kamuracho. You two ought to visit his grave every now and again. We will. That goes without saying. Well, I guess we should get going. I guess so. Thanks for having us on such short notice. Oh, and give the two lovebirds our regards. All rise. The court is prepared to issue its verdict. The sentence for the defendant, Akihiro Ihara, is six months of penal servitude. He's getting prison time for his first offense? Isn't it usually just probation in cases like this? Yes. I'm sure his attitude didn't help the situation. From the start, the evidence was stacked against him, and all he did was deny it. If that will be all, we can proceed with the court's rationale. The defendant may be seated. Hmm? You'd rather hear this standing up? Your Honor, in a warehouse, about three days ago, a body turned up in Yokohama. Oh, maybe you hadn't heard that. What? What the hell? What is he talking about? I don't know. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. In that case, make sure you pass this along to the Kanagawa police. They'll want to know that the body belongs to a guy named Hiro Mikoshiba. Four years ago, this man took my son from me by driving him to commit suicide. He deserved to die a thousand times, but he was never even accused of a crime. No, he just went on with his life. The law let him walk. An utterly broken system. Order in the court. The defendant shall refrain from making such outbursts. Defense? Do you have an explanation for the meaning of this? Uh, Your Honor, we, uh, well... Huh? Uh, how's that for an honest day's work? I just want to go put my feet up in the office. Sounds like a plan. I need to get back to Sugiura, too. He was telling us about a big job. You mean a big job for us? Yeah, down in Yokohama. By the way, Sugiura and Tsukumo? They're detectives now. Those two detectives? <laughs> Good one, Todd. Wait, you serious? This game is absolute bullshit. It's like it's designed to eat your money. Yeah, what a fucking scam. Fuck this. I'm beyond pissed. I need to unload on someone's face. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Why don't we go give some asshole a game over? You know I'm always down. This is the Yagami Detective Agency. I run the place with the help of my partner, an ex-Yakuza named Kaito. I wish I could say keeping this place afloat was smooth sailing. But the reality is, we'd be drowning if it weren't for the gigs we get from Genda Sensei. It's not like we don't have the technology. But when street smarts fail, most of the time we have to get physical. That happens a lot. Guess we can finally take a breather. 
Weren't you supposed to call Sugiura? I was, wasn't I? Crazy how he ended up in our line of work. After seeing us in action, who could blame him? Yagami-san, everything okay over there? Yeah, sorry, it's a long story. You were saying something about a big case? Oh, yeah. Listen, man, you gotta come check out Yokohama. We've been getting jobs left and right down here. And if we can ace this case I've got lined up, we'll be the hottest detectives in town. Oh, yeah? You sure it's a legit lead? Hey, have some faith. Would I waste your time on a bad lead? Just looking out for you, man. <laughs> well, I do appreciate that. Then, should I save the details for when I see you? Sure. When do you want us over? Honestly, ASAP. Tomorrow, if you can swing it. We're based in Ijincho. Look for an office that says Yokohama 99 out front. That's us. The real question is, you free on such short notice? Uh, let me check my schedule. What schedule? Outside of today's shit, we haven't had work in weeks. If I tell them that, they'll lowball our cut, smart guy. Oh, right. <laughs> Guess we don't want to look desperate. Uh, sorry, Sugira. Yeah, tomorrow works just fine. Perfect. Man, this is gonna be so great! Oh, and Kaito-san's coming too, right? He'll be there. Sweet. See you guys soon, then. Sugiura said he'd give us the details when we get there. Huh. Way to build the suspense. Yokohama, though. Can't say I'm really familiar with that neck of the woods. Same here. But you know what? Kamurocho has been pretty tame lately. Maybe this is our chance to broaden our horizons.
Yo, hold up a sec, Todd. Hmm? Nonsense over there. <laughs> That's not what I said. So, what'd you call me? What the? Hey, what are you filming me for? Knock it off! Chill out, man. Why do you care? I don't see anything that says I can't record here. Enough! Stop! Just give me a reason. You have one? It's a free country, isn't it? Whoa! Hey! What gives? You just kicked my sight over! Ah, that was the wind, man. A big old gust just came through, right? Yeah, crazy. Just now it whooshed right over. Uh, I told you! Put that down! <laughs> Come on! Kids don't seem to give any fucks about people these days. Agreed. So much for seeing the sights, huh? Well, you're thinking what I'm thinking, aren't you? <laughs> Do you have to ask? <laughs> so, anything else you want to accuse us of? I'd say you must be losing it, Pox. You goddamn brats! I got that one. He called us goddamn brats. You picking on high schoolers, man? Uh, no, I just don't want you loitering in front of my store. That's all I said, okay? So stop disturbing my customers. <laughs> that part's not gonna make the video. Wow, is that one of those new smartphone models? May I? What the hell? Damn, the camera on this thing is amazing, man. Your parents buy it for you? <laughs> Holy crap, he kicked Sakaki down. You must be saying things, kid. Anyway, your smartphone's kind of dirty, don't you think? <clears throat> Let me see. Hey! Give me my phone back! You want it back? I'll give it back, but only if you put this poor restaurant owner's sign back up first. Asshole! You think you can fuck with us? You're gonna kick your ass! These guys are monsters! Yo, <laughs> was that Aikido just now? Oh, don't tell me you've been training in a secret dojo or something. Eh, just more of my own thing, really. Figured I'd find a way to hold back for punks like them. Here, this came from one of those kids. Your call what to do with it. <sighs> You really didn't have to, but thank you. Those were students from Serio High. <sighs> You'd think private school kids would be better behaved, but they're just as immature. They look like a bunch of entitled brats. <laughs> They'd learned some manners the hard way in Kamrocho. Well, we've got our fair share of unsavory types. The Yakuza. Not to mention those Yokohama Leomon gangsters. Those kids wouldn't dare to mess with them. So they're selective about their targets. Yes. They'll only harass you if they think they'll get away with it. Think they'll be back for more? I certainly hope not. Anyway, I sure am glad you stopped by. Come to think of it, you're the only ones who've ever intervened. I take it you're not from around here? Yeah. But we might end up staying. For a while at least. Ever hear of a detective agency called Yokohama 99? We were on our way there right now. Hmm. Well, I'm afraid that doesn't ring a bell. That's all right. If anything, we should get going. Sure. Oh, but before that, please take this with you. Consider it a token of my gratitude. Yo, 
Yokohama 99. Yep, that's the place. Whoa, not too shabby, guys. Yo. Ah, if it isn't the man of the hour, Yagamishi. Gentlemen, welcome. How are you? <laughs> this guy. First he falls off the radar. Now he's got this sweet office. <laughs> You're still quick as a thief. Maybe a little quicker, actually. Well, I'd say thief isn't very fair. It was stealing. Oh, come on. You know I wasn't doing it to line my own pockets, right? We took from the powerful and gave to the powerless. It was altruism. And it's all in the past now, so let's just leave it at that. The place is nice, though. Kind of familiar, even. It should be. You're our inspiration, Yagami Detective Agency. You guys are the goal. <laughs> For sure. So, how about you guys take a load off? If you're ready, I'll give you guys the briefing. Say what? A briefing, man? Let him go over what we know. I've actually got an agenda for today's meeting, too. An agenda? Just roll with it. Give him a chance. All the detective talk has made him go a little overboard. I'm sure it'll work itself out. <laughs> it's all good. Imitation really is the sincerest form of flattery. To sum up why we called you, we've been seeing a major upward trend with these kinds of cases. What do you think? Care to take a wild guess? I'll give you a hint. It's not a problem you'd find in Kamurocho. So, it's specific to Yokohama? I know. It's gang warfare. The outfits run in Chinatown or at each other's throats, and you guys sort out the aftermath. Well, we did just hear about the Yokohama Liumang. They're a gang, right? Yeah, the Yokohama Liu, whatever. Bet they're stirring up shit as we speak. Actually, we haven't run into any gang-related activity at all. No, what we're dealing with isn't so conspicuous. I'll just tell you, it's bullying. Bullying? Sometimes parents ask us for evidence to prove their child was bullied. Fairly often, they want these bullies taken to court immediately. They'll also want to hold the schools accountable, but none of that happens without solid proof. How old are these kids? Most of them are in middle school. Research shows that boys at that age experience a sudden spike in testosterone. This leads to outbursts to assert dominance, compounded by the irrationality of an immature brain. Scientifically, this potent mix of impulses often manifests as bullying. Yeah, I call that puberty. But that would apply specifically to boys, right? You're getting cases with girls involved too, aren't you? Ah, with girls it's more likely rooted in oxytocin, a brain hormone that also has links to bullying. See, oxytocin fosters feelings of attachment, regardless of your gender. For instance, scientists have observed that a mother's oxytocin levels surge when looking at her child. Then it's not always a bad thing, is what you're saying. Indeed. Did you know it was oxytocin that enabled cooperation among our primitive ancestors? Ancient matriarchs were particularly vulnerable during childbirth, thus requiring communal support. So you could kind of say the survival and reproduction of our species was largely oxytocin at work. After all, raising a child in the wilderness would have been impossible alone. However, this intense social need bore a dark side. Individuals who failed to contribute were shunned and eventually condemned. Let's say there was a villager who never put in his fair share, all he did was eat the crops. If that became the norm, nobody would work until the village was on the brink of starvation. And by then it'd be too late. Precisely. 
That's why these offenders were punished. Primitive as it was, punishment equated to justice, a necessary measure for society's greater good. And societies with a stricter sense of justice were the ones who endured in the long run. To put this into focus, these people are our direct ancestors. So from a science perspective, modern day bullying is just primitive? More like it's hardwired into our nature. Hormones are fucked up, huh? I wouldn't chalk it up to just that. However, we humans do tend to reject what's foreign to us. Whether we're socially awkward or simply misunderstood, those who don't conform are ostracized. That's how it's been since time immemorial. The misfits of civilization are deserving of punishment. All over the world, no matter where or when. Looks like you guys have been doing your homework. Tsukumo-kun's the one hitting the books. I'm more in charge of the field work. Makes sense. Here's another fun fact while we're at it. An act of betrayal also increases the human urge to punish the offender. In those cases, the act of punishment floods the brain with dopamine, triggering an instant rush of pleasure. In other words, serving justice can feel just as good as eating or having sex. Sure, but that's where we have to draw the line. Justice can't be twisted into joy, or it stops serving its purpose. Very perceptive, Yagamishi. So, back to reality. What's this big case that needs all the manpower? Ah, yes. Our client is the chairman of a private school. He wants us to scour the campus for any and all instances of bullying, leaving no stone unturned. That said, he also requires us to be discreet. How big is this school? Uh, let's see, there are six classes per grade, making 18 in total. So approximately 600 students. Given that, Sukiyurashi and I couldn't possibly vet them alone. We'll be meeting the chairman at a restaurant tonight to lay out the specifics. How about the two of you come join us? We could use the help. Man, <laughs> for a couple of rookies, you sure have it together. You guys are free until dinner. Oh, we already made the reservations in Chinatown, by the way. Think of it as a little welcoming party. The restaurant's name is Kyoinro. If you could meet us there, that'd be great. Sure. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. Kyoinro. Looks like this is it. Are you almost here, Yagamishi? We went ahead and sat down. Actually, we're right out front. Excellent. Just give the host my name then. Will do. <laughs> Was this the same guy living in a net cafe not too long ago? He sure has come a long way. Yeah, at this rate he'll leave us in the dust. Without further ado, allow me to introduce Yagamishi and Kaito-san. The gentlemen I mentioned before. They are, without a doubt, the finest private eyes in Kamurocho. Ah, yes. Tsukumo-san here has certainly been singing your praises. My name is Okuda. I'm the chairman of a private high school. Seiryo, if you've heard of it. Seiryo High. Isn't that where those kids were from? Yeah. One's from earlier. Is something the matter? We actually ran into some of your students today. There must have been seven, eight of them. They were harassing a restaurant worker and recording it on their phone. Oh boy. And I'm guessing you didn't just stand and watch? You bet your ass we did. Had to knock a little sense into those brats. You mean there was an altercation? I... Perhaps I should pretend not to have heard that. Come on, pal. Why don't we cut the formal crap and tell it like it is? Because that would be unprofessional, Kaito-san. Chairman, we'd like to start investigating tomorrow. So would you mind sharing any background information you may have? Certainly, yes. Our administration has a very firm stance against bullying. Yet no policy is foolproof, and each situation is unique. We continually ask ourselves, are we taking proper measures to foster a supportive environment? 
Or if enmity is already prevalent among the student body, are we addressing their concerns promptly enough? I believe the key is prevention. Stop bullying before it starts. And you're hiring detectives to help? Oh, yes. See, as this thought was dawning on me, I happened to cross a sign. Yokohama 99, it read. I visited your webpage, actually, and I discovered just how well-versed you were at this very matter. At that moment, I knew fate was guiding my hand. Sounds like you walked right out of a commercial. In most situations we've dealt with, we knew who the problem was beforehand. All we needed to do was get the evidence. But in this case, we don't even know if there's a bully in the first place. Hence why we called in the reinforcements. So, I take it you have some sort of plan? Of course. We're going to start by spreading hidden cameras throughout the school, anywhere that bullying is most likely to occur. This footage should provide a detailed snapshot of student interaction that would otherwise go unnoticed. Then, after a two-week test run, we'll compile our data and present our initial analysis. Nothing beats a good old-fashioned spy cam. Yes, but if one of these spy cams were found, the whole operation could be compromised. As such, our pair of experts are intimately familiar with the complexities of human behavior, ensuring these cameras remain hidden. Damn, you make me want to hire us. This secret stays between you and us, Chairman. Not even the guards or teachers can know. Do I have that correct? You do. I believe the more people who know, the more likely it is this would get out. At any rate, I've heard Yagami-san here has tackled many a difficult case in Kamrocho. I'm glad to have such a reliable detective on the job. You have my full confidence and backing. <laughs> they just keep raising the bar on us, don't they? So, Yagamishi, if there's anything you'd like to ask the chairman, now's your chance. Hey, good idea. You might learn a thing or two from watching the master at work. Way to put me on the spot, guys. But might as well. In the event we do uncover bullying, what action would you take? Of course, we would provide appropriate counseling, in addition to notifying the local authorities. Wouldn't that mean increasing the teacher's workload? Interviewing students, filling out paperwork. That could lead to making people not want to bother reporting it. Hmm. Sad to say, I can't rule out that possibility. The teachers have so much on their plate as it is. I doubt they'd volunteer to look for any extra trouble. That is why we must strike at the root of it. What if you offered your staff a bonus for catching any bullies in the act? <laughs> I know that'd motivate me. Uh, you don't think that'd backfire? <laughs> Actually, it might be worth considering. But the fact of the matter remains. Bullying has no perfect solution. So, we never actually resolved this, but we did get into a scuffle with your students. No one got hurt, but how do you feel about that? Uh, well, uh, I'm afraid I have to remain ignorant of that. Fine, but let me tell you one thing. Next time I see your students harassing someone, it's gonna be lights out. The kitty gloves are off. <laughs> That also part of the Yagami Detective Agency package? Could you elaborate on why you're going the detective route for this? Like I said, my goal is to nip any bullying in the bud before it can grow any worse. And it's not enough for the teachers to be on full alert? Unfortunately, no. I'm afraid I can't fully trust whatever they jot down on some report. Okuda-san, you mentioned you couldn't trust your teacher's reports. Why is that? Uh, human error, I suppose. Behavior can be ambiguous, and it is difficult to notice every little detail. 
Your first response seemed to hint at something else. Yes. Yes, I suppose it did. Can you tell me what's going on? Uh, oh, where should I begin? You see, folks, it has been almost four years since the suicide of one of our students. The poor boy hung himself at home. You mean, because he was being bullied? Not on paper, at least. We established a committee to investigate, but they never turned up anything. Neither did the court. Wait, you were taken to court? Yes. One of the student's parents filed a lawsuit. Now, there were online postings that may or may not have hinted at bullying. But the prosecution never found substantial evidence, and the court ruled we were in the clear. If I can ask your honest opinion, was there really no bullying, Chairman? I would like to believe there wasn't. But I may have been too far removed from the classroom to say that in good faith. Every day I watch our students come to school, and what I see are young, happy kids. They're all so full of life, with bright futures ahead of them. However, around two months ago, we lost contact with one of our student teachers. Everyone assumes it's a mental health issue. The hell? <laughs> Don't tell me he got picked on too. That could have been the case, but I didn't get enough details to say for sure. From what I'd observed, he appeared to be getting along quite well with the students. But I later heard his family had reported him missing. At the end of the day, I'm asking you to shed light on the darkness that's plagued my school. That is why I went the detective route. Hey, Chairman, you a big fan of Peking Duck? Hmm? Oh, uh, it's very tasty. Isn't it? It's one of my personal favorites. Nothing like biting into warm, crunchy duck skin. Oh, and it's gotta be slathered in that special sauce. Are you eating okay, Yagamishi? You can place another order. If you could get back to the case, I'll make sure to keep your plate full. Oh, and he tells me to keep it professional. I think this conversation has been enlightening. Any thoughts, Tsukumo? Hmm, what else is there? I suppose we'll have to see when we get there. We may have more questions then. That would be fine. All right then. Time to dig in or what? Are you really pretending you waited? You've been nibbling this whole time. <laughs> you call this nibbling? Hey waiter, I want to place an order. And tell your chef, I hope his kitchen can handle this heat. Uh, I take it this place isn't exactly cheap? Don't you worry about that, Yagamishi. The bill's on us. It's your welcoming party, remember? In that case... Uh, excuse me. I'm ready to order, too. So, how was that for your first day's work? I realize that meeting was a lot to take in, but the task at hand seems pretty straightforward. Oh yeah. What was that you said about using hidden cameras? Tomorrow we'll be deciding where to put them. We don't have all that many, so you know. Oh, and we'll be dressed as AC repairmen. What? You gonna make us wear uniforms? <laughs> of course. Freshly laundered and ready for duty. As you may recall, only the chairman is aware of our investigation. We must therefore deceive both student and faculty. Sounds like a plan to me. For now, let's call it a night. <laughs> You've got a point there. 
In any case, try to make yourselves at home. Apologies in advance if you find our amenities wanting. Yagamishi, remember those uniforms I mentioned yesterday? You'll need to put one on before we go. They should be a perfect fit. <laughs> After all, there's no information I can't find, body measurements included. Yeah, I don't doubt that. You've never been one to miss a detail. What's up with those guys? They sure look like men on a mission. But for what? We will now commence our journey by taxi to Sewio High. Gentlemen, are we all ready? Remember, this case can open up a lot for us depending on how we solve it. So let's leave no stone unturned. <laughs> Don't worry. No case is too big or too small. We always swing for the fences. Ain't that right, Tom? <laughs> you know it. Good. Then let's get going. Ah, you must be the repairman. The chairman said you'd be here. I take it you know where you're going? Yes, but thank you anyway. Ooh, this place reeks of money. Uh, they are a prestigious prep school. Wonder if the kids are on recess. So. Our first order of business is to analyze the layout of the school. The schoolyard should provide the proper vantage point. Let's head there. It seems this school's design is fairly conventional. See, there's the classroom building, and that must be the gym. By the way, how many spy cams do we have? Twenty in total. All of which feed directly to my computer. Think we ought to split them up between us? We could, but that might draw extra attention. We stick out enough as is, so people will wonder what we're doing alone. But if we moved in pairs, they'd write us off a lot easier. <laughs> Clever as always, Yagamishi. Huh. That reminds me of something. When a con man pretends to be a cop, they'll usually bring along a partner. It seems the added person adds legitimacy, unless you're a natural skeptic. All that is to say, Yagamishi knows his material. Hear that, Tom? <laughs> you should have been a con man. Very funny. So, how about Kaito-san and I take half the cameras and you guys take the rest? Where are they, anyway? Right here. Now, these cameras don't see very far, but they do see wide. 150 degrees, to be precise. So let's try to set them up where we think a bully would be most likely to strike. So, we just gotta find the teacher's blind spots, eh? <laughs> You're looking at a natural, buddy. You would brag about something like that, Kaito-san. <laughs> Better stop before I blush. All right, guys, I think it's time for action. Okay, Tak and I'll start here. And you guys can work your way around opposite us. Affirmative. We got ten cameras, so we gotta use them smart. Oh, yeah, of course. The shoe lockers. <laughs> Bet all kinds of team drama goes down here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's where you drop love letters to your crush, or challenge your rivals to duels. Dude. What century did you go to school in? Look, whatever. All I'm saying is, this place is worth at least three cameras. That many? Just for the lockers? Yep. See, a school never has that many blind spots. So when you do find one, you make it special. And this one's pinging my radar pretty hard here. Huh. 
After that, sure, let's do it. Sukumo reporting in. I see you've set up a few cameras already. Feed is coming in nice and clear. You guys are doing awesome. Thanks. That's things on your end. We just finished with the back of the gym. Next up is the classroom building. Copy that. All right, Doc. Just follow my lead. The boys will handle this floor. So let's go up one more. Gotcha. Every bully loves a good pair of stairs. <laughs> Pushing someone down and ruins their day pretty quick. You think it's really that often? Still, it is a blind spot. Yep. Close corners make for poor visibility. Making this a number one choice among assholes. You don't say. All right. Then let's get a camera here. Right. Let's move up to the next floor. Yagamishi, are you perhaps on the second floor? Yeah, we're about to start setting up. Okay, we're almost done with the first floor, and we'll be heading to the east building after. I think we can handle that all on our own. So can you finish up the second and third floors here? Sure, not a problem. Splitting up for a bit shouldn't hurt. How about I take the second floor and you do the third? Works for me. Uh, looking for something, pal? Yeah, I'm... Kind of busy, in case you couldn't tell. Suspicious. Here, thousand yen, no questions asked. That'll cover a pack of smokes, maybe two. You're saying I should take this? Well, yeah. Kinda sucks asking you to move on your break. <laughs> you know, you're not such a bad guy. In all honesty, uh, the budget's been tight this month. Kaito-san, I'm done setting up the third floor. Same. I've hit up every blind spot I can think of. Thing is, I've still got two cameras left. Maybe this tight corridor might be good. The teachers probably pass by without a second glance. Hey Kaito-san, don't you think we should be installing these in classrooms? Isn't that where bullying primarily takes place? You might be right about that. But we couldn't cover every classroom if we wanted to, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, fair enough. Nice to see you putting so much thought into this. So, as professionals, we'll just have to make do with what we've got. We should set this camera up wherever we can get the broadest view. How about the ceiling in the middle of the hall? Then we'll see everyone going in and out of class. Okay, Tuck, I'm gonna give you a boost. So make sure you find a good spot for that thing, okay? Uh-huh. You know, we totally could have done this during recess. Every 
everyone's just staring at us. Too late to whine now. Just do what you gotta do and be done with it. kids who started trouble at the restaurant. You noticed too, huh? Classroom 2-2. Sounds like we've got some bullies in there for sure. That'll be a prime spot for the last camera. All right. Just make sure they don't see your face. Excuse me, but I don't recall there being an inspection today. Uh... Uh... Oh... Sorry to be in your way, ma'am. We won't take long. I understand. But nobody notified me we'd have any interruptions. Yeah. And nobody notified us this school hired such gorgeous teachers. You know what? I don't seem to recognize either of you. Probably because our usual repairmen were here just last month. Uh, I can't say I know anything about that. We're just here doing our job, ma'am. You can call me Sawa-sensei, not ma'am. And you're in my classroom. Forgive me, but who, may I ask, called you here? So, this is how it's gonna be, huh? Is this how you treat people who work for you? I... I beg your pardon? You call us here, put us to work. Then you give us the third degree? Not our fault you weren't notified by your own school. Isn't it the teacher's responsibility to keep track of scheduled maintenance? But hey, what do I know? We'll just pack up and go. Uh, now, just a minute. I've been in this business a long time, and not once have I been insulted like this. We could have been in and out of here in under a minute, but whatever, you're a problem now. And you better believe we'll be reporting this little exchange to your boss. Uh, really, there's no need to go that far. You'll be done in under a minute? Forty seconds if you like. Well, if it really is that quick, fine. Then let's just take care of it. That's forty seconds for the young of you, but I can get it done in thirty-five. Right, of course. Please continue as you were, and I apologize for grilling you like that. <sighs> Consider it water under the bridge. Why ruin our budding relationship over a little misunderstanding? <sighs> I suppose. Come on, Teach, no need to be so down. You know what they say, nothing ruins a pretty face faster than a frown. What? <laughs> uh, ignore him, please. Like I said, we'll get this done quick and be out of your hair. And we're done. Sorry again for the disturbance. We'll be going now. Was that Kaito-san? You forget we're working here? Yeah, but man, that chick's the spitting image of a teacher I had a crush on. One of my few good school memories. What, so that makes me the bad guy? All right, all right. Back to work. I get it. This is Tsukumo reporting in. Yagamishi, please respond. Hey man, we just finished setting up the cameras. Good, so did we. Could you and Kaito-san meet us at the gymnasium, then? It's empty at the moment. I thought we might as well check the camera feed and discuss what to do moving forward. Got it. Then we'll see you at the gym. Excellent work, gentlemen. All cameras are fully operational. So, now all we do is sit back and watch? Something like that, yes. 
By the way, Yagamishi, I noticed you installed a camera in a classroom. Did you find a lead there or something? Yeah, that classroom had those problem kids from yesterday. Thought they'd be worth keeping an eye on. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, nothing unusual's turned up yet. Guess we'll have to watch and wait. If there's any bullying happening at this school, this is a surefire way to find out. Wrong as it is, there's something about smoking in school that makes it feel twice as good. You're awfully nostalgic today, Kaito-san. Yeah, well, my school wasn't as fancy as this one. Plus, I dropped out after a year. Uh-oh. Guys, check this out. I think we may have found something. What is it? This is the classroom where Yagamishi set up the camera. Class 2-2. Them again. Now they're picking on a girl. Whoa, did you see that? Oh, no, no, they're writing something on her? With a permanent marker? Yo, talk! Let's go kick the shit out of those punks! No way I'm letting that slide. Yeah, this is a problem. Hold on, Yagami-san. What now? Looks like they got what they came for. They're already leaving the classroom. Man, why's nobody helping her? It, it's like they don't even want to see it. Kids think this doesn't involve you? Let's go, Kaito-san. I want to see what happened with my own two eyes. Yeah. I suppose we should report this to our client. I didn't expect to find anything this quickly, though. But now, we have irrefutable evidence that bullying is real here at Serio. We'll have to take this up with the chairman and see how we should proceed. girl we saw on camera. Let's get a little closer and see how she's doing. What the? <laughs> Suspicious. <laughs> Suspicious. This is Tsukumo, paging Yagamishi. Yeah, what's up? I've just reported our findings to the chairman. Could you meet us here? His office is on the third floor of the East Building. On our way. Please, come in. You're that teacher. Sawa-sensei, wasn't it? To what do we owe the pleasure? All of these men are detectives? Yes, and I'd like you to keep their identities a secret. These gentlemen here are Yakumi-san and Kaito-san. I see. Very well, then. I've explained the situation to Sawa-sensei, our homeroom teacher for class 2-2. Why don't you both have a seat? I knew something was wrong, but I could never put my finger on what. The girl being bullied. Her name's Mommy Koda. Do I have that right? Yes, she's in the basketball club. And so are all those kids surrounding her. Wonder if that's where the bullying started. Sawa-sensei, you mentioned noticing something was wrong? 
Well, only that Kodasan hasn't been herself lately. Suspend him. Expel him. Kick those bullies the hell out of here. The video we took has all you need. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. For one thing, it would be quite problematic to use this video as evidence. Oh, true. The school can't just come out and say we've been recording your kids without consent. Yes, and let us bear in mind, they still have their whole lives ahead of them. We cannot treat this lightly. <gasps> You're not saying we should look the other way, are you? Hey, last night you said the total opposite, man. If you intend to cover this up, let me just begin by saying... No one is suggesting we cover it up. Then we need to act now. We have no idea how close to the edge Kodasan could be. What if there's a chance? What if she does something drastic before tomorrow? Um, pardon me for saying so, but bullying is rarely resolved by the victim and the perpetrator coming to a mutual agreement. Thus, a third party must intervene. I presume you read that in a book somewhere. I can tell you from experience that no victim finds it easy to open up about their situation. Not to family, friends, anyone. It takes a tremendous amount of courage for a bullied child to come forth and seek help. So if we, as outsiders, are to intervene, we must consider the ramifications. Even so! No, I think the chairman's right. Making a big scene might only make things worse for Kodasan. Talk. That's not like you. Someone's drowning right in front of your eyes, and you're just gonna watch them sink? What I'm saying is, we have to put a stop to the bullying without getting the whole school involved. What started in that classroom will end in that classroom. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, but did you say you were a detective? The name's Yagami. And you want to put a stop to the bullying like it's that easy? Tell me. Where does all this confidence come from? You think there's a real chance we could pull this off, Yagami-san? I do. Can you bring up that video again? Sure. One moment. I think the secret to stopping the bullying is right here in this video. Really? Then by all means, detective, enlighten us. You don't have to be so condescending. Nope, she's got a point. You gotta back up that claim. So what's this big secret you're talking about? It's those students sitting idly by. They're aware of the problem, but aren't doing anything to help. Well, yeah, there's a whole flock of bullies. Get in their way, you're their next target. Adults do the same thing, honestly. Guess we're not so different from high schoolers. Then we should hold some sort of trial and get the class involved? Is that what you're trying to suggest? Again, something like that would only spread the issue. And that would only bring more pain to Kodasan. Tell me, what is your suggestion, Yagami-san? What I'm getting at is that it's the silence of all her classmates that's empowering these bullies. On the surface, we only see students turning their eyes as one of their own gets tormented. They feign disinterest, or pretend not to notice, because remember, that's the safest thing to do. But deep down, it kills them to see it. Yeah, no shit. So if the class could just express that, the pressure would then shift to the bullies. We have to tip the social balance in that classroom, become the voices of justice, of social law. Then, it's the bullies who become the outcasts. Would they keep running the risk of bullying if it meant social exile? Hmm. I can see how you arrived there. Alright, so where do we come in? We come in by giving the bystanders a voice. We're going to be the spark that lights a fire. After all, the first voice matters the most. Okay, so what's the plan here? Tsukumo, 
how fast can you get your hands on a couple of mini speakers? I want to put them in the classroom where they can't be seen. I can have them here momentarily, but I admit I don't really grasp the plan here. I don't blame you. I honestly can't say it'll work, but I think it's worth a shot. <laughs> I see. In that case, I'll be back before school's out. Chairman, I don't know what these detectives are planning, but I'll tell you this right now. I refuse to stand idly by while a student gets pushed to the breaking point. Do you remember what I told you about the student who committed suicide? That affected Sawa-sensei profoundly. Perhaps she blames herself for being unable to prevent it, whatever the cause may have been. I can see that. As the chairman of this school, I don't want to let her down. So please, help her, Yakimi-san. Help us all. How's it coming along, Yagamishi? No complications, I presume? So far, so good. Looks like most of the students have gone home. Do you have the speakers I gave you? Yep, and they're just what I needed. You're the man, Tsukumo. <laughs> How about we save the praise for after our plan works out? Anybody in the classroom right now? In class 2-2? Let me check. Hmm? Now that's odd. What's wrong? Well, that one's fine, but there's something wrong with the camera in the classroom building. The one on the second floor by the stairs. Is it broken? No, still getting a signal. Something might be blocking the lens? All right. I'll check it out on the way. How does it look, Yagamishi? Anything unusual? Let's find out. Huh? The heck is this? Did you find something? Yeah, a sticker on the lens. Uh, uh, Yagamishi, behind you! There he is! That's the pervert who set up the hidden camera! See, when you find a hidden camera, your first thought is to take it down. That's wrong. What you do instead is block the lens. That way, when the perv finally notices, he goes back to fix it and BAM! Caught in the act! I get it, Amasawa. Just stay back. Hey, what is it you're doing over there? I told you, he's trying to peep on us. Oh, wow, that girl's pretty sharp. Looks like we've been caught red-handed. Come on, let's catch him already. Stop! Hey, wait! <gasps> Are you safe, Yagamishi? Seems like you're in a bit of a pinch. Yeah, you think? Crap. Yagamishi, you should see a ladder that goes up to the gym's roof. That's my advice. Got it. Don't panic, but the school just contacted security. Several guards are en route to your location. Great. Just what I needed. like you've made it to the rooftop. Where have you been watching from this whole time? From the drone, Yagamishi. I found a spot that's pretty inconspicuous. 
From here, use the drone as a guide and jump from that roof toward the classroom. You're gonna have to clear a big gap. Right. I'll try not to die. Yagamishi, it looks like some of the guards have arrived. You think you can make it out of there? <sighs> I'll have to somehow. But before that, I'm gonna need to set up these speakers. What? Even after all that? Yeah, I should be able to make a clean getaway, as long as I'm done before security gets too tight. Are you serious? It'll be fine. All I have to do is not get caught, right? Besides, I have the world's greatest hacker on my side. You know very well I'm weak to flattery. <laughs> but for the glory of Yokohama 99, I will not let you down, Yagamishi. Let's get this mission started. Better be careful here. Like I said, I should be able to help you get to your destination without incident. Make sure you don't lose that earpiece, okay? Got it. I'm counting on you, Tsukumo. Okay, makes sense. This was the shortest route to Class 2-2. Uh, nothing we can do but find another route. Give me a moment. Yagamishi, it seems the rooftop might be a more viable option. Let's abandon this route and try it, shall we? Yeah. No sense waiting for the guards to just give up their posts. Let's check out the rooftop. What the hell? Another roadblock? My apologies. I'm afraid that was a blind spot. Well, shit. Yagamishi, how many guards are there? Hmm? There's just one. Just one? Well, in that case, let's just get that guard out of your way. You got a plan? <laughs> of course. Yagamishi, it's time to put that thing I gave you to use. You mean this ball or whatever? What does it even do? It's kind of like one of those anti-theft balls, actually. You fill that ball with powder or liquid and throw it at your target to blind them. Right. So what's inside this thing? Oh, just some peppers. Peppers? <laughs> Is this really gonna work? Now, now. Don't doubt the magician. Just take my word for it and let it fly. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, damn. It worked like a charm. <laughs> what did I tell you? But, Yagamishi, that only works once. You'll have to procure a refill on your own. Yeah, I got it. Tsukumo, can you hear me? If I keep going down this way, I'll just end up back at the scene from earlier, right? The landing where you were accused of being a pervert? Yes, that's correct. You have any idea how it's looking right now? I'll take a look. There's no sign of that sharp girl who framed you. The onlookers seem to have dispersed too. Oh, then I'm good to go? There is one guard posted there. But I'm sure you can get past him. Yeah, piece of cake if he's alone. Okay, I'm in class 2-2. Nobody in sight. Roger that. <laughs> 
Seems like those guards were no trouble for you. Yeah, thanks to you. Well, better set up those speakers while I can. Good luck. Tsukumo, could you say something through the speakers? Oh, uh, testing. Testing. Today's forecast calls for sunshine and heavy security. Perfect. Your speakers are awesome, Tsukumo. Almost like you're in the room. Does this mean your setup is complete? Yeah, I've pretty much done what I can. Huh? Oh, no, you don't. You stay your ass right there. Go get Yakun and the boys. I see you got security all riled up. They've been looking all over for you. Didn't think you'd be dumb enough to stay. Could have sworn I saw you earlier on lunch. Now, where have I seen that face? Oh, you're the guy from yesterday. The guy who stole my fucking phone. I'd say it's time for some payback. Don't lose heart, Yagamichi. You've already come this far. Right. I can get through this. Look, who the fuck are you and why are you in our school? No answer? You're only making this worse on yourself, you know? Are you gonna swipe some girls' gym clothes or something? <laughs> Does this mean we could beat the answers out of him? Oh, yeah. We'll end up as heroes for breaking this nasty-ass pervert. Sick! I always wonder what it'd be like to shatter a human bone. Whoa. What is this shit? This guy doesn't mess around, Yakun. We all need to take him at once. Get caught now, they'll label you as a sex offender. You don't want that on the news, do you? No, can't have that. <laughs> Only one way out there. <laughs> Let's go. Like this. <laughs> 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 
Should I have gone easier on them? Never mind those guys. You need to make yourself scarce. Unfortunately, you're on your own from here. The three of us need to make our exit now, too. We'll all regroup at the office, okay? I got it. <laughs> oh, man. You almost got arrested and put on the sex offender list. There's no way I'd screw things up that bad. In all seriousness, those bullies got what was coming. I kind of wish you messed them up worse. That way, they'd never bother Kodasan again. Yeah, but that wouldn't really solve the problem. Not everything can be settled with a fight. What? Wow, look who's talking. But that's where those speakers come into play, isn't it? Yeah. If everything goes as expected. Hey, you did everything you could, right? So we'll see what tomorrow has in store. Yo, so are you gonna come out to lunch with us or what? Huh? Don't you have anything more to say than that, Coda? Get your ass up. Come on, Matsun's really not in the mood to deal with your shit today. I'll just eat lunch here, okay? Huh? You're giving us lip now? I guess you won't be needing this stuff then. <sighs> we told you to get your ass up, you little slut. Oh, maybe you've started fucking guys on your lunch break now? <laughs> <laughs> You're out here living the dream, aren't you? <laughs> Enough! Get your ass up! What's the fucking holdup, Coda? You should be thanking us for even inviting you to come. So slow. I can't fucking stand you. Well, damn. So much for my appetite. You guys are making me sick. Hey, who the fuck said that? We're making you sick, huh? You guys talking about us? You see anyone else being assholes? Of course he's talking about you. Yeah, I've about had it with you punks. This shit's getting old. The fuck? Ganging up on the same girl day after day make you feel real big? Unfucking believable that it takes three of them to do the job. Seriously, you guys? You're taking Koda's side here? You know she's just a whore, right? You okay, Koda-san? Just ignore these losers. How low can you go? Calling someone a whore isn't gonna win you any points. Right? Let's hear it for the picture of purity over here. Uh, what the hell? Hey! She can dish it, but she can't take it. Hope the boys are watching. What? What the fuck, man? If you want to talk shit, say it to my face. What part of this don't you understand? Y yeah. You know what, guys? It's true. You guys just need to leave her alone. He's right. He's totally right. What's your problem with her anyway? Yeah, Koda didn't do anything wrong, guys. Exactly. So back off Koda-san already. Stop acting like little punks. Get the hell out of here. When you guys going to lunch, go choke on a chopstick. Oh, how does it feel now? Just get going, would you? Yeah. Toss them out. <laughs> what in the hell is going on here? Hey, Boxy. Fuck this. Yeah. Well, let's just go. Fuck it. I've never seen those kids band together like that. They all knew what was going on in there now. It can be hard to speak up even when you know something happening right in front of you is wrong. Not so different from adults, right? Yagami-san, was everything we just witnessed part of your plan? It's just psychology. There's this concept called the bystander effect. According to the psychologists, when a person witnesses an incident, there's three things that run through their mind if other people are in the vicinity. One, if no one else acts, 
it must not be urgent. Two, if no one else acts, I don't have to take action either. And three, if I take action alone, I'll embarrass myself. The result? Everybody stands there and nobody takes action. I just figured if I could get even one person to step up and raise their voice, it would spur the rest of them to push past their inability to act. <laughs> Penguins are the same way. You ever seen a flock of them hesitating to take a leap into the sea? One takes the first plunge and the others all start following after him. The first penguin, you say? It's a fascinating term for a display of bravery. I've heard it said that overseas in America, the first penguin is a symbol of respect. So for Yagamishi, that would mean your voice was the first penguin in that classroom. I can't say for certain this resolved your bullying problem. But, here's hoping it's at least a good first step. They're gone. You should be safe from them for a while. What do you say we monitor the situation for now? Might not be wise for adults to intervene just yet. I suppose your plan has worked out for the better. But it should be teachers and administrators handling these matters, not detectives. You know what? I couldn't agree more. Then if you'll excuse me. Oh, come on, man. Lighten up a little. You didn't have to rub it in her face. You know what she thinks? She thinks we're some bums off the street trying to meddle in academic affairs. Well then, I apologize on her behalf. But Yagami-san, that was some magic you worked there. Hard to admit this at my age, but I learned quite a bit from what you did. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Good stuff, Yagami-san. <laughs> Naturally. I knew you would deliver. <laughs> huh? Sorry, I have to take this. Hey, this is Yagami. This is Shiosaki. Do you have a minute? Uh, sure. I have a rather urgent request for you. It concerns a trial we've been involved with. Listen, sorry son, uh, I'm a little busy. I don't know if I can take a rush job at the moment. We aren't even in Kamacho right now. Actually, I'm in Yokohama. Really? That's interesting. I'm helping Sugiura out with a case for his new agency. We're on site right now. At Serio High School. Uh, sorry son? You there? Serio High? Somewhere near Ichincho? Is that the school? Hmm? Huh? Have you heard of it? A college-age student teacher from that school went missing about two months ago. It was all very sudden. Huh. I think I heard something about that, actually. He himself was a Seiryu High graduate. He'd returned to his alma mater to finish his teaching credential. Just a sec. How do you know so much about this? The teacher's name is Hiro Mikoshiba, and his body was discovered a few days ago. They found him in one of Ichincho's abandoned buildings. Huh? The body was badly decomposed, but Kanagawa police have just released his identity. Moments ago, in fact. Moments ago? This gonna end today? Thing is, someone else knew Mikoshiba was dead, before the police even confirmed it. A sex offender, Akihiro Ehara. I defended him in court. The day Mikoshiba disappeared, Ehara was arrested at the station for groping. He's also an active duty officer. So you're saying he committed the murder too? No. 
The victim was still alive while Ahara was at the station in Tokyo committing sexual battery. He was caught and arrested on the spot. And he's been in jail for the two months since. So if I have this right, he has an alibi for the murder? Right. But there's more to it. A few days ago, someone lit flares at the location of Mikoshiba's body. It obviously couldn't have been Ahara, so I suspect that's the real culprit. But whoever that is, is somehow connected to Ahara. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no other way he could have known about the body. Exactly. There's clearly more to Ahara than an officer turned groper. More than likely, he's an accomplice to murder. Okay. So do we have a motive? Four years ago, Ehara's only son hung himself in their home. He was a student at Seiryo High at the time. And the way Ehara sees it, his death was the result of bullying at the hands of his classmate, Mikoshiba. You mean it's revenge? In that case, could he possibly have hired someone else to kill the guy in his stead? It's highly likely. As for my request, I'd like to see what you can find out. Mikoshiba's murder is too suspicious. Up until today, I wrote Ehara off as just another train groper. But he got arrested for that on the exact day that Mikoshiba was killed. It can't be a coincidence. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better alibi than being arrested for a different crime, right? Otherwise, the cops would have pinned him as suspect number one. But groping as an alibi? Why go to all that trouble? There had to have been a better way than that. I'm worried. As his attorney, I have to admit there's a chance Ehara planned this, which means I've made a critical oversight. Even worse, I let a misguided court issue a verdict. I can't allow that to stand. I need to reconsider both the harassment and the murder, because I think the truth is these cases are one and the same. All right. Well... What can I do for you? Can you see if anyone at Seiryo High will talk about Mikoshiba? Right now, we need more information. And the first thing we should focus on is how and why he disappeared. That could give us a lead. So, does this mean you're hiring me? It does. Consider it an official request, if you would. Okay, I'm on it. <laughs> no better feeling than when the jobs line up perfectly. Ijincho, Yokohama, a harbor town where rotting secrets rarely stay uncovered. The deceased was a student teacher who had vanished from a high school Yagami was investigating. Yet the linchpin to this case, a police officer named Ahara, was arrested for a different crime, a train groping that shocked the nation. Upon hearing the verdict, Ahara gave the court an ominous revelation that the son he had lost was avenged. Before I go all in, can we go over the defendant's profile? That way I'll have something to work with. Sure. Akihiro Ahara. Age 53. Senior officer with Tokyo PD. Convicted of sexual battery. He'd been stationed in Shinjuku and lived alone in Tokyo. That is, until his arrest. Lived alone? Unmarried then? His wife moved to Yokohama without him seven years ago, when their son Toshiro started at Seiryo High. Toshiro soon ended up taking his life in his third year. That's four years ago if you're counting. And the couple never reconciled, huh? Apparently his wife wanted nothing to do with him from that point on. That's it for personal details. All right. As for the charge, Ehara's maintained his innocence. We've had no luck getting him to budge. Mind you, the prosecution has plenty against him. Security camera surveillance, eyewitness footage, even trace evidence gathered on scene. The same footage the media was plastering on TV? Yes. Although some of it was edited for privacy or length but it painted a clear enough picture. 
Hard to dispute something you can see right in front of you. True. And what about when they handed down the verdict? The horror flew off the handle or something? Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Your Honor, in a warehouse, about three days ago, a body turned up in Yokohama. The body belongs to a guy named Hiro Mikoshiba. Four years ago, this man took my son from me by driving him to commit suicide. Ehara seemed convinced that Mikoshiba had bullied his son, and to get his justice, he even took Seiru High to court. However, the court ruled against him, claiming there was no substantial evidence of bullying. I still need to dig into the court record of that case to see if there's anything of value. Sounds like I'm on deck then. I've got someone involved in the case right in front of me. Who? The chairman of Stereo High himself. Are you talking about me? I don't know how you pull these things off, Yagami-san. But let me give you a word of caution. I'm listening. Mikoshiba's murder hasn't been made public yet, so please don't go around talking about it. Especially at his school. The Kanagawa police will investigate the school soon enough. And if they find out everyone already knows... They'd show us the door, lock it behind them, and probably charge us with obstruction. Exactly. Oh, and before I send you Mikoshiba's photo, there's one last thing you should know. What's that? Ehara's ruling was the day before yesterday. That means we only have 13 more days to potentially file an appeal. If we don't make our move, Ehara will walk out of court with a sex offense charge and a minor slap on the wrist. And once his case is closed, it would take a miracle to get it reopened, even if there had been a critical oversight. Right. I'm sorry to give you a time limit instead of a viable solution. Don't worry. I'll have to make do. For now, let's just keep in touch. Thanks, and good luck. Yo, what was that about? <laughs> sorry. Give me one more sec. Actually, Kaito-san, can I fill you in later? I need to get some answers from the chairman. Hmm? May I? help you with something, Yagami-san? You sure can. Only thing is, where to start? Remember how you told me about a student teacher went missing? Oh, uh... This is him, right? Hiro Mikoshiba. How do you have that photo? But yes, that's him. I'd like to ask a bit about him, in relation to a separate investigation. What... what is it you need to know? Did something happen to him? I'm afraid I can't give you any details. This request comes from a very close colleague. I'm sure you understand. It's a matter of detective-client privilege. <sighs> I know that isn't much consolation. But if it's any comfort, I would never disclose anything about your case either. But don't you see? Mikoshiba-kun was officially reported missing. Please, can you tell me something? I promise. I'll tell you everything I can when I can. But for now, let me ask the questions. <sighs> Very well. Go ahead. I'll start with the basics. Mikoshiba-kun was a graduate here, correct? And that's why he came back to train as a teacher? That's correct. How long was he supposed to be here? Three weeks, originally. He'd nearly finished his time with us. But... One day, he simply stopped coming. It was as if all was well, then suddenly, he was gone. Or at least, that's how I'd heard it. Were you two not that close? No. We had barely exchanged a word since he arrived. Wasn't there a pretty dark rumor about Mikoshiba-kun four years back? Something about how he drove a student to suicide? You... I mean, what was dredged up online. Yes, I'm aware of it. However, in the subsequent lawsuit, that rumor was put to rest. 
The court found no evidence of bullying. But you had your doubts, didn't you? So you called on us to take a deeper look. Well, uh, yes. But let's not get confused. The tragedy from four years ago does weigh on us. But we've washed our hands of the matter. Well, you say that, yet I can't help circling back to the same question. Why would the head of a school hire detectives to monitor his students in secret, potentially even out of pocket? Well, for one thing, it would reflect poorly on our institution were I to openly suspect our students. Then there's the issue of bullying being recorded and shared online. You know what kind of firestorm that can cause. I should mention, I'm the one who takes the fall for it. My own privacy be damned. So of course I would opt for secrecy. That's fair. But what that still doesn't answer is why this is happening now. I'm not sure I follow. The police performed what's called a trace element inspection to prove the perpetrator came in contact with the victim. Even something as small as clothing fibers or skin cells can net you a big win at court. Not that it's a game, of course. And how is this relevant, exactly? Oh, not a bad question, actually. Sure. Were your thoughts on that runaway train talk? Could this be what riled you up? But... but this is... This is footage of Akihiro Ehara two months ago, captured up in Tokyo. The man was an active duty police officer, so of course it made the rounds in the media. But you already knew all that. After all, he's the one who sued your school on account of what his son endured here. Bullying that led to suicide. Well, that's... Uh... Undeniable. And now that he's in the spotlight, any more problems at Serio would lead people to start connecting the dots. Uh. The police would dig up that suicide in no time, regardless of whatever the court had ruled. They might even reach the conclusion you had covered the whole thing up. I get the feeling that's why we're really here, to prevent another mess on your hands. Oh, I see now. Our job's to sniff out any bullying, then you sweep it under the rug. That's simply not true. At least, that wasn't my intention. You sure about that? The thought never even crossed your mind? <sighs> Perhaps it did. The scenario you described was painfully accurate. Every time I saw Ihara-san on TV, I'd grow sick with worry that it could all boil over on us here at any moment. I can assure you, Chairman, I'm not here to cause any trouble. I only want to learn about Miko Shiba-kun. In that case, you should speak with Sawa-sensei. She was his teaching mentor. Her? Great. That's my luck. See? I told you we should have stayed on her good side. How was I supposed to know? Um, so, would you like me to call her back here? No, thanks. I should go see her myself. Do a bit of smoothing over. In that case, you may want to go downstairs and see if she's in the faculty room. She should still be on lunch. Perfect. I've got another chance to shoot my shot. Sorry, Kaito-san, but I'm fielding this one alone. Tsukumo, you guys can clear out too. What? You're benching all of us? Just like that? I don't understand the meaning of this, Yagamishi. If I had time to explain, I would. Just trust me on this for now. I'm sorry, did you need something, sir? Oh, uh, is Sawa-sensei here? She should be back shortly. May I ask who's waiting for her? Well, no one's special, really. I just need to have a quick word with her is all. Maybe you could tell me where her desk is? It's right over there. The one with all the English books. Thank you. Thank you. 
Suspicious. What the? Hey. What are you doing here? I thought you'd have gone by now. Yes, well, I need to ask you a couple things. Such as? Such as how close you were to Hiromika Shiva. What? I heard from Chairman Okuda you were mentoring him as a teacher. I believe this was two months ago? Why do you of all people want to know? Did you notice anything unusual before he disappeared? Any sign of trouble he might have had? I can't say for sure. He just stopped showing up one day. Really, that's all I know. Uh, is that really all you can tell me? Nothing jogging the memory? I said that's all. You know what, let's start over. Why don't we talk about him as a student? You were already a teacher here by then, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Back when a student here committed suicide, there were rumors online about how it could have been caused by bullying. And Miko Shiba-kun's name came up as one of the potential bullies. Yes, but... Those were just rumors. So he wasn't involved in any teasing? I teach English, and that's what I was focused on. So as far as I knew, Miko Shiba-kun was a good student with solid grades back then. And during his time in training, I was under the impression he got along with the students just fine. He's not the type to bully, then? I would say no. Then why would those rumors exist in the first place? You're asking the wrong person. Four years ago, the court determined this school was not responsible for a bullying-related suicide. You mean Ahara-san's lawsuit? The father of the student who died and an officer in Tokyo? He was arrested the other day. Well, I'm sure you've seen the news. Yes, but what of it? What exactly is the point you're trying to make here? I believe Ahara-san still thinks his son killed himself because of Mikoshiba-kun. Let me ask you something, Yagami-san. By all means. What are you trying to accomplish? Didn't you finish this whole business with the chairman? If that wasn't enough, you got security called on you. You clearly have zero regard for anyone here. You should have had the sense to leave long before now. Believe me, once I learn what I need about Mikoshiba-kun, I'm gone. In that case, you've already got everything you need from me. But one last question. You and the chairman both mentioned how Miko Shiba-kun got along with the students here. Anyone in particular that he was close to? The kids in the basketball club? Miko Shiba-kun was in that club back when he was a student. Apparently he was showing up to their practices. The basketball club? That includes the gang from before, right? Yes. They all spent quite a bit of time with him. All right. With that, I'll get out of your hair. Appreciate your time, man. Uh, Sawa sensei. Uh, just a minute! <sighs> Kaito-san, you there? Tell me you're still on campus. Why? You suddenly decide you need me after all? Man, don't be like that. You enjoy playing teacher's pet with Sawa-sensei? You mean, did I enjoy getting eviscerated by her? She hates my guts at this point. That aside, I did get some interesting intel. And that's where you come in. Huh? What for? I want to find those bullies in the basketball club. Think you can fly the pigeon for me? <laughs> so I do have a purpose. Ain't that something? All right, then. It's drone time. Thanks. I'll start scoping out the gymnasium.
Close one. Almost got it. Huh? You're son from class 2 too, right? Basketball too? Yeah. You have a second? I um, have some questions about a student teacher who taught classes here in Mikoshiba. <laughs> oh. oh, really? Yo, you read me talk? That posse of little shitheads just went strutting into the gym with some bats. Kaito-san, can you at least try to warn me a little sooner next time? Why? You worried? Hey! Why are you still here, asshole? Who the hell are you, anyway? Talking pretty big for taking a cheap shot while my back was turned. You had it coming, shady old fuck! Coda! Hey, you been spilling anything to this guy? I didn't say anything. I'll fill you in. I was asking her about Miko Shiba, a student teacher who disappeared from school not too long ago. You guys know him, right? The basketball club would. Don't bother trying to talk to us like we're your fucking friends, asshole. I want to bash your fucking skull in. You'll die before I tell you shit. You wiped the floor with us yesterday. Only fair for you to take a handicap. I don't mind at all. Sure. All good. But it's still gonna be pretty one-sided. You're so full of shit. I'm gonna kick your ass! You've got a lot of guts for your age, kid. But come on. You really need a better outlet for all that aggression. Let me go! Just what on earth is going on in here? Hey. Let's roll out. I'm gonna do you a favor here and leave out the part about the bats. Huh? Are you even listening? Yes, ma'am. We were just horsing around a bit. Right? Just horsing around is right. You really are unbelievable. Why are you attacking defenseless students on their school property? How many times must I tell you to leave our school alone? For what it's worth, the chairman asked me to be here. Oh, good. Let's drag him into this. How should our chairman explain you to the mob of irate parents that will be at his door any second now? Don't worry, there's a very good reason we hired these ragtag detectives to spy on and beat up your kids. Not the words I'd use. If I hear anything else about you, anything, I'm going straight to the press. I'm under no obligation to cover for anyone. Oh, and your attire is atrocious. When you show up at a school, at least try to look the part. Now go home! You hear all that, Kaito-san? I have a funny feeling I'm not wanted here. Can I talk to the chairman real quick? I'm afraid Sawa has made her point clear. Perhaps it's best you take your leave. After all, you've satisfied the bulk of my request. Wait. Okay, how about this? You can hire me on as a teacher. That way, I can stay on campus no problem, right? But you can't teach without a license. You don't happen to have one, do you? No, but I do have a lawyer's badge. How's that for certification? You're a lawyer? Well, that 
certainly is a respectable position, but it's not exactly a license to educate. Can't we work something out? I'm afraid something isn't specific enough. Although, there is always the off chance that you can serve as an outside consultant. A guidance counselor, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Like a club advisor. Do you happen to have a kung fu club? I've got a few tricks I could show some kids. No, there's nothing of the sort. And on that note, I believe each club already has an advisor assigned. That's unfortunate. Me again. I say it's time we hightailed it out of here. No use sitting around on our asses, right? Why don't you meet us back here and we'll go? I can't. Not until I find something for Sari-san. Suit yourself. <laughs> Don't work too hard now. Can I help you? Actually, you already have. I didn't think you'd be foolish enough to show your face around here again. I'm sorry, but do I... Oh. They always say perpetrators return to the scene of the crime. And you just proved the old adage true, Monsieur Voyeur. Monsieur... Boyer? What are you talking about? I'm talking about your pervy little upskirt scheme. Seriously, hiding a camera under the stairs? And at your age? Shame on you, sir! Yeah, you lost me. Now, if you don't mind, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Oh no, you don't! I have irrefutable proof of your crime. Why, the very shoes on your feet! You're wearing the exact same sneakers as the pervert from yesterday. And don't think they'll carry you to safety today. <sighs> okay, what is happening here? Sorry, but your evidence is my shoes? Everybody here's got shoes, young lady. In fact, I'm probably not the only person with this exact pair. Hmm. Your shoe style is merely the icing on the cake. You see, before the pervert arrived yesterday, I had covered the floor around the camera with a clear polymer that shines under black light. Huh? It's an oil-based substance, so it lasts a few days. Your souls are stained with it as we speak. Um... Uh... Which means you came bumbling back to the scene of the crime, while wearing the very evidence of your misdeeds. Lamenting your misfortune already? That's what you get for crossing the Mystery Research Club of Serio High. Mystery Research Club. Now, if you'll follow me to the faculty room, monsieur. Oh, wait, just hold on, okay? There's no way I'd have noticed an invisible substance on my shoes. I'll give you that much. But even if I did step in some mystery goop, does that really prove what you're saying? With so many people on campus, any number of them could have walked over that spot. No, only the perpetrator stepped in the coating. I know this because I was there watching your fiasco. And of course, I had the PE teacher who was with me agree to serve as witness. Why don't you just give it up already? may be gone, but fortunately, I snapped a photo of it before it got taken away. With that, 
I determined everything there is to know about your camera, down to the store where you bought it. Turns out it's an online exclusive, customized to capture high-resolution footage with an inconspicuous design. Were I to supply this information to the police, they would track down the owner soon enough. After all, the shop would have no choice but to cooperate with a police investigation. Do I need to spell it out any further? You, monsieur, are ensnared. Therefore, I think it would be wise to do what I say. Uh, let's say we have a chat. A chat? Yeah. Now, I can't give out any details, but having the cops on me would be extremely problematic. So, I'd like to resolve this as amicably as possible. Think we can come to terms here? I will agree to one thing only. Hearing the unadulterated truth. And make no mistake, I will not be misled by diversion, threats, bribes, sob stories, nothing of the sort. Suspicious. Look at me. Do I really look like a pervert who'd sneak into a school for dirty pictures? Well, no, actually. Not at first glance. Right? So, drop the Monsieur Voyeur... But, I would be an utter failure as a mystery connoisseur to fall for such elementary misdirection. Uh, what? No matter where or when the story is told, the perpetrators in mysteries are often those who draw the least suspicion. This trope carries over into the real world as well, so the fact that you don't look like a criminal proves nothing. Really? If you think you can fool this mystery fiend, you'd better think again. You're Kyoko Amasawa-san, right? President of the Mystery Research Club? So what if I am? I saw your flyer. Sounds like your club's in a tough spot. You're not wrong. Our current advisor got married and quit teaching, and we can't find anyone else to take her spot. On top of that, the chairman's been reluctant to bring in anyone from outside, so the MRC may be in dire straits. But your arrival marks our revival! Should I turn you in as a voyeur, it would make a fine feather in my cap. It would also prove the value of the MRC, so the chairman would have no choice but to solicit an advisor for us. Well, that all sounds fine on paper, but the real-life logistics may not play out that way. You'll need a competent professional in your area of interest, but you think they have time for volunteer work? When you put it that way, it does seem like a long shot. Right? So here's my proposition. How about you make me your advisor? You? Advise the MRC? Why not? A Kamurocho-based detective not good enough? Uh, you're a detective? Oh yeah. I'm Takayuki Yagami from the Yagami Detective Agency. I was asked to come investigate your school. That's about all I can let slip. <sighs> so then, the hidden camera was for your investigation? I'll let you deduce that yourself. Client confidentiality and all that. But I will say one thing. I'm here to stop shady business, not start it. If he wasn't shooting up skirts, then what was he trying to see? Rather, who was he trying to see? Who put him up to it? Our staff? Ugh, so many variables! <laughs> Listen, I don't mean to interrupt, but... Hello? As I was trying to say, becoming your advisor could work out well for both of us. I'm not done here by a long shot, but one of your teachers is bent on seeing me gone. Really? Who? Sawa-sensei. She thinks I have no business being here, and frankly, it's been hard to prove her wrong. 
But if I were to advise your club, it'd be all the reason I need to stay on campus. So what do you think? It's a win-win situation, wouldn't you say? Oh, and if it's experience you want, believe me, I've been around the block when it comes to mysteries. I believe I understand. The purpose you stated for being here does fit the circumstances better than my original theory. But I will not be persuaded so easily. So, I propose a test. A test? Right this way, please. What? Hey! Who's this, sis? This is Yagami-san, our new advisor candidate. However, I intend to test him first. See if he's legitimate. Hmm. Eh, fine by me. I'm Kento Amasawa, Kyoko's younger brother. Also the MRC's bodyguard. When your sister's as nosy as mine, you've got to step up your game to keep her safe. Please have a seat, Yagami-san. After you. Oh, how kind of you. So, Amasawa-san, back to the topic at hand here. So, getting back to this test of yours. Ah, uh, yes. So, based on what you've told me, I'm inclined to drop your charges altogether. A detective setting up cameras is... believable. That being said, I'd also be a fool to take you at your word. If this is a ruse, I'd be unleashing a pervert on the school. Well, the caution is admirable. Then you shouldn't mind if I test both your skills as a detective and your character as a person. And once that's over, the club will reach a decision. We'll either accept you as our mentor, or turn you in as a deviant. I get the picture. So what does this test entail? Actually, we've been dealing with a rather risky case as of late, so your job is to resolve it. How risky are we talking? Well, it's about as risky as it is risque. Yagami-san, have you ever heard of a sugar baby? Huh? You mean a younger girl getting paid to date an older guy? You know it. Now our current case involves one such sugar baby. It seems that one of our dance club girls has grown a reputation for dating older men. Unfortunately, I've yet to pin down exactly who this is. All you know is she's in dance club? Well, I understand why you'd want to know more, but what about this warrant's investigation? Is she in danger? The issue at hand is that she may be doing more than dating, and it's putting her safety at risk. Well, we found this out online, so we're admittedly speculating a bit here. But apparently this girl's pretty infamous for what they call her vanishing act. Hmm. Care to elaborate? She strings the mark along, going on a few dates for an agreed-upon sum, but then she goes in for the kill. She gets a large upfront payment for promising to seal the deal, and then, poof, gone with the wind. Okay, I can see how that might make her enemies, but that's on the guy, isn't it? I mean, he's paying to date an underage girl, and he thinks he has the right to complain? You're not wrong. Problem is, her latest mark, a violent, foul-mouthed thug, isn't so self-aware. I believe rape and murder were his choicest threats. So yeah, we can't just write this one off. Oh, yeah. That's a concern. Mm-hmm. And now he has his gang roaming the streets, searching high and low for the girl who conned him. I'd say that establishes the risk clearly enough. As soon as we found out, we've been trying to find the sugar baby and warn her ASAP. Yeah, I get it now. If we don't act, she could be in very real danger. I think we're finally seeing eye to eye, Yagami-san. After all, 
The truly artful detective can solve incidents before they even occur. That's not quite how it works, but sure. Could you tell me what the Mystery Research Club actually does? It seems like the advisor ought to know that. <clears throat> so, I founded the Mystery Research Club last year. Primarily, we function as a book club, critiquing mystery novels from many different cultures and eras. But, when the opportunity is ripe, we also engage in more involved activities. And by that, I mean solving the mysteries around us. Oh, you mean go sleuthing, like on a case. So that's what you were up to. I've got to say, as a potential advisor, I'm not exactly psyched to hear you go around looking for trouble. Oh, don't get me wrong. We don't do this for kicks, and I'm not a fan of danger. If we could all be armchair detectives, free to investigate from afar, surely that would be ideal. Yeah, don't I know it. Unfortunately, that is rarely, if ever, possible. Say our investigatory senses were to draw us toward a mystery that escapes even the school and the police. Why, letting such a case slip away would be anathema to our club's founding principles. While I do admire your passion, why put yourself at risk? You'd be safer handing it off to the authorities. Then shouldn't we hand you off to the authorities? Well, now, let's not be hasty. I take it you see my point then. Some cases aren't so cut and dry. You make some valid points. In any case, now that the situation's clear, I'd like to get on with the test. Just tell me where to start, and I'll be there. It is said that the great Sherlock Holmes was able to freely change his appearance into that of a total stranger. From helpless old woman to shifty-eyed vagrant, he deceived the masses and never lost a lead, all thanks to a good disguise. So, you want me to go undercover? Yep. Any detective worth their salt should have no trouble with that. You're going to infiltrate the dance club as an advisor and return with a lead on the sugar baby. That is your test. Wait. You want me to teach a dance club? If it's required, then yes. I want you to win their hearts in ways I myself could not. Those girls are a close-knit group. They'd never trade gossip with someone like me. However, if a cool new stranger gained their trust, that's you, they might be more willing to talk. But how am I supposed to be a convincing advisor if I've never danced once in my life? That's okay. It's rare for their advisors to get up and do it themselves. They generally teach from a book. Oh, great. If it's any consolation, their current advisor never even shows up. So, you'll already have an in. Just give them a few pointers, act authoritative, and soon enough, you'll be their closest confidant. Easy peasy. Easy peasy? To teach something I know nothing about? I'm sure you can figure that out. That is, if you really are a detective and not some snaky imposter. You're really putting me through the ringer, you know that? I guess I'll have to prevail with the power of vague advice. Good, then let's move. The dance club will be starting their practice any minute. They're in the gym basement, in case you didn't know. I know her test might be tough, Yagami-san, but I think you'd make a pretty rad advisor. So good luck. Huh? Oh. Shizono, I'd like a word with you. Hey, aren't you... Amasawa from the Mystery Research Club? You betcha. Don't worry, I come bearing good news. Oh great, the MRC. <sighs> what do you want with us? We're not up to anything. Calm down, I'm not here to expose your secrets to the world. I only wanted to introduce you to someone. 
What are you getting at? To preface this, I noticed your club advisor hasn't been showing up much lately. Yeah, apparently he got really sick. We're lucky if we see him a couple times a month. Right, and it must be rough trying to choreograph an entire routine without him. Yeah, and we've got a meet coming up soon. It's so much pressure. I see. Then the stars really did align in your favor. Um, what? Listen, Senpai, I know we might seem desperate, but it's not like we need any favors. Don't worry, you don't owe me for this. I'm offering you a potential advisor as a token of goodwill. A potential advisor? <laughs> Let's not sweat the small stuff. The important thing is, Yagami-san here said he'd agree to help you with your routine as a stand-in advisor. Help with their routine? When did I ever say that? Oh my gosh, really? This is just what we needed! You know, I could tell you had a certain something about you. So how long have you been a pro dancer? Uh, I'm not. <gasps> oh, so modest. This is like one of those dream come true moments in a movie. I've been literally racking my brain trying to come up with a workable routine. Oh, I'm so glad that's on you now. Whoa, 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 whoa. time out. I'm missing some important qualifications here. Yagami-san, this is your Reichenbach Falls moment. You need to dive headfirst into the challenge. Don't you get it? Uh, no? Um, do you think we can get started? We've been practicing and practicing, but something about our choreography feels off. We all know our moves and everybody's got rhythm, so all that should be left is bringing our A game. But it feels like we're still missing something, you know? That wow factor. It's really kind of down to the wire to be figuring this stuff out, but I know we'll push through if we try. Uh-huh. <laughs> so can I ask for your first impression? Does our routine need more going on, or...? Uh, you know, it's hard to say what's going on at this point. I shouldn't have to say this, but keen observation is elementary for a detective. And? And? You need to tell them what you observed. You did have your eyes open, didn't you? I think your performance could use a little more flair. Flair? How so? Well, you're already in perfect sync, and everyone knows their part. But, how to put it? You were right. It needs something that's going to leave a lasting impact. I see what you mean. Maybe we are just kind of going through the motions here. If only we could come up with better stuff. Oh, maybe you could give us some suggestions. Ah. Oh. Let's take apart what could give you the edge you need. Why not incorporate Kung Fu? Uh, did you just say Kung Fu? Sure did. Throw a few kicks and punches, or knock the competition right out. That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, and it's not like martial arts-based dancing is entirely unheard of. But we don't know the first thing about Kung Fu. Well, you're in luck. Kung Fu happens to be a hobby of mine. That's so cool! Well, it's my own style. You won't find it in any ancient scrolls. It's flashy. <laughs> Perfect! So will you teach us? I guess I'm gonna have to. Sweet! Then let's get a quick demonstration. <laughs> let's see some ass-kicking dance then! <laughs> Wait, really? I really have to do this? Of course! How else are we gonna learn? Look up some random videos? We'll get to analyze your moves, your footwork, your breathing. We'll learn from the pro. I wouldn't get your hopes up, though. What if my stuff doesn't fit your routine at all? So you're not going to help us after all? That's pretty weak. If you're giving up after stringing them along this far, hang tight while I dial 110. Uh, hold it. Huh? You know what? 
I think I can wing it well enough. I've never done this before, though, so don't get mad if it's crappy, okay? Oh, don't be so hard on yourself. You're gonna do fantastic. Okay, what we'll do first is show you the opening 30 seconds of our routine until the chorus hits. While you're watching, keep an eye out for the parts that could use some kung fu moves. Sure, good plan. Okay, so here's how we start. In there. Now you take it away. Oh, doubt I can top that. But you know what? May as well try. That's a spirit. Ready for the music? skill and part pulling out of your ass. I don't think a seasoned athlete could pull that off. Yagami-san, that was incredible. You're not just a pro, you're a master. Well, <laughs> you're giving an amateur way too much credit here. No way an amateur moves like that. You're something else. Maybe you don't realize it, but you have a gift for this. You're totally a born dancer. <laughs> I don't know about all that. What you call a gift, I call muscle memory. Well, whatever you call it, we're gonna use every last bit of it in our routine, if that's okay. <laughs> you seriously saved our necks just now, Yagami-san. Hey, I'm just glad it all worked out. Um, if it's okay to ask, could you drop by and get us more pointer sometime? Ever since our advisor stopped showing, we've barely been keeping it together. And we could all use some guidance from someone we can trust. If you guys will have me, then sure. Not sure I have many pointers left, though. Hmm. Oh, you're the best! I think it's time we headed back now, Yagami-san. Huh? Oh, sure. So, did I pass? I'd say I made plenty of headway with the dance club. Indeed you have. Honestly, I'm still in shock over how easily you won Nishizono-san over. Every time I try to approach her, she reacts like I'm there to accuse her of something. Gee, I wonder why. I'm sure the MRC has gained some notoriety. Well, all the more reason we need an amazing advisor who can keep up with us. Oh, I'm amazing now. Does this mean I'm no longer a criminal? Yeah, I really should apologize for that at some point. Also, I have another theory as to why you installed that camera. Yeah? Let's hear it. So, a higher detective shows up to covertly monitor a specific group of students. Meanwhile, spreading through the news like wildfire is the case of Akihiro Ehara, a man connected to our school. Put those pieces together, and your objective here starts taking shape. But, I wouldn't want to hamper any important detective work of yours, so for now, I'll let that theory sit. At any rate, Yagami-san, I'll go ahead and let the chairman know of our arrangement. And that is to say, I'll formally request you as our advisor. Let it be great. But do you really think you'll hire me just like that? Sure, so long as you're officially considered an outside guidance counselor. I don't see why not. Also, we do need another faculty member as a supervisor, but that's more of a formality than anything. Their only responsibility is signing the paperwork. 
you'll still be the one running the club. Our school makes you jump through a lot of hoops just to be welcomed as a guest, huh? Yeah, sounds like they won't let in just anybody. Anyway, is there a teacher you had in mind? Yep, no worries there. The chairman actually promised to sign off on whoever we chose. Well, I made him promise might be a bit more accurate. What? Really? Man, I wish he'd told me. He told me the club's already had advisors and left it at that. Typical. I doubt he wants to actually keep his word. After all, if we get into trouble, he'll be directly responsible. He probably thinks the MRC is a big enough liability as it is. <laughs> I wonder why. Well, with all that said, welcome to the Mystery Research Club. Can't wait to see a real detective in action. Hey, you'll get your chance, and it's a pleasure to be on board. Oh, when you have a spare moment, could you join us in the clubroom for a talk? I'd like your advice on another case we're monitoring. What, you've got something besides the sugar baby? Yes, and this one may actually be even nastier. In fact, the sugar baby may be but a single thread amidst a larger, more sinister web of conspiracies. But that's a lot to digest, I know. I'll get you up to speed when you're free. Okay. Not quite sure how to process that right now, but I'll make sure to swing by at some point. Hey guys, how we all doing? Sweating it out on some layups? Uh, who are you? My name's Yagami. I've been the MRC's advisor for all of a couple minutes, and I need to ask the basketball club a few questions. Okay. There was a student teacher who used to hang around here as recent as, what, October? Mikoshiba's the name. Oh yeah, Mikoshiba-san. Anyway, he stopped showing up out of nowhere. Any of you have any theories? Okay, scratch that. Then, what kind of teacher was he? Is he nice? Is he a jerk? I wouldn't say jerk, but he was... enthusiastic? Yeah, I mean, he did show up almost daily. The club was really good back in his day. That's probably why he had us hustling even harder than the coach. So, would you say he was on good terms with you all? I guess. Wait, where's Koda and them? Oh, from Class 2-2? I don't know. I haven't seen Matsu, Nakane, anyone. Something special about Class 2-2? <laughs> well, yeah. Koda's in 2-2, and she was Mikoshiba-sensei's star pupil. Star pupil? I do know who you're talking about, by the way. Are you saying she was favored over the others? In a way. Mikoshiba-sensei worked her harder because she hadn't played basketball till high school. See, most of us already had tons of experience by the time we joined. So, anyone starting as late as now has to be really athletic to keep up with the team. Mikoshiba-sensei knew that too. I'd say him looking after Koda did us all a favor. Wow, sounds like the model instructor. Eh, if you say so. But I'm not sure Koda felt that way. Oh? Mikoshiba-sensei might have just thought it was tough love, but I think he went overboard with the teasing sometimes. Like, he'd make her shoot and then go, See? That was how not to do it. Are you saying he would mock her? Hmm, that makes it sound bad. He was doing it because he cared, I think? Hey, wasn't Mikoshiba-sensei the one who started the whole arousing thing? <laughs> he said the way she held the ball was arousing. Said it was her main contribution. That's not true. She's got a nice chest, too. That's fair. Anyway, when Mikoshiba-sensei stopped coming, the guys in 2-2 were all like, Okay, what did Koda do to him? Are you implying they had a relationship? Beats me. Mikoshiba-sensei did anything like that, he would have gotten canned on the spot. Yeah, people like to gossip, but, as they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> Maybe Koda-san's the reason he was always so fired up. <laughs> Maybe she's the reason he got fired. <laughs> so the writing on her hand. 
It wasn't some random insult. Um, are we about done here? Last thing, where are Kodasan and the others? Are they often this late? No. Everyone's usually here by now. Hmm, maybe they're still in their classroom? Okay, then I think that about does it. Back to work for the both of us, huh? You spacing out on me? Look at me when I'm talking! You can't face us because you're weak. Who gave you permission to quit anyway? Newsflash, you're nothing without the club. Yeah, think about us for a second. Who has to pick up all the grunt work when you're gone? Maybe she feels special after what happened at lunch. Like people suddenly give a shit about her. Doesn't give you the right to ditch practice. Talk about selfish, am I right? Stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it! Is that all you know how to say? You think we're letting a stuck-up bitch like you give the orders? You guys still haven't learned to play fair? This fucking guy. Why's your dirty old ass still here? Attention students! Be on the lookout for a creeper showing up in your classrooms! If I were you, I'd watch my mouth around a club advisor. Say what? I'm Yagami, from the Yagami Detective Agency. And your chairman just hired me to advise the Mystery Research Club. Bullshit. I guess word hasn't gotten around? Maybe I'll let a few wisecracks slide for now, then. But mark my words, I'll be here every day of the week. So be on your best behavior. <sighs> uh, we better get to practice. Yeah, you do that. Oh, and, uh, break a leg out there, Matsu. Not very nice, are they? Are you alright? I'm fine. Kodasan, I'm sorry to spring this on you, but as I said, I'm a detective, and I need to talk about Hiro Mikoshiba. He started training as a teacher here pretty recently, right? And one day he just stopped showing up? At the time, did you notice anything strange about him? Maybe he seemed troubled, or you saw him hanging around strangers? Why... Why are you asking me? The basketball club members think you and Mikoshiba might have been close, at least at practice. They said that? Well, I suppose there wasn't much truth to what I'd heard then. Don't sweat it. Just so you know, I'm actually going to be hanging around here at the school for a little while longer. If it's cool, I hope we can find a way to be friends. See ya. Wait a sec. Earlier today it was your voice that I heard, wasn't it? I just... never expected anyone to actually stand up for me in school. But you could say I didn't really stand up to them for myself much either. We all just treated it like it was a normal thing. Sometimes people would even laugh about it. But then, today, something changed. Everyone suddenly decided to take a stand like they'd seen enough. I couldn't believe it. But that first voice, the one that told them to stop... That was your voice, wasn't it, Yagami-san? <laughs> Who could say? I knew it! It was you. Thank you so much for that. Today was... eye-opening. I never realized... I never thought about how horribly I was being treated until everyone stood up for me. What's more, it made me see that I was strong. In fact, I finally stood up to the basketball kids. So you did. 
Is that what made you decide to quit the club? Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to play basketball in a real team. I used to read this manga that made it look so cool. In a comic, even if you're a terrible player, the team always tries to lift you up. I tried. I wanted it to work, even if all they did was tear me down. But today... I just up and quit. That's not cool at all, is it? You did nothing wrong, Kodosan. Truth is, there's a lot of injustice in the world that goes unseen. And some people decide it's easier to be part of the problem than be part of the solution. The kind of people who only feel joy when they see others in pain. You can only do so much to make people see the light. At some point, you've just got to let them go. You know what I mean? Then there's no shame in quitting. But Yagami-san... I think you can only say that because you're such a strong person. Hmm. Okay. In that case, we won't call it quitting. Huh? You can play. It doesn't have to be with the basketball club. If you practice, you wouldn't even need a school basketball club to get to where you want to be. If this sport is what you want to do with your life, I guarantee you there's going to be a path for you to take. And all you have to do is find that path. I mean... It's got to be out there, and then you don't have to call it quitting. I don't know about that. Are you sure? I mean... Wouldn't that be cheating? <laughs> Come on, try to work with me here. So... The MRC. You're the advisor? Yagami-san? Yeah. If you need anything, you just let us know. Anything at all. For example, if you hit any more trouble with those basketball club kids, you find me. Sure. You've got this. Mr. Detective? Yagami-san, right? Yeah. Shouldn't you be at practice with everyone else? Yeah, well... Remember Matsun and Sakaki? You know, the two other guys I'm always hanging around? They're ready to talk to you about Mikoshiba-sensei now. Huh. Well, Detective, I think they have a lead for you. Hey. You're here on some kind of case, right? You know, Mikoshiba-sensei talked to us pretty often. I think maybe we can help. That is, if you wouldn't mind starting fresh with all of us. Oh, turning over a new leaf, are we? We kinda have to. How else are we gonna get good college recommendations? It would really bite us in the ass if you went and narked on us, so... Will you at least hear us out? Matsun and the rest are just upstairs. Please, be a nice guy. We're really sorry. Okay, I see where this is going. How many guys are up there waiting to jump me? The next floor up is for third years, right? You rope some of your senpais into this too? Wow, you don't even know us and you're throwing out accusations like that? How are we supposed to become upstanding citizens with teachers like this? That's just not fair. Fine. I'll hear you out. Tell your friends I'm on my way. Really? Awesome! Over here, Yagami-san! Sorry to drag you all the way up here for this. You wanted to talk to me? About Mikoshiba-sensei? What? I can't hear a word you're saying, man. Why don't you come closer so we don't have to shout? Yeah, let's get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> C. 
So many of you. You guys all know Mikoshiba-sensei? Nah, that's not how our senpai friends roll. They know the Yokohama Liumon. Yokohama Liumon? You mean the local gang? Hell yeah. I've got a friend who's in deep with those guys. I scratch their back by bringing them chicks to hang out with, and they scratch mine by tipping me for it. <laughs> it's a pretty sweet deal, actually. Also, we've got a little thing going. I get to drop the Liumong name if I need him to handle some business. So you sell them girls in exchange for honorary membership? You need to find better friends. Don't talk to me like you know me. I stay on their good side and I get my personal bodyguards. I work with the tools I've got to get to the top. So you got it all figured out, don't you, kid? But you're missing the big picture. They're gonna turn the table so fast you won't know what hit you. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. But I wouldn't worry about me right now. You're the one who's got the real problem on his hands. You get it? From now on, if you even lay a finger on us, you offend the Yokohama Liumon, and they'll take that personally. You see what deep shit you're in here, Yagami-san? So how about it? You know how to say you're sorry? Cash for our pain and suffering. Oh yeah? How much are we talking here? A grand? A mil. If you're short, I'd be happy to hook you up with a loan shark. I know a guy who lends for the Seiryu clan Yakuza. First it's gang, now it's the Yakuza. Keep bringing adult shit into this, I'm gonna start treating you like one. Huh? You wanna see what happens to gang members? I'll show you. You sure you wanna do that? We're gonna charge you extra. Oh, you got this shit down, Matsui. <laughs> Let's take this asshole down! Fuck him up! Stay down. Oh, my eyes. Cheap shot. <laughs> Can't see. Got you now. No, you don't. Huh? What? Did he just jump off? Nah. He's just hiding in the dark. Like a scared little cockroach. You guys go look for him and tell me when you find him. I'm going for a smoke. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> you got this in the bag. Uh, Senpai, what do we do? You guys follow me. <laughs> we'll all smoke together till we get an update. Sure, I'll come with. Senpai's the toughest around, and the coolest. Ah, oh, well. All for my adorable little underlings. Tastes good, senpai? Smoking a cigarette in the classroom? <laughs> so you came all this way just to get your ass kicked. Hey, Akane! Go get the other senpais! Uh, okay, I'm on it. You guys better watch out. If your teacher busts you smoking, won't you get in big trouble? On the other hand, you guys could use a lesson in manners, and I'd be happy to teach you. Huh? What the hell? Bastard! So this is where you were hiding! <laughs> now what? 
And that mouth of yours won't get you out of this. I'm taking you down! Don't give me that smug look. A maniac. He's too good at this, man. Hey, you mentioned compensation for pain and suffering. Uh, that still sound like a good idea? No, we were just being stupid. Could you maybe forget all that? Then from here on out, we're buds, right? Ow! Ah, my shoulder! Holy shit, that hurts, Yagami-san! Tell me everything you know about Mikoshiba. After all, you guys were pretty close, right? Mikoshiba Sensei showed up to practice, like, basically every day. Kind of a pain in the ass, if I'm being honest. As soon as our coach would leave, it's like a switch would flip and he'd start drilling us. He'd make us do, like, ten sets of cross-court dashes. And if even one of us lagged behind, it meant ten more. For all of us. That made it obvious real quick. Koda was our weakest link. So Mikoshiba was especially harsh on her, then? Yeah, because she's such a freaking klutz. Even the first years got sick of her eventually. <laughs> Only thing she did right was unite the team against her. You gang up and belittle a single defenseless girl, a beginner in your sport, and you call that unity. Real classy. Listen up. Mikoshiba's parents have reported him missing. Foul play could be in the works here. He's been gone for far too long. Hey, you think maybe Koda did it? Some kind of crime of passion? This isn't the time for bullshit. Or you want to keep going? Uh, nope. I'll pass. Have you talked to Sawa-sensei yet? He probably knows Mikoshiba-sensei better than anyone. All she told me was how exemplary he was, both as a student and a student teacher. And that he looked out for you guys, out of some sort of camaraderie. Huh? She really talked him up that good? Why, something off about that? Uh, it's just... Sawa-sensei was really cold to him. No matter what he'd do, I actually brought that up to him one day. And it turns out the rumors were right. Rumors? Back when Mikoshiba-sensei was a student, one of his classmates apparently committed suicide. And Sawa-sensei suspected him of bullying the kid. I don't think he ever really got past that. He'd get all depressed sometimes. Really? Sawa-sensei thought Mikoshiba was a bully? Oh, yeah. I actually asked him about it once, but he just laughed it off. I teach English, and that's what I was focused on. So, as far as I knew, Mikoshiba-kun was a good student with solid grades back then. And during his time in training, I was under the impression he got along with the students just fine. 
What did she really think about Mikoshiba? I'll have to press her on it. Hi there. Has Sawa Sensei gone home? Actually, she's in a meeting with the chairman. So then she's at his office? Yes, but I think they may have some visitors. Gotcha. Thanks. Hey, what the? Hmm. Suspicious. What the? Yagami-san, those men are with the Kanagawa police. They said they're here to make inquiries about Mikoshiba-kun's disappearance. And they asked to see Sawa-sensei too? Yes. But I have to ask, can you tell me what's really going on? You were asking questions about Mikoshiba-kun as well. I should leave it to the police to fill you in on that. I mean... Their sources are probably more recent than mine. They should have the latest details. Mikashibakun is... no longer with us, is he? Then it's just as I feared. ago, a young man named Hiro Mikashiba went missing during his stint as a student teacher. Mikashiba quickly becomes the center of attention when his rotting corpse is discovered, and Yagami scours the school for any clues left behind. Rumor has it, Mikashiba drove a classmate to suicide in his student days. A rumor that the school faculty is seemingly unable to deny. Yagami-san, why are you still here? Because I care. Now, if you're open to the idea, you think we could walk and talk? Why? So you can grill me with more questions? You realize the police just finished doing that, yes? I figured they'd come knocking sooner or later. Then you knew Mikoshipa-kun was murdered, didn't you? And that's why you've been snooping around our school. You're not wrong, but can we please take this elsewhere? If 
you knew Mikashiba was murdered, why didn't you tell me up front? Because that information's not public. Didn't the police ask you to keep quiet about it? Well, yes, but even so... What sort of questions were they asking you anyway? I thought I was supposed to keep quiet. Cute. Now I'm going to ask you one last time. Please, stay off our campus. You don't belong here. I mean, what if you end up injuring a student? It would be a nightmare for all of us. Nobody's getting injured. All that's water under the bridge now. Is that so? Yeah, and I should probably mention, I'm the new advisor of the Mystery Research Club. I have the chairman's approval and everything. So, it looks like I have a place here after all. What? Since when? I think we're getting sidetracked here. Did the police ever mention a suspect? No. All they told me was what happened to Miko Shibakun. That he's no longer a missing person. That he's dead. And was dumped in a derelict building. My condolences. That was all we found out. The police were the ones asking the questions, not us. They hardly gave us room to breathe. Yeah, sounds like an interrogation, all right. <sighs> is there anything else? Actually, there is. I'd like to know your thoughts on Miko Shibakun's killer. What? For example, take Akihiro Ihara, a man who took this school to court over his son's suicide. Miko Shiba came up even then, as a culprit bearing some responsibility for that. Ihara-san? But he got arrested for that groping incident at the train station. So the police really are keeping their lips sealed. Must you always be so cryptic? It's possible Ihara-san had a hand in Mikoshiba's murder. What? Despite being incarcerated for two months, he knew exactly where the corpse would be. He revealed it upon being sentenced. This was before the Kanagawa police had even ID'd the body. Then... Was it really a Horasan? A court would say being in jail is about as solid an alibi as you can get, but he could be connected somehow. How do you know all this, Yagami-san? I'd tell you, but I showed you one of my cards, so now it's your turn. Uh, huh? I've heard you weren't as big a fan of Mikoshiba as you led me to believe. Is that true? <sighs> this again. You knew he was a bully all along. But yesterday, you told me he wasn't the type. I just want to get the story straight here. <sighs> Did you have a sudden change of heart? Or were you lying to me for some reason? It's not that simple. Oh, one more thing I learned today. It was Miko Shiba who turned the basketball club against Kodasan. Pretty sadistic for a would-be teacher, don't you think? But that's enough. Then it's not a stretch to say he probably was a major factor in the death of Ahara's son four years ago? And I think it's also safe to assume you know more than you're letting on, right? This is murder we're talking about here. Lies aren't doing anyone any favors. His name was Toshiro. Sorry? Everyone keeps saying Ehara's son. Like he's just another statistic. He had a name for heaven's sake. Toshiro. Right. I'm sorry. Now if you'll excuse me, I have papers to grade. Sawa-sensei, please! Nine o'clock tonight. I'll be at Plage on Izazaki Road. We'll finally have a real talk? Something like that. Kaito-san. So I just left the school, and tonight I'm... Wait, where are you? <laughs> Third stop of our bar crawl, that's where. I thought work was done for the night. Licking the wounds of rejection, huh? Is the 99 gang with you? Just Sukiyura. Tsukumo said he had to get back to the office to take care of some kind of system trouble. A computer crash or something? I don't know. Something about a buzzy searcher going haywire. I've pretty much tuned it out, man. Anyway, you gotta come take his place? Nah, I gotta stay sober. I'm meeting Sawa-sensei in a bit. You what? God damn it, man! You are killing me today! Would you simmer down? 
This is work, not whatever it is you're doing. Oh, then I ought to come be your backup. Where are we headed? Come on, you think I need a drunk co-pilot? Knock one back for me, though. Hey, I better not find out you two got it on. Don't do this to me, Talk. Yagamishi, how was school? Kaito-san wasn't happy about you going solo, you know. Eh, he'll live. He can cry about it to Sugiura. So he does. Anyway, I couldn't help but notice Skenda Law bending your ear earlier. Anything important? Right. I haven't filled you in yet, have I? So a policeman arrested for sexual battery might have actually been involved in a murder? Fascinating, if not perplexing. Yeah, and its roots could very well be Serio High School, where a student was driven to suicide four years ago. In fact, the motive for this murder may even be revenge. Tsukumo, could you find any mention of that suicide online for me? Already done, I'm afraid. Once the chairman asked us to take his case, I looked into everything on the school I could find. If memory serves, he was a third-year student who hung himself at home. The name of the deceased, Toshiro Ehara. Yeah, that's him. So, while I did find some murmurings about it online, nothing really substantial ever surfaced. He didn't leave a suicide note or a will, and investigators never found anything salient. So I was right before. His father, however, suspected there may have been a bully and promptly took Serio to court. But without enough evidence to back it up, the system more or less spit him out. Even so, the lawsuit dragged on until this year. But that level of news hardly makes a ripple online. Yeah, I doubt it would. And that's all the intel I've dug up regarding the case. Hmm? <laughs> What's that sound? I'm testing a system I've been tinkering with. Thought I'd fixed this bug already. A system for what? Well, it predicts the occurrence of crimes. It predicts crime? No way. <laughs> Perhaps that was a bit of hyperbole. But it does come pretty close. Essentially, this system is designed to monitor and detect danger zones within a specific area. The city itself, to be exact. That still sounds pretty amazing. If you say so. I basically cobbled it together out of pre-existing tech. Yagamishi, do you remember when I used my chatter search program for you not too long ago? Oh yeah, that was a real trip. You pretty much hacked chatter to see an entire social network at a glance. Yep, and this system I've developed is a souped up version of that. Though there are substantial differences, the principle is still... Uh, how about you just try it out? We'll start with this little window. It displays all relevant chatter posts after filtering the fluff. And these posts are all pinpointed on this map of Ijincho? Right. It maps out where in Ijincho each specific post was made. So my AI constantly combs through chatter's database as it updates in real time. Then it extracts only the trouble-related chatter for display on the map. So it actively seeks out trouble? It's wild that you can program around such a vague concept. Well, in its current iteration, the AI isn't exactly genius material yet, so it still pings some false positives. There's something else, Tsukumo. What are you going to use it for? I'd like to use it for promotional purposes. Like advertising? Yeah. Since we're still relatively new in town, we don't have the kind of rep that brings in regular business. Oh, uh, okay. And that is where my buzz researcher comes into play. Buzz researcher? Consider the glut of trends and terms strewn across social media. These buzzwords are sometimes clues to trouble beneath the surface. So, when the system picks up one of these words and we rush over to save the day, the hope is our reputation will flourish as a result. Damn, that's some pretty intense marketing you've got going. Well, we probably won't be paid for impromptu cases, so this is sort of an upfront investment. But directly intervening before a situation gets out of hand will build us the brand we want. Uh, at least in theory. I'm not sure how it'll all pan out yet. Well, I think you've got something there, Tsukumo. Mind if I give it a shot? I thought you'd never ask. 
though the system's got a long way to go by my standards. But with you as a tester, I know I'll get strong enough feedback to have this baby running in top form. <laughs> so you wanted me as your guinea pig all along. <laughs> you sure cracked that case quick. Anywho, let me get this app booted up on your phone. May I do the honors? Go right ahead. And that should do it. Here you are. Okay, let's see here. Um, this is just a big mess. How am I supposed to know where to go? Hmm, this is indeed too much noise. In fact, this is entropy in motion. This won't do at all. To solve this, we narrow down the keywords. In other words, simplify our search? Yeah, by manually filtering keywords, we can decrease false positives, thereby locating the right spot more accurately. Well, how do we do that? Does the AI do it for us? No, not entirely. What the AI does is pick up on any keywords it deems important. Emphasis here on the word any. Meaning it'll turn out duds every now and again. Yeah, that's still pretty busy. And therein lies the predicament. To narrow these results down any further, we must depend on instincts, experience, and even inspiration. So you're saying human intuition? <laughs> Precisely. Even in this day and age, human intuition will trump AI every time. That is, until we all become cyborg. But that's getting ahead of myself. As it stands, Yagamishi, you've got the best intuition out of all of us. Well, let's just start with a post that smells like trouble. How about this one? I can smell the trouble brewing already. Oh, interesting. And let's filter our results around that specific term. And there you have it. See, there's a concentration of suspicious keyword usage on this street here. As to what sort of trouble is brewing, you'll have to rely on your good old-fashioned eyeballs. Shady activity isn't always the easiest to spot, so maybe think of it as a sort of treasure hunt. A treasure hunt for trouble, huh? Does sound right up my alley. <laughs> Doesn't it? I can already picture you out there, helping people in need until it all pays off. What could await you at the end of the trail? My heart rate is already spiking. I'm just glad to have a helpful app for once. Hey, you know what? That reminds me. I also have a gadget here you may find useful. Can't always be glued to your phone, right? What is this? It's a high-end sound collector. It boosts the volume of mid-distance sounds, making them easier to hear from farther away. A sound collector, huh? I could use this to pick up cries for help, or even eavesdrop all over town. That's the idea. With enhanced hearing and geolocation capabilities, you'll be a trouble terminator. <laughs> Just like I've always wanted. Now, I do have some other gadgets in the works, but I'm still fine-tuning their UI. I'll show you soon enough. Looking forward to that.
guys don't say much, do you? After this is over, you better start talking. Time to tell me what you know! Keep going. Yo! Need a hand with these guys? Huh? Good job holding them back on your own. Dude! You're not the only hero here. Uh, but... I mean, where did you even come from? I was watching from inside, man. Okay. You shouldn't get involved. Relax, fella. Allow me to show you how it's hey, done. Hey! Hold on! Listen up! I'm just gonna warn you, I'm a better fighter than this guy. Huh? <sighs> Fuck. Yeah, you're welcome. Right. Thanks for making them slink into the night before I could even ask who they were. Huh? Later. Um... Can I help you? I came here to meet someone. I'll just check upstairs real quick. Sensei. Are you okay? Did someone get here before me? I'm sorry. There's nothing I can say. I can't tell you anything you don't already know. Uh, what happened up here? Did someone come to intimidate you? Someone who might be involved? I couldn't make out who the woman was. She had sunglasses on. But what did she say to you? That I need to stay away from this. The whole Mikoshiba kun case. And then she said that you need to do the same. Me too? Yes. And what if I were to refuse? If you said no... Then she told me I should give you this picture. Huh? This is Mikoshiba. I'm so sorry, but I... I'm leaving. Wait! I get it. At least let me walk you home. Just stop! I don't want anything to do with this! If you come back to the school, I'd appreciate it if you would stop talking to me. There's nothing I can do to help you anymore. Suspicious. Suspicious. Hmm. Hey. Still so many unanswered questions.
That would be the white mask of the Yokohama Liomon. These guys would break your knees for the right price. So they're just a bunch of thugs for hire? Pretty much. Well, anything else I can do for you? I've earned something of a reputation here in this town. But you've got a face I haven't seen anywhere before. Why are these goons picking a fight with you? Got any ideas? Mm, I've got a hunch. But I'm gonna keep it to myself. A tight wad, huh? Didn't I just bail your ass out? A handyman? It's Kuana. You got trouble here, I'm the one you call. I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. I can handle shit the cops won't deal with either. <laughs> Exactly a service I'm in need of at the moment. Crossing that line is tough, and I prefer to do it myself. Oh, really? And what line of work would that be? I'm a private detective in Comro, Joe. What is it now? Some competition just showed up on my turf and made a scene, man. How would you feel if the situation was reversed? You wouldn't tolerate any disrespect, would you? So state your name, and then you say, Sorry, Kuwana, I made a bit of a ruckus here. Exactly how high up the food chain is a handyman in this town? I'm just trying to teach you some manners. People like you teach manners around here? You can't even exchange cards right. I see you know how to block a kick. So let's move on to the next part. Don't let me down now. Better than I was expecting. Uh, right back at you. Give yourself a pat on the back. Hey, you want to tone it down, or you want another lesson? I'm listening. You don't know when to give up. Time's up, both of you. The cops are almost here. Sugira-kun? You know each other? After we get out of here. Come on, let's use the back way. Seriously? How do a couple of grown-ass men end up bickering like that? I was just finishing what he started. Yeah. And you can thank Sugihira-kun here that you're still standing. How do you even know this guy? Uh... Kawana-san's our senpai here in Ijincho. He's the local handyman. He's got tons of connections both above and below ground. So... Definitely a higher tier of service than us. <laughs> I 
you been working together? No, but we did pay our respects before we opened our office. Bowed our heads, asked for his blessing, all that. Unlike someone, Sugira-kun knows his manners. Settle down. So talk. who were those idiots back there? Kuwana-san says they're a gang. The Yokohama Liumang. Specifically, Liumang assassins, called the White Masks. They were surprisingly inept back there, though. Nah, they just didn't know who they crossed. Hold up. Assassins? Why would someone put a hit out on Yagni-san? Maybe they were just out to scare you. I mean, I doubt even the Liumang would take someone out in public. They don't like crowds. Whatever the case, can you find out who hired them? I prefer to know who wants me dead. No can do. Even they don't know their clients. They get all their gigs piped in from the dark web. Good news is, you can hire them yourself, too. Want me to hit them up for you? No thanks. I'm good on the contract killing front. Man oh man. What kind of shit did you step in? If you're gonna make a mess in this town, I want in. Some things are better left to the locals. Especially when it starts turning gray. Fine by me. What is? Having someone around who knows the ins and outs of a gene show, man. Besides, don't you owe him for saving your ass from the white masks? He didn't save my ass. Pull the stick out, buddy. I can tell he's cool. Yo, wanna grab a drink? On me. <laughs> Now here's a kindred spirit. You're on, but I'm getting round two. <laughs> See? I knew you were half bad. Wait, you don't mean now, do you? You coming with, Tuck? Nah, not tonight. I'm heading back to the agency. Got a few things to sort out. Your loss, as they say, always take what comes, never chase what leaves. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Except, maybe a little more fancy. <laughs> it's like we're already old friends. to imagine. And you're saying Sawa-sensei was given this picture? Right. And it must have really shaken her up. She wouldn't even stick around to have a chat. Some mysterious woman handed her the photo. She's gotta be linked to Hiro Mikoshiba's murder in one way or another. If I had to guess, she's working with or for Ehara. But I couldn't tell you how they're connected. It might even be that she's the one who hired the Yokohama Liomong to attack you at that restaurant. If they're telling you to drop the Mikoshiba case, they're connected too. <laughs> a threat like that might have worked on a run-of-the-mill detective in over his head. But how do you think you even got on their radar at all, Yagamishi? Mikoshiba's case is so big they needed hired muscle to stop you? If I'm that much of a thorn in their side, the police investigation is worse. Yeah, that's true. Even if they stop you in your tracks, Kanagawa police would just pick up the trail right where you left off. I have to figure. I'm not the one they were really there to threaten into staying silent. It was Sawa-sensei. Four years ago, when Toshiro Ihara killed himself, apparently, she thought Mikoshiba was the one bullying him. I set up that meeting with her so she could tell me more about what really happened at the time. But as of now, someone's pretty bent on making sure she doesn't reveal that. That'd be my guess. Well, if that's the case, I'm afraid their threats were actually pretty effective. Sawa-sensei's lips are sealed now. There's not much we can really do about it. Don't worry. I'm not near done yet. Besides, they've already made one big mistake. Yeah? They hired a gang thinking they could scare a detective off the scent. No way in hell they're expecting me to double down even harder on it. <laughs> You're totally right. That was a rather massive oversight on their part. That night, 
The news broke on every channel and across the internet that the corpse found in Ijincho had been identified. Every student, teacher, and faculty member at Serio High School would know how Hiro Mikashiba died. The details were heartbreaking, and a lot of lives were about to be turned upside down. The alleged bully, Hiro Mikashiba, turns up dead. There is no mistaking the motive in his murder. As Yagami looks into the heart of the matter, a suicide four years prior, he is met with brutal backlash from the underworld. Why does Yagami face resistance at every turn? As night falls over Ichincho, the answer slips further into darkness. Yes, we have grief counselors on site. Hello. You've reached Serio yes. High School. Ah, uh, yes. Right. It's tragic news. Miko Shibakun was one of our student teachers here, and the school is coping with it as best we can. Of course! Yes, our parents and guardians have every right to be upset about this. Yes. Oh, yes. We're, now we're to the murder victim found in Izazaki Ijinsho. Yes. Authorities announced that they have identified the body as Hiro Mikoshiba, a student teacher at Seiryo High School. Autopsy reports indicate the cause of death was blood loss from a sharp object. Mikoshiba was oh. as a missing person two months So, ago what's the plan today, fellas? Honest, this hangover is kicking my ass. I'm gonna be kinda useless. Uh, maybe don't drink until sunrise. That's no good. Without you, Kaito-san, who's going to be the brains of this whole operation? <laughs> You'll have to manage, man. I figure I'll head back to Serio High today. I should check in on Sawa-sensei, see how she's holding up. She's got a lot on her shoulders now, huh? Pretty teacher like her doesn't deserve it. Right from the outset, Sawa-sensei flat-out denied that Mikoshiba ever bullied Toshiro Ahara. But then we learned she confronted him about his actions four years ago. Which means she was starting to suspect he was the bully. Then some chicken shade shows up, makes some threats, and suddenly teaches lips are sealed shut, huh? Whoever she was, she has to be involved with the murder. How else could she have Mikoshiba's picture from right before he died? It's almost like the killer was trying to hide any trace of bullying. And if so, that's pretty bizarre. Why is that? I mean, if Mikoshiba really was the bully, why bother covering that up? Wouldn't it work in their favor if word of that spread? That way the murder would be, I don't know, more justified? Yeah, I do see the logic there. Okay. But what gets me is, why would Sawa-sensei change her answer like that? Have you considered she may have been pressured to hide the truth? Perhaps by an overcautious superior? I wouldn't put it past Chairman Okuda to pull something like that. I doubt he has that kind of sway over her, though. Sawa-sensei doesn't exactly mince words with him. Guess we'll have to ask her directly if we really want to know. Yeah, but didn't she make it pretty clear you need to keep your distance? What kind of a detective would I be if I gave up because of that? <laughs> Point taken. Well, is there anything I can do to help? Oh, sure is. Help me kick this damn hangover. Say what? Might as well hang back, Sugira. Only I can get in and out of the school without raising a red flag right now. Excuse me, Iyagami-san? Huh? Kota-san, what's up? Did a teacher call you over? Actually, I wanted to talk to you. Okay. 
I saw it on the news earlier. Mikoshiba sensei was killed, but you already knew that, didn't you? Yeah. <sighs> I figured you knew something. Yes, that's why you've been asking about him. You should have told us, man. I couldn't. I knew how hard you guys would have taken it. <sighs> you know who did it? I mean a lot for us to know. Seeing how he looked after us and all. We're still in the dark about that, mostly. Unless you guys have any leads. All we have to go on is he was probably killed soon after he stopped going to class. So... He really was murdered. He said on TV it took them two months to find the body. Could that mean it happened on the day he went missing? A good theory, Matsun, but you're starting to sound like one of those mystery club geeks. Oh, what did Sawa-sensei tell you? She give you anything solid? Nah, we didn't really get into it yesterday. Way too many, uh, other things came up. Damn. It's just... It's hard hearing all this, man. Will you at least keep us posted if you find out anything? <laughs> no promises, I'm afraid. But hey, I'm glad you guys are warming up to me. I'm Matsui, by the way. That's more like it. Could you keep me in the loop, too? I didn't like Mikoshiba-sensei much, but I never imagined this. Now I'm kinda... conflicted about the whole thing. I get that. Anyway, I should get going. Hey, Sawa-sensei? Look, I know I can't keep you off campus. I don't have that kind of authority. But would you please stop bothering me? Can you at least tell me what happened yesterday? Enough! How many times must I repeat myself? Hey, Tsukumo? It's me. You think you could pin down where Mikoshiba's body was discovered? Of course. In fact, I can do that pretty quickly. Why? Did you want to go there now? That's the idea. Okay, but do note that it's been a few days since they found him. The police may have already scooped up the evidence. Yeah, but I want to check it out anyway. Then I can decide if it was a waste of time. <laughs> In other words, you've got a detective's intuition? What a superpower to have. Okay, here we go. They found Mikoshiba's body in an abandoned building near Sakura River. It's near a small park. On the second floor of the building, specifically. The first floor is just a bunch of empty boutiques. You're the man, Tsukumo. Thanks. here? Coming through. Now where exactly was the body? There's got to be some clues that'll give me that. Huh? Are these burn marks? Thank you. 
suspicious. Hmm? What the? Hey. State your name and purpose. Uh, well... Get some backup over here. Hey, now wait a second. Can we maybe talk this out? Put your hands up and turn around. Who are you and what were you up to? Takayuki Yagami. The Yagami Detective Agency. Yeah, in Kamurocho. Weren't you the guy at Serio yesterday? I could have sworn I saw your face there. Huh? Maybe? The name's Watanabe. Kanagawa PD Division 1. Charm, I'm sure. This fella here is Sakurai. Sub. So, you think barging into a crime scene was a real bright idea? What? I thought you guys were done here. I figured I could take a look around. Uh-huh. What? You wouldn't happen to be working with Genda Law, would you? Huh? You hear on Shirosaki sensei's business? Saori Shirosaki, right? The grouchy one. Okay, how'd you know? Well, it started when Miko Shiba's body turned up. Once our investigation kicked off, we found out about that pervert cop in Tokyo. It seems he knew where the body would be. But when we went to go see him, HQ pumped the brakes. They said no interviews on this one. Much to our amusement, we ended up being directed to Shirosaki, the perv's lawyer. So being that Genda Law Office is in Kamrocho, and you're a Kamrocho detective working your case. That means either the two of you are connected, <laughs> or I'm really losing my touch. Well, you've certainly got my number. Now that you know, how about taking these cuffs off? <laughs> Smooth, but the jury's still out on you, pal. First, you got any thoughts on all that? On anything specific? The part about HQ locking us out of interviewing a horror smart guy. Here we are with a material witness who, it turns out, knew about a corpse rotting away for two months. And those Tokyo chuckleheads just shut us out. Balls even for those tight asses. Ahara was Tokyo PD, so wouldn't they want to protect him? They probably want it handled discreetly. Nah, <sighs> if only it were that simple. This isn't about protection. They get burnt real bad if they tried to bury this shit under the rug. Besides, then there was this cop a nasty creep. He's got ties to a fucking murder. When other prefecture blows the lid on that, the top brass may as well kiss their jobs goodbye. Heads would roll. They've got to wash the shit stains off their laundry to keep their asses clean. Yeah, I could see how that makes sense. Anyway, so HQ told us their boys would look into Ahara. What we had to do was hand them our notes on the murder. Can you believe that crap? Like hell we're gonna bend over for them. But look where that's got us. Now nobody's interrogated Ahara. Are Kanagawa and Tokyo PD really fighting over who gets the credit? Don't tell me they're that petty. <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. While the higher-ups play intel hoarding games, Ahara's just sitting pretty. Shit. The cop's supposed to be chasing down the perps. 
Instead, here I am with my hands tied, bitching to a P.I. So I'm your therapist now. I was going to take you down to the station with the squeeze on you. But if you're a half-decent detective, maybe we can collaborate. Oh, yeah? I mean, you came all the way from Camarocha to sniff around here, right? I highly doubt you found much. But tell me something I don't know, and maybe the cuffs will fall off. You proposing a deal? Depends on if what you've got is worth making one. Okay, how about this? What the hell? Hiro Mikoshima? Was this taken here? Right before he died? Where did you get this? What kind of shit you trying to pull? I could tell you better with the cuffs off. You're craftier than I thought. Fine, let him loose. All right, let me get this straight. Right before you met up with this Serio High teacher, a strange woman showed up with this photo. Yeah, I couldn't get a good look at her. But it seems whatever threat she made worked. Sawa-sensei wouldn't say a thing after that. Sawa's the one who supervised Miko Shiba for his student teaching program. I know that. So, this woman you're talking about must have had it in with the culprits. You know they were working in a group. That's quite a revelation. What makes you so sure about that? Sakurai, show him the photo of the body. And spare me the protocol lecture. I'm sick of this going nowhere. If Hotshot here is gonna look into Ahara for us, we may as well take advantage of it. You're the boss, Nabe-san. Miko Shiba was last seen alive two months ago, October 7th, 6.30 a.m. He was talking to his mother as he exited their house back in the city. Since there were no other sightings of him, it's likely he was abducted a short ways from his home. This had to be done by vehicle, as common sense would tell us. So there must have been at least two suspects, a driver and a handler. If it were me, I'd have put three on the job. So that's why you figured it was a group effort. Sounds logical to me. Mm-hmm. Now, according to the autopsy report, they found food in the poor guy's stomach. Based on how digested it was, we can assume he was killed at least an hour after breakfast, putting it around 7.30. And not long after, he was brought here. His throat was slit with a knife. You get all that hot shot? What was our friend Ahara doing at that time? The old perv was walking through Ikebukuro's ticket gates around 7.43 a.m. This was stated in court and corroborated by multiple security tapes. But if that's true, he couldn't possibly have killed Mikoshiba. It's 30 kilometers between here and Ikebukuro. Yeah, that's the meat of his alibi. Yet somehow, he knew Mikoshiba's body would be discovered two months after his arrest, despite being in custody the whole time. So there's no doubt he's connected to the killers. If we just put the screws to him, he'd squeal. Damn it, HQ! Why the hell are we out here working the site if it's already been picked clean? All right, Nabe-san. Deep breaths. Yeah, yeah. But do you see why we've got to get someone in to talk to Ahara? Hell, beg Shirosaki-sensei for a visit if you have to. HQ can't say squat about his attorney visiting. What you said raises some questions of my own, about the crime scene and the body. Oh yeah? Ask away then. Doesn't this place have a manager? I'm sure it wasn't always like this. There is a property owner. He's been around Ijinsho forever, but the 
building's been deserted for two years. Apparently, there was a padlock to keep the homeless out, but it was long gone by the time they found the body. Broken by the killers, most likely. What was the victim's cause of death? The news called it a massive hemorrhage. Yup. They slit his throat and let him bleed to death. After tying him to a chair, the killer stood behind him. And lifting his chin with his left hand, his right hand slid the knife. Sounds like you guys have that bit on lockdown, huh? It's one of the few things we're sure of. How narrow is the window for Mikoshiba's estimated time of death? Based on how digested his breakfast was, he was killed somewhere between 7.30 and noon on the morning of October 7th. Pretty impressed you can narrow it down like that with a two-month-old corpse. Yeah, well, the window gets much bigger if we consider the possibility that the killers forced Mikoshiba to eat. At any point after the kidnapping, they could have made him eat a typical Mikoshiba family breakfast. It's possible. All they had to do was make him say what he usually eats. Good. We're on the same page. Now, if we take into account the decomposition of the body, Mikoshiba's estimated time of death actually ranges from 7.30 a.m. on October 7th all the way to the end of that month. So about three weeks. Three weeks? That's a massive gap. Can't we narrow it down further? The body's just too decomposed to do that. But expand the time frame all you want. Ehara was in custody through the whole thing. So he couldn't have done the deed. Right. He spent two months behind bars. Hate to think a different crime got him such a strong alibi. In any case, someone else killed Mikoshiba. If we could just get in the same room as him, we'd know who that is. I noticed the burn marks on the floor in the shape of an arrow. What's with that? Somebody lit flares here ones that shoot red smoke. It was only a matter of time before the fire department got called and they're the ones who stumbled on the body. Pretty obvious the culprit sent up a smoke signal to make sure the body got found. They probably had the timing all worked out with Ahara so he could predict the body's discovery from maximum impact. And that's exactly what he did, just as the judge handed down the sentence. What would be the point of that, though? <laughs> For all I know, he just wanted to blow everyone's minds. What shape was the body in when it was found? Full of maggots and decomposing bad. His hands were zip-tied behind the chair, securing him in place. The cause of death was the throat wound, but before that, they really worked him over. Rough way for the guy to go. Damn. They even broke all his fingers both hands. That sounds painful. Fucked up, right? I'm guessing a professional did this. Could be Yakuza, could be Mafia. Take your pick. We've got some guys checking that angle out too, just to make sure there's no stone left unturned. Has the murder weapon been found? No. There were no weapons at the scene real shame. Might be some decisive evidence. So when you said it was a knife, was that a guess based on analyzing the wound? I wouldn't call it a guess. The coroner outright stated that the weapon was a sharp knife-like instrument. I think I'm starting to get the picture here. That should be it for questions. Tell me, you detectives out in Camarocho always this hands-on? Sorry, what? I'm saying you guys were quick. We had barely set foot in Serio High, and you already had the run of the place. Hell, you even closed in on that Sawa Sensei and got a meeting with her. I was just lucky to have been there on another case. Is that right? What? What's wrong? Somebody's spying on us with binoculars. No shit? Three men, thirties probably. The one with binoculars is wearing a black jacket. My number's on my car! Yagami! 
Damn, hot shot. You're quick on your feet. So let's hear why this fool had eyes on us. He claims he just wanted to see the scene for himself. It's true. Ask the other two guys with me. They'll be here any minute. So you were here gawking, is that it? <laughs> Better than busted in like you own the place. I thought that was water under the bridge. So, who are you? Why'd you run? I ran because I saw a cop jump out a window and charge at me. Were you saying you'd stick around if you saw that? <laughs> he thinks you're a cop. Should we get you a badge and a hat? I'd be honored. Do you have any ID on you? Uh, will my license work? Okay, son. Age 30. What do you do for work? Oh, I'm just a professional pencil pusher. Biotech. Planning and management. Are your other two pals biologists too? No, uh, one's an investor and the other's a consultant. We all went to high school together. It says here you have a Tokyo address. What brings you to Yokohama? Oh, well, I'm organizing a class reunion uh, in Chinatown. So I came to scope out the location in advance. This ain't the way to Chinatown, pal. Oh, uh, we thought since we came all the way to Yokohama, we might as well peek at the crime scene. <laughs> Pretty morbid idea, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose. What high school did you all attend? Uh, Kurakawa Academy. A private school in Tokyo. Hey! Over here! We'll need to verify your buddy's identification as well. I suggest you all cooperate. Nabi-san! All right, you jokers are free to go. Appreciate you being so civil. Guess that settles it. We're just dumbass rubberneckers. <laughs> Tough break, huh? Draw you in through chasing them down. I don't mind. I'm out to always swing for the fences. <laughs> yeah, well, your strikeout was pretty amusing. The guy who goes down swinging is all right in my book. Now that that's settled, give my regards to Shirosaki-sensei. Hope you get some dirt on Ehara soon. Oh, I was just about to call you. I was gonna say I've got some leads on the murder. By the way, you wouldn't happen to know a Detective Watanabe, would you? From Kanagawa PD? Oh, yes. He came asking me about the harassment case. Apparently he couldn't interview Ahara, so he got us instead. Wanna know why that is? Apparently Tokyo PD suspects Ahara might be linked to the murder in some way. And since they don't want Kanagawa stealing the show, they're blocking their investigators out. That does make sense. Not in a bureaucratic way. By the way, when's your next appointment with Ahara? As soon as we're ready, honestly. Did you want to come along? Yeah, I was just about to ask that. But I'd like to do a bit more research beforehand. I want to know exactly how Ahara's crime played out. Funny you should say that. Hoshino-kun just told me he's going to re-inspect the crime scene tomorrow. He said it'd be best to plot Ehara's movement from Ikebukuro all the way to Shinjuku, where he was caught. No kidding. Then I ought to go with. If that's the case, hold on one sec. Okay. Yagami-san? It's me, Hoshino. I'm stoked to hear you'll be helping me out tomorrow. <laughs> I'm stoked to be there. Oh, and could you bring the statements from Ehara's arrest with you? 
It'd be a huge help if you could walk me through what happened on site. You got it. We'll be starting from Ikebukuro Station, so just meet me there tomorrow. Will do. See you then. Okay, see that sign right there? Ehara was leaning on that before the incident. Yep, just like that. He was standing around, searching for a victim. Ehara's the man in the cap and sunglasses. So, Ehara was lingering at the platform a while, huh? Yeah, he walked past the ticket gate at 7.43 a.m. This was confirmed by the security tapes as well as when he swiped his transit card. After that, he wandered the platform an entire hour ogling women. He spent that long choosing a target? Yeah. Sick, isn't it? Then the security camera that caught him would be... that one? That's right. Anyhow, at 9.06 a.m., Ehara finally honed in on his would-be victim. Then he boarded her train, which was departing for Shinjuku. She's the one in the pink cardigan and white skirt? Yeah, Yui Mamiya, an office worker and mother of a six-year-old boy. The two of them show up on the train's interior cam as well. According to the victim's statement, Ehara began by rubbing her posterior with the back of his hand. But it didn't stop there. After that, he put his hand up her skirt. Pretty sickening. I'm assuming he targeted someone shy, thinking she wouldn't resist. Makes me angry just thinking about it. The victim stated she was too scared to call for help, meaning she endured this for six minutes until the train reached its stop in Shinjuku. Can you send what you just showed me to my phone? Sure. Now let's head to Shinjuku Station. Then we can watch as the jerk gets busted. Even if we did defend him in court, an asshole's still an asshole. Looks like we're getting close to Shinjuku. The train's pretty light right now, but it was packed during the crime, right? Oh yeah, the car occupancy at that time of day can easily reach 180%. And Ahara should have been standing roughly where I am. Hmm. Hey. Ehara and Mamiya-san both exited the train and got onto the platform here. But right before that, Mamiya-san suddenly grabbed Ehara's wrist and yanked his hand out from under her skirt. That's when she got a good look at her assailant. So without a doubt, she saw it was him. Yes, and there were also traces of her garments on his hand during evidence analysis. Anyway, after being grabbed, Ehara wrenched himself free and took off at a sprint. See, here he gets off the train and bolts across the platform. And Mamiya-san chases after him, asking people around her for help. Ah, uh, this is what they kept looping on TV. Yeah. And honestly, with all this evidentiary footage, defending him in court was a lost cause. Was there any security footage that wasn't aired on TV? Sure, take a look around you. There's more than just one camera pointed at us. They're practically everywhere. Oh, yeah. As for what I was saying earlier, Ihara was finally tackled right in front of those stairs. Oh, right. I have a diagram of the platform to show you. So, Ehara gets off the train here, and then gets apprehended here. How far apart is that? Roughly a hundred meters. Both he and the victim were weaving their way through the crowd. The whole scene was very chaotic. Even after Ehara was caught, the train was stalled 20 minutes until the area was deemed safe. Hey, you think we could get the positions of all these cameras and where they're pointing penciled in? Good idea. 
Let's check each camera's position as we walk over to where Ahara was detained. That's where he got tackled, so if you could let me know whenever you see a camera. I can mock it up on our diagram here. Okay, looks like we got all the cameras. Our diagram is now complete. Now we'll pencil in the camera locations and what direction... Suspicious. So this was the general situation when Ahara committed his crime. What do you think, Yagami-san? Anything of note? Do you think Ahara and Mamiya-san were riding the train pretty frequently? Oh yeah, Mamiya-san commuted by train. She was here every weekday. Same goes for Ahara, actually, but he was off that day. Supposedly, he was going to see his wife, even though they're separated. Hmm. Did he ever say why he wandered around the platform for an hour? He said the thought of his wife had him flustered and he couldn't force himself to board the train. He always had an excuse ready for anything you asked him, including the harassment charges. He pled not guilty, but the evidence said otherwise. There wasn't a single argument we could make in court to establish reasonable doubt. Safe to say he did it, but on the same day, he knew his son's bully would be murdered in Ijincho. <sighs> Pretty clear it wasn't a spontaneous need to grab some ass. I agree. It's almost like all the commotion around the harassment might have been planned out. Maybe everything was, even down to getting captured. Yeah. You really played everyone by turning harassment into an alibi for murder. No matter how much evidence points to him as a killer, you can deny it with complete immunity. This is getting crazier by the minute. At the very least, he had something to do with it. Some connection. But I can't imagine he'll talk. Whatever his plan is, it's pretty clear Ahara is committed. To what? Getting revenge for his son? I think so. Who do you think his accomplices could be? Ahara is a veteran cop. Think maybe he knows how to hire an actual assassin? If so, he could have just paid for his revenge, right? Sure, but assassins cost an arm and a leg. He wasn't rich before all this, was he? No, he barely scraped up enough to cover his lawsuit against the school. Thought so. Hey, it's Shiosaki. What's up, Sari-san? I'm scheduling an interview with Ahara tomorrow at the Tokyo Detention Center. We'll take a taxi from Genda's if that all works for you. Sounds good, but I need to head back to Ijin Show for now. Something you forgot to do? Yeah, it involves Ahara's motive, which would be without a doubt his son's suicide. So I want to confirm if Mikoshiba really bullied the kid, and the best person to ask happens to be down in Ijin Show. All right, then I'll let you get to it. Cool. Then I'll see you tomorrow. Got a minute? No, not for you. I really have nothing more to say. What if I told you it's looking more and more likely Ihara-san had a hand in Mikoshiba's death? Well, it doesn't concern me. Ihara-san believes Mikoshiba tormented Toshiro-kun so badly that he took his own life. 
But neither the third-party investigation nor the courts were on his side. So what's the truth here? You know, don't you? <sighs> what really happened between Mikoshiba and Toshiro-kun? Why won't you tell me the truth? Why do you keep asking? I said I don't know! I'm going to the detention center tomorrow to get some answers out of Ahara-san. <sighs> what? I saw where Mikoshiba was murdered. He endured no shortage of cruelty before he died. They tortured him, you know. They broke all his fingers before they slid his throat. No. And somehow Ehara-san knew Mikoshiba would be killed on the day he got caught for groping. It's like he did it to prove he had nothing to do with the murder. But maybe that wasn't his real objective at all. Huh? I think he wanted to signal that he'd finally avenged his son. The body belongs to a guy named Hiro Mikoshiba. Four years ago, this man took my son from me by driving him to commit suicide. If I'm gonna face him tomorrow, I can't go in without some ammunition. So, four years ago, did Mikoshiba bully Toshiro-kun or not? That's all I want to know. My answer won't change. There's no evidence Mikoshiba-kun did anything wrong. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Take a look at this. That's... Toshiro Ehara, your student. Imagine that he's listening to what you're saying now. If you can look at him and say Mikoshiba played no part in his death, I'll leave you alone. In fact, you'll never hear a word from me again. So which is it? Four years ago, not long after I'd transferred here to teach English, that's when it started. I was trying my best to get acclimated and I was finally on a first-name basis with everyone. One day, after school, I was out on the roof taking a break when Toshiro-kun suddenly ran by. I called out to him to ask what was wrong, but he shushed me and kept running. I saw he had a bloody nose. Moments later, Mikoshiba-kun showed up. He was looking for him. I told him I hadn't seen him. Toshiro-kun's face told me everything I needed to know. So Mikoshiba was bullying him after all. Yes. Toshiro-kun told me this later on. Whenever he'd leave school with Mikoshiba-kun and his friends, they'd force him to hand over money. At first they'd try to pass it off as a joke. They said since he lowered the class average on tests, he ought to buy them all drinks as an apology. And Mikoshiba-kun... He was having too much fun with it to stop. He started offering tutoring sessions to Toshiro-kun. Only so he and his crew could extract their tuition from him. They'd even break into his house while his mother was at work and take the money she left him for dinner. And if he couldn't pay, they'd beat him up at school or make him grovel in the bathroom. Didn't anybody see what was really happening? The teachers either saw nothing or turned a blind eye. Few students knew about it, though. Anyway, I ended up relaying everything Toshiro-kun had told me to those boys' homeroom teacher. Mind you, this teacher had tenure, title, and years of experience under his belt. Do you know what he told me? He said not to cause a commotion because those boys were about to graduate. Why does that not surprise me? To be honest, it was hard to paint such an outwardly model student in a negative light. There was also no hard evidence to support Toshiro-kun's story. But someone still should have stepped in to help. If only I'd understood that at the time. You tried. The only 
thing I tried was to keep an eye out for him, making sure he wasn't alone, things like that. But unfortunately, that wasn't good enough. On the first morning of the third trimester, Toshiro-kun tied a towel to his doorknob and hung himself in his room. And that's when you confronted Mikoshiba, right? You asked him point-blank if he'd bullied him. I did. Mikoshiba-kun pretended to know nothing. He was more careful, shaken even, from then on. In all honesty, when I heard a third-party committee was investigating, I was hoping the truth would come out. Students were asked to fill out an anonymous questionnaire, and many of them wrote down exactly what they saw. Hold on. Didn't the court end up declaring there was no substantial evidence of bullying? How could they have said that with those questionnaires on hand? First of all, the committee never interviewed anyone directly. Those questionnaires were the only proof of anything. And the teacher of those boys was the one who collected them. Each time he came across any mention of bullying, he'd toss that questionnaire out. Also, he wouldn't get blamed in the end for ignoring the warning signs. So then the committee was pointless. A few students did speak up about the bullying online, but their posts weren't much to go on. Toshiro-kun's parents were completely caught off guard. His mother worked through the day, and his father lived all the way in Tokyo. That made it that much easier for the teacher to cover up all the evidence of bullying. He made that statement without even consulting the principal or the chairman. So, right before Miko Shibakun graduated, the committee presented their findings. That there was no evidence of bullying. The conclusion you've heard over and over. What the hell? In Japan, 300 children commit suicide every year across all grades. Less than 3% are proven to be linked to bullying. Toshiro-kun's case ended up like that, too. But Ehara-san wasn't satisfied with those findings, so he sued Serio Hai, demanding compensation for Toshiro-kun's death. As the trial dragged on, I was eventually called to the witness stand. Of course, my intention was to let everything I knew out into the open. But before that could happen, that damn teacher came with the school's attorney to see how I would testify. They didn't want you making them look bad, huh? Of course not. That's when I first learned what he did with those incriminating questionnaires. They had no choice but to reveal everything to me, to try and sway me to their side. I guess they were just that desperate. After all, I was the only adult who Toshiro-kun confided in. I don't think he'd spoken to his parents about it once. So yes, that's why there was never any objective evidence of bullying. It wasn't like I had a mind to record our conversations. And I hadn't personally witnessed it either. The school attorney saw fit to remind me that the law says innocent until proven guilty. And if I couldn't produce tangible evidence, then I shouldn't be accusing Miko Shibakun. So it was witness tampering? That is, they coerced you into false testimony? <sighs> yes. <sighs> Must have been incredibly hard on you. What I should have done was told the truth regardless. But what else could I have really done for him? Some days I just don't know. As much as I've tried to convince myself I did everything I could for him, I can never fully believe it. So what happened to the teacher who covered all this up? He transferred to another school. Got to think he's still standing at a podium somewhere. <sighs> That's unfortunate. Even so, I don't have the right to place the blame solely on him. Maybe, but in that case, Mikoshiba's bullying of Toshiro, or those questionnaires getting discarded, 
Have you ever told anyone else? No. I've been silent. Yagami-san, you know what? Back when I was a student in high school, I witnessed bullying firsthand. There was this kid. My classmates pushed him too far. And one day, he just jumped off the roof. Off the roof? By some miracle, he survived the fall. And he's been in a coma for the last 13 years. Nobody knows if he'll ever wake up. His name is Mitsuru, and he may never open his eyes to the world again. His mom watches him, but she works full time. She's a higher up in the government. I'm sorry to hear it. The worst part is that his teacher knew. He even talked to the bullies about it. But all he said was, don't overdo it. But afterward, the public eviscerated him. He had to quit his teaching job. And yet, for poor Toshiro-kun, nobody was held responsible at all. And that includes me. But if anyone was going to take responsibility for that, Mikushiba should have been first in line. I'm sure Ohara-san must have thought the same thing. You know what I wanted to be as a kid? I was so innocent, I wanted to be a teacher. And after Mitsuro-kun's tragedy, I felt practically obligated. And still, I just let history repeat itself. <laughs> What is going on? Having a party? Hey, welcome back. Care for a drink, Yagami-san? Heads up. Now make yourself at home. Not that you haven't already. Who, me? Well, whatever do you mean? Kuan is fine. He just swung by to have a chat with you, man. Not that I mind hanging out over beers and shogi. Kaito's a gentleman and a scholar. I like your style. What do you want with me? Check it out, Yagami-san. You're only here to get to the bottom of that Hiro Mikushiba kid's murder, right? That's gotta be the reason the Yokohama Liomang attacked you, isn't it? All I'm saying is that you've gotta cut me in, man. Thanks, but I've got enough help. So some hotshot detective strolls into town and tries to leave the local guy out in the cold? <laughs> no offense, but that's not gonna fly. You gonna play your turn? Just finish your game and go home already. When you benefit from someone who knows the scene, you know, I can get you anywhere in a gene show above or below ground. Aren't you expensive? I'll give you a first-time customer price. I'm not about to sit here and let some outsider swoop in and take all the credit alone. And that means I guess I'm gonna chill here until you give me the nod. It's Sukumo and Sukiura's place as far as I'm concerned. Not even my call to make. I welcome having more company. The more the merrier. That'll be the agency motto. I don't really care. Such a nice office. I'm gonna love it here. <laughs> uh, Yagamishi, guess what? The internet picked up on the Ahara link to Mikoshiba. The trending sentiment is that he killed him in an act of vengeance for his son. They've already figured that part out? See for yourself. Here, check it out. Son of a bitch, student teacher should burn in hell for bullying a kid all the way to suicide. Mikoshiba was a damn psychopath. Ehara is the vigilante groper. And that's not even the trolls. So the news is blowing up on the net, huh? In the internet terms, this is only the first spark that could ignite into a fire. Not even what I'd call viral. Then who's lighting the spark? The people responsible for Mikoshiba's murder? I'll have to go down a few more rabbit holes before I can make that call, I'm afraid. Gotcha. 
That said, some posts are kind of suspicious. This one here, for instance. Ehara totally called the location of the body at his trial. The fact that he did that never really even went public, as far as I can tell. It was kept off the record? When Ahara got arrested, the cop turned Groper story and his sexual battery charges were huge news. It was all the media could talk about. But by the time his trial rolled around, the news had already moved on. His guilty verdict barely made a blip. Fellas, I told you I wanted to be kept in the loop on this stuff. You saying Mikoshiba had more than one killer? And where are they now? You think these lunatics are still hanging around Ijincho? It's been over two months already, man. If they were here, they're probably long gone by now. Another peaceful day in the gene show, right? Check outside. It's the Leo Mon. The white mask again. Let's go, Chuck. I'll catch you later. <laughs> Not bad. You're not getting away this time! I... You won't get away! killing you tonight. Okay, but why else would you take off the mask? Because from this point forward, Eugene Cho is closed. You won't be coming back. I'm Tesso. For what it's worth, I'm an officer candidate of the Yokohama Liomong. I hear you took out some of my masked boys the other day. Oh, you mean those guys who thought they could sneak up on me in the afternoon? Maybe if you hadn't resisted at the time, you'd be in a lot less pain than you're about to be in the near future. Who's paying you to try to take me down? This is a job that came down from the top of the org. I don't know who hired us, and to be honest, I don't give a shit either. But... Ripping up a kick-ass detective like you sure sounds like a good time. None of you guys make a move! I want to see if the rumors are true, so I get first taste. Show me what you got. Turn it in. Ah! <laughs> 
late tonight, aren't we, Kaito-san? Yeah, my bad. Had to punch my way through a few guys. Hey, you gotta run for it. If you stick around, it's not gonna matter how many lives you've got. Yeah, but if I run now, who's gonna pay for Tsukumo's window then? Huh? Uh. For fuck's sake, I'll just pay for it. Now get out of there. <laughs> you got a deal. Yeah? You want something? Uh, what was it? Tesso? Just want to say, I'm impressed. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to take out all these guys, to be honest. Uh, thanks. But if you're feeling generous, how about you tell me who hired you? <laughs> Didn't I say this before? I got no interest in doing that. Can you do me a favor and turn down the job next time, maybe? Yeah, right. If the request comes through again, I'm taking it. Simplest solution for you is to get the hell out of town. Me and my big mouth. Just go already. Hey, not bad, man. A lot of young folks look up to Tesso, so gaining his respect is gonna have some perks. All I want to know is if the Viewmom are no longer a threat. <laughs> Wouldn't go that far. Tesso's not the only young hothead among them. But hey, at least they probably won't blindside you anymore, and that's a victory in itself. Guess that is a step forward, a baby one. Anyway, we should go check up on 99. Something tells me they're not in the clear just yet. Hmm? Huh? Sugiura! <laughs> Yagamishi! Oh, thank God you're back! Tsukumo! What happened? He's knocked out cold. Damn it. Masked men attacked us. I couldn't fight them. Masked men, you say? Were they any different from what the Liumang wear? Uh, I, I couldn't get a good look. Sukiyoshi, they stuck up on him with a bat and came after me next. They caught me. My pinky. They broke it? Hey, are you okay? I'll call an ambulance. There are these photos, and a message I was told to give to you, Yagamishi. They said to tell you, this is your final warning. They've been spying on me? It hurts. Shit. If they want me, then come after me. Talk. I think the Leomon were part of the plan, as bait. They probably only came to lure us away from the office. The worst part is it fucking worked! <sighs> this camera ought to show everyone coming in and out of the building. Look, there's me and Kaito chasing down the Leomang. But here's the hitch. There were seven of them. 
and they didn't have those trademark white masks. So clearly, they're not Leomong. <laughs> they must have got the white masks to lure us out, meaning they're the ones calling the shots here. Wouldn't surprise me if they were also Ahara's accomplices to murder. That'd be something. Though, it's hard to believe a single murder could involve so many people. Really? Why do you say that? More friends, more loose lips. One slip of the tongue can bring down an entire group. Taking a man's life would require absolute solidarity from every single member. What could be their connection? Could be their Ahara's buddies in blue. After hearing what happened to his kid, they couldn't help but feel for the guy. If it were me, yeah, I'd sympathize. But not enough to watch a man die. Or do the deed myself. Yeah, who throw their life away for that? Unless we're talking about the mob over here. That e sig's that good, huh? Considering the area's volatility, the Leomong are the best bet in the house. But if it's not them... Well, there is the Seiryu clan, but they have some decorum compared to these guys. And then the Komi Jewel, the Koreans, they would never get caught on camera. They're shy like that. Go figure. <laughs> Impressive list you've got up there, Mr. Handyman. Too bad they're all dead ends. Hey, if there's a crime in Kamurocho, would you know who did it off the top of your head? No. Uh, uh. This footage is the lead we've been waiting for. Now we're gonna hunt them down with Tsukumo and Sugiura. You get hit in the head or something? Find them and they'll mess your ass up. Will they? Don't you get it? They were planning to take you out, man. A Liumang letting you off is nothing short of a miracle. Or would you rather risk your neck over nothing? Where we come from, risking our necks the bare minimum. <laughs> you Ijinsho guys must not see much action. Yeah, well, any Ijinsho, a handyman's wages don't cover life and limb. I don't recall ever hiring you. Yeah, and if you asked me now, I'd say hell no. This shit's getting way too over my head. And yours. Sorry, Kaito-san, but I'm gonna have to pass on drinks for a while. Send my regards to the lads. Well, hey, never chase with leaves. Ugh, oh, the agony. I was in a cold sweat all of yesterday. At this rate, I'll be forced to type one-handed. If you do the math, my pinky is worth more than an average person's whole hand. We're talking about at least a 30% drop in efficiency. <sighs> it's been a while since I got it this bad. We might even throw up. So, leaving Kamurocho made you rusty, huh? Really, with that? If I could wish the pain away, I would, man. Hey, if you've got the energy to complain, You'll be just fine. I'm gonna make this up to you guys. I promise. Well, if you want to do that, we'll need to figure out who and where they are. There's a high possibility this group is directly behind Mikoshiba's murder. And of course, that would mean they know Ehara as well. How about swapping more info with the Kanagawa police? Let's save that for when we really need it. We're not the authorities here. So we need to play our cards close to our chest. I think that's a wise decision. Sauri sans on top of getting things set up with Ehara, right? In that case, I'll head back to Kamurocho. Take your time prepping. We can always regroup up there. Hold on a minute, Todd. What? I'm noticing a lot more punk scurrying around than normal. Something's up. Really? Huh. Maybe so. Hey, don't I know you two? 
detectives around here, ain't you? Yeah, so what? You ever seen this guy before? A few years ago, he was the manager at some girls' bar nearby. You really need all these meatheads just to find one dude? <laughs> Must be one slippery eel. Damn right he is. Now do you know him or not? Hmm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Out of curiosity, what's a guy doing running a girls' bar? I don't think he actually ran the floor or anything. All I care about is him up and vanishing out of nowhere. So he's a missing person? Since when? Five years ago. I mean, disappearing from Kamurocho isn't that uncommon. Five years? What do you really expect to find? Your guy have a name? And who gave the order to find him? You trying to be cute? We're the ones asking the questions here. Don't fuck with us. Who's fucking with who, asshole? You want to ask questions, you're gonna have to ask nice. Nice or not, information has a price. It's our bread and butter, so we don't give handouts. How about I butter your brains on the sidewalk? Straight to throwing punches, huh? Even the Yakuza treated people better than that. Ah, fuck off! What's up? That all you guys got? Kamurocho used to be tough. Look at these punks. <laughs> Gaito san. Huh? It's Akatsu. First name Daimu. You know him? Former Tojo clan guy, ex Yakuza. Yakuza? Well, if you say so. Yagami Detective Agency. Maybe I ought to just hire you guys for this. We're looking for a guy. You heard, didn't you? Miss Guy you're after. He was some kind of girls bar manager here in town. I take it this manhunt is your idea? No. Soma's taking point on this one. Came from one of his connections. There's gonna be a big pile of cash in it for whoever finds him. Practically all of Kamurocho's in on this race. And Soma is? He's the one in charge of the RK gang. Of course, he's former Tojo clan too. First name Kazuki. That's crazy. Did the whole Tojo clan join this thing? Kaito would know all about all the bullshit rules it takes to keep the Yakuza running. They'll take their cut from you and call it the honorable thing to do in the same damn breath. Right, Kaito? In this new age, wouldn't you be better off joining us? You guys are too small time to pull that shit on me. <laughs> you know what else, though? In the Yakuza, if your boys went down, it was on you to get revenge for them. I don't give two shits about that these days. I would say, if there's someone disrespecting you, you might as well go get the jump on him. I would walk right up and stick him in the gut. <laughs> you wouldn't even see it coming, detective. Yeah? So don't go disrespecting me. There won't be a warning next time. Okay. Akatsu, you said? Did he get very far in the Tojo clan? Nah. He may have had the potential, but he never got to make anything of it. The whole thing came crashing down before he got his time in the sun. Soma's the same way, actually. They both tried to climb up the Yakuza ranks, 
but then the families disbanded. And by the time that happened, all the pawns were cleared off the board. Hmm. <laughs> so, now they're ex-Yakuza in the wind. And along comes this gang without all the rules and systems they were dealing with. You end up with RK, a network of thugs. RK? What does the acronym stand for? <laughs> Who the hell knows? After the Yakuza, I guess they wanted to sound more Western. If they think they can replace the Tojo clan, those are pretty big shoes to fill. Yeah, but I wouldn't say they've been discriminating. Civilian punks who want quick cash are easy recruits. RK's happy to scoop them up. Next thing you know, you've got an asshole army. That's unfortunate, but speaking of the Tojo clan, have you talked to Higashi lately? Yeah. As far as ex-Tojo clan guys go, he's one of the good ones. The family left him in charge of that arcade, and now that they're gone, he's basically the owner. I heard he even gave some of the younger family guys jobs. If you get a chance, you ought to show up there every once in a while. Nah, Higashi. I am the last person in the world that guy wants to see. Oh, sorry, son. Yagami-san made it. Sorry for the wait. I ran into some typical nonsense. We good to go? I've been good to go for a while. Ehara is waiting, and so are the answers. First thing we'll want to try to get is how involved he was in Mikoshiba's murder. From the way it's been so far, I doubt he'll be eager to tell you. If he won't open up, we'll have to play the trump card. Yagami-san. Ehara won't know what hit him. I don't mind being the ace in the hole. Are you and your ego ready then, Yagami-san? Well, this ain't my department. Fill me in back at the office, okay? <laughs> I might even tidy the place up a bit if you're lucky. Lots of open bottles to polish off. I thought you'd lost already. So, what more could my lawyers want from me here? Well, normally I would say the same. However, a corpse turned up as you said it would. It turns out you have a pension for prophecy, Ahara-san. <laughs> prophecy, huh? Kinda dramatic. No Hoshino today? Did you fire the poor guy? Yagami is my name, sir. In a past life, I used to work with Genda and Saori-san. But today, I'm in Serio High School in a contract advisory role for one of their clubs. Serio High School? It's the same school Toshiro-kun went to four years ago. You'd know it. I happened to be out there working a separate case. But that was when Shirosake-sensei called, and so that's why I'm here. Well, well. Okay. Why are you here, then? That'd be obvious at this point, I think. As you know, Mikoshiba turned up as you said. His body was found in a warehouse. The question is, why did you know that well enough to proclaim it in court? Ha <laughs> You might say it was a miracle. I wished hard enough for it to come true, and suddenly it did. Care to tell us why you'd wish for a miracle like that? Do you really need me to explain why? Mikoshiba. You blame him for Toshiro-kun's death, don't you? I do. Even though when you took the school to court, no evidence turned up. A third-party investigation found no bullying occurred, didn't it? At school, Mikoshiba tortured my son. He would beat him up, and then he'd demand all his money. That damn kid was a star student with high grades. My son's own class wouldn't stand up to him. To avoid being beaten, Toshiro used to. He'd steal money from me or his mother to make sure he could pay Mikoshiba off. Ahara-san, you seem to know a lot about what happened to your son. Do you have any proof? Would I have lost if I did? That school can rot in hell for all I care. Speaking of, you know what I'm convicted for. It was being a pervert. I admit to everything. I groped a businesswoman's ass in plain sight on a full train. There's no way I'm fighting for an appeal. 
So as for my defense, I'm in no need of lawyers anymore. Ehara-san, <laughs> just a second. Why would I give you that? Yagami-san. Hiromi Kashiba died in a lot of pain. His final moments were truly horrific. The last thing he felt must have been fear. After slitting his throat, his body was left to rot. <sighs> Doesn't that sound great? Take a look at this. Oh, Mikoshiba. <laughs> Looks like he's seen better days. Where'd you get the photo? From a teacher at Serio High. But where she got it is the interesting part. A strange woman gave it to her and said to stay away from the Mikoshiba case. <sighs> you remember Sawa Sensei, yes? She transferred to Serio four years ago, not long before your son passed away. Yeah, not a face I'd soon forget. She told the whole court he was never bullied. True. She did say that. And it's not just her I detest. The administrators. The lawyers. It felt like choking the life right out of them. But if anyone needed to pay, it was Mikoshiba. He got what he deserved. Nothing short of insane that they were just gonna let him get a teaching credential. It all comes back to a flawed and broken system of laws that has no business calling itself justice. And it was you, wasn't it? You orchestrated every aspect of how Mikoshiba would die. But you didn't act alone. Who were the people behind it? How'd you convince them to kill a man? <laughs> That's a good one. You my friend, are way off. The way that interview went, Ahar is definitely guilty. But if we can't connect him to the murders, we're left with no leads to follow. Yeah. Kept that secret on lockdown, no matter what I asked. What could possibly link Ihara to those men? Damn it. And I was so close, too. To think they're still somewhere in Ijinjo. I need to find them before the trail goes cold. So you're heading back to Yokohama? Not tonight. Kaito's waiting for me in the office. I'll be in town for now. Okay. If anything changes, I'll contact one of you. Kaito-san, I'm back. Kaito-san? Oh, uh, hey, did you see that email from Tsukumo? Huh? Uh, it wasn't that long ago. It's something you gotta see, though. What is it? Something happened? It's the murder footage. Mikoshiba's murder ended up on the internet. It's going viral on all the social media sites. You gotta forgive me. I'll do anything you want. I didn't know he'd do it. I swear. Toshiro Kun was okay. I didn't think. I didn't know he'd kill himself! I really didn't know! I swear I'll try to make it up to him somehow! I'll spend the rest of my life making up for it! Stop it! What the hell? Stop it! Stop it!
Ehara has an alibi for this, doesn't he? They already found him guilty, and that's the whole reason he couldn't have killed Mikoshiba, right? But if that's the case, what the hell is this? One way or another, either this thing is staged, or his entire alibi was a massive cover-up. They can't both be true. But there's something I just can't shake. If you want my opinion on it, this looks real. I need to have another chat with Ahara. Damn it. I'm not gonna let him get away with this. A train groping and a murder seem to occur simultaneously. Yagami relentlessly pursues these cases, attempting to poke holes in each. After confronting Akihiro Ehara, the key figure in both crimes, he witnesses a harrowing video that provides more questions than answers. In it, a bound man pleads for his life, but his attacker, bound by vengeance, snuffs it out. So the murder footage is already making the rounds online. I don't think it's showing up on TV, though. Yeah, the net's a mess right now. It's all unsubstantiated rumors and unverified sources. Typical, really. An ex-cop going from by-the-book sex offender to vigilante avenger overnight is prime forum drama. Sentiment seems to be swinging in favor of Ehara, but there's plenty of folks on the fence about it, too. The reactions have been all over the board. Do we know if that video is authentic? I mean, CG has come a long way, right? Oh, or perhaps a deep fake. That is plausible. AI has reached a point where it can generate pretty convincing facsimiles. Someone even made a video that made it look like the US president was saying a bunch of crazy stuff. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Deep fakes are only getting more authentic looking. Can't guys like you tell if a video is fake or not, though? Aren't there any signs? Oh, there are several telltale signs of a video being doctored. So I ran every check I could think of on the murder footage. And wouldn't you know it, nothing came up. Most likely, we're looking at the real deal. Most likely? Well, no one can claim with absolute certainty that it wasn't altered in some way. Which means it's not substantial enough to prove Ihara's guilt. At least not in a court of law. Gotcha. Do you know when and where the footage was uploaded? It was posted sometime last night, but the source is too hard to pin down. The uploaders spread it across multiple servers overseas in a well-concerted effort to hide their tracks. Makes sense. But I'll bet it ultimately came from Mikoshiba's killers, no matter how real or fake it is. How do you figure? Think about it. No one could have staged that unless they knew the specifics of how Mikoshiba was killed. From how he was positioned to little things like the blood on the ground, every last detail was just as the detectives described it. That's a good point. Oh, all this browsing's really taken a toll on the old pinky. Looks like another visit to Ehara might clear things up. You should ask Shirasaki-sensei about it. Yeah, that was my thought too. Ah, uh, let me get one if that's the case. Why the hell would he upload a murder confession after the fact? Is he trying to get caught? Only Ehara could answer that one for you. I want to ask him that question myself. So, we're off to see Saori-san then? Oh, hold the door, please. Huh? Mafia. 
You're here? It's been too damn long, Mafia Chan. Yeah. By any chance, Yagami kun, are you working on a case for salary? A video got leaked. It depicted a man committing a murder. Are you here about the Ahara case too? Of course. The prosecutor's office is in total chaos right now. Especially the higher-ups. I'll bet. After all, they're the ones who pushed for Ahara's battery conviction. If that video is real, that would mean Ahara got them to hand him a slap on the wrist instead of a murder conviction. Yes. And it's not like the prosecution can say, Sorry, Your Honor, we'd like a do-over, after the fact. To make matters worse, everything leading up to the trial was broadcast all over the news. Changing our tune now would undermine public trust. That's for sure. So, for the time being, our department is trying to predict how the defense will approach the situation. Hence why they sent me here to check in on my good friend's salary. Totally no strings attached. <laughs> well, that clears up a lot. There you kids are. Figured you had to show up sometime. Mafia? You're caught up in this too? Yeah, she ran into us downstairs. I'm sure you can work out that I'm here to spy on you. But wouldn't you like to know what we're up to as well? Are you sure that's your only motive coming here? Sorry? Something like a professional excuse to see Yagami-san? <laughs> in your dreams? I had no idea Yagami-kun was involved until just now. All right. I'll accept that. For now. <laughs> Gotta say, I miss this little banter. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> Needless to say, our office is going through this footage with a fine-tooth comb. That said, they've already determined their stance. They've deemed it an unreliable source, and therefore useless as evidence. Basically, they want it to look like it was considered, and already thrown out. Huh? So, they're not gonna verify the video? Not even question Ahara about Mikoshiba? Nothing? Nope. Not after it was proven in court that Ahara committed sexual battery on October 7th. I mean, wouldn't you say a conviction has a certain finality to it? Besides, there's no way Ehara could have murdered Mikoshiba within that limited time span. Right. Which means the murder video doesn't really add up, does it? What are you getting at? I'm saying the prosecution believes the video has been falsified. Special effects, CGI, whatever it is, we're not buying it. Huh. Furthermore, the prosecutor pushing that stance was the one who handled Ahara's trial. And that is... His name is Sadao Takano. He was the one gunning the hardest for Ahara the first time around, especially considering his officer status. He kept insisting justice be served, which got the public behind him rather quickly. He certainly looked the part of the people's prosecutor, grilling Ahara in court. So what you're saying is, Takano could never accept anything but Ahara's original sentence since this footage of the murder contradicts that finding. He just thinks it's a sham. Yes, and he'd add that a fair trial's result can't be challenged by some video on the internet. Well, who could honestly trust a system that changes its mind so easily? Both the prosecutor's office and the court are beholden to the case as Takano Kun presented it. But that's just sweeping the issue under the rug. It has a domino effect, too. The police are beholden to the verdict we got, so their hands are tied. This applies to both Tokyo and Kanagawa. Really? Why's that? Supposedly, they don't want to get involved with Ehara until they're sure the video is real. If they come in with a list of questions about the murder, it'll show that doubt's being cast on the original ruling. Yeah, but no one can prove that the video's real. Right. There's no way to verify the legitimacy of an untraceable video. 
But if the police aren't allowed to see Ahara, he'll never even become a suspect in the murder. That means he's untouchable. Exactly. None of the detectives are happy about that. Especially down in Kanagawa. Their job is to bring in a suspect, but their leads are all ending up at the same dead end. Until recently, people were lining up to bring a heart to justice. Yet somehow, his involvement in a murder totally derailed that. Don't be so surprised. No cop would ever want to undermine a ruling based on their own findings. Anyone who wants to go against the grain's gonna need hard evidence on their side. So the case goes cold, all to save face for the court and the prosecution. If Ahara really did commit murder, it'll have been the perfect crime. This debacle only serves as proof. True. It would turn the trial into a farce. There's no way we're letting this go. But wouldn't challenging this mean going up against the entire system? Yeah. That scare ya? Not at all. In fact, I was just thinking, we're the only ones who could take a case like this. Ha! <laughs> That's the good shit, kid. This whole time, we've been writing off Ahara as a convicted sexual predator. But it's looking more and more likely the court played right into his hand. As for me, I'm done being played for a fool. Then you've heard what I came to say. And with that, I will be on my way. But if you need help, just ask. I think we're good for now, but thanks. That did clear up a lot. No problem. See ya. Man, was Mafuyu-chan cuter than ever or what? Think maybe it's time to light that flame again, eh? Huh? How many times do I have to tell you it's not like that? Anyway, what I'd like to do is ask Ahara about that video face-to-face. -face. Any chance we could see him again? I was actually about to suggest that. Uh, one moment. It's from Ahara's prison. What? Hello? Yes, this is Shirosaki. Yes, I can talk. His prison? Why would they call us directly? Guess we'll find out. Understood. I appreciate the candor. That was one of the prison wardens. He was asked to convey a message from Ahara. About what? In short, he won't be speaking with his representation any further. You're joking. To be more specific, he said he's not taking any more questions. It seems he fully grasps the situation, even in custody. How... How is that even possible? I'm guessing the murder footage that was uploaded yesterday was also planned out in advance. That or Ahara's conspirators have to be filling him in. How else could he predict we'd try to see him again so soon? I can see either of those scenarios making sense. But only someone on the force could be leaking insider information to him like that. Damn. This shit's turning into a full-blown conspiracy, eh, Doc? Whatever it is, it's screwing up our plans. Yeah, the timing couldn't have been worse. Now what are we supposed to do? Come on. There are plenty of leads that don't involve grilling the culprit. Yeah? I'd like to hear them. Well, if it were me, I'd start with Sauriku. Okay. The first thing I want to learn is whether Ehara is really the murderer in this footage. Given the entire sexual battery incident as an alibi, there is no way he could have murdered Mikoshiba. However, this new footage knocks the bottom out of that premise. Right. Either his alibi or the murder footage. One of the two's been fabricated. Well, hold on. What if they're both real? Both his alibi and the video? In that case, let's start with the murder. After committing the murder in Ijincho, Ehara would have had 13 minutes to make it to Ikebukuro Station. Ijincho and Ikebukuro are roughly 30 kilometers apart. It's possible if he traveled 140 kilometers an hour. 
Is it though? Ahara would have had to change out of his bloody clothes. So we probably ought to shave those 13 minutes down. On top of that, he was traveling during rush hour. It just doesn't seem feasible. Okay, then let's rule that out. I'd say we're making some progress here, guys. <laughs> Boy, you're really reaching for that silver lining, aren't you? The footage of the murder must have been manipulated somehow. They could have put Ahara's face onto the real killer, or even rendered the whole thing digitally. So you're suggesting we should distrust the murder footage? Hmm. And how do we prove it's real or fake? Well, I'm sure Tsukumo's cracking away at that. So, yeah, let's find some other angles. I'd say there's only one angle left. I think we should revisit the harassment case. When the sentence came down in court, no one expected it to end up as a murder alibi. Plus, everyone suspected Ahara was working alone. He may have not been. All this makes a huge difference. No one would suspect a train groping to involve accomplices or alibis. The search for evidence wouldn't be as intense as for a murder. But the entire incident was caught on camera, top to bottom. There's more than enough physical evidence, too. Then we'll need to verify each and every aspect of the case. Okay, what first? Should we investigate the crime scene again? Maybe we'll discover something new if we check out the station during the crime's actual time frame. No, I think we saw everything we could there. Actually, if we're reviewing evidence, we could do that from right here, couldn't we? What catches your eye specifically? I ask because fabricated evidence would likely show signs of tampering. This would prove Ahara's alibi doesn't hold up. This part's still getting to me. The Shinjuku Station diagram? Did something happen at the platform? Well, the majority of the incident was caught on camera. But I don't think we have any footage of what happened around here. It's not much, but it's a blind spot all the same. Hoshino Kun and I confirmed that at the scene. Okay, but how would this blind spot change anything? The first thing that comes to mind is, gives Ahara a chance to swap with the standing. The real Ahara murdered Mikoshiba and Ijincho at 7.30, then headed to Shinjuku Station. Then, just after 9 o'clock, he swapped places with the standing, getting caught on purpose. So you're suggesting that there were two Aharas at Shinjuku Station? Yep. And the true assailant, the Ahara look-alike, disappeared into the crowd. Wait, if what you propose is true, does that mean Ahara had never touched the victim? Yeah. But the police inspection revealed trace fibers from the victim's clothing on Ahara's hand. Ugh, trace inspection. Yeah, so no matter what, the fact that Ahara touched the victim remains standing. The victim felt his hand reach under her skirt right after the train departed Ikebukuro. She was scared motionless for the entire commute until arriving at Shinjuku Station. Could you describe the victim for me? She's an office worker, married to an industrial designer. Also has a six-year-old son. Full name, Yui Mamiya. 30 years old. A wife and mother. Perhaps if we talk to Mamiya-san directly, she could give us more insight than that video. She may even recall something none of us know, upon learning Ahara's alibi might have been fabricated. That's a good plan. We'll finally have a fresh source of info. In that case, give me a moment so I can get a meeting set up. We should have her address and other information somewhere on file. Bear in mind, Mamiya-san was the victim here. As the assailant's defense, I doubt we'll get a warm welcome. That's pretty standard for us, I'd say. Nobody rolls out the red carpet for a detective, right? Yeah. Say, Kaito-san, it looks like we've got some free time. So let's say we grab some food. Now that you mention it, I am getting hungry.
Huh. You think they want something? Bet it's not a friendly hello. They do look like they mean business. This Arcade's idea of an ambush? How basic. Kaito san, there's more. Over there, too. Same losers from yesterday. Guess they want to settle the score. Looks like they rounded up some buddies and waited for us to show. Well, whatever the hell they want, let's not get Genda Sensei and them involved. Follow me. Okay. I'm getting fed up with this shit. Why haven't they made a move yet? It's like they're waiting for something. Whatever it is, they're taking their sweet ass time. Hey! Quit dicking around and come get some! What the hell? They're just gonna keep stalking us? Nope, thanks for waiting, assholes! Oh <laughs> shit! Let me guess. You're RK too? Bastard went straight for our heads. Are you nuts, guy? Shut your mouth! Let's go! That's one down. <sighs> Not out of the woods just yet. Really went all out on the backup. Is the whole town arcade now or something? Doc, we should probably get gone before the cops are all in. Why? It's not our fault we're getting jumped. Their plan was to come at us in waves. I've about had it with this crap. Yeah. At this rate, we won't be meeting Sorry Son and the others. Wouldn't want to drag them into this. Point. So why not hit RK at home? Yeah? Why not? Soma and Akatsu are at the top and they probably remember me. I'll just ask them real nice to keep their goons off our back. Unless you want to keep dealing with these fucking scrubs. I'm fine with making a house call. Any idea where it is? Yeah, a club in the back of Theater Square. It used to be arcade exclusive. Nowadays, I hear they let in thugs from all over. I admit, I'm kind of curious. This 
to Zitok. Get ready to meet some shady people. Yeah, shady is definitely the operative word here. Can't imagine this place gets a lot of foot traffic. Who knew an entrance to the underground was right here in broad daylight? All right, let's get in there and be done with this. Hey, who the hell are you two? Got some invitations? The Yagami Detective Agency doesn't need any. Say, is Akutsu or Soma around? Detectives, huh? There a problem here? This is a public business, isn't it? About time you showed up. We've been expecting you. <laughs> Nothing like running into an old friend. You want to talk to Akutsu-san, fine. But only Kaito gets in. Why? See, we all knew the Yakuza out in the cold would come around to us once the Tojo clan grew out. Ha <laughs> ha. Know what makes us such a hit? Who gives a shit? We got a system fleshed out. Your average gangbanger starts at rank F. But an ex-Yakuza, a Tojo head at that. Fast track right to B rank. Oh. And just for you, Kaito-san. The boss says he'll start you out at A. Yeah, I'm sure you've got your pick of the chumps. But I'm here to talk to a fucking adult man. So get stepping and take me to Akutsu. Spoken like a man with some balls. I can see why Akutsu's had his eye on you. What? So I really have to just wait in the lobby? You should thank your lucky stars you're not dead yet. I don't know about this, Kaito-san. What if you need backup? Relax, Doc. All I gotta do is talk man-to-man -man with Akutsu real quick, and we'll be out of here. You heard the man. Now come on. Well, if it's gonna be that quick, I'll just wait right here. <laughs> do whatever you want. You're shit for business. Ah, oh, come on. Don't you want to be friends? Hey, uh, think I could use your restroom? There's one inside, right? Go shit on the cement for all I care. Restrooms are for guests only. So, you in RK2? I take it business is good lately. Oh, hell yeah. Recruits are swarming in by the dozen. If you're looking for quick cash and combo show, RK is where it's at. Plenty of hotties, too. <laughs> wow. And all you do is fool around on your phone. Talk about living on Easy Street. Screw you. Hey, not my fault they don't loop you into the good jobs. Bet those only go to the A rank, guys. You must be, what, F? F minus? The fuck did you just say? Oh, did I offend you? Sorry. Guess some gangbangers are softies. I'll show you who's soft, asshole! <laughs> Sorry. Getting split up from my buddy does make me kind of an asshole. Careful here. Hey, where'd that new guy get taken to? Oh, I heard Akutsu san wanted to see him. For real? Was he taken to the VIP room then? Sounds like it. Even I've never gotten in there. What makes him such a big shot?
Sorry, man. Take a quick breather. You there? Uh, yes? Can I help you? You better stop fucking around. Didn't I ask you for another round? Huh? Another round? You forgot my order already? I want my bottle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll get right on that. Wait a minute. You know what? Fuck the bottle. How about you just mix me a cocktail? But of course. Here, sir. I hate to say it, Akutsu. I'm in a price bracket you couldn't afford if you wanted to. <laughs> I'm not saying you'd need to call it quits on the detective gig you've got going, Kaito-san. You can just give us a hand, help us out a bit when RK needs some real muscle on the field. That a fucking joke? On what planet would I sign up for more busy work? Think you might want to tone it down there, big guy? I've got my boys in the room. Being talked to like this isn't a good look. Why would you care how you look? You're a bunch of damn Yakuza. You and Soma are picking up the Tojo clan scraps, yeah? Or do you have a real plan? We'd have the manpower if we wanted to. With all your washed up Yakuza and punk ass kids? I don't see it happening, man. What are you fucking thinking? Exactly why we need more guys like you. Help me show this crew how the big boys roll. I need some authority on this to get it built the right way. So you want me on as a drill sergeant for scumbags? Count me out. Kamurocho's underground river of cash is still flowing, but there's no more Tojo clan upstream to collect it all. There's no more rules. We can run this town however the fuck we want. And once we've got ours, we can slip back into civilian lives to live it up clean as a whistle. You want to be a civilian again? You're kidding. Oh, yeah. Wanna have the cash to buy your favorite store? Pop out a couple of kids and settle down with a family? Never would have been possible in the Yakuza life. Well, why the fuck would you need me to do that? After you step into the shadow of the underworld, you never really escape from those chains. Don't sell me your bullshit like I'm one of your fucking brats. Huh. <sighs> Sounds to me like your whole damn pitch just ran out of gas. Go out there and build your dream gang if you want. I don't give a shit. That said, if you keep bugging me about this shit, I'm gonna make sure you regret it. Keep your fucking distance from us. Did you say... us? Are you refusing to join up because you have a partner? Bring Yagami along for all I care. Did you hear a word of what I just said? I'd reconsider that stance if I were you. If you aren't coming along as a friend, then you're my enemy. I don't take work from assholes. Have it your way, then. Hey, round up the boys. Sir. Hey, get off your asses, eh? Too late for that. 
I knew exactly how this little chat was gonna go down. Son of a... <laughs> yeah, well, I knew exactly where you'd be for a chat you weren't invited to. Well, if you're done over there, shall we get back down to business? You're not walking out of here. Uh, if you don't know how to use that thing, you're gonna cut yourself, man. You sure? You fuckers are the ones who don't know shit. This whole damn town belongs to the Arcane now, you know. Now the whole town belongs to you, huh? You fucking morons. You're gonna have to pry this town out of my hands! Come on! understand why you wanted Kaito on your side. Still got anything you want to say, Akutsu? I can appreciate your perspective on this, Kaito. In that case, you better leave us the hell alone. Yeah, we can do that. We get it. It's fine. Right, Akutsu? Why are you here? Aren't you busy? <laughs> Just checking in. You made quite a mess here. Tak meets Soma. He's the leader of the RK. Yeah, I kind of figured. You keep saying we, but I don't think you know what's going on. You just gonna waltz in here and bark orders? Kaito-san turned down your offer, didn't he? And the other guy is Yagami from his own detective agency. Before that, he was an accomplished lawyer. Now he's with Kaito-san independently. It's my job to be running HQ, though. You shouldn't roll up unannounced. I'm supposed to leave you to your own devices? I do have to check in, at least to show my face. <laughs> Got a cold? It's a dust allergy, actually. Tough thing to live with. And I used to catch hell for it in the Yakuza. Quit that infernal sniffling, they'd say. <laughs> yeah. That couldn't have been easy, man. I bet they would beat the shit out of you if you didn't blow your nose. <laughs> you know it. I do wish we'd had the time to work together, Kaito-san. You as well, Yagami-san. It may feel like we're a small-time outfit in the media term, but RK will grow. We'll show you. But in the meantime, we'll leave the two of you be. Does that work? Finally, some sense. <laughs> Best of luck with the growth. As the leader here, you need brains and brawn. Something else? Your gang was out there searching for some guy in a picture. Well, how'd that hunt end up turning out? 
He was some kind of girls bar manager, wasn't he? It sounded like he'd disappeared from Kamarachu more than a few years back. You have any luck tracking him down? Ah, uh, we actually found that he's unfortunately dead. Likely murdered. Considering Kamurocho's reputation and the nature of his profession, I can't say I'm all that surprised. <sighs> Got it. I guess I was just kind of curious. Always happy to oblige a detective. I guess we shouldn't have taken our case so lightly, even though they're new to the scene. Yeah. Supposedly Sum was the one who spearheaded the campaign to scoop up all the ex-Tojo. Turns out he's teaching the next generation of thugs about protection money, loan shark, mugging. He's like an unemployment agency for shitheads. They've got 50 full-time bodies so far, but if you include part-timers and other associates, they may be well over 2,000 strong. That's a lot. Even half that's a lot. The Yakuza left behind a gaping power vacuum in this town. Even if it wasn't our case, someone else would have swooped in. So much for peace and quiet in Kamarocho, huh? Sorry, son's calling. Hello? It's Shiosaki. Sorry for the wait. I found our file on Ahara's victim. Ah, oh, Mamiya-san, right? Yui Mamiya? Yes. She lives with her family in East Ikebukuro. I'm about to make a quick house call. Awesome. Then I'll be right over. Good. See you sooner than later, I hope. I caught all that. You go on ahead, Doc. This one's outside my area of expertise. Okay. I'll head back to the office when I'm done. Remember, we're speaking to a victim here, Yagami-san. One whose assailant we defended in court. If we had tried to make an appointment, she probably would have declined outright. Hmm. Not sure showing up unannounced is much better. Well, let's just hope she's willing to talk. <sighs> yes. There's no way around it. It's a risk we had to take. Well, here goes nothing. Yes? I'm Shirasaki from the Genda Law Office, the attorney for Mr. Akihiro Ehara. You may remember me from the hearings. Why are you here? Don't you know it's rude to show up at someone's door uninvited? I understand, but we have a pressing matter that directly concerns you. If we could do this another way, we would. I apologize for any inconvenience. I'm sorry, but the trial's over and done with. You know I can legally turn you away. You're right, but I'm only asking a moment of your time. Please, would you mind? I don't have time for this. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Wait, 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 before you do that. Sorry to butt in. I'm Yagami, a detective helping Sari here out. And? I know, in your eyes, we're just scumbag lawyers defending perverts in court. It was just a paycheck to them, you're thinking. And, yes, why should you care? Wow. It's like you... read my mind. If you're so perceptive, shouldn't you know it's time to leave? Wait, that's not what I meant at all. Look, that was just an opener. Are you aware of the trending video that's leading people to believe Ahara committed murder? Thing is, the victim was confirmed to be alive in Yokohama until the morning of your own incident. And since Ahara was on the train with you, they're ruling him out as a murder suspect. So, what is it you're getting at? I'm just trying to ensure you're in the clear from any of that unfortunate business. If we could do this now, we'd never bother you again. All we need is ten minutes of your time. How absurd. We're only trying to help, but if later would work better for you, we could always come back another time. With our supervisor, of course. That visit would probably be more formal. 
there'd be paperwork, audio tapes, you know the drill. You'll want to clear your schedule. I really don't have time for any of that. No, I understand, and it's entirely our fault. We thought we'd do this casually, but we really should have been more by the book. But it is a murder case, so we do have to make sure our paperwork is in order here. Now, would you prefer to schedule a date to accommodate a more formal interview? Uh, you said ten minutes if we do it now, right? We'll make it as painless as possible. All right. Hold on. We really do appreciate it. Well, I'm impressed. I'm also not sure I should trust a word you say ever again. Really? <laughs> I did get us in the door, didn't I? I'm joking. I do appreciate the help. Now let's not screw this up. This is likely the only conversation we'll have with Mamiya-san. Hello! <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Again, we apologize for the intrusion. Let's just get this over with already. Okay, bye-bye. We'll make this quick. So, talk. I've already told the police and the court everything they could want to know about that morning. I'm sorry to put you through this again, but would you mind going over those details with us? What else is left to discuss? I understand how pressured you might feel. I've gone over this so many times. I wonder if pressing charges was even worth it. No, what you did was both brave and inspirational. Many victims are afraid to come forward for any number of reasons. Your voice might give them courage to find their own. Ironic. Hearing this from that predator's defense team. Well, perhaps. <laughs> Would you mind walking us through that day from the beginning? It's nothing so mysterious. I was just on my way to work when some man grabbed my butt. That's all it was. Nothing else was out of the ordinary that day? Correct. Not to pry, but... Where is your husband today? Still at work? He usually doesn't get home until later. On that note, I have to feed my son, so let's get this wrapped up soon. We'll try our best. Moving along. On that day, you and Ahara-san boarded the train bound for Ikebukuro, correct? Had you ever seen the man before then? No. At least not that I can recall. How many times must I go over this? Your lawyer friend here already knows everything I have to say. What do you gain by getting me to repeat things? That's the thing. Yagami-san here is a specialist. He can take whatever you repeat, analyze it, and draw up an entirely new conclusion. Right? Of course. That's exactly why I'm here. In the security footage, as you stepped onto the train, it looks like Ahara-san stepped right behind you. Were you aware of his presence at this point? I was. It felt like someone kept pushing up against me with no sense of personal boundaries. I remember second-guessing myself at the time, thinking it was normal for the train to be that packed. Then the train took off while you were stuck in that situation. Yes. And then I felt the back of his hand against me. It kept getting worse from there. To the point where he went under my skirt. 
and the pig had the nerve to write it off as an accidental brush on a crowded train. But that kind of touch wasn't accidental. He even grabbed at me. Truly awful. And I do sympathize. I've also had to turn in an abuser like that. Personally speaking, some men can't wait to debase themselves at the first opportunity. Why would you say that and look at me? I just stood there, frozen. I couldn't see who was touching me. I had no idea what to do. I wanted to scream. But what if he just laid it off? So I decided I would bear it till the next station. Are you okay, Mommy? I'm fine, sweetie. We're just having a bit of grown-up talk. Are you hungry? Uh-huh. Then go read your book and wait over there for Mommy. We're almost done. You said the abuse lasted the entire six minutes between Ikebukuro and Shinjuku Station. Did you see the groper's face at any time during that span? No. I was too terrified to look. And I thought, even if I did, he'd just pull away and escape. But just as the train was pulling into Shinjuku, I reached back and grabbed the hand on me. That's when I saw his face. Of course, he shook me off as the doors opened, but I'd already gotten a clear look at him. He must have known I could turn him in at that point. So he ran, and I chased after. Right. That was captured by the station's security cameras. Great job tailing him in such a crowded space. On that note, did you ever happen to lose sight of Ahara-san while running? This cat was pretty easy to spot, and no one else was bolting off the platform like that, so I, I never lost sight of him. At that point, I could feel my voice returning, so I just screamed, that man grabbed me! I'm glad there were good Samaritans nearby. For sure. And there were a lot of smartphones out, so I figured there was no way for him to get away with it. I was so relieved. I see. I think I've got the gist of it. But now we've got a piece of evidence that contradicts what you've told us. What do you mean? Well, on the same day, at 6.30 a.m. in Yokohama, a student teacher named Hiro Mikoshiba was sent off to work by his mother. But he was soon abducted near his home, only to be found dead much later in Ichincho. Is that...? According to the video, the Harasan here is the murderer. What? He killed Mikoshiba in cold blood to get vengeance for his bullied son. His kid was about to graduate high school, but instead he took his own life. So Ahara took it upon himself to punish his son's torment. That's awful! But now we come back to the issue here. If this footage is authentic, then Ahara-san couldn't have been your assailant. The victim's estimated time of death and Ahara-san's time of arrival in Tokyo simply don't allow for it. It's just not possible for someone to make that commute. <sighs> but there's the flip side. If Ahara-san was in fact your assailant, it would mean this murder footage is a fabrication. I don't know what you expect me to say after all this. Right? Now you know how we're feeling. That's why we came to see if you had any leads for us. So that's what this is about. After hearing your story, I have no doubt you endured a lot that day. Which would obviously mean that murder video was faked. Then... who shared that video? And why? Wish I knew. Based on the quality, something this convincing would need quite a budget. Whether it's CG on top of real murder footage, or just a rock-solid AI creation, no way it was cheap. So why go through all this effort to fake a murder? Who would benefit from it? But I have to say, I feel much closer to piecing this puzzle together with your help today. Thank you very much for your time. Yes, and rest assured, this will be the last time you see us. Our apologies for the unexpected visit. And for dredging up unpleasant memories. It's fine. So long as this is really the end of it all.
I'd like to report Mamiya-san's account to the rest of the team. Can I count on you to be there? Sure. Let me give Kaito-san a heads up. All right. Then I'll see you there. Yo, me. Hey, I just got back to Comrade Cho. Everything good? Any news? All good here, man. What's with you? You worried our kid got to me or something? I mean, they did run their mouths about stabbing us in the back. But if you're good, I'm good. Anyway, I'm heading to Genda so Sari-san and I can go over what we learned from Mamiya. You're the boss. As for me, I'm calling it a day. <laughs> you do that. Are we ready, Yagami-san? Let's start with our visit to Mamiya-san, if that sounds reasonable to you. Yeah, let's start there. So, the victim's story is completely in line with her court testimony, huh? That's correct. There wasn't anything new to pick up. Unfortunately. In which case, should we look into the murder video instead? Like, figure out how they made it? Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Whether that tape's fake or real, someone had to put it online, right? Do we have any theories on who that might be? Well, the footage showed enough of the surroundings to make the crime scene clear. As somebody who's been there, I can confirm that the blood splotches match what you see in the footage. Which means... The murderer's accomplices have to be the ones who posted it for him. Yeah. I can't see it any other way. I also agree with Yagami-san. But in that case, what would their motive be? Maybe they wanted to make a mockery of the police, or even the whole system. Hmm? Huh? We know Ihara got himself convicted for groping, so he'd have an alibi for Mikoshiba's killing. But then, his conspirators turned it around by uploading the murder video online. Almost as if to say, look how he got away with it. I see. Yeah, that does make it sound like he's taunting them. That's well and good, but I'd like to shift gears. Let's talk about the actual fabrication of the video. How does one go about that? Well, for example, the true culprit would be taped murdering Mikashiba. Then Ihara's face would be copied and blended onto the killers. That's how they'd approach it in a Hollywood movie. But then, wouldn't you be able to see traces of it being faked? Tsukumo-san reported that he's found nothing of the sort in his analysis. We've been down this road before. If we take the stance that the footage is fabricated, we have absolutely nothing to work with. Then let's tackle this from the stance that the video is actually real. If that's the case, there has to be a flaw in the groping issue. I think we've collected enough evidence to find it, too. Before meeting with Yui Mamiya, didn't you mention the possibility of Ahara using a stand-in? Perhaps the real Ahara murdered Mikoshiba in Ijincho, then swapped places with the imposter so he could be detained. But we couldn't find an opportunity for the swap to happen, remember? From the moment he set foot on the Ikebukuro platform, Ahara was constantly on camera. But wait. That's not entirely accurate, is it? Huh? Remember how we mocked up a diagram of the Shinjuku station platform? Yeah. Oh, wait! That's it! You could be onto something. There's a point where Ahara wasn't on camera at all. What is this point you speak of? Let's all go over the diagram so that everything will be clear. Here's what I want you to see. It's very brief, but there's a moment where Ihara and Mamiya-san can't be seen by the security cameras. The dotted lines on the arrow represent the camera's blind spot. It does appear so. So you're saying this is where the groper, the fake Ihara, traded places with the real one? Can't say it's impossible, right? Right. Except if that actually happened, Mamiya-san would have been right behind them at the time. 
Could the two really swap places without her noticing? In a crowd like that, I think it's feasible. If that really was Ihara's plan, then I'd say he was being careless. Careless? How? Well, on the day of the incident, the station was packed for morning rush hour. That means there was no solid guarantee the assailant could make the switch. He could have been nailed by any random passerby before reaching the blind spot. Good point. Not only that, if Mamiya-san had called for help while the train was still moving, then the first Ahara would have been caught before even reaching the platform. Oh, I mean, yeah! Called it. Think about it, Yagami-san. Why would Ahara's accomplices meticulously plan out every last detail of this alibi, only to leave such a crucial component to chance, as Hoshino-kun pointed out? Oh, just doing my job. True. Good work, Hoshino-kun. In fact, I think that may back up my own take on it. Yeah? What if everything, including the appearance of leaving the plan to chance, was part of the plan? Can you expound on that? I'm saying I agree that such an airtight alibi wouldn't have allowed for contingencies. And that takes the question to another level. Just how far did they line up the pieces in advance to make the swap work? Are you saying there's more to it than we discussed? What did we miss? I know this won't go over well, but what if Mamiya was colluding with Ahara all along? Huh? Bear with me. Let's say Mamiya was in on this and knew about the imposter in advance. If that's the case, the swap could happen right in front of her and no one but the three of them would know. You're saying the victim of a groping conspired with her assailant beforehand? That's ridiculous! Let me just say, I'm only trying to work out how a swap like that would be guaranteed to work. Now, if Hara and his stand-in both know that Mamiya will pretend not to have seen them, they can trade places in the blind spot with impunity. Conversely, if Mamiya wasn't in on the plan, the idea of a swap would never work. But we can say with certainty that she would have seen the swap, so... She could have even called attention to the real Ahara the moment he stepped in. That way, the people around her will be focused on chasing the correct assailant. The rest is as we know it. They caught Ihara and detained him until the police showed up. Hold that thought. If your theory is accurate, what about Ihara's trace evidence? Remember that fibers of the victim's underwear were detected on his hand. Well, that can also be explained by Mamiya being in on the plan. For example, while the stand-in was showing himself at the security cameras, Mamiya could have easily provided Ahara access to a pair of underwear at the same time. Maybe the stand-in loitered around for so long because he was letting everyone else get themselves in place. It's not impossible. We can work out the other details later. But the point is, Ahara's murder alibi is shot if Mamiya was involved. In summary, it's possible Ihara disgraced himself to secure an unshakable alibi for Mikushiba's murder. I'll concede that it's an avenue worth pursuing. And when it comes to the prosecution, they can't just admit they got the first case so wrong. Plus, they can't question Ihara about Mikushiba's murder. In fact, their only option is to claim the tape is faked. So he managed to make a farce out of the system after all. Well... His court case for his son's bullying did get more or less thrown out, didn't it? The school, the investigative committee, and the court all agreed. There wasn't enough evidence to convict anyone. No surprise for me that the guy held a grudge against the system for so long. Hold on. Before we all decide on this... What's up? The obvious question to me is why would Mamiya be party to such a crime? She appears more than financially stable and she's even raising a child. So why would she do something so enormously risky as helping establish a murder alibi? Yeah, I haven't gotten that far yet. But maybe she was promised something that far exceeds the risk. Or maybe Ahara has some kind of dirt on her even? Enough to make her help with a murder? What sort of secret would be big enough to force someone into that corner? What info do we have on Mamiya anyway? Maybe we can spot a connection to Ahara through her profile. 
I'll pull her information. Just a second. Oh. I just thought of something else those two would have guaranteed by working together. What's that? If Ahara wanted to use this crime as a murder alibi, he needed it to blow up into the public eye. But if he had chosen a victim who stayed silent, then nothing would have come of it. A solid plan would need to eliminate that variable, which means Mamiya being an accomplice was crucial to Ahara's success. That's true. Looks like Ahara pulled one over on the prosecution then. Had his accomplices right where he wanted them, even his victim. Once we learn how he's connected to Mamiya, we can root out the rest of his team. Let's see. According to her file, her maiden name is Yui Suzuki. 30 years old, so that's consistent. Originally from Ota, Tokyo. Attended a private high school called Kurakawa Academy. Later graduated from Toto University. Huh. Met her husband on the job, apparently. Her husband, Taichi Mamiya, is an industrial designer at Techno Zeta Inc. Six years ago, she gave birth to their only son, Sotaku, who's now in first grade. Hold on. You said she went to Kurokawa Academy? I heard that name in Ijin Show. If I recall correctly... When I went to scope out the murder scene, there were these three guys watching the detectives and me. They told us they were just checking things out, but they mentioned they're Kurokawa grads too. Do you have any ID on you? Uh, will my license work? Akake-san, age 30. Akaike-san, age 30. Mommy is 30 as well. What's that got to do with anything? Aren't we trying to find a connection between Mamiya and Ohara? I found the Kurokawa Academy website. Looks like they're pretty prestigious. It's in Tokyo, specifically in Ota. Pretty close to where Mamiya lived. Oh. What? The girls there get such cute uniforms. You little... You want to start all over from the bar exam? Wait. I've seen that uniform before too, Ashley. Where? on an old picture of a teacher at Serio High, Sawa-sensei, Ahara's son had confided in her. Is she actually a Kurokawa grad too? I don't know Sawa-sensei's exact age, but she could well be 30. Maybe all of them are even classmates. Could this mean they're actually linked? The victim and her up-to-now unrelated assailant? It's a tenuous link at best. It could fall apart any time, but no true detective alive would pass it up. A previously unseen link is established between the groper and the victim. Charting out their relationship is akin to tracing a spider's web. But with each false thread ruled out, only the improbable truth remains. Ehara orchestrated the groping as a diversion. And by tarnishing his name, he secures both an alibi and his ultimate revenge. Hiro Mikashiba's murder was sparked by the bullying of Toshiro Ehara, who committed suicide four years ago. The graphic video that hit the net showed the world how Toshiro's father, Akihiro Ehara, had brutally avenged his son. We also know the father had accomplices. On October 7th at 6.30 a.m., they forced Mikoshiba into a vehicle, took him to an abandoned building, and gravely injured him. Then, around 7.30 a.m., the time frame when Ahara killed Mikoshiba, the other conspirators were probably nearby, even though they weren't on camera. At the same time, 30 kilometers away at Ikebukuro Station, 
a man who looks like Ihara is caught on camera. We'll call that guy the stand-in. The stand-in made sure he was in front of the cameras for more than an hour before boarding the 9.06 a.m. train, the same one Yui Mamiya was on. After committing sexual battery on that train, he meets the real Ahara in the camera's blind spot, and they change places. That's how he established a false alibi for Mikoshiba's murder. And to achieve this, the victim, Yui Mamiya, had to have been in on it from the start. Hmm. Sure are a lot of people getting their hands dirty for Ahara. Mamiya, Ahara's standing on the train, the guys who kidnapped Mikoshiba. How did some troubled cop manage to recruit so many allies? Well, one person that comes to mind who might be the key to all this is Yoko Sawa. She's a teacher at Serio High. She was the only adult Toshiro-kun ever told about the bullying, and she supervised Mikoshiba as a teacher before he disappeared. On top of that, she's a Kurokawa Academy graduate, same as Mamiya. Those trespassers at the murder scene were also from Kurokawa. Since they're all about the same age, it's possible they were all classmates. So you're saying these classmates are also Uhara's murder accomplices? If we consider Yokosawa the central link, that's very possible. We do know that as a teacher, she felt deep remorse for Toshiro-kun's suicide. Maybe she recruited her old classmates to help Ehara take his revenge. Yeah, best not to rule that out. Though I'm hoping that's not the case. Why is that? It's just... She's a really good teacher. She's passionate, responsible. She's always putting the students first. I know she regrets the past. That a student died on her watch. And now another of her students, Mikoshiba, is found murdered. So if it turns out she's involved in that, I doubt I'll be able to trust my own judge of character ever again. Yagami. I'm going back to Ejinsho tomorrow. The plan is to bring up Mamiya's name to Sawa-sensei and see how she reacts. Until then, let's not jump to conclusions about her involvement. All right. Uh, can I chime in real quick? I was looking into Kurokawa Academy, and I stumbled across something that may be relevant. What's that? Well, it happened 13 years ago, but there was an attempted suicide. A third year jumped off the school's roof after being thoroughly humiliated. Actually, Sawa-sensei mentioned that. She said it was a boy in her class. Right, that's gotta be the same case then. The student's name was Mitsuru Kuzumoto. He's 30 now, but still in a coma. Huh, and all that info's on the net? It wouldn't be normally, but his mother happens to be Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health. Ever heard the name Reiko Kusamoto? Not once. I have. It was on the news. They were talking about her and her son. Well, do you remember the uproar in the health ministry when Vice Minister Ichinose got arrested? Apparently, his successor couldn't contain the resulting chaos, which is when Kusumoto-san got tapped to lead. They couldn't afford another criminal scandal, so her promotion was out of the blue. She was a safe choice, a veteran with tenure and experience. Not to mention, her son's tragedy made people see her as a more sympathetic figure, very popular. She's kind of a new generation heroine, so to speak. Huh. Is any of that relevant to the case at hand, though? Who knows? But Reiko Kusumoto and Ahara both have children who were bullying victims. I don't think that's a connection we can afford to overlook, if you ask me. Okay, so Kusumoto's son. What exactly happened to him? Let's see. He was bullied by a fellow third year at his school, Shinya Kawai. The records say he harassed Mitsuru-kun every day, in and out of school. Well, one time he even stuffed dirty rags in his mouth. That's so cruel. Yeah, and the teacher was a real piece of work. Apparently he knew, but he just smirked and said, don't overdo it. Oh, I remember now. The media pounced on that one hard. 
If they were classmates, then both Sawa-sensei and Mamiya would know about this. And maybe because they couldn't save Mitsuru-kun, their guilt left them open to Ahara's persuasion. But to prove that, we'll have to hear from them directly. I'll talk to Sawa-sensei first thing tomorrow. That'd be helpful. In the meantime, I'll be working on Ahara's appeal. It's clear they missed something important in the trial, since Ahara is apparently innocent of sexual battery. Being that he was out committing murder at the time. What started as a simple harassment case sure has blown up big. Wait a minute, what? Yo, you took your sweet time, but I got the gist of it. You're going to Ijinsho, right? To meet with Sawa-sensei? Kaito-san, you do realize that only I can meet her. You can't get into the school. I know, but if you end up taking it off campus, can you at least call me this time? Don't you understand the situation? Sawa-sensei might be tied to murder. You sure you understand it? Come on, she would never do that. That a fact? So happens I'm a great judge of character. Especially when it comes to women. Oh, sometimes I forget who I'm talking to. Stop? It's gotta be Chinatown. Can't face Tsukumo on an empty stomach. Never a dull day for you, huh, Kaito-san? It's a selection, man. I've already worked out the math. I figure if I hit four or five places a day... What? What's up? Check that out. It's Akutsu. Kamurocha thugs are looking pretty out of place here. Yo! Akutsu! What are you fools doing in town? Hey, don't ignore me. It's Kaito. Fancy seeing you here. I'm kind of busy here, man. Catch you later. What an asshole. Ichincho's a long way from home. And he's traveling with a small army. Would he have come all this way because of us? Nah, we just caught him totally off guard. He's not out here for us. Gotta be something else. But something's not right if they're just cruising around. Hmm. It's gotta be an RK operation. He brought too many guys for it to be something more personal. Yeah. <laughs> Kamurocho streets can be tough. Maybe they gave up. Hmm. Well... Whatever they came out here to do, we ought to keep our noses the hell out of their business. But you better hustle. You're gonna be late for class. I'll catch you after school. Is it Yagami-san? Sensei, do you have a minute? I saw the video of Miko Shiba-kun. So you did. That video, right? I thought Ahara-san was convicted for a sex offense. How could he be in that video killing Miko Shiba-kun? But then that video looked so real. Most likely it is. As you unfortunately had to witness, Ahara-san committed murder with his own two hands. Which means as far as the groping that day goes, there's some deception at work. A uh, deception? Are you familiar with Ahara-san's victim in the case? Her name is Yui Mamiya. I don't think I recognized her, no. Thirteen years ago, she attended Kurokawa Academy. Her maiden name is Yui Suzuki. 
Yui Suzuki. Just a minute. Are you saying she was the one Ahara-san groped? So you do know her then? Were you two classmates? We were, in our third year of high school. I had a hunch. You didn't know she was the victim of that whole incident? I mean, it's just so hard to believe. Does this all seem like a wild coincidence to you then? Your old student's father gropes one of your high school classmates at a station with three million daily travelers. What are you implying? I'm saying your old friend Yui might be cooperating with the Harasan, as in she only played the part of a victim. She might have even known it was all to hide a murder. What? But why? Why would she do that for him? From where I'm sitting, Sensei, you're connected to Ahara and Yui Mamiya. I just need your help figuring out what that connection is. Yagami-san, please. Are you implying I was some kind of liaison between them? Well, Sensei, what was your relationship with Yui Mamiya? Were you close? Or would you say classmates covers it? The two of us were never really that close. To be honest, I didn't really like the group of kids she hung out with. I guess you could say we didn't have the same interests. When was the last time you saw her? Did you have a high school reunion by any chance? They held a reunion around the time I graduated from college. But I didn't feel like going. That same class bullied a kid into jumping off the roof. So if that's the case, you haven't seen any of your classmates since you all graduated from Kurokawa? That's right. Okay then. The thing is, Ahara-san and Mamiya are connected. It is kind of loose, but it's there. They have one thing in common. What? In both of their pasts, someone they knew was bullied to the point of attempting or committing suicide. Ahara-san lost his son, Toshiro-kun, and as for Yui Mamiya, it's her classmate, Mitsuru Kusumoto. That could be a factor, especially for Mamiya. It's possible that Ahara-san would be a sympathetic figure to her. Maybe enough to help construct an alibi for his revenge. It's possible she only played the part of a groping victim. What do you think? Does it have any merit, or is my theory full of holes? Even if you're on the right track... Um, Sawa-sensei? We're just waiting on you to start the staff meeting. Oh, sorry, I'll be right there. What happened 13 years ago at Kurokawa? That might be the last piece of the puzzle. What about Yui Mamiya? How'd she react when Mitsuru Kusumoto tried to kill himself by jumping off that roof? I'm sorry. I'm already late for my meeting. I'm trying to ask you about a murder here. To Ahara, every unanswered question is a victory for that man. He's only a step away from walking for it. And I know Mamiya had other conspirators. It took more than one person to murder Mikoshiba. They're still at large, even as we speak. I'll be honest. I came here today with a suspicion that you might be more involved in this murder than you're letting on. A suspicion? Nothing you've said has made me feel any better about it. And what should I do about that, huh? I just want you to tell me... How are Ahara-san and Mamiya connected beyond what I've already figured out? I think you have the key to that answer even if you don't know that you're the one holding it. It's like a lock. And until I figure out how to get through it, I'm gonna keep picking at it. I told you. I'm late for a meeting. I'll be here when you get back. Have a good meeting. <sighs> Suit yourself. Hey, sorry, son. It's Yagami. Hey, did you manage to talk to Sawa-sensei? Yeah. Turns out she really was in Mamiya's class. And they were both aware of the suicide incident with their classmate. Good to know. While we're on the topic, Hoshino-kun got his hands on some new info. Let's hear it. The bully at Kurokawa High was named Shinya Kawai. He transferred out right after Mitsuru-kun jumped, as if he were running away. 
Once he came of age, it looks like he worked here in Kamurocho. Wow. You really can find a lot online. Yes. And to top it off, Kawai earned a reputation for talking about how he drove a classmate to suicide. Like he's proud of it. Maybe he thought he'd get a laugh in Kamurocho. Probably would. Kawai was more or less a Yakuza, so he never swore into it. I just sent you his picture. It was taken five years ago. <laughs> what? This guy? You recognize him? Not too long ago, some RK punks came asking his whereabouts. Said he was a girls' bar manager who went missing. Yeah, it looks like he did work at a girls' bar. But we don't know which one. Okay, so the guy's definitely suspicious. What business would RK have with him? Do you know if they ever found him? No. But their leader, Soma, said something about Kawai having already been killed. Like he just vanished from Kamurocho a few years ago, and that was it. Wait, he was killed? Uh-huh. Kind of gives me deja vu now that I think about it. Here you have Kawai and Mikoshiba, two known school bullies. And they both end up murder victims? That could be for a number of reasons. It's not rare for people to disappear in Kamurocho. Usually the trouble is money or women. Maybe that was the case for Kawai. Could be. Okay. We'll investigate Kawai a bit more on our end. With RK asking around, word on the street will be loud enough to hear. How was it, Saori-san? What did Yagami-san have to say? He said he recently ran into some RK members looking for Shinya Kawai. Did he? He also said RK later told him Kawai had been killed. Hmm. This is getting scarier with every new lead. Now that you mention it, I have seen people getting stopped and asked about someone all over town. But if those were RK on the hunt for Kawai, could it have something to do with our case as well? I'm honestly not sure how RK could be involved in all this. I'm going out for a bit, Hoshino-kun. Do me a favor and keep digging up what you can on Kawai. Wait, what? Sometimes you have to get out in the field. It can't just be Yagami-san all the time. You don't mean you're going straight to RK for some answers? What else would I be doing? I need to know why they were looking for Kawai. Then I'm coming with. I can't just let you do that alone. Don't worry. It's still light out, and I plan on staying in the open. Besides, if I'm alone, they'll be more eager to talk. That may be, but still. I'll just call you about every ten minutes then. For your safety. I find that rather unnecessary. You sure? Oh, is that Sari-chan I see? To what do I owe this pleasure? Nice to see you too. Oh, hi. Say, aren't you one of Tok's lawyer friends? Does that mean he's on his way too? It's just me today. <sighs> Fine by me. That means you and I get some girl talk time. Oh, that stings, Mari. And here I thought I had a place in your heart. <laughs> well, no one knows a lady's heart like a bartender. I guess you can stay. Let's see. All these bottles got you feeling lost? Care for a few pours from Tox? It'll be our secret. Besides, a man with his tab can't complain. <laughs> You're too kind. So I'm actually here to ask you, how can I set up a meeting with R.K.? Darn. So this wasn't a pleasure call? Well, I'm glad you're at least enjoying the drink. True. 
and looking fancy doing it. Oh, please, you two are going to embarrass me. My apologies. I suppose being surrounded by such beauties has a timeless appeal, even at my age. I'll second that. Masuda here is looking at least a year younger. <laughs> Was that supposed to be a compliment? <laughs> of course. If you got any younger, you'd be much too handsome. What's a girl to say? And I'll second that. <laughs> Anyhow, if you're after an RK rendezvous, the good news is those guys are everywhere. But it's not like a civilian can just stroll up and ask, Hey, are you RK? And expect to get an answer. You got that right. And Sauri chan needs to ask them something that's kind of sensitive. Oh, that's certainly going to make things challenging. Just a bit, yeah. So I say, why not let the boys do the chasing? Wouldn't be hard for an enchantress like you. But honey, we need to do something about your... Look, some nice clothes and a little makeup and you'd be unstoppable. Finally, my turn to second something. I suppose I would need to look approachable. Talk told me once that if you ever felt like it's Sauri chan you could put every hostess in Kamrojo to shame. I've gotta admit, I'm curious. Well, a good hawk hides her talents. You're saying I should dress like a hostess for this? <laughs> Well, I'm sure there are other ways, but if you want a foolproof plan to snag an RK, you've got one. Well, if you want, I can get you some looks, and you can choose what you like. I get the message, and I suppose I'll take you up on that. Okay, then leave the rest to me. Oh, well, would you look at that? Talk was right on the money. I couldn't have imagined. You sure about that, Marisan? I hardly feel comfortable wearing this in front of you. What are you saying? You're so pretty. I wouldn't say so. Really? You're dynamite. Though, there is one thing that's missing. What's that? Pride. That's the final touch you need. Pride in your own beauty. Well, I I'm not sure I have that. Then how about your pride as a lawyer? You have that, don't you? As a lawyer? Yes, there it is. Go ahead and take a look. Now that's the face of a girl who gets the man she wants. It's been a while since I've felt this way. I have you to thank for that. <laughs> These bad boys won't know what hit them. Now, let's go dangle the bait. You mean us, right? You bet. Two nightlife girls like us alone on the street literally brings the RK boys running. Especially along Senrio Avenue. We take a walk. Uh, are you sure? I, I don't want to drag you into this. <laughs> are you kidding? And miss the chance to see this makeover in action? But really, I want you to succeed. I promise I won't be a bother. Excuse me, ladies. You, uh, get lost on the way to the beauty pageant? We're already out for a drink. Maybe heading to work somewhere in town? Oh, we're just two girls bar hopping by our lonesome. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, in that case, why don't you roll with us? I know a great place. You can drink all you want. Wow, you guys loaded or something? We can throw them back, you know. You sure? Hell yeah. There's a place my buddy runs. 
You'll be thrilled to see some ladies like you. <sighs> you know, I think you guys may have caught me at the perfect time. What I'm saying is, tonight, I want to take a trip on the wild side. Oh, yeah? Talk to me, baby. There's this guy in my life, a real choir boy. And being with him has got me feeling so repressed. Now, I know I should behave like a good girl. But I figure I owe it to myself to cut loose every now and again. Oh, you never told me that, sorry, chan Damn, girl. I'll get loose with you. Yeah! Let's get drunk and dirty. <laughs> Thing is, we all know the biggest party people in town are RK. I heard they can really spice things up, you know? But sorry, John. Why limit yourself to RK? I think these boys are plenty attractive. <laughs> I'm starting to think we were meant for each other. Oh? What makes you say that? Wait! Don't tell me you're... Not supposed to be blurting it out, but yeah. We're RK. And pretty high up, too. Shoot. RK wouldn't be what it is now without us. Never thought it'd get this big, either. RK has Kamurocho pretty much wrapped around its finger now, huh? Just about. The time of the Yakuza laying down the law is over. All that respect and chivalry shit. Dead, like all the old legends. Now the underground world is a jungle. And winning the fight's all that matters. Wow, must be hard. But I think that's hot. That reminds me. Weren't you RK guys looking for someone recently? A man who disappeared a few years ago? Oh yeah, him. We were looking for this dude who ran a girl's bar. See? I knew you guys would know what that's about. <laughs> oh well, five years ago he suddenly disappeared. That's not even news in Kamurocho. That's so crazy, though. What happened to him? You ever end up finding the guy? Nah, didn't work out. No surprise, he was just a punk anyway. His name was Kawhi. The way I heard it, some of his old friends rolled up on him one night. My guess is, it was trouble from another town catching up to him. Anyway, they argue for a bit, and it ends with the guy getting shoved into a van. And that's the last time anyone saw the dude. Whoa, what do you think happened? I'm thinking they bumped him off. If he was still breathing, he'd be back by now. I heard he never even picked up his final paycheck. My guess, he's fish food now. Or they buried him on some remote-ass mountain. You have any idea who would have done that to him? Don't know. They say it was ten or so people. Young, both men and women. Doesn't sound like a gang thing. But who knows, right? It was five years ago. But if you heard all that, there must have been witnesses, right? So you're saying someone actually saw him get shoved in a van? Yep. Some chick working at his bar saw it all go down. At least that's what we heard from a guy who heard it from that chick. Where is this bar anyway? You mean some random dive bar half a decade ago? Who the hell knows? A hundred places have sprung up and gone under since. But then, why would anyone be looking for Shinya Kawai now? Did someone ask RK to find him? Think that's right? Hell if I know. It's a question for the top of the food chain. But hold on a sec. Can I ask you something? Huh? Just a minute ago, you mentioned a Shinya Kawai. How'd you know his full name when we never told you? Oh, shit. 
You're only talking to us because you wanted dirt on Kauai. So who the hell are you? What do you think you're doing? Who sent you? No one. I'm just an arcade pen girl. Don't jump to conclusions. So, could you stop? Really? Yeah, my bad. Guess you don't really look suspicious. You fucking moron! Don't you realize he's playing you? Uh, he's right. No charming your way out of this one. Start talking or else. I'm Saori Shirosaki, attorney at law. Unhand me this instant. Ooh, you're gonna sue? You think I give a crap about what your job is? I'm saying things will go very badly for you if you keep this up. Big talk for a chick dressed in the nines to get info. Huh? Sorry, Chan? Yeah. You even try to fuck with us, lady! Sorry, Chan! Huh? What the? Ugh! Beat it, punk. You got you, son. Asshole! <laughs> I swear, these jerks are popping up like roaches. Um... No thanks needed. Just be careful on your own. Especially when you're beautiful. Thank you so much, Higashi-san. I just said you don't... Wait. How'd you know my name? It's me, Shirosaki. From Genda Law Office. It's been a while. Holy shit! No way! <laughs> I didn't realize. Shirosaki Sensei. I didn't recognize you. You look incredible. You're the one who is incredible. This is all my fault. I was the one who put Marisan in danger. You really saved us. <gasps> Young, strong, handsome. That's three out of three for me. Those guys were RK. Town's practically overrun with them these days. If you'd like, I can escort you somewhere safe. I got nothing but time on my hands. Oh, you don't say. Perfect. Who says we can't still salvage some fun out of tonight? Oh, uh, before we do that, let me call Yagami-san. Yagami's still a jackass, I see. When Shirosaki-sensei calls, you pick up in two rings. It is strange that he's not picking up. I'll try again. Wait, he was killed? Uh-huh. Kinda gives me deja vu now that I think about it. Here you have Kawaii and Mikoshiba. Two known school bullies, and they both end up murder victims? That could be for a number of reasons. It's not rare for people to disappear in Kamurocho. Usually the trouble is money or women. Maybe that was the case for Kawai. Could be. Okay. We'll investigate Kawai a bit more on our end. With RK asking around, word on the street will be loud enough to hear. Alright, thanks. Pardon me, did you have business with Sawa-sensei? Yeah, the faculty meeting's over, right? It just wrapped up. But Sawa-sensei went home in the middle of it, about an hour ago. What? Apparently she got a call from her apartment manager, saying her place was broken into. Broken into? She told me to tell you that if you came around. Okay then, do you think you could give me her contact info or something? No, I don't think I can. Oh, I'll just give her a quick call. One moment. Now 
she's not answering. They're probably busy. But I guess she's home then? I'd say so. Her place is within walking distance. It is? Sawa-sensei lives in Ijincho? Uh, yes, but I really shouldn't be giving that kind of info out. Sure. I appreciate the need for privacy. You've been a big help. Well, do you think you could tell me Sawa-sensei's address? Come again? Not too long ago, she got a call that her apartment was broken into. And another teacher tried to call her, but she wouldn't answer. So, what? Are you going to go check on her yourself? At her place? She's within walking distance, isn't she? I believe so. But this is a young woman, living by herself. I shouldn't be giving you her address without her permission. We're detectives. Give us a bit of time, I'm sure we can find out ourselves. But on the other hand, that wouldn't be best for either party now, would it? Then can't you just ask her yourself tomorrow? Chairman, you're aware of the Hiro Mikoshiba murder footage, right? Yes, of course I am. But from what I've heard from police sources, it's very likely that video was faked. Well, I have it on good authority it wasn't faked at all. So for the sake of argument, let's say the video's real. And that Ahara is the one behind having posted it deliberately. He's got the criminal affairs department saying it's probably faked. So the police are playing right into his hand. And let's say his motive in all this is to avenge his son's suicide. The justice for his bullying that he never got. Now wait just a moment. We proved in court that no bullying had taken place here. Sad as it was, the trial concluded that bullying wasn't what drove poor Ehara-kun to suicide. Actually, before Toshiro-kun killed himself, Sawa-sensei reported a bullying incident to his homeroom teacher. What? But at the trial, she wasn't able to testify to that. She had no choice but to deny the whole thing. From Ahara's perspective, that was unforgivable. And after all that, Mikoshiba was murdered, and now Sawa-sensei isn't picking up her phone following a break-in at her place. What are you implying here? It's like you're saying she's going to be next. I just want to check up on her. If it turns out the break-in isn't linked, I'll turn right around. And I'll make sure nobody knows the chairman gave me her address. Well, fine. I understand. Kawana? What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> that was quick. I guess we couldn't ask for a better piece of bait. Kick us off, Akutsu.
The bullying that pushed Toshiro Ehara over the edge echoes a previous tragedy. Years before, another boy attempted suicide and remains comatose. Yagami makes his way to Sawa Sensei's apartment, hoping to get some answers that will shed some light on the incident. But, as if by coincidence, he encounters Kuwana instead. What ties could an earnest school teacher and an underground handyman share? Kawana? What the hell are you doing here? You forget to mention you had a connection to Sawa Sensei? Or what? Awkward. Do you or not? And don't pretend you're just here to fix a toilet. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> Now it's RK on top of you. Yagami, we've got more incoming. What is this? These idiots aren't after you. It's me they really want. And I just walked into their trap. What could they possibly want with you? To come all the way from Kamurocho? Akutsu, what is this about? Why do you want her? Looks like they don't feel like talking about it. Get these two fuckers first. <sighs> but try to leave them breathing if you can. Sawa Sensei. Yes? Don't open your door until the cops get here, okay? I have to go make sure Kiwana's all right. But what about you, Yagami-san? I'm fine. But actually, how do you and Kiwana know each other? Sawa Sensei? Fine. Just please stay in your room, okay? Hey! 
hell you looking at? Not trying to get in our way, are you? Yeah, I am. But I'm in a hurry myself, so I'm not gonna hold back, all right? Eh? Big words for a little shit. You're nothing without your friend Kaito. Aren't you the one screwing with me? Besides, I'm not behind any of this. All right, enough of your bullshit. You better say a quick prayer, asshole. Been waiting for you. You a slow runner or something? Uh, they got here before I did. Yagami, sticking your nose in our business again. How about I stick you in an oil barrel and see if you float? That's a halfway decent threat as close to the sea. Ooh, the great detective sounds intimidated. If we make it out of this, I've got some questions that need answering. Sawa sensei won't talk. I wouldn't worry about the future. <laughs> Your life is coming to an end soon. Yagami! Kawana! Oh, fine. At least you could have done to say thank you. We ain't done, Yagami! I get you want to play tough, but... Do you ever quit? It's not over till it's over, you little shit. The hell's that? Sawa so, sensei Stop it! Someone's here too? I wouldn't have expected you and this bitch to be connected. What the hell do you think you're doing? This has nothing to do with her. You're the detective, aren't you? You figure it out. Huh? Time's up. Toss his phone before we go any further. His GPS will lead his friends straight to us. Glorified amateurs at this stuff. 
The technique for knocking someone out takes practice to get down. Soma. Oh good, no brain damage. Man, I'm glad you're tough as nails. Now we can get to the fun part, huh? Yagami-san here just saved your asses. You wouldn't be standing if he didn't come around. There's no way we could have known this asshole would show up. Not my fault everything went to shit. This was your operation anyway. Fine, it's okay. But you need to make sure you keep your boys in check from here on. Huh? <laughs> Did that hurt? <sighs> it hurt, right? See? You all see? First comes pain, and then the fear. You have to start with pain. Fear won't work if you haven't given them reason. Slap them around, but you do need to keep them conscious. Enough to keep the fear alive. That's how you get what you want to hear. Am I right? I can tell when someone's lying. My superiors found that useful. Probably why they kept me around. Now, no playing dumb and none of your tricks. Don't underestimate me, Yagami-san. So, what's the deal between you and that lady teacher? Uh, we're colleagues, as of a few days ago. Fuck are you talking about? Stay out of this, Akatsu. Huh? I'm telling you to shut up and leave this to me. I'm focusing. Besides, Yagami-san here is telling us the truth. <sighs> He's just being a little vague, is all. So what do you mean, Sawa-sensei is your colleague? I was asked to look into a bullying case at Serio High. That's all I meant by it. How about that? What'd you do to her? Oh, she's sound asleep now, I'm sure. Our business isn't with her, anyway. You want Kiwana? Right. About that. You keep calling him Kiwana. That's not who we know him as. Huh? Kiwana is his alias. A fake name? That's right. So tell me, what is he? What do you know him for? You get two seconds to answer. What does this Kuwana guy do? He's a handyman. An Ijincho. Everybody knows him. He's been taking jobs in the area for a long time now. A handyman, huh? Well, from the way it sounds, you haven't known each other very long. <sighs> yeah. His real name's Kitakata. Ring any bells? Well, there you have it. Your face says you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> so then, any idea where your Kuwana-san went? We have some business with him. I wouldn't tell you even if I knew. Of course you wouldn't. And I suppose that's not a lie. But it's probably more accurate to say you don't know where he is, either. Turns out you don't have a damn thing on him. <sighs> Shit. Know what that means? <sighs> it means you have no more use for me. Shame to be smart and still lose, huh? Now, I got a question for you. Did you really think you'd walk out of here alive? Or is it gonna be in a body bag? The fear in your eyes tells me everything I need to know. And you're probably right. <laughs> you aren't gonna enjoy what little time you have left. It's gonna be painful as hell. Because I'll be the one enjoying it. 
What brings you to a Jin show and after a teacher? And why Kawana too? How do you even know him? I could tell you this little part and give a good night. Except I ain't feeling so generous. You didn't think we were done yet, did you? <laughs> hey! Fire that thing up. Get him on his feet. And I don't want to see him squirming. Not every day you get a chance like this. Record this shit. Yo. How quickly can a chainsaw kill a guy it should be the video title when we upload it? This kind of shit gets so many views. Am I right, Yagami? We'll go in slow and get your fingers all cut to shreds. <laughs> we'll take that up to the right wrist, then we'll switch over to the left side. Right forearm, left forearm. Why don't we make this formal? Take first dips. You show us how it's done. You, you want me to do it? Time to man up. We gotta show the world what happens when you fuck with RK. Killing shits like him is what puts hair on your chest, guys. Just try not to kill him until everyone gets a turn. Get to work! But, but sir... Figure it out. Akutsu. He won't do it himself, you know. <laughs> Recording it puts the evidence of a murder out there on video. And he won't be on it. But you guys will be. Who do you think they'll come for, moron? You still talking? Fill your intestines on the fucking floor! Company. Uh, Kaito, how the hell? How'd you fucking find us here? Uh, uh, Kaito, secure. Suppose I ought to thank you, boys, for keeping Tuck nice and comfortable, Akutsu. Yeah, but we were just getting to the grand finale. You two can have front row seats. I'll pass. This show kind of sucks. Block all the doors! These three are fucking dead. You hear me, boys? I don't want anyone leaving the building! Good call. I don't want anyone leaving either. Not till I'm done with you. Don't be a tough guy, Talk. Feel free to take a breather if you need to. I don't know about that, Kaito-san. He's got that look. That's the face he makes when he's got a score to settle and some ass to kick. You still haven't gotten your fill of this, Yagami? <laughs> I'll admit this is kind of fun, man. Maybe killing you would be a mistake. I've got an even better idea. I'll tie you up and keep you as a pet. You know what? I think I could punch you as many times as I want right now. But in circumstances such as they are, no one could even blame me. Huh? I'm saying I've earned a little payback, Akutsu. Let's go! Yeah. 
What the hell does R.K. want with Kuan? What did he do? Tell me how Sawa Sensei and Kuan are connected. You ask too many questions, you fucking asshole. Tell me, why go to all the effort in Kamurojo to find Shinya Kawai? What are you trying to do? Oh, shit. Man, that guy's invincible. And he's faster than he looks. Asshole. He knew it was a lost cause, so he took off at the first opportunity. I'm guessing that's why he was holding back. Are you serious? He couldn't be that sharp. Nah. He's definitely got some skills. And we better start taking him seriously. I'm just glad you had the mind to tip off Kaito-san that I wasn't picking up your calls. That got Tsukumo to track my phone over GPS and locate me using the town security cameras. Long story short, you saved me. I had to try something. I'm the one who dragged you into this after all. But you know, the first person to suspect something was Higashi-san. He thought it was strange for you to be suddenly unavailable. <laughs> better thank him too. By the way, I'd like to share the details I recently gathered on Shinya Kawai. Kawai was a bully at Kurokawa Academy. Five years ago, he was abducted by individuals thought to be his acquaintances. A worker at a girls' bar witnessed this, and based on that, RK apparently deduced that Kawai was murdered. Got it. Then I suggest you steer clear of RK as much as possible. They fly off the handle faster than the Yakuza. Right. I never imagined things would get this dangerous. We just got back to Sawasensei's apartment. I thought RK was in Kamurocho looking for Kawai. But they came to ambush a handyman named Kawana. Did you say handyman? Yeah, but he plays a wider field than your average Mr. Fixit. He's popular on the Jincho Underground. Even Kawana was a fake name. And this mystery man has some connection to Sawa Sensei? Yeah, and I'm about to ask her about him directly. I need to get everything I can out of her this time. Understood. We're still dealing with a lot of unknowns, so take care of yourself, okay? I'll be alright. I'm with two guys I can trust now. Yo, what's Sawa Sensei's room number? Just hold your horses. I'm coming with you. Sure is quiet. This is where the fight went down? Yeah. But to look at it, you wouldn't think anything had happened here. <clears throat> Sawa Sensei? You there? Geogamy. What's up? The door. It's unlocked. Huh? Sawa-sensei? 
No, we talk. The school teacher, Yokosawa, is murdered in cold blood, and Yagami is torn with grief. Her death is merely collateral damage to Soma of RK. Soma's real prey is Kawana, who narrowly escapes his trap. It seems Kawana had buried his true identity among a host of other secrets, and to unearth them, Yagami crawls deeper down the rabbit hole. That's fine. I get it. You don't want us touching anything inside the room. Is it okay to wait for you inside then? Some private investigators from Kamurocho. Yagami-san and Kaito-san. Yeah, I asked them to help us out with a case we were on a couple days ago. Yes, see you soon. They're coming. The cops are on their way. All right. She was murdered at the hands of Soma. Master. He lied when he said they had no business with her. Why did it have to be her? How did she get pulled into all this? If it's answers you want, you gotta be a detective, Talk. We can see the kind of shit that normal people miss. We'll notice what they can't. For now, can you put aside the pain and do the work you need to do? I think he's right. First, let's narrow our focus. It's not about who or how she was murdered. What's more important here is to figure out the answer to the why. Let's consider her connections. We know one of them was to Kowanda the Handyman. Where that leads, is that Soma's gang was after Kawana, and that's why they broke in. In that case, the clues that we're after here are her personal relationships. There's our lead. Something that shows how a teacher could be connected to a guy like Kawana. Yeah. Except Kawana's a fake name, just his alias. His real name was... Kitakanta. Soma gave us that. Suspicious. There's one visible wound here. What do you think, Kaito-san? Sure is tiny. Think she was stabbed with some kind of long needle? An ice pick, most likely. Soma was holding one up to her. Yeah, looks like it. What the? 
Yagami-san, isn't that your book from when Sawa-sensei went to Kurokawa Academy? Wouldn't there be photos of people like Yui Mamiya and that bully Kawaii in there? Oh, yeah, you're probably right. Weird that there's so much blood around it. Maybe she was trying to leave us a clue. What do you want to do? Take a peek inside? Kind of frowned on the mess of the murder scene, yeah? If you're gonna look, make it quick. The cops will be here any minute. There's not enough time to check the whole thing. I'm gonna hang on to it for now. I'll turn it over to the police later. It's now or never. I won't get another chance to come back to this room. You're gonna take it? Really? Is that even legal? Of course not. But fuck legal this time. Those shady Kurokawa Academy graduates might be connected to Mikoshiba's murder. But we're the only ones with that lead right now. The cops could turn this place upside down and still miss that. Hmm, good point. It's better off with us then. Feel like that's what Sawa Sensei wanted. Uh... It's now or never. Sugiyura, we'll deal with the cops. You take the yearbook and get out of here. Uh, I have to play the thief? Play? Isn't that exactly what you fucking did back in Kamurocho? Why you gotta bring that up? Fine, fine, I'll do it. I see. So, Hachat, according to you, the guy who killed Sawa-sensei was... Kazuki Soma. He's the leader of a bunch of thugs in Kamurocho known as RK. Yeah? Well, great. Case closed. Then what's your take on the murder scene, Nabe-san? Tone it down, buddy. Remember who's got the badge here. There are footprints of several different men who have been in Sawa-sensei's room. That includes yours, by the way. We'll be analyzing these footprints first, and we'll check any security footage in the surrounding area. We'll ask around for eyewitnesses and narrow down our suspects. And we'll look into RK too, of course. Appreciate your help with that, Detective Yagami. I just saw the coroner walk in. You saw the body too, right? Yeah, just to get a rough idea. The body will be taken in for an autopsy. Does your rough idea include the cause and time of death? Cause of death? A single stab from behind into the nape of the neck with a weapon similar to an ice pick. As for the time, we're estimating she's been dead for about three hours. Three hours? That means it must have been right after I saw her on my phone. Nabe-san, the police need to get a warrant for Soma. We're asking HQ about him as we speak. We used a damn mugshot for a warrant. Then isn't it time to hit the street and get in some thug faces? Assume any face you don't recognize is from RK. I get how you feel, ma'am, but pull it together. Actually, I'm curious about that Kuwana fella, too. He's lived in Ijincho forever. Why were Kamrocho thugs after him? And now I hear Kuwana isn't even his real name? He and Sawa since they were connected, but how? I'm looking for those same answers myself. <sighs> so you know jack shit about anything important. Then you can go on home. And just make sure we can reach you. Sure about this, Nabe-san? Yeah. Assholes like him work better on a loose leash. Foul-mouthed as fuck. But not bad, Pops. <sighs> what now? Nabe-san, aren't you gonna ask me about Ahara? You know I went to see him in prison. Oh, that. You saw the video of Ahara killing Mikoshiba, didn't you? I was coming to talk to Sawa-sensei about it. Your point? I think there may have been a link between what happened to Sawa-sensei and Mikoshiba's murder. In which case, wouldn't you want to pump a heart for information? Why aren't you jumping on that? We got orders from the top that a heart is off limits. Forever. They said if we want to try to peg him as Mikoshiba's killer, we'd have to completely flip the guilty verdict on his harassment case. Not exactly the kind of shit a beat cop can pull off. Besides, nobody seems to want to investigate the Mikoshiba murder. Not us, not HQ, not even the prosecution. 
So cops get to just quit working an investigation because they don't feel like it? <laughs> if there was even a hope we could close it, every cop here would be all over it. Everyone knows Ahara stinks to high hell, and they still won't let us touch the goddamn thing. It's above our pay grade. We bury the case so deep it never sees the light of day. Yeah, feels like Sawa Sensei's case is about to get the same treatment. Hey, I told you to watch it, buddy. Save the dirty looks for your superiors. They're the bastards so desperate to sweep this under the rug. Hell do you! Cool it, Sakurai. This is all very sudden. We don't have many details yet. And as you've heard, the police are working to find answers as we speak. Sawa Sensei. Well, she got mixed up in some sort of incident. This may attract press to the school, and some of them may even wish to speak to you. But please, do your best to ignore them. Again, we don't have all of the facts, and it's not for all of you to, well, None of you are under any obligation to speak to them, so please, don't. All that I can ask, for now, spare a prayer for Sawa Sensei, please, if you can. Please. Please. <laughs> okay. We better get everyone back to class. Starting with the third years. Excuse me, Yagami-san? If you don't mind, Chairman Okuda said he'd like to speak with you if you would be on campus today. It's about Sawa-sensei. Yeah, I can do that. Will he be in his office? Yes. Thank you for everything, sir. Yagami-san. Oh. Hey. I still can't believe what happened to Sawa-sensei. Yeah. I know. Do you know anything about it? I saw the scene of the crime. I was the first one to find her. What? The killer's still on the loose. But I know who it is. Is there any way I can help? Maybe you could share some details about the case. No. Not this time. This one's too dangerous. I'm not gonna get you involved. But... Just leave Sawa-sensei's case to me. Don't you have your own cases to solve? Yagami-san... <sighs> okay. Listen. You're a brilliant kid. You can't afford to let this throw you off your game, right? Yes. You're absolutely right. If I let that happen, it'll damage the MRC's credibility. Exactly. So here's what I'm thinking, Amasawa. Let's just carry on like normal. And please spread the word to the rest of the MRC. That'd help me out a bunch. Yes. I can do that. Enter. Thank you for coming. Sure. No problem. Have a seat, if you would. In that detective's report, Sawa-sensei was... Well, it said you were the one who found her body. That's right. You had been concerned for Sawa-sensei's safety before the incident. You're able to see things I can't. You have something of a gift for that, Yagami-san. I wish I could agree with that. But... I'm overlooking details. I'm letting too much slip away. And quite frankly, there's still a lot that I haven't figured out yet, either. Like what? 
May I have an example? There's this local handyman. Kawana is the name he goes by in the city. Right before it happened, I ran into him in front of Sawa Sensei's apartment. There's no way it was a coincidence. So, you think he could be the culprit? Actually, I don't think so. Not really. That said, Kawana has something to do with all this. Sawa Sensei may have gotten caught up in his mess. In fact, Kawana is just an alias he uses, and he's being hunted by these thugs from Kamrocho. They're a gang called RK, and it's weird, but they've been looking for this punk named Kawai. And Kawai's connected to it, too. Sawa Sensei went to the same school as him 13 years ago. Wow, these details are flying so far over my head. Your investigation has gone well beyond what I can comprehend, and it's left me in the dust. But I just can't do this anymore. Between my own faculty and the press, I'm being bombarded. I'm afraid it's just too much for me to bear. I'm sorry to hear that. But you know what? What's been the hardest part? Is feeling so powerless as all these young people have their lives cut short. Because Shibukun being discovered dead. Ehara-san committing murder on video. And now poor Sawa Sensei's tragedy too. I can't help but feel in my heart that these incidents are related. That somewhere below the surface all these misfortunes are connected to the same root. I would have to agree. Then I suppose it's only a matter of digging down deep enough. Though I couldn't begin to imagine how much soil would have to be turned to uproot it. But one thing, Yagami-san, if you would, could I ask that you continue to keep digging until you get to the bottom? Can you? Sawa-sensei deserves to have her chance at justice. A wonderful teacher like her. Why? She had a whole future to look forward to, the poor woman. And now this happens. It's just not right. As it stands, I still need to collect more evidence. So you know, I can't make any promises just yet. I could hit a dead end. But... No matter what anyone does, no matter who tries to stop me, I'm gonna keep digging. You're a saint. These past few days have felt like a never-ending nightmare. What a breath of fresh air. And I appreciate the good news. Of course. I'm glad we could talk, Chairman. And now, Sawa Sensei's old class is going to be my next worry. I'm sure you're well aware that that class has some students with a pension for causing trouble. I fear that with her gone, we may need to prevent a relapse for those bullies you stopped. Are you referring to Kodasan then? Hmm. I understand. While I'm working on campus, I'll keep an eye on them. Yagami-san. What do you want? You know, things have been really weird around here ever since you showed up. First, they find Miko Shiba Sensei's body. Now Sawa Sensei winds up getting murdered. You the angel of death or something? Is that it? I wouldn't blame you for thinking that. Everyone's so damn gloomy. It sucks. Sawa Sensei was popular with all the boys. But her classes were super easy and honestly pretty boring. You won't catch me moping around crying about it like all these losers. Ha <laughs> ha! Hypocrites. You assholes were practically celebrating what happened to Miko Shiba Sensei. Hey, we've heard enough out of you! Yeah? Fuck off, you little twerp!
What do you want, Coda? Yagami-san, well, we're fine. There's a lot we don't understand, so we just feel a bit vulnerable right now. But, um, well, if you learn more about Sawa-sensei, could you please keep us in the loop, too? Oh, please, bitch! What's with this goody two-shoes bullshit? Fucking chill, Akane. What's your problem? Like I said before, I'm a detective, and I'm looking into Hiro Mikoshiba's murder. That's why I was talking to Sawa-sensei. It's highly likely she got wrapped up in that case. So make no mistake, I'm going to find the truth about what happened to them both. <laughs> Kinda pointless. The internet's already branded Mikoshiba-sensei as the villain in all this. Everyone says he had it coming since he used to be a bully himself. Yeah, I know. Anyway, if you're interested in hearing my report, just drop me a line. Maybe seeing my work might put things into perspective for you. <laughs> Detective my ass. Just get out of my face! So, about Akane... She was really into Mikoshiba-sensei. They got along great, chatted all the time. Then all of a sudden, he just disappeared. She thought they had a connection, but turns out it was only one way. Now, she's always so pissed off. Keeps driving herself over the edge because she can't even reach the brakes. <sighs> I'm not saying all this because I expect you to forgive us. The fact that you recognize you did some awful things is a step in the right direction, at least. I'm sorry, Coda. For everything we did to you. You can't expect her to ever forgive you. If anything, expect that she never will. <sighs> I know. That said, good job apologizing. <laughs> Thanks. Welcome back, Tak. Good to see you, Yagamishi. How'd things go at school? The chairman told the entire student body about Sawa-sensei at an assembly. Everyone's pretty shaken up. Yeah. I can't even imagine. We've been waiting for you, Yagamishi. Let's plan our next moves. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. While in a meeting yesterday, Sawa-sensei received a call that her apartment was broken into, prompting her to go home. Judging from the events that followed, RK must have called her using the apartment manager's name. And that's how they got to Sawa-sensei. But R.K. wasn't after Sawa-sensei. They were actually after Kuwana, weren't they? Yeah. Akatsu and Soma both said so. I think Sawa-sensei was used to lure Kuwana out. Why would Sawa-sensei be bait to draw out Kuwana? How the hell are those two connected? That too, but why is R.K. even after Kuwana-san? Thugs from Kamurocho want a handyman in Nijincho? Right. There's still a lot we don't know. We need to find Kuwana before R.K. does and get some answers out of him. Kuwana isn't even his real name. Apparently, it's Kitakata. R.K. didn't seem to be familiar with the name Kuwana. Truth is, we don't know anything about Kuwana. All we know is that he's a handyman in Ijinsho. 
I haven't been able to contact Kawana-san since yesterday, but I left a message asking him to reply. Where's the office for his handyman business? He ran his whole operation from a cell phone. Not even his business card lists an address. Oh yeah, Kaito-san. Didn't you call up all the places we went drinking? Did you find out where he lives? Yep, just found out. Looks like Kuana lives in some kind of prefab shack off West Central Street. This sounds like pretty shitty conditions for a guy charging up the ass for his time. Well, if we know that much, we might as well go take a look. Huh. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. Tsukumo, we'll talk more later. <laughs> You never slow down, Yagamishi. Is this Kiwana's place? Yeah, I think so. Guess it's kind of fitting for an unlicensed handyman. Huh? What is it? The door's been forced open. Maybe with a crowbar or something. If anyone was in here before us, it had to have been R.K. Aside from us, they're the only ones after him. That means they're already a few steps ahead of us. R.K.'s got the numbers behind him. We can't beat him to the punch every time. I don't think kawana has been back since last night. He probably caught on that he's a wanted man. He might not even be in Ijin Cho anymore. Then what do we do here? His real name's supposedly Kitakata. I want to know who he really is and why he used a fake name. That'll make his connection to Sawa-sensei clearer. So you want to find clues that point to his true identity? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth, Kaito-san. Suspicious. It looks like they just wanted to trash the place. Yep, pretty much screams RK. Nothing more than a bunch of punks. Suspicious. An ashtray. Huh. That's weird. What? With all the gross garbage in here, this ashtray is oddly empty. Think so? What the? Hey. I mean, yeah, it's clean and all, but so what? Could just be freshly empty. Except it hasn't been washed or even used in a while. See the layer of dust on it? Okay. And? You think a dusty ashtray is going to get us Kuwana's identity? Maybe. Or maybe it's nothing. Hmm. Hey. Leftovers from a ramen cup. Would it have killed him to clean up a bit? I'm starting to think this place was a dump even before it got ransacked. Suspicious. Cigarettes. Are these Kiwanis? I don't think so. Pretty sure he's been vaping. Oh, that's right. He smokes e-cigarettes. An ashtray that's hardly been used. Regular cigarettes that aren't being smoked. That bug you or something? Plenty of folks smoke normal cigarettes and vape, too. True. But a detective can't find answers without going over every last detail first. Suspicious. Hey, look at this lighter. What now? Whoa. A USB memory stick disguised as a lighter. Damn. Did you just hit the jackpot or what? That has to be important if Kuwana was hiding it like this. What matters is the data on it. We'd be able to check it now if we had a computer. Then 
Why don't we head back to Tsukumo's? Oh, it got dark. Huh? What's the matter, Tak? Looks like a meet and greet. Oh, yeah? <sighs> Think they're RK? Well, they're the only ones looking for Kiwana other than us, right? Don't see Soma or Akutsu, though. Except the fucking B team. Probably for the best. If Soma was here, I don't think I could stay cool. Yeah, me neither. Which one of you is gonna talk? Where are Soma and Akatsu? There's no point in talking to a dead man. Uh-huh. Well, if that's how you're gonna play it. And we're not holding back either. Where are Soma and Akutsu? I want to talk to them. We can't contact them. I swear. They're the ones who contact us. It's always been like that. Uh, figured as much. <clears throat> Most of the RK crew are just chumps. Yeah. I bet even Soma is just another piece on the board, taking orders from the real mastermind. Thugs don't work gigs that don't pay. Yet they came to Ijinsho, outside their turf, to commit murder. That's true. Sounds like someone's funding them. Must be some generous perks. Definitely. Otherwise, Soma and the others wouldn't be causing so much chaos over here. Then, who's the one pulling RK's strings? I don't know who it is, but I know what he's trying to do. Which is? Catch Kuwana. RK's just following orders. Sawa-sensei was probably collateral damage. Yeah, that makes sense. Shit. I swear I'm gonna drag this bastard out on his ass. If we keep looking for Kiwana, we'll run into the one behind this all eventually. And this could be our first clue. Then we'd better get back to Tsukumo's. What's going on out here? Are you friends of Kiwana-san's? Uh, yeah, we are. And those gentlemen on the ground? Those guys. Oh, yeah, they're just wasted. Little nap and they'll head right on home. Ah, I see. <laughs> well, that's just fine. Excuse me, but you know Kiwana, don't you? Sure. I mean, he's lived next door for the last ten years. But he's a handyman. Anytime we were short-handed, he'd come by and help us out. We pay him with our daily special. Oh, I haven't heard from Kiwana since last night. Do you happen to know any places he visits often? Let's see. He has an uncle that took him in when he first came to Yokohama. Called him a distant relative or something. He's an ex-Yakuza running a bar since he got out of the game. Apparently, this uncle is how he started getting gigs around town. What did Kiwana do before he became a handyman? Hmm. Beats me. Uh, maybe some kind of corporate job? I don't think I've ever asked. Where can we find Kuana's uncle's bar? Oh, the bar's called Siren. It's over in Chinatown. I've been there two or three times myself. The owner is a real nice guy. Hard to tell he was ever a Yakuza. Then we better get over there, too. Can't afford to fall behind RK again. Let's hurry. Thanks for everything. And sorry for bothering you. 
Oh, don't mention it. Siren. This is it, Tuck. This is the bar Kuana's relative runs. Hello? Anybody here? This place empty too? It's definitely messy in here, but it wasn't exactly ransacked. Yeah, more like someone had to skip town in a hurry. Did the owner already make a break for it then? Be smart if he did. What with RK about to come hunt down Kuwana and all. Let's roll, talk. Hey, uh, the name of this place was Siren, wasn't it? Huh? Yeah. Siren? Soma, that was well played. How silly of me. This pretty little thing is for women. Have I told you what RK stands for yet? It's red knife. The owner must have smelled trouble coming. He took off before I could find him. Tell me, why did you kill Sawa Sensei? Uh, I'm afraid she knew too much. And that's all. And that's all? You're in the same boat. We can't afford to ignore you anymore. And you already made a mistake. You didn't kill me when you could have. I'll own up to that. Akutsu wasn't equipped to handle the task. Well then, now you pay the price for it. Will I? Kaito's down and you're by yourself. Should be easy. Well, you're scrappy, aren't you? Impressive. Maybe I should have prioritized stabbing you over Kaito. Uh, 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 you're kind of struggling to stand, aren't you? Give it a second. That kick went to your temple. I'm sure your head is spinning. Trying to rush it will only make it worse. Incidentally, Sawa sensei didn't suffer long like you will. What the hell? <laughs> hmm. 
whoever that is has terrible timing. What the hell are you doing in my bar? Hello? Is this the owner? Yes. Kuanakun warned me you'd show up. I decided I'd get out of there before you did. Don't expect that I'll ever come back either. All I wanted with Guanasan was to have a little chat. No need to go running for your lives now. <laughs> Spare me the lies. I already know you broke into a young woman's home and killed her. Come on. You wouldn't even hesitate on an old man in his 70s. Pass the phone to Yagami-san, please. Otherwise, I'm calling the cops over there. What could you possibly want with him? Quit stalling and give him the phone. Unless you'd rather I push a button and call the cops. I'm done talking to you. The owner of the bar would like a word with you. Sorry, but this'll have to wait. Can you get an ambulance over to your bar right away? My partner took a knife to his abdomen. What? Please, you have to hurry! I only showed up at your bar so I could ask you about Kiwana. Does this mean you want something in return? We'll get that sorted out. If you promise to meet me alone. No, I won't be at Survive for long. If you don't make it in ten minutes, you'll never hear from me again. That's one way to motivate someone. <laughs> Clock's ticking, by the way. So, Survive in the Entertainment District? See you soon. It better be. Apologies for the wait. Let's go. Kiwana is pursued by RK, the crime ring running Kamarucho. Determined to prevent any more deaths, Yagami searches high and low for the handyman, but the search leads to a maze of dead ends. As the situation becomes dire, a lifeline appears at the other end of a phone. The caller offers a lead, one that expires too quick for comfort. I only showed up at your bar so I could ask you about Kiwana. Does this mean you want something in return? We'll get that sorted out. If you promise to meet me alone. No, I won't be at Survive for long. If you don't make it in ten minutes, you'll never hear from me again. Yagami-san, glad you could make it. You're the owner of Siren? Yeah. Let's take this to the bar. Follow me. So, I hear you're a Kamurocho detective. Yeah, 
and you're a distant relative of Kiwanis. Can I ask your name? No need. This will be the only time we meet. But to Kuwanakun, I guess you'd call me his uncle-in-law. <laughs> Everyone's got a dumbass uncle in the family. And that's me. After all, I'm ex-Yakuza. Based in Yokohama? Yeah. The Seryu clan. After I got out, I looked after the shop for 20 years. Till today. You mean Siren, right? What'll happen to it once you've skipped town? Hmm. <laughs> None of your concern. Fair enough. <laughs> Guess you detective types can't help but ask questions. So you two are related. I noticed you didn't mention Kiwana being an alias. Hmm. Huh. Done your homework, I see. His real name's Kitakata. At least, that's what the Kamurocho thugs call him. You're trying to see if I'll give up his name. That's not why I'm here. Okay. Why did you call me exactly? Well, you see... Kuanakun wanted me to stop by his office and grab something for him. Such as? A pack of cigarettes with a lighter inside. Thing is, it was gone by the time I got there. Don't you mean a USB stick made to look like a lighter? Let's not beat around the bush here. Say, I figured you grabbed it. So of all things, Kawana wanted you to pick this up? Yes. And he prefers to keep that content private. So, if you could just hand that over. Now I'm curious. Care to tell me what's on here? Would you hand it over if I did? No. I'd still need to confirm you told the truth. Can't you tell Kuanakun's backed into a corner here? Asking an old man to help was his only choice. Let's be honest. I couldn't take that thing from you if I wanted to. All I can do is appeal to your sense of decency. Well, I've got to say, that's more persuasive than threats ever would be. But if you really want me to give this up, at least let me see Kiwana. I'd consider that, but he's already long gone. He was ready to cut out at the drop of a hat. If that's the case, unfortunately, I'll need to hold on to this. A high school teacher was killed by the thugs that went after Kiwana. Her name was Yokosawa, a young woman dedicated to her career. <sighs> I had met her while investigating the murder of a student teacher. But while trying to get her side of the story, I ended up running into Kiwana outside her apartment. Do you know anything about this woman? I don't. You're really drawing a blank? You don't know anything about criminals coming all the way from Kamurocho just to get a Kiwana? Do you at least know how they're connected to Sawa-sensei? Again, that's a negative. And this flash drive's my only concrete lead? <sighs> if it's so important to Kiwana, he should have come himself, rather than send a middleman. <sighs> Don't be so hard on him. I'm the one who taught him all his tricks. Are you saying Kiwana's ex-Yakuza too? Nah. He was just your average civvy before all this. But, circumstances as they were, he had no choice but to go underground. That's when he came to a gene show and I took him under my wing. I'm the one who suggested the handyman thing. <laughs> but he took to the underground with real gusto. What do you mean, gusto? I'm not just talking him up. He had good reasons for diving headlong into the shadows. Good reasons? Care to give me one or two? <sighs> You'll understand once you see what's on the lighter. Both Kuanakun's past and his purpose. That takes care of everything I have to say. 
Not sure it's such a good idea for me to just let you leave. Thinking about stopping me? Wouldn't be wise. This joint doesn't take kindly to that behavior. That's why this is the safest place in Ijincho, huh? Yep, and I'm glad your face is the last one I'll see in this city. Yagami. Oh, great. It's Claw Guy. You were with the Luma, right? They say you brought your little posse from Tokyo. You what to trust an outsider. Posse? Wait, don't tell me you think I'm RK. They're not even close to me. Hey, Tesso, you got this all wrong. Let's go. Come on, man. Who paid you to jump me this time? These Kamurucho douchebags show up, strutting around like they own our city. Then I hear some teacher chick gets killed after a break-in. Fuckers. Someone let him into Ijincho, right? Right? Look, I can see why you're pissed. But you figured coming after me was the answer? Figured I could at least try beating a few out of you. Office visits ain't my style. You've gotta appreciate that not everyone plays by gang rules, man. What I don't appreciate is Kamurocho trash. Now why are they here, Yagami? I'd like to find that out myself. But I'll tell you this much, I'm not your enemy. I was first on the scene of that murder. I knew the woman personally. The culprit is RK's leader, a guy named Soma. Shit, you serious? Then why is the rest of his crew here with him? Bought a muscle just to ice one lady. They're after a local handyman, Kawana. You know him? Yeah, matter of fact, I do. Why they want him so bad. I'm looking into that now. Which is why they're still after me. Not to mention they stabbed my partner. So the more you get in our way, the slower this'll go. Hmm. Gotcha. You understand then? How's about I make you the deal of a lifetime? Uh... So long as RK's messing around in my city. I don't mind calling you a brother. Really? Just like that? Sure. But I get to be Aniki, of course. You really think this is selling it? What you're missing here is, the Liumong never target a brother. So now, if anyone lays a finger on you, the Liumong's taking their head. Same rule for all the ladies here in Ijincho. Anyone gets fresh, they become fresh meat. You with me on that, brother? Ah, oh, this is gonna take some getting used to. Besides, making you a brother is the only way we save face for getting our asses handed to us, you know? Ah, uh, now the truth comes out. Anyway, let me know if you get any intel on RK. Especially where that chicken shit Soma might be. Just shoot me a location and it's done. We'll give that teacher her peace by torturing him to death. Ah, 
I was just thinking of calling you, Yagamishi. I heard Kaito-san got stabbed at Siren. Is that true, Yagami-san? What the hell happened? Look, I promise I'll fill you in, but right now I really need Tsukumo's help. With what? I found a USB drive at Kawanda's hideout. It was disguised to look like a lighter. We have to know what's on it. So, Kaito-san was attacked by that Soma guy too? Yeah, while we were chasing Kawana, Soma popped up and got him right in the gut. Almost got me too, to be honest. You're saying one guy almost single-handedly took down the Yagami Detective Agency? It's true. And right after, I got a call from Kawana's purported relative, who wanted me to hand over the flash drive. Apparently, what's on it will tell us Kawana's true identity and goal. When I open it, all I see is one data file. Of what? It's a video. I'll hit play once you guys are all ready. You good? Damn, what's on there? I can't take the suspense. Let's make it full screen. These little shits are the worst. One of them said something about Mitsuru Kusumoto stripping? Yeah, he was Sawa-sensei's classmate. Thirteen years ago, he jumped off the roof of Kurokawa Academy. He's Reiko Kusumoto's son, right? Vice Minister of the Health Ministry? Thirty years old and still in a coma. It seems we've stumbled on private video footage of Mitsuru Kusumoto being bullied. And it was on Kuwana-san's secret flash drive? Why would he have this? I don't know. But his uncle said it's our lead to Kuwana's real identity and motivation. Hmm. Huh. Uh, just a moment. This frame gives us a good look at the key players' faces. Why don't we try gleaning what we can from it? Sounds good. Let's dig in. Hey, this guy's face is familiar somehow. Oh, uh, I don't think I've seen him. I don't know him either. Who is he? I think I remember him. I saw him at the crime scene where Mikoshiba's body was. He was with more Kurokawa grads. He showed his ID to the Kanagawa detective. I think his name was Akaike. 
that gives us an interesting perspective, doesn't it? All the people in this bullying video seem to keep popping up around our case. Yeah, but the real question is why was Kuwana the one with the video? <clears throat> I feel bad for Mitsuru-kun. No one helped him, even with everything he was going through. Thirteen years ago, his mother was still just some nobody working at the Ministry of Health. She seems to have split with her husband and looks after her son on her own now. I don't know all the details, though. Hey, crazy theory, but what if this husband she left was actually Kuwana-san? And maybe he recorded this to secretly check on his son? No, Kuwana doesn't look like he could have a 30-year-old kid. Let's look for other possibilities. Uh-huh. This girl recording the bullying on her cell phone. Someone said her name in the video. Suzuki. There's another familiar face. So it all comes circling back to her, huh? Right. This Suzuki girl has a different name now. Yui Mamiya. The victim in the Ahara harassment case. Suzuki was her last name before getting married. Sawa-sensei also told me that Mitsuru Kusumoto and Mamiya were classmates 13 years ago. Yep. So we're looking at Yui Mamiya in high school. Mamiya-san, huh? What's she like underneath it all? Originally, word got around that Shinya Kawai was the one bullying Mitsuru Kusumoto. After watching this, though, the truth of the matter doesn't quite line up. There were really about 10 bullies involved at the time, and Yui Mamiya was one of them. Yeah. If this video got leaked, Mamiya and the other students in it would be in deep shit. They're living out their lives like nothing happened, despite being the ones who drove a kid into a coma. If word got out, they'd be crucified by the public. Their jobs, their families, their lives would all change for the worse. Hmm. <laughs> Suspicion. If I'm not mistaken, Shinya Kawai was the bully whose name got out to the public. Yeah. RK was hunting for him in Kamurocho pretty recently, too. I have no doubt the guy in the picture they showed me is the same guy in this video. Once RK came to the conclusion Kawai had been murdered, they came here to Ijincho, hunting down Kawana for whatever reason. September 17th, 13 years ago. It's past 4 p.m., so this would be after school. Oh, wait, this is... Got something? I just cross-referenced the date Mitsuru Kusumoto jumped. September 17th. Oh, shit. That can only mean this video was recorded very shortly before his suicide attempt. Uh-huh. The video may have provided some interesting connections, but we still don't have that crucial link. The link being the reason Kuwana-san came to possess this, of course. Right. Kuwana's either the one who recorded it himself, or is at least a recipient of the video from the original witness. Kuwana-san and Sawa-sensei knew each other somehow, right? Well, then, maybe Sawa-sensei recorded it 13 years ago, and then had Kuwana-san look into it as one of his handyman requests. It's possible, but it just feels off. Why's that? Because of what Siren's owner said to me. Okay. You'll understand once you see what's on the lighter. Both Kuwana-kun's past and his purpose. He said we'll know Kuwana's true identity once we watch the video. But that hasn't been the case so far. Yeah. Uh, what identity could we draw from a secret recording of some bullies? Assuming Kuan is in his early 40s, he would have been about 30, 13 years ago. What if he was a school teacher of the students in the video? In that case, we should consult the yearbook Segura she brought back. The one that was in Sawa Sensei's room? You still have yet to look through it. That's right. Let me go get it.
The way you're talking, I assume you've already taken a peek? We have, but unfortunately we didn't find Kawana-san's face among the teachers. This is the page for Mitsuru Kusumoto's class. Both Sawa-sensei and Mamiya are there too. So the homeroom teacher was... this guy. Apparently he witnessed bullies harassing Mitsuru multiple times, yet he would overlook it. All he did was smile and tell them not to overdo it. It's not Kawana. This is someone else. We checked the rest of the teachers too, but never spotted Kawana-san. Mitsuru Kusumoto. This picture doesn't look like it was shot for a yearbook. Correct. He was most likely already in a coma when photo time rolled around. Sawa-sensei isn't smiling at all in this. Huh. She did mention she blew off her class reunion. In fact, she hadn't kept in touch with her classmates at all. No surprise there. Mitsuru-kun would be bound to come up at some point. This is Yui Suzuki. She's definitely one of the girls in the video. Yet another classmate involved with Mitsuru Kusumoto. Seems like a bunch of the students on this page were in the video, huh? Yeah, but... I can't find Shinya Kawai in here. Oh... Yeah, you're right. He's not in there. If I'm not mistaken, Kawai left the school once he started catching flack for being Mitsuru-kun's bully. At least... That's what I read online. No real evidence yet, but it definitely sounds like how it would have played out. But the truth is, there were more bullies who should have seen consequences besides Kawai. <laughs> hey. The worst part is that his teacher knew. He even talked to the bullies about it, but all he said was, don't overdo it. But afterward, the public eviscerated him. He had to quit his teaching job. Hold on. If he was dismissed... You figure something out? The homeroom teacher at the time of the incident did take some flack. He got forced out of teaching. Yeah, what of it? If that's the case, couldn't this teacher in the yearbook just be filling in for the other one? I see. That definitely sounds likely. Let me search for the original teacher's name. There's a chance he won't be the same guy in the yearbook. Just give me a sec. Yagamishi, I found it. The name of Mitsuru Kusumoto's former homeroom teacher. You were right. It wasn't the same teacher in the yearbook. This one's name is Yu Kitakata. Kitakata? Huh? Don't tell me that's... His real name's Kitakata. Ring any bells? That's Kawana's real name. Soma said it to me once. So, Kuwana-san was... The original homeroom teacher? I just found a picture. This is Kitakata-sensei from 13 years ago. It's Kawana. That's him, all right. Yeah. Not only that, Sawa-sensei was part of this class, which makes Kawana her homeroom teacher, too. This is the link we've been looking for. Everything has clicked into place. Kawana-san was the linchpin of this case. So, 13 years ago, Yu Kitakata left teaching behind after Mitsuru-kun's incident and became Kawana the handyman. That's what made him turn to his uncle at Siren for help. He told me Kawana tried really hard to make it in the underground, had some good reason for it. For living a life in the shadows? What could that have been? get revenge on the bullies. Maybe Kawana blames the fact that he had to quit teaching on the bullies who caused it to happen. 
Then, maybe all his hatred got aimed at Shinya Kawai? Possible. He was abducted five years ago by individuals thought to be his acquaintances. Huh. You think one of them was Kawana-san? I wouldn't rule it out. RK might have learned of Kawana's involvement while searching for Kawai. Maybe they came to a gene show so they could get details on the incident from him? Yes, that would explain RK's arrival in town as well. Wh Hold up. Individuals who were his acquaintances? Meaning more people besides Kuwana-san, right? Could that mean... You got it. We already know this. Oh. The students in the video? Individuals acquainted with Kawai. They certainly fit the bill. But why would they wind up abducting him? Huh. Maybe Kawana asked for their help? No. He forced them to. What makes you say that? Well, Kawana had this on a secret flash drive, right? But to anyone in this video, it would be their worst nightmare for it to show up now. If it did, They'd be busted as bullies who drove a high school kid to suicide. Yep, it'd be a real disaster for them if that got out. They'd probably be done for in the public eye. Which means this video is Kawana's leverage. It's how he got them to go after Kawai. <sighs> you think this is enough leverage to drive people to murder, though? Kawai was killed, right? RK is the only one saying Kawai was murdered. No body's been recovered yet, either. Okay, hang on. I'm barely keeping up with this. Yeah, it's a bunch of what-ifs stacked on top of each other. But there is somebody who could potentially confirm this. Who'd that be? Someone in the video. Mamiya, for example. I've met with her at her home. If she was involved with Kawai's abduction, she could probably tell us what we want to know. I agree. Yagami Shi's provided a working theory that ties together the Kamurocho and Ijincho incidents. So if we can get Yui Mamiya to corroborate this, we should be able to extract even more information from her. Perhaps even including Kawana-san's whereabouts. Yeah. Looks like he hasn't given us the slip just yet. Man, what the hell is that guy's deal? Mikoshiba and Sawa-sensei's murders, Ahara's alibi, Kawai's disappearance. Kawana's most likely tied to everything. We'll get all the answers we need if we can find him. And I guess this is bringing us that much closer? <laughs> Hopefully. I should go see Yui Mamiya tomorrow. You should accompany him, Sugiyoroshi. Considering we seem to be kicking the investigation into high gear, with Kaito-san out of commission, I'm sure Yagami-shi could use a helping hand. I'll be fine right here. Your call, Tsukumo-kun. I'm cool with whatever. Thanks for lending him out, Tsukumo. I'll make sure he comes back in one piece. Hey, hey, don't underestimate him as a party member. He can hold his own if you let him. You know how they say your life flashes before your eyes when you're dying? <laughs> that shit's real talk. I saw it all, huh? Yeah, there I am, bleeding out. And suddenly I'm getting the third degree from Matsugane-san. Back when I was still just a rookie. Captain Hamura stares me down like, time to lose that pinky. And then, Higashi starts crying for me. Oh, if I'm gonna go, I ought to get a better final scene than that shit, right? Right? I'm sure it'll be rosier when the time comes for real. Glad you pulled through, man. That bastard Soma, though. Next time, he's fucked. We could have avenged Sawa-sensei if it weren't for that stupid ambush. Well, you didn't tell the cops about him, did you? Had to give the cops a statement, so I did. With a generous side of bullshit. That'll get you busted, you know. I'm joking. All I said was the truth. That I got knifed by the same twisted fuck who got Sawa-sensei. In that case, it's only a matter of time until Soma's arrested. So for now, we'll go after Kawana, the piece that ties it all together. We just have to find him before RK does. Kawana, huh? He's on my shit list too, just so you know. 
Huh? Kuwana must have had some sort of agenda back when he first met us. In fact, it's probably because you were looking into Mikoshiba. He palled around with me all because of that. I'm just a sucker of the agency, huh? I wouldn't say that. Still... The moment it asks for me to kick turns up, this is the shape I'm in. Just focus on getting better. Tsukuma will stop by later, too. What? Sugiura gonna give me the cold shoulder? He and I are off to question Mamiya. He said he'd drive us for Majincho and everything. So, we off to see Mamiya? I'm ready whenever you are. Yep, let's go. Alright, let's do this. If your theory is accurate, then Mamiya was involved in both Kawai and Mikoshiba's murders. And even if that's off, we can at least learn more about Kawana-san as a teacher. Hi, it's Yagami. I dropped by with Genda Law the other day. Not again. I have just a few more questions I'd like to ask you. You told me the last visit would be your only one. Seriously, why do you keep showing up here uninvited? Please, just leave me alone. I suppose I should mention, I'm here today as a detective, not a lawyer. So what? And my partner here is Sugiura. He's with an agency called Yokohama 99. Never heard of him. He's based in Ijinsho. He's working a case. Maybe you saw it on the news? The murder of Serio High Teacher Yokosawa, killed in her own apartment. You and Sawasan were classmates in high school, is that correct? After leaving Kurokawa 13 years ago, Sawasan moved to Ijinsho to teach. Uh, are you still there? What is it you want? I haven't seen Yokochan since graduation. Now go. You're barking up the wrong tree. Maybe you'll remember Kitakata-sensei then. I ran into him at Sawa-sensei's home right before the murder. He was your homeroom teacher at Kurakawa, but resigned after the Mitsuru Kusamoto incident. Just like you, he appears to be connected to Sawa-san. So why am I being singled out? Can't you just ask someone else? Believe me, it's a long list. But right now, we're here to find out how Sawa-san got mixed up in all this. You two weren't necessarily on bad terms, were you? If I had to say, we weren't on the best terms either. Uh, how convenient. Because that's a perspective I'd like to hear more about as well. My husband will be home soon. Can you keep it quick? I'll give him my best shot. Exactly. Thanks for hearing us out. Hold on just a moment. I wonder what's going on. You don't think she bolted, do you? Hmm, wouldn't count on it. Should we ring again? Sorry to keep you waiting. I just wanted to clean up a little. Is your son home today? He's at English school right now. I have to pick him up soon. Doesn't your husband help with any of that? You said he'd be home soon, right? Excuse me, but you are in no place to make those kinds of comments. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't mean to pry. Well, what is it you want to ask? Do you remember Mitsuru Kusumoto? Yes, we were classmates in high school. He jumped off the school's roof after his classmate Shinya Kawai bullied him. I hear he's still in a coma, 13 years later. Weren't you going to ask me about Yokochan? I was. 
but there seemed to be an awful lot of Kurokawa graduates surrounding this case. And strangely enough, they were all in your class. Kitakata Sensei being the prime example, as well as a guy named Akaike-san. Remember him? Well, you're right. We were in the same class. And would you say you're all familiar with Mitsuru Kusumoto's situation? Yes, but... That's not a warm memory for any of us. I understand. I'm sure it's not. Have you been in contact with Kitakata Sensei lately? I haven't. He's someone I'd rather not have in my life. Are you surprised that he stayed in Ijincho after resigning from the school? No, not really. How about the fact that now he's using an alias? I had no clue. But again, he has nothing to do with me. The groping was orchestrated, right? Excuse you? When Akihiro Ihara grabbed you on the train, you were in on that, weren't you? The whole thing was a conspiracy, staged to play out as it did. You need to leave. Right now. Dude, what gives? No one would even think to consider a predator and his victim could be accomplices. It's unheard of. But if it was to establish a murder alibi, that's another story, considering how much lighter the sentence is. That way, Ihara got away with killing Mikoshiba paying only a fraction of the price. But as luck would have it, proving it is going to require you to cooperate with us now. If you don't get up the second, I'm calling the police. I mean it! It took me quite a long time to figure out how you and Ahara were connected. But once I learned Yokosawa attended Kurakawa, it all started falling into place. She was in your homeroom class. She looked after Toshiro Ahara. She was the link to everyone. But just before I could ask her about any of this, she was murdered by Kamurocho gang. That same gang has been hunting your old teacher, Kitakata-sensei. What is it you want from me? Namiya-san, do you have any idea where Kitakata-sensei could be? He may be Kawana the Handyman, but he hasn't answered his work line since Sawasan's murder. I don't know! He was my teacher a decade ago! I barely remember his face! Well, I'm willing to wager Kitakata Sensei still remembers yours. I'll prove it right now. Oh, God. See for yourself. No. This was recorded at Kurokawa Academy 13 years ago. Feeling nostalgic yet? It was well hidden. Your Kitakata sensei had it on a USB drive. He really didn't want this thing being seen. The most interesting part is the date. It's the very same day Mitsuru Kusumoto jumped off the school roof. And hanging out in the back we see you, laughing and cheering right along with the other bullies. Guess it's safe to say it's a good thing your family wasn't home. Wouldn't exactly want them seeing this, would we? Has this video come up? Has Kitakata-sensei ever mentioned to you that he had it? Please... Please delete it! Considering the angle, I get the feeling that this was recorded in secret. And based on your reaction, did you even know it existed? Uh. You know what happened to Mitsuru-kun. He's been in a coma ever since what you did to him that day. But still, only one of you took the fall. Shinya Kawai took all the blame. Well, sort of, being that he got fired, Kitakata-sensei took heat too. Still, you all just moved right along with your lives. You've even got happy little families. What? Are you expecting someone? Amiya-san? Well... 
I knew what would happen someday. What do you mean? Looks like she wanted some company. Do a shit show. And would you look at that? Our old friend Akaike san showed up to play a part. So you are all working together. What should we do with them? They're the jerks who hurt Tsukumo kun, right? Break every finger on their hand, it still won't make you even. But come on, they may have more on the way. I have an old haunt in mind we move this to, and Mamiya-san's coming with. Huh? Let's not cause a scene, okay? I'd hate for a finger to slip and post this video. Hey, you think this is your personal jail, Yagami? What makes you think you can keep bringing captives here? Well, it's the safest spot we know. Doesn't it feel good to be such a reliable friend? Yeah, Higashi, be cool. We won't be around long. Be cool? You think time's the issue? This is about respect, man. What's your call? We kicking him out? Oh, quick bit of news, Higashi-san. Kaito-san got shanked in Yokohama. What? What the fuck? Kaito Aniki? By who? You'll know once we're done explaining. Let me introduce you to Mamiya-san first. She called up her friends to come after us just a little bit ago. Yeah, and I'd do it again. I don't give a shit about that! What happened to Aniki? You better have paid him back already, Yagami. Fuck those RK assholes! And how could Aniki have let him get to him like that? Now that Higashi sounds up to speed, should we get to it? I imagine Mamiya san doesn't want to drag this out. What do you intend to do with me? First, you'll tell us everything you know. We'll decide how to deal with you afterward. <sighs> Then let's get this over with. What do you want to know? Let's start with the video. Any thoughts you'd care to share? I found it on a flash drive in Kitakata Sensei's room. Or should I say, Kawana's. I take it that means he's the one who recorded it. Yes. That means Kawana already knew back then the rest of you were bullies too? Yes. If that's the case, then why was Shinya Kawai the only student thrown under the bus for it? Kawana-san didn't show that tape to anyone else? We had no idea we were even being taped. We didn't find out about the video, or the reason he sat on it so long until way after graduating. Why exactly did he sit on it for so long? Kitakata-sensei said he kept it so... so he could teach us for the rest of our lives. What? If that video came out at the time of the incident, I'm sure life would have been hard for us then. After all, Kawhi was exposed online, 
And that would mean millions of yen in compensation for damages. Yeah, but you guys could have wound up in the same boat. No. I mostly would have come across as dumb kids he roped into helping him. We might have caught some flack, but people would chalk it up to kids and their cliques and move on. But that's only how I would have gone if it had come out while we were still teenagers. You're saying circumstances are different now? I have a child now. A husband, an upscale apartment. If the world sees that tape now, I'll lose it all. And what do you think would happen to my son? The son of a woman who drove a kid to attempt suicide? His life would be ruined. That recording is more than kids being cruel. Mitsuru jumped from the school roof that very night and is still in a coma today. I get it. You have that much more to lose now than when you were a kid. Same for all my classmates. Kurokawa Academy is a prestigious school, after all. Most graduates go off to great universities and land high-paying jobs. One started his own company. Others have families. And they're all in your position too, huh? If that video gets out, they lose everything. Exactly. Do you get it now? He waited for all of us to get what we wanted in life. Just so he could threaten to take it all away. And when that time came, he started contacting us. Every student you see in that video. When was the first time Kawana approached you? Five years ago. I was out on a walk with my son. When he came strolling up out of the blue. At first, I barely recognized him. His eyes were so hollow. Then without so much as a word, he took out his phone and played that video. He's a psychopath. Well, all you kids tormenting Mitsuru looked pretty psychopathic to me. Oh, and you're so perfect. An angel who never once acted out of line, never lashed out at someone weaker than you, or sided with the group to shut someone out. Everyone does it. We were just lucky enough to have some creep take us, picking on some kid who couldn't take it. Why did this have to happen to me? I'd say it's because bad things happen to bad people. You'll sling your barbs from a safe distance, but once you're on the other side of it, you curl up and play victim. <gasps> you said it was five years ago that Kuana showed you the video? Reminds me of something Shirosaki-sensei was looking into. What? There was this guy. I think his name was Shinya Kawai. Something about him getting snatched off the streets about five years back. <gasps> then it was you guys. You're the ones who abducted him in Kamrocho and murdered him. No, it wasn't us. We could never do something like that. Wasn't us, huh? So you're not denying he was murdered after all? Who was it then? All Sensei told us was to find Kawai somewhere in Kamurocho, and bring him back with us, no matter what it took. Did Kawana tell you what he wanted with him? He needs to be there when you all beg for forgiveness, is all he said. And if we refused, he'd leak the video. So we all went to see Kawai, but he wanted nothing to do with Sensei. Considering he'd cost him everything, that came as no surprise. But doing nothing would cost the rest of you everything, too. Yes. So we had to force them into our van. After he'd put up a fight. Yeah, that lines up with what the local eyewitnesses said. So then what happened? Nobody's heard from the guy since. We were directed to bring him to a wharf in Yokohama. And that's where we begged for forgiveness. After that, he said we were free to go. All except Kawai. So you left him there alone with Kawana? We had to. The day after, I got a message on my phone from Sensei. What did it say? Nothing. There was only a video. It was of all of us, pushing Kawai into the van. Turns out he recorded what we did in the city. You can see all our faces so clearly. 
how we covered Kawhi's mouth as he screamed for help. I... Even if you know all the backstory, the video is a clear-cut abduction. As I was watching it the first time, another message came in. This time, a picture. When I saw it, I just went cold. That's when I knew I would never be able to escape him. It was a picture of Kawhi. Dead. Anyone who saw those messages would think we killed him after shoving him into the van. And that's how he got his real leverage on his former students. Since then, we've been at his beck and call. No matter what he tells us to do, we wouldn't dare refuse him. He's giving you orders? That man! He forces us to help him, but he makes us accomplices to murder. Murder? What the hell? Murder who, exactly? Any bullies involved in suicides. That's who Sensei's got it in for. Anyone he can find across the country. He doesn't even care how old the case is. If a student commits suicide, and bullying is suspected as the cause, he'll turn up. As far as I know, counting Kawhi, I think... I think he's killed at least seven people. Seven? How's he doing this? So his idea of justice is killing bullies? Across the entire country? He said that's the only way we can atone. Anyone who drives someone to suicide must always face justice. Until society comes to terms with this, he says we'll keep getting our hands dirty. That way, we might be able to save the next few Mitsurus before it's too late for them. Not sure I should say this out loud, but I'm kind of rooting for this guy now. Mm, yeah, let's not. So was the murder of Hiro Mikashiba part of that agenda? We know Mikashiba drove Ihara-san to suicide four years prior. That has to be why Kawana let Ihara murder him, and how you found your role in establishing his alibi. Not just me. Grabbing Mikoshiba required a good number of people. All the people who pinned Ihara down, and even the ones who filmed it, they were working for Sensei. So that's how it went down. We had an unspoken agreement that we wouldn't directly take part in any killing. He just makes us his accomplices somehow. Like luring a target or digging a hole for a body. But the one thing we can't ever do is turn him down. If we do, he'll send his video of us abducting Kawhi to the police. And then Kawhi's body will turn up with our fingerprints all over his corpse. And we know that because he's hidden Kawhi's corpse in a freezer somewhere. He's preserving one of his murder victims? So as long as he has that, you're wrapped around his finger. Sounds to me like Kawana's had one thing on his mind for 13 years. Sitting on that video and becoming an Ijin Cho handyman was all in service of his real motive, killing off bullies. He's dragged all his former students into this hell, until the day it destroys every single one of you. Is today that day? We'll see. I'm still curious about a few things though, if you don't mind. What? There were these scumbags chasing down Kawana called RK. What part did they play? Strangely enough, they never came up once during your confession. So tell me, why'd they come for Yokosawa? That I don't know for certain. But Sensei did reach out to Yokochan about six months ago over the phone. He was asking her about the suicide at Serio High. The suicide at Serio High? You must be talking about Toshiro Ehara. The lawsuit played out like no bullying took place, right? That the school wasn't responsible. But Yoko-chan was a teacher there, and Sensei was able to get the truth out of her. How'd he do that? What did he say? From Yoko-chan's perspective, she and Sensei were both just teachers dealing with students attempting suicide. I think that's why she let her guard down and told them everything. After learning the truth, Sensei believed Mikoshiba needed to be held accountable. So if Sawa-sensei hadn't talked to him, Ahara wouldn't have gotten involved? 
and none of this would be happening in a Jincho? Possibly. No, this isn't right. Sawa-sensei didn't know Kawana's identity or his objectives. She thought she was just talking through her problems with a sympathetic ex-teacher. At the very least, she sure as hell didn't deserve to die for that! It's not like we're the ones who did it. Who is it? Block number. Hello? Yo, know who this is, Yagami? Kawana? Yeah. <laughs> I heard you're looking for me. Where are you? I'm willing to meet you now if you come alone. But you have to let Mamiya go in exchange. What? All right. She's free as soon as I see you. Works for me. Then come on down to your office. I thought I'd let myself in. What? <laughs> Gotta say, this chair's pretty comfy. Pretty sure I locked up behind me when I left. Listen, I'll only meet you alone. No one else. And don't make me wait long, or I could change my mind. He told me to meet him alone. You can let Mamiya-san go once I confirm he's there. You gonna be alright by yourself? Well, he already knows Mamiya-san's with us. I'm guessing he was watching us from somewhere. And I can't afford to do anything that would piss him off enough to make him disappear. Uh, got it. Oh. We'll take care of this end of it. Shouldn't you move your ass? Hope you don't mind, I let myself in. Now are you gonna hold up your end and release you, Imamiya? Come on. You and I can either try to make this work, or neither of us is gonna get what we want. So, you gonna make the call or what? Hello? Yagami-san? I'm with Kawana. You can let Mamiya-san go. Got it. Will do. Sorry about all this, Yagami. Why don't you sit down? Maybe it's time you and I had a heart-to-heart. -heart. How's Kaito holding up? <sighs> Kaito-san's recovering in the hospital. For now. Sawa-sensei is another story, though. I can hardly believe it. She was the last person I wanted to get mixed up in all this shit. If that's the case, why were you already waiting in her apartment? RK's top men were lying in wait over there to get their hands on you. So why was she the one lying on the ground? Answer me, Kawana. Was it because of you? Would you feel better if it was? How dare you? You're thinking that if you hadn't stuck your nose in her affairs, she might be at home grading her papers right now. You tell me. Is that what's eating away at you right now? Because if it is, you're mistaken. That guilt is mine alone to bear. It's my burden to carry. When I saw in the news that she had been murdered in cold blood, it felt like the whole world had stopped spinning to me. I would take it all back right now if I could. But unfortunately, to fix this I'd need to turn the clock back further than you'd think. You mean back to when you were a school teacher? Yeah, basically. Back to when I still had a little faith in humanity. Seeing someone's life get cut short, you never really bounce back from it, do you? But I don't have to tell you that. I did my homework on you, Yagami. It seems you were a fairly accomplished lawyer. You even scored a murder acquittal. But we both know how that ended. The death of an innocent young woman. You and I are the same. We both have scars. And they're the type of scars that never fully heal. Yeah. Maybe you're right. But for Sawakun, it was 13 years ago. 
The very day before Mitsuru Kusamoto jumped, she stopped me in the hall so she could tell me about how serious the bullying really was. Up until that day, I just assumed it was boys being boys, teasing. I figured it was harmless, that they'd get bored with it, and then they'd move on. I mean, come on. Kawaii had to have been twice the size of Mitsuru. It's not like I'd seen any fighting, so I warned him not to overdo it. And eventually he would take the hint. Well, according to what I was told, you smirked, actually. Yeah. I guess that's what I did. I was too late. Sawakun had to point it out. Sensei, how could you be so blind, she asked. Her eyes were this piercing mix of pity and scorn. According to what she told me, nearly half the class was bullying Mitsuru. She said she'd seen him at the station. She made it sound like he had half a mind to jump onto the tracks right then and there. I'm not so presumptuous anymore. But back then I used to think my students were my biggest fans. I thought I'd won their hearts and minds. But the look on Sawakun's face that day made me see the truth. I couldn't just go on smiling like nothing happened. So I decided to do my homework. The next day I put a hidden camera in the classroom after school. So you admit that you're the one who recorded that video? Yeah. You saw it, right? Talk about the ugly side of kids. Hard to watch, wasn't it? Unfortunately, by the time I picked up the camera and saw what it recorded, Mitsuru had made his jump. I missed him by a few crucial moments. What happened in that classroom was the final straw. Later on, all the bullies were asked what happened. Each and every one of them lied. Kawai started it. It wasn't our idea, they said. To anyone outside of it, all they'd seen was Kawai forcing Mitsuru to do his bidding. So the people held culpable were Kawai and myself. The callous homeroom teacher who deliberately turned a blind eye. That was the day I began living my life with real purpose. So you couldn't forgive your students who got away with bullying. You went so far. You put aside your own life to make sure they atoned somehow. That's right. Mitsuru Kusumoto's still a vegetable. He's as good as dead. But I don't care. We have no right to forget about him. You say that. Even though Sawa Sensei ended up paying for it. <laughs> I'll ask you again. Why were you at her apartment the other day? Don't dodge the question this time. I wouldn't say I dodged it. But I suppose I should explain from the beginning. Four years ago, there was a suicide at Sawa Kun's school. It was her own student this time. You know this, right? A student at Seiryo High School? Toshiro Ehara. Yeah. When she was in court, Sawakun had no choice but to say there wasn't any bullying. Soon as she told me that, I knew Hiro Mikoshiba would be my next target. Of course, she had no idea about any of that. When Sawakun learned Mikoshiba had been murdered, though, she reached out to me herself. What did she want? She had a sneaking suspicion that I was involved in his death. She called me a few times, prodding carefully for answers. <laughs> Quite the perceptive lady, really. And? What kind of answers did you give her? I denied any knowledge of it, but at one point, she mentioned something kind of odd. That there was a detective at the school already investigating the incident. Huh? She meant you, 
of course. A detective already knee-deep into the case, despite the police barely even knowing about Mikoshiba. The police are a pain in the ass, but when an out-of-town detective comes sniffing around, that's bad. I knew I had to act fast to get you off the trail. Although, Sawakun was a problem too. I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone. And then what? First, I found out where the two of you would be meeting up, at that little cafe. Then, I hired the Leo Monk to step in. <laughs> but you put up one hell of a fight. They had strength in numbers, but you would have taken out the whole group if I hadn't stepped in. Nonetheless, my other message went through. At the same time, Sawakun was handed a photo of Mikoshiba's final moments. I left that task to someone you know. Yui Mamiya. They hadn't seen each other in 13 years. Sawakun had no idea. The lady in the sunglasses. Yui Mamiya was involved in that too? Everything I did that night was intended as a warning to Sawakun. Although, I guess I didn't have to be so extreme about it. Yeah. Sawa-sensei was too smart. She must have started suspecting that you'd had something to do with Mikoshiba's murder. After all, who else could have known we'd be meeting at that cafe? She'd have traced it right back to you. Even if Sawakun had started to suspect me, I knew she wouldn't sell me out to the cops. We're two alike. The both of us lost students to suicide on our watch. That said, I couldn't bear the thought of dragging her down into the mess I started, so I scared her off, and I thought she would stay away. <laughs> the day she was killed, she called to ask if we could speak in person. I could tell something was wrong. She was on the verge of tears the whole call. Then she broke down. I asked her why, of course, but she wouldn't give me a straight answer no matter how I tried to phrase the question. So then what? Did you just waltz on over there? It doesn't seem like you. Watch it. You don't know me well enough to say that. Maybe. But I assume you had some sort of plan going in. Were you gonna confess to her? Here's the thing. If she'd figured out that I was behind Mikoshiba, and it didn't sit well with her, I would have told her every last detail. Sawakun, no. I think she would have understood me. Or at least that's what I had believed. In hindsight, I think she was forced to make that call. Under normal circumstances, I'm sure she'd have rather washed her hands of me. Hard as it is to hear, I think she called me under duress. RK probably had her hostage. That would explain the vague responses. That's probably why her voice was trembling. It's tragic. You mean it was RK? Why do they want you so badly anyway? I don't know. What? If I knew their angle, I'd be doing more than just scurrying around. You serious? Believe me, I'm just as clueless as you are, much as I hate to admit it. Honest. I'm not thrilled that a small army wants my head on a platter. Have you noticed? How our case seems to show up at the worst possible times? Someone must be pulling their strings. Then we're on the same page. At least we agree on something. <laughs> Just a sec. Yeah. I'm still over here with Yagami-san. You're not being tailed by any of his guys, are you? Okay. Then I'll meet you right now. That was Mami Akun. She said she's free. You guys have been true to your word. Tell Sugiura-kun that I said thank you. Now you want to go? We still have some business to settle here. Now remember, I'm the handyman here. Let me do the dirty work. I don't know what else to tell you. But you need to get out. While you still can. If you disappear into the night, I don't want to go busting my ass just to find you again. Before you leave, I'll need some contact info. A phone number would be nice. Oh, no need for that. As far as I'm concerned, this is goodbye. I wouldn't count on that. You won't get away.
Where'd he go? Kawana! You guys again. You really need the masks? Come on, Kurokawa kids. You heard that, right? The detective here already knows everything. Kawana! What are you going to do now? What do you think happens when he spills everything? Sounds like your lives are over, unless you shut him up. But Sensei, you'll finish the job for us, right? Huh? Is that you, Akaike? Oh, he's even got a name to your voice. But... Answer me, Sensei! I know, I know. I'll be the one to finish it. You just knock him out. Okay, then. Time to learn your lesson! Come on. What kind of lesson is this? I see you to stick around. Mamiya-san. <gasps> well, since Kiwana couldn't stay, it sounds like you're not out of the woods just yet, huh? Thirteen years in the past, Mitsuru Kusumoto plunged himself into a coma sealing his fate alongside Kuwana's. Ridden by guilt, Kuwana sets off on a path of vengeance, and the bullies he drags with him are shackled to the shadows. However, Yokosawa's murder serves as a deadly wake-up call to what he's done. Getting your identification on record, so you won't be a threat to us anymore. Uh, what? And I think you owe us after everything you've done. 
Expect me to come collect one of these days. <sighs> Carriage awaits, Mamiya-san. Don't tell me we're going back to that dingy arcade. <laughs> we sure are. But try not to hold a grudge. It wasn't us who abandoned you. <gasps> Higashi, you already called Sari-san and the gang, right? Yeah. I let him know what's up. They said they'll head over when they're ready. Did Shirasaki sensei say anything? <laughs> well, she was pretty stunned when I told her who Kuana really is and what he's up to. Sounding a little smug there, Higashi-san. Taking credit for the detective work you didn't even do? Back me up here, Yagami-san. <sighs> Whatever, man. Kuana got away and that's all that matters. Still, the task in front of us is finishing Sari-san's case. We have to clear up Ahara's crime once and for all. With Mamiya-san's help, of course. <sighs> Finally. I'm ready to get some answers. Well, we still got time till Shirosaki-sensei gets here. Why don't you take a breather, Yagami-san? Huh? That'd be okay? Sure. I'll call you once everyone's here. Yeah. A break sounds good. By the way, Higashi, has anything unusual gone down in Kamracho lately? Anything involving R.K.? Yeah, about that. My guys are saying things have been a little too quiet since yesterday. Soma and Akutsu are out in Ijincho, too. When they come back, they're in for a rude awakening. And they can pay for what they did to Kaito Aniki. Make them pay? Aren't your Yakuza days behind you now? That's not the Yakuza in me talking! That's just a problem I'm gonna be the solution for. Uh, isn't that exactly what a Yakuza would say? Fine. Think of it as getting revenge for a brother. Uh... I'm doing the right thing, damn it! Yeah, maybe it's just how you're putting it. Besides, what's the matter if I was Yakuza? I've got my own code, and I'm gonna do right by me. Whatever you say. Much as things change, they stay the same. Hey, Yagami-san, it's Sugiura. Hey. Shirosaki-sensei and the others just got to Charles. They're getting ready to grill Mamiya-san. Got it. Then I'll head back soon. Thanks. You too, Gendo-sensei? What? Am I in the way? <laughs> of course not. I didn't know you still did field work. I figured if they could pull a fast one on Saurikun, I'd at least want to look him in the eye. Why are all these people here? What gives? We've been waiting for you, Yagami-san. Mamiya-san is about to enlighten us on the truth behind the groping. Good. Oh, and I heard about Sawa-sensei. I'm so sorry. Our condolences. Looks like she got mixed up in all this when R.K. was chasing after Kiwana. But we're still not sure why they chased him. To figure that out, we'll have to retrace Kiwana's steps. Exactly. That said, let's start with the harassment charges, Mamiya-san. <sighs> Fine. Let's get this over with. Pout all you want, but keep the answers straight. Got it? <laughs> the Hara's assault was designed to establish a false alibi for Mikoshiba's murder. So Kawana had you play the victim, and together you pulled one over on the police and the court. Can you confirm if this is all accurate so far, please? Yeah, yeah. The person who groped you on the train wasn't Ahara-san himself. It was his stand-in. 
And my understanding is that he had conspirators to help him fabricate this event? That's right. What was Kawana doing at the time? Was he in Ijinsho or Tokyo? Didn't you hear your lady friend? A Harasan had a stand-in. And that stand-in was our sensei. You mean Kawana posed as Ahara himself? So this Ahara was actually Kawana. Huh. <laughs> sensei and Ahara-san have a pretty similar build. Not sure they could have pulled it off otherwise, you know? But some spots don't look right, like his mouth. You sure that's really kawana son? That part around his mouth is fake. He said he scanned a Harasan's face and made it on a 3D printer. Oh, huh. You can print things in 3D now? Well, it's a machine that takes a model's data from a computer and prints physical objects using materials like resin. So if you were to scan a person's face onto a computer, a 3D printer could accurately recreate it. Hmm. I don't know the details, but that's what Sensei used to become a Harasan. Something like this? See, with a 3D printer, a piece of a face is pretty easy to make. What the hell? I see. His eyes are hidden behind the sunglasses, and the seams on his jaw are obscured by the mask. That's incredible, I must say. With the mouth area so visible, it's too convincing to think he's anybody else. And with the prosecution assuming he's just another sexual predator, they fell for it. This is no time to be impressed. In case you forgot, he had the defense fooled too. Uh -huh. uh, right. Assuming Kawana was Ahara's double, there's still some evidence I'm iffy about. I'm of the same opinion. Okay. Which evidence is questionable? Any thoughts after seeing this? Stop it. You're gonna look away? You aided and abetted by playing the victim, didn't you? I mean, yes. Who put this video up on the internet? Sensei did. He said from the start that once Ahara-san got his guilty verdict, he'd upload it to the internet. So that was all part of the plan. Yeah. Sensei can't forgive the law for how easy it lets off bullies. Ahara-san's the same way. His son's death was brushed aside. The court blamed his suicide on unknown factors. And that's what led them to his whole plan. The real victim is some bully who never got what he deserved, and the killer gets off in court by being convicted of battery. How would the public respond after finding out they'd gamed the law like that? So Kawana and Ahara's real plan was to make a mockery out of the justice system. <sighs> Seems to be going well for them. The courts are beside themselves for dragging the police into this. I guess Ahara really was desperate. He was never concerned about his own punishment. He tarnished his own name to humiliate the law. Yeah, cop or not, Ahara is a broken man. Nobody took responsibility for his son's death, and the courts all but ignored his case. No wonder he went along with Kawana. I can't even imagine. Yeah. Sensei and Ahara's son are the perfect pair with nothing to lose. The only ones who do are the ones forced to comply. Us. Speaking of which, are we done here yet? What do you make of this? I mean, what's there to doubt? Uh, you The one running on the platform wasn't Ahara's son. It was Sensei pretending to be him, right? Meaning... There is no more meaning. The stand-in turned out to be none other than Jin Kawana, which Mamiya-san just finished explaining in detail. Yep. This piece of the puzzle still needs an explanation. Is that... A... The police examined the trace evidence on Ahara's hands after he was caught. And from the analysis, the same fibers from Mamiya-san's undergarments were found on Ahara's hands. That's right. 
If the stand-in was the groper, Ahara-san wouldn't have touched Mamiya-san at all. But the evidence on Ahara-san's hands suggests otherwise. Rather strange, isn't it? I take it there was a trick to this, too? That simple. Before I got in the train, I met with the real Ahara-san at the underground platform. That's when I had him touch the undergarment. After that, all I had to do was go to the bathroom and put them on. That's where the fibers in the trace were from. What the police found on Ahara-san's hands was exactly what we wanted them to find. And it would serve as hard proof he grabbed me. The cords really ate it up. It was hard not to laugh sometimes, to be honest. You're really starting to open up. That's the spirit. <laughs> How about this, then? And this is? Before the incident, Ahari used this card to go through the ticket gate at Ikabukuro time of which was recorded. Right, and it was on October 7th at 7.43 a.m. Thanks, Hoshino-kun. Happy to help, Yagami-san. At the earliest, Mikoshiba's time of death would have been 7.30 a.m. If Ahara killed Mikoshiba in Ijinsho, he would have only had 13 minutes to get to Ikebukuro. And frankly, that's impossible. That's what's dumping you? Huh? Sensei borrowed the card from Ehara's son beforehand, and passed through the gate. Afterward, he slipped it back to Ehara's son when they switched places. That way, Ehara's son ended up having the time-stamped card on him. Makes sense now. So even the entry time through the ticket gate was used as part of the alibi? It all seems so obvious now that I hear it. Nobody suspect that a groping was being used as an alibi for murder. Yeah. And on top of all that, no one knew Mikoshiba had been killed during the trial. They really pulled it off. Anything else? Yagami-san, you sure that's enough? Yeah, I think we've got plenty. Bottom line, groping was a fabrication. At the very least, we know that the prosecution's evidence can all be refuted. The courts were being intentionally misled. I'm considering filing an appeal. Are you saying you want a retrial? I am. We'll reveal Ahara and Kuwana's plot and overturn the verdict they issued. Hmm. That might be harder than it sounds. Why do you say that, Genda-sensei? Well, the previous trial resulted in Ahara being found guilty, right? As the client, if he doesn't want an appeal, there's no way you're getting one. Doesn't matter what any lawyer tries to do, if Ahara refuses to appeal, then that's that. And we'll talk to him tomorrow. First, we need to see how he reacts to everything we've got on him. Sounds good. Then let's meet at the detention center tomorrow. Will do. So, we done for the night? Sure are. Great job, everyone. Go get some rest. Yo, Yagami, you sure it was cool to let that Mamiya chick just go home? Yeah, why? I mean, she helped Kuwana kill all those people. Aren't you gonna turn her in or something? I would. There's nothing we can do. Pfft, nothing we can do? Frankly, we don't have any proof of the murder she was talking about. What, so this is all for nothing? Nothing directly pointing to Mamiya anyway. Aside from Mikoshiba, no other bodies turned up. Which means all we can do is take her home, right? Sugira is making sure she gets back safe. <sighs> Fine, forget it. Why are you still here? Everyone else went home already. Come on, man, why the cold shoulder? Am I really that annoying? You wouldn't be the guy I'd call to hang out with. So if you're done, then go. Wow, straight for the jugular, huh? But if it's help you need, I'll be there. I've had nothing but time lately. But only if you bow your head and ask nice. Then I'll consider it. <laughs> I know for a fact you'd help me out regardless. 
so why waste a good bow? Thanks for the drink. Dude, come on. That was your cue to bow and ask nice. So, you're recommending an appeal. I have that right? Did some new evidence come to light? You Imami have told us some things. Like how you faked your alibi for Mikoshiba's murder. You wanted the sexual battery conviction, right? Well... Your goal was to avenge your son and humiliate the law on a grand scale. I have no idea what you're talking about. Ahara-san, we have a much better grasp of the situation than you think. And what exactly have you grasped? Like Yagami-san just said, you're innocent. As far as the harassment goes. As your lawyer, I'll file for an appeal. And we'll make sure the world knows it. Thanks, but no. I'm scum of the earth. A pervert. The prosecution and the judge made that very clear in the verdict. On the day of the crime, October 7th, at around 6.30 a.m., you were in Ijincho, not Tokyo. <laughs> Baloney. I was relaxing at home. Except that you weren't. Oh? You wanted to give the man who pushed your son to suicide the beating of a lifetime. And you'd miss out on that opportunity if you were at home, which is why you were in Ijincho instead. Isn't that right? You and Kawana's former student staked out Mikoshiba's house until he left. Then you dragged your prey into a car and brought him to an abandoned building in Ijincho, which would later become a murder scene. Every bone on Mikoshiba's fingers was broken. Remembering how he pushed Toshiro-kun to his death, it's no wonder you'd go that far. You tortured Mikoshiba without a shred of remorse. You inflicted no small amount of pain and terror. There's no way you weren't there, and I'd put my money on that. And then... You need the whole play-by-play, -play, even though you already know it? Oh, not at all. I'm just fascinated by this outrageous little story. As for what you did next after beating Mikoshiba... <sighs> Okay, and what exactly is the point of showing this to me? Uh, hang on. That wasn't what I meant to pull out. <laughs> Was it, though? As for what you did next after beating Mikoshiba... Oh, that's quite a home video. Without leaving anything on Mikoshiba's body that could be traced back to you... You slid his throat. Estimated time of death was around 7.30 a.m. on October 7th. You tossed the bloody coat and made your way to Ikubukuro Station, where Yui Mamiya was waiting. Are you sure? I was at Ikubukuro by 7.30 a.m. Would have been impossible for me to kill Mikoshiba and Ijinsho. The person in the security camera footage in Ikubukuro was a double who imitated your likeness. The identity of whom belonged to Jin Kuwana, the handyman in Ijinsho. Or maybe you know him by a different name. Former high school teacher Yu Kitakata. So which name did he give you? I don't know who you're talking about. With Kawana in view of the security camera, you met up with Yu Imamiya at Ikebukuro first. That's where you touched the undergarments she had prepared. The police would later discover the trace evidence on your hands and pin the groping on you. Then you made your way to Shinjuku Station. After that, Mamiya and Kuwana acted out the groping as they arrived at Shinjuku Station. Kuwana jumped out of the train and Mamiya chased after him. And then, in the smallest of blind spots in a station absolutely packed with cameras, you were waiting for Kuwana, who looked just like you. With the two of you matching, you were able to swap places in that huge crowd without anyone noticing. 
Kawana handed you the transit card used to pass the ticket gate. Just one piece of hard evidence that places you and Ikebukuro at 7.43 a.m. And right after the swap, Mamiya started calling for help. After that, well, we've all seen how the news reported it. You were caught in a public place with plenty of witnesses. An active duty police officer arrested for sexual battery. The public outcry was very clear. As a result, despite it being your first offense, you were actually tried and convicted. The consensus is that it was a fitting punishment for someone so heinous. Even as your lawyer, I felt the same. Have some confidence in yourself, Shirosaki-sensei. The prosecution, the judge, and a lawyer like you all laid out the evidence in court and found me guilty. I'm in no position to doubt you. And I've long accepted the ruling that Toshiro was never bullied. There's nothing I can do but abide by the rule of law. Right? That's all I can do, right? I know what you're trying to say. You carried out the justice that the courts wouldn't, right? Everything my son went through was passed off like it never even happened. School, the teachers, and yes, the court. They all dismissed the reason he died. That's when Kawana came in the picture, telling you Toshiro-kun had been bullied. But was it Kawana's words that suddenly made you want to kill Mikoshiba? Because all of his fingers were broken while he was still alive. Was that really all just your pent-up rage? What do you have to say, Tahara-san? Was Sawa-sensei the one who told you the truth? She was the only person Toshiro-kun confided in. You had to have heard it from her, right? Nearly hit the nail on the head, as they say. Nearly? After my trial, she confessed she knew about the bully. But only to her old teacher over the phone. She had no idea she was being recorded. What? Kuanasan let me listen to that recording where I learned Sawa Sensei had been muzzled by both the homeroom teacher and the lawyer. That was the proof of Toshiro's bullying I'd wanted all throughout the trial. After hearing Sawa Sensei's words, I finally understood. They pushed my boy over the edge. Was there no other evidence of the bullying? Like a diary of Toshiro Kun's or something of the sort? Nothing. Toshiro never talked to me or my wife about the bullying. And that was probably all my fault. He was bullied in middle school, too. Kids would throw his pencil case around or hide his books. When I heard about it, I chewed him out. They walk all over you because you're weak. Grow spine, I told him. I take it that was the wrong approach. Yeah. <sighs> I can't imagine how much courage it took for him to come forward about his suffering. I'm sure he felt ashamed about it. And I should have listened when he pleaded for help. I should have told him I was proud of his bravery. But instead, I pushed him away. And in the end, Toshiro tried to make sure he never showed weakness to us again, no matter how much pain he was in. He went to a private school out in Yokohama because he hated living with me. But in the end, he still suffered. And that's why you didn't hesitate to unleash hell on Mikoshiba. If you say so, So the first time Kawana showed up was when he let you listen to the phone call with Sawa-sensei, right? 
Yes. He approached me and asked me if I still wanted justice for my son. I was in uniform when he came to me too. Very bold. But it paid off. I owe him a debt of gratitude. He reassured me he had already taken care of multiple individuals like Goshiba and that he'd urged other families to avenge the children they lost to bully. He'd tell them that simply being branded a bully wasn't enough. He promised to deliver real justice. If justice can be served at one's own discretion, laws would cease to serve their function. If the law isn't fair to everyone, no one will obey it. The law is only able to help the powerless because it can't be swayed by money, force, or anything else. Then tell me, what's the solution when the law fails to punish someone who laughs in its face? To overlook those the law won't judge is to abandon those the law couldn't protect. To render justice with confidence, you require sufficient evidence. Some of the victims' families refused Kuana's offer of revenge, telling him it would be unforgivable. But even after rejecting his offer, not a one reported Kuana-san to the police. Do you understand what that implies? Whether you follow through with revenge or not, Kuanasan presents a solution that resonates with people. Being that the law is unfair and imperfect, am I wrong about that? No, you're not. But we're fighting to make it as fair as we can. Laws have to change until they are perfect. They don't change fast enough. Toshiro's death was murder by another name. Yet... Hiromi Kushiba walked free. He even got to enroll in a teaching program as a student teacher. Someone like him? It's insane! I'd die of old age before the law was ever written to be fair enough. For Toshiro's sake, I can't turn a blind eye to a world where the Mikoshibas can live without consequence. Tell me. What alternative was there to getting blood on my hands? I didn't have any other choice! Yagami-san, did he just...? This is the first time you've admitted to killing Mikoshima. You really did your research, unlike those useless cops. Wana-san's plan was impressive. Almost airtight. I didn't expect it to be unraveled so quickly. I just got lucky. There was some dirt on Yui Mamiya that Kuana could have used against her. If we hadn't found it, there's no way we would have gotten her to talk. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, but I'm under no obligation to tell you. Ahara-san, you'll be sent to prison as a sex offender as it stands. Of course, just as I planned, the charges will be confirmed and I'll be convicted. As for the police and the prosecution, they wouldn't be able to admit they made a mistake. I could scream, I killed Mikoshiba at the top of my lungs. It wouldn't matter. Are you saying you intend to admit to the murder after you're released? <laughs> Everyone's seen the video of me killing Mikoshiba by now. It's obviously authentic, but the prosecution and the police are saying it's fake. They need it to be fake. Even if I do confess, they'll sweep it under the rug. <sighs> they wouldn't. No, that's not beneath them. But I take it how they react doesn't really matter to you. All you want is to humiliate the law, don't you? The same system that determined Toshiro-kun's incident didn't happen. It seems you're starting to understand, Yagami-san. The prosecution wanted to charge me for Mikoshiba's murder. Then they'd have to retract the battery verdict. And that would mean admitting to a massive blunder by the court. At the hands of a criminal. It would be chaos. Despite knowing who murdered Mikoshiba, 
no one would know what to make of the case. Wouldn't that just be wonderful? I hear you. And I even get why you'd feel pretty proud of accomplishing that. Do you? But in this case, the guys pretty much grabbed the tiger by the tail. What tiger's tail? Someone's issuing orders to the thugs in Kamurocho from behind the scenes. He's the tiger in this case. And they've been closing in on your partner, Kawana. And Sawa-sensei got in their path. I'm sure you get the newspaper in here, right? You know, don't you? Sawa-sensei was killed after the thugs broke into her home. All because she got involved with Kawana. Where she was killed? This is the first I'm hearing of the reason why. And by thugs, you mean RK? Yeah, but we don't know why they're going after Kawana. Any ideas? No way I'd know. You think it could be because she got mixed up in your deadly little game? Excuse me? That's what getting away with murder really looks like. The more you perpetuate the lie, the greater the rift you create. And then... The unthinkable happens. Kawana killed others besides Mikoshiba. You said so yourself. That's what brought the angry tiger into play. And if Sawa-sensei ended up paying for that instead, then how can you begin to believe your vengeance is fair? Because she gave false testimony. She lied in court to say Toshiro was never bullied. She couldn't name Mikoshiba, who was a minor at the time, without evidence. What's more, she was haunted by her testimony, always second-guessing if she did the right thing. But now she's been killed. Somehow that's acceptable to you? I'm gonna clear up what happened to Sawa-sensei, just like you did for Toshiroku. How? By going public with everything you and Kawana did. The first step is to appeal the sexual battery and undo this whole lie. You never groped you, Imamiya. That's one crime you're innocent of, Ehara-san. The court's verdict was incorrect. So please, give us the chance to appeal. We can prove your innocence. What on earth would I get out of that? You get to humiliate the court again. Besides, what are you going to do for the next half a year in a cell? Fine. Do what you want. But just know this. Yes? I have no intention of admitting to killing Mikoshiba in court. Is your appeal still worth a damn? We won't know until we try. Let's go, Sari-san. We have client approval to proceed with the appeal. We better act fast. Yes, agreed. Yagami-san. Sawa-sensei's death isn't on me. Even if I have grabbed the tiger by the tail, that doesn't mean I killed her. By that logic, you may as well admit that Mikoshiba didn't kill Toshiroku. You can't have it both ways. Listen to me. Everything about you, about Kawana, about why Sawa-sensei had to die, we're gonna expose all of it. That's the only thing left we can do for her. I'm going to fill Genda-sensei in on what happened. Why don't you head over to the office? Sure thing. So then, Ihara admitted to killing Mikashiba, did he? Off the record, yeah. He also admitted Kawana approached him to offer revenge. That sounds like you were productive. It's enough for us to move forward with the appeal, I'd say. How does that sound, Genda-sensei? Uh, Genda-sensei? The sexual battery and Mikoshiba's murder are the very same case. To clear Ahara of harassment, you'll need to prove he murdered Mikoshiba. But you don't have evidence he did, do you? Ahara-san was captured on video committing the murder. And the prosecution claims it's a fake of unknown origins. The police are saying the same. They're only saying that to cover their asses. In reality, 
the sexual battery evidence against Ahara-san is what was really fake. At the very least, we can claim Yui Mamiya and the others aided in fabricating that, alibi or not. You really think the courts will grant you an appeal for just that? Are you saying that's not possible? I wouldn't go that far. But Ehara won't admit to murdering Mikoshiba in court. Kind of significant, don't you think? So what chance do you have even if you do appeal? Without any decisive new evidence, you'll just end up splitting hairs over the original verdict. And what good'll it do other than damage your own reputation, Sarukun? To be honest with you, I feel like I've been deeply underestimated. What? Sorry, son. Are you actually mad? Yes. As a matter of fact, I am. You have every right to be. Listen, Sensei. Ehara and Kawana devised this plan knowing full well they could manipulate the justice system. Have we not fallen right into their trap? If we take pity on the prosecution now, we play right into their hand. True. So how can we worry about reputation when our duty as lawyers is to face the law? I understand where you're coming from, and you're right to think it, but... And another thing. While acting as Ahara's defense in the first trial, I never truly believed the claim. I didn't trust the person I was defending, and I felt sick to my stomach even being in the courtroom. Sorry, son. Ahara likely saw right through that. He probably took great delight in our myopic dedication to the law. And I won't stand for that. I'm gonna show him exactly what I can do. Hmm, what about you, Yagami? I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, I'll defer to Hoshino-kun on this one. Huh? Wait, why are you putting me on this spot? I mean, I don't work here anymore, so... And don't you play that card now, especially not with so much on the line. That's right. Genda Sensei's asking your opinion for a reason. So what's it gonna be? Your opinion counts, Yagami. We should listen to Sari-san. I understand why Ahara and Kawana did what they did, but I can't condone it. I see. So you feel it too, huh? Yes. Although my motivation may not be as righteous as Sari-san's. Hmm, what do you mean? Mikoshiba's murder, the fake groping alibi, the one behind it all was Kawana, and he's in hiding. We need to shine enough light on him that the public can see what he is. And the perfect place to do it is during Ahara's appeal hearing. So it's not Ahara you're after, but Kuwana. If we pursue Ahara's case, Kuwana-san's actions will naturally come to light. And if we draw out Kuwana, then RK and the ones backing them will make their move. Soma from RK said Sawa Sensei knew too much. Which means whoever's behind them has a secret that needs to stay buried, even if it means murder. And I need to figure that secret out. I owe Sawa Sensei that closure. The only thing we can do for her now is make sure the ones pulling the strings pay for it. Well said. I guess going back wasn't ever really an option. Genda Sensei. Looks like I got complacent from all the peace and quiet. Leave it to me to underestimate the younger generation. I apologize. I shouldn't have been so impertinent. That should be my line, Saurikun. I suppose I have to make up my mind after all that, don't I? Get out there and do what needs to be done. And heaven help anyone in your way. Yeah. Right. Yep. You heard him. Hello? Yagamishi, are you still in Kamurocho? Yeah, why? What's up? I'm afraid RK seems to be amassing in Ijinsho. It's very bizarre. Are they now? Yeah, I can't shake the feeling that the officers like Soma and Akutsu are still in town. You think so? If I was Soma, I'd have left Ijinsho by now. He's a person of interest in Sawa-sensei's murder, too. I 
see. That does make sense. Things are settling into place here, though. I'm heading back to Ijincho with Sugiura. We got a lot to go over with you when I get back. <laughs> Wonder what it could be. Okay, see you soon then. Well, now that's something. Looks like we're finally starting to see the whole picture. Kuanasan, or rather Kitakata Sensei, huh? And his students helped Ihara murder Mikoshiba. But there's still some things that doesn't explain. Like what? Like why does RK keep going after Kuanasan? You think that's weird too, right, Yagami san? Yeah. That's the piece of the puzzle that'll lead us to why Sawa Sensei got killed. Before they came to Ijinsho, RK was originally looking for Shinya Kawai. But when they found out he might have been killed, they suddenly shifted gears to Kawana. So what are they trying to accomplish? We can guess all we want, but that's not going to get us anywhere. Shouldn't we ask someone in RK directly? They're strengthening their numbers in Ijinsho as we speak. The coons at the bottom rung aren't going to be in the know on that, though. Though if Akatsu or Soma were around, then we might get somewhere. That's true. Sitting around here won't get us any further. I'm gonna head into the city for a bit. I'm quick on my feet. That's about all I have going for me right now. <laughs> How modest of you. Yeah, don't say that, Yagamishi. Otherwise, what ground do we have to stand on? Hello? It's Shirosaki. Do you have a minute, Yagami-san? Yeah, what's up? I was thinking back on our interview with Ihara-san, and something he said isn't sitting right with me. So I wanted to ask your opinion. Which part felt off? The part about Kuwana approaching other bullying victims besides Ihara-san to offer revenge. Ihara-san also mentioned that most of them rejected his offer, but never went to the police either. Yeah, and? Well, wasn't the first bully Kuwana killed his own student? Shinya Kawai, I mean. Tormented by his beliefs, Nitsuru Kusumoto's leap left him in a coma to this day. That event was the catalyst for Kuwana's actions. So wouldn't he have approached his parents about revenge, too? Nitsuru Kusumoto's parents? You're talking about his mother, Reiko Kusumoto, right? Yes who is currently Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health. If she accepted or is even an accessory to a revenge plot against Kawhi, then there's no way she'd ever want that secret to get out. With her level of influence and power, wouldn't it be possible that she ordered RK to silence Kawana? Which would explain how RK's actions are being controlled, wouldn't it? And you think it's Reiko Kusumoto? You don't think vice ministers can control criminal organizations from the shadows? You know very well the answer to that. Yeah. Tsukumo's actually looked into her before. I'll talk to him about it right now. Yeah, this is genius, Sari-san. This could lead us right to who's controlling RK. Quite a compliment coming from you. I feel better already. <laughs> don't sweat it. I'll call you if I find anything out. Yagami-san, back already? <laughs> that was quick. I figured you'd be out in the town until evening. Well, the day's not over yet. I need you to look into Reiko Kusumoto again. She might be the one behind RK. Really? Yeah. Can you pull up the picture of her you showed me last time? Okay, take a look at this, Yagamishi. Reiko Kusumoto became vice minister just recently. It hasn't even been a full year yet. Looks like she's still got a good rep. Yeah, there's almost no criticism of her out there. The ministry revolution, bucking the bureaucracy. Golden parachutes don't fly with Kusumoto. Hm. Go her. Vice minister is pretty high up there, yeah? Big time. 
If she really did take Kawana up on his offer, silencing him would be the quickest way to save her skin. And in that case, she'd need some kind of connection to RK. Some kind of connection? A bit vague, no? Fair enough, but RK already took an innocent life while hunting Kawana down. Right. And after killing Sawa-sensei, they tried to kill me, too. Still, no matter how dangerous the gang, murder is a risky proposition. Then again, if someone's pulling the strings, they have a lot less to worry about. Especially if that someone has vice minister status. Well, the internet's not gonna give us much else. How about we do our usual thing? Go straight to the source. Maybe we should. Would it really be that easy to get a meeting with someone like her? Mitsuru Kusumoto's still in a coma, right? Yes. If he's in a hospital, we can catch her by surprise there. I get ya. That might work. Huh. What's this now? What's what now? Breaking news from the net. It says manhunt for Sawa-sensei's murderer. And? It's hitting the network news, too. The person they're after is... Wanted for the murder of private school teacher Yoko Sawa in her own apartment, Kanagawa PD is conducting a search for the suspect, self-proclaimed handyman Yu Kitakata. Nearby Why are they looking for Kuwana? Shouldn't they be after Soma? Sawa-san's former teacher before and after the incident. It's also surfaced that he's been using a false identity for over a decade. The police are hopeful that their search will turn up some sort of connection to Sawasan. Hmm. If Kawanasan was caught on camera, then surely some RK thugs were as well? Yeah, I think so. On that note, I should have been in the footage too. The police only seem to want Kawana, but why? Guess we'll have to ask them ourselves. Ask who? Detective Watanabe from Kanagawa PD. He was the guy in charge of Mikoshiba's murder. Been a while, hotshot. Yeah, I guess it has. Hey, I'm curious. Do you have any evidence that Kawana killed Sawa-sensei? I take it you saw the news. Kawana was caught on camera near the crime scene, plus he knew the victim. And if that's not enough, he was using a fake name. How's that for evidence? But I saw Soma holding an ice pickup to Sawa-sensei. Plus, there were RK footprints all over the scene. So why is Kawana the only suspect? Because the big boys with big balls at HQ said so. Barking at me won't get you anywhere. So this is all just pressure from upstairs? What is going on here? Why are you so bent out of shape? Kawana's a legitimate suspect, and all we're doing is following procedure. So stick your private investigator schnoz somewhere else. You know, you sound pretty bent out of shape yourself. Where are you right now? Uh huh? I was thinking maybe we could meet up. How's a free pass to bitch about your work sound? Abe-san? On the phone, in person, there's nothing I can tell you. <sighs> he hung up. Yagamishi, I managed to focus in on the background noise from your phone call. Despite all the interference, I have a good idea of Nabe-san's location. What? Seriously? He's on the main drag in Chinatown. If you go now, I'm sure you'll find him. But is he even gonna listen to you? It won't matter if I miss him because we sat here wondering. <laughs> Yagami Detective Agency. Quick on its feet indeed. <laughs> Can't compete with that. Agami, why are you here? Oh, hey, Nabe-san. And you were... In Sakurai? Oh, right. <laughs> I take it you didn't just happen to be in the neighborhood. Let's just say some friends of mine have a real keen sense of smell. Something stinks about the cops here. Excuse me, pal? The Sawa case. Why aren't you going after RK? Or are you and you're just keeping me in the dark? <laughs> This isn't the place to talk about that. What the? Hey! I get the feeling something's keeping you guys from doing your jobs. And I don't have to listen to you. You wanna say that again? Sakurai, I gotta hit the camp. Head back to the station. Huh? Need to take a piss, Yagami? You're looking hydrated. Yeah, good call.
then let's Damn. What's he up to? Nice spot you brought me to. Very romantic. <sighs> well, we're about to have a shitty conversation. Might as well do it with a pleasant view. Do the cops really believe Kawana is responsible for Sawa Sensei's death? We wouldn't be looking for him if we weren't serious. We even have a warrant. To arrest Kawana? His real name's Yu Kitikata. He's been using a fake. And his service is right at the murder scene of his former student. In my eyes, he was suspicious enough. What about Soma from RK? He should have been spotted on the nearby cameras, too. Like when he entered her apartment. He wasn't. <laughs> How is that possible? Let me rephrase. There's no footage that had RK anywhere near it. What's that supposed to mean? <sighs> From the moment Mikoshiba's murder went down, the higher-ups had been busy playing politics. I had a handle on things when they were just competing with Tokyo PD over who got to really hara. But after that murder footage came out, it really stirred shit up. Sawa Sensei's case has me scratching my head too. Someone at the top is trying to keep details under wraps. And they think it'll work even in this day and age. You're saying the whole force is in on a cover-up? It started with the footage surrounding Sawa's apartment. Someone on the inside erased it. Any footage that had the RK guys tagged in it is totally wiped. Raise the footage. Are you serious? Yeah. You heard me. Kawana leaving her place is all that's left. Even the parts where you show up are long gone. Before and after, the only person that the cameras pin the crime on is Kawana himself. Who would go so far to erase the footage? Who would do something like that? It's time to let it go, Yagami. Miko Shiba's case and Sawa Sensei's case, they're closing the book. And to tie up the loose ends, and this is the shitty part. Kawana has to die in an accident. What? As soon as they track him down, they'll put him into custody and then blame it on negligence. They'll say he resisted arrest and died in the struggle, I guess. Someone clearly wants Kawana gone, and they have the power to do it. Come on. Who could have that power? Kuwana is clearly a target of someone higher up. Even if he sees it coming, he won't be able to stop it. As far as I'm concerned, the case is closed. You wouldn't understand until you've been on the force. When the team you're playing for is rotten to the core, all you can do is look the other way. As for me, I'll stick to the cut and dry cases for a while. That's what'll keep me an honest cop. That's bullshit! <laughs> You'll shut the lid on the trash, ignore the smell of the rot coming from inside and go on pretending it's justice, and then you call that being an honest cop? <sighs> Asshole. Did you forget that you were talking to a detective? <laughs> You never did answer the question, nami -san. Who had the authority to erase the security cameras? Who wants Kawana dead so bad that they do it inside? Even if I told you, what the fuck could you do about it, Detective? Smartass! <laughs> Leave it alone, Yagami. It's for your own good. Is that your call? Well, I think I'll be the judge of that. Little piece of shit! I've had enough! You dead son of a bitch! Come on. 
Hold off! Have a trick! Oh, oh god, no, 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 no! They broke the lock and forced their way into Sawa Sensei's place. That's when Soma came in. I'm sure she was terrified. They were pointing an ice pick at her. When I found her, her eyes were still open. And I could see the tears. Yet the police are going after Kawana instead of Soma. And the cops that were there know he isn't a suspect, but say their hands are tied. So it'll be my voice you hear instead of hers. And when they come to silence me, I'll know who the puppet masters are. <laughs> uh, I hear you. And you're probably right. And if you have any idea who might be pulling the strings, I need you to tell me before it's too late. Is there anyone on the force who would want Kawana dead. The moment we opened Sawa Sensei's case, the Kanagawa brass had a suspect file ready to go. And they didn't point to your guy Soma. They named you Kitakata, alias Kuwana the handyman. <laughs> Hilarious, isn't it? You were the first to the scene, which means the bigwigs pulled a suspect file before it even happened. Where'd the info about Kitakata come from? Not sure. But the National Police Agency said it came from public security. Public security? Why is public security involved in Sawa Sensei's case? Seems they were interested in RK's criminal network in Kamrocho. You know how after the Tojo clan disbanded, the criminals started going underground? Well, public security would rather let RK roam free than bust them. Monitoring them quietly gives them intel on criminal movements. And even if you catch these guys, the ones will just take their place. Wait, so they want RK on the streets? 
Is that why they're brushing Sala Sensei's case under the rug? If RK goes down in one fell swoop over a murder case, they have to find a new source of intel. Purely speaking from public security's point of view, that is. Unbelievable. Not that they'd ever say that out in, well, public. If you believe public security, there's no way RK killed Sala Sensei. What the hell? Do they even have a reason? Not that I'm aware of. On top of that, I asked Tokyo PD about Soma, but he doesn't have a record. No priors, no census registry, not even a damn profile pic. Then, what does that mean? The man known as Kazuki Soma doesn't exist, basically. Maybe that's how it's always been. Maybe it's a cover-up. They had plenty of files on Kuwana to send our way instead. They're the ones who made him the prime suspect in Sawa Sensei's case, too. That doesn't make any sense. Look, Kuwana's a scapegoat for RK. Public security wants to shut the curtains on Sawa Sensei's case with him. As far as they're concerned, with Kuwana silenced, they'll all balance out. So that's what you meant by Kuwana having an accident. Right. Better to flush your ship and keep a lid on it. So who's running the show in public security? Do they have a name? I wasn't told, unfortunately. I'm afraid I'm further down the food chain than you thought. Yeah, Watanabe speaking. Huh? The Gene Show? Huh? Right. Got it. Call me if anything else comes up. One has been spotted. A witness reported seeing him in Jincho. Seriously? He's back here? Couldn't say for sure. Where's he at? Fukutokucho, in Koreatown, where the Komi Jewel hang out. The police are headed there now. Komi Jewel? Apparently it means spider web in Korean. You haven't seen it? It's made to look like it's abandoned. And Kawana's there? You're not gonna say you got that from me, right? I don't have much time. You said Kawana might have an accident, didn't you? I'm sure that's why you're telling me all this. If you find him, let him know it's public security that's after him. And they mean business. Yagamishi, it's me. I have an update for you. It seems Kawana has been spotted in Ichincho. Yeah, in Komijo, right? I'm headed there now. Ah, fastidious as ever. But the police have already started blocking off Komijo. Already? They're probably gonna surround the area and gradually close in on Kawana-san. What's your plan, Yagamishi? Public security is probably behind that. And according to Nabe-san, once they capture Kawana, they'll end up in an accident. An accident? Long story short, I need to find Kawana before the cops do. Can you navigate me to him? I most certainly can. For now, just keep heading toward Komijo. In the meantime, I'll be monitoring the surrounding area. Oh, and I'll dispatch Sugiurashi. Appreciate that, Tsukumo. This is Tsukumo. Yagamishi, please come in. Hey, I think I'm in front of Komijo. Indeed you are. <laughs> I can see you from the drone. Then you'll notice the cops blocked the road. Any way I can get in there? Not to worry. I've already looked into an infiltration room. Better be careful here. Way to go. So, what should I do? Can you see the white car that's parked in front of the barricade? Yeah, I can. There's a really small gap on the side of the car. You should be able to fit through it. It'll be a tight squeeze, I'm sure. But I have no doubt in your agility, Yagamishi. Yeah, but what happens if I get spotted? You can leave that part to me. Itazo! Kotsu!
Tsukumo, keep navigating for me. And let me know as soon as you find Kawana. Huh? It's weird. Hello? Sensei! Show yourself! Come on! Get your ass out here! Relax with the yelling, will you? You're giving away our location. How am I supposed to relax? This shit's intense! Shh! 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 Tsukiura? Didn't Tsukumo-kun tell you I was on my way? Yeah. Suppose he did. Yagami-san, all these guys are okay. Does that mean R.K. beat the police to Kawana? No, not exactly. I just saw some cops let R.K. guys through. But maybe I'm wrong. I mean, that'd be crazy, wouldn't it? No, that was no mistake. Some cops are working with R.K. But why? Someone in authority on the force is trying to get rid of Kawana. So they want him to have an accident. What? That's off the scale insane. Insane or not, I need to get to Kawana before RK or the cops do. You know where he is? I don't. Come to think of it, why would Kawana-san come to Komichu? Does he know someone here? Good question. Let's just focus on reaching the top of this place for now. Aren't there people from Komichu here? It can't be all RK. Maybe we can ask them where Kawana is. Eh, worth a shot. As long as we don't give ourselves away. That looks like a lot of RK muscle to me, Yagami-san. Yeah, but if that many are out searching, the silver lining is that they don't have a lead on Kawana. True. We'll just have to stay one step ahead of them then. I don't see anywhere else we can go. So let's go up those stairs. Man, where is this fucking guy? It's just taking forever. Yeah, it's not like anyone else is here. You think the cops got it wrong? Then what do we do? Keep looking? Is there a fucking point? Seems like Kawana-san's giving them a slip. What's the plan now? Let's find out what RK's gonna do when they catch Kawana. Are they planning to kill him themselves? What, you gonna just stroll up and ask him? Well, I only count four of them. So, two each. Piece of cake? I guess. Okay, let's go. Hello, gentlemen. Got a couple questions for you. Huh? Who the hell are you two? You with the Kome Jewel? Wow, <laughs> they don't even recognize you, Yagami-san? Well, that's kind of sad. What's going on here? Huh? Uh, Yagami-san? I don't think it's just two each anymore. Yagami? Hey, that's the detective from Kamurocho! A detective? Just get him! There with Kitakata! Fuck yeah! Let's get it started. Hope you're ready to die! <laughs> I've been waiting for this shit! Great. More of them. Let's go! Yeah! 
that all you got? I thought there were more of you guys. <laughs> Let's not jinx it, man. You guys came looking for Kuwana, right? What were you gonna do to him? We were just told to catch him. <sighs> not sure what comes after that. You sure the plan wasn't to kill him? I said I don't know! Who gave the order here? Soma? It was Akusa-san. Probably on Soma-san's orders, though. Hey, uh, Yagami-san? Hey, how come Ijincho has so many creepy masks? I was just gonna ask you. Kuana's not here. Huh? That intel was fake. We were the ones who put it out. You live here? Then you must be Komichu. Normally, it's us hiring the handyman. But this time, it was Kuana asking the favor. Huh? To put out false information? Yes. He said he wanted to see what kind of enemy he was dealing with and how they respond to an eyewitness report. Seeing as how easy police info made its way to these thugs, I'd say he was wise to use caution. Were he any closer, he would have been ensnared by now. So Kawana's nearby, watching everything unfold as we speak? He's really in a Jinsho then? We'll have to clear the room to discuss that. Hey! Why are you looking at me? Sorry. As you said, Kuwana's return to Ujincho. There are benefits to being here that only he can exploit. Where's he hiding out? Under the protection of Tesso from the Yokohama Leomon. But you're cleared to see him. We already took care of that. Kuwana actually said he'd meet us? Hmm. <laughs> Come on. There's a way through the cops don't know. You can get out to the city from there. <laughs> That'd be helpful, thanks. <sighs> Guess you're not so bad after all. Bear in mind, you may not leave alive if you come back. You were never welcome here. And never mind. So, where do we find Kuwana-san? I'm sure the Liumang will lead us to him. Just so happens I've got a brother there named Tesso. A what? Now let's get there before Kawana changes his mind. So, you Yagami Yanaki? Tesso san told me to let you in. Uh, Yagami Yanaki? <laughs> Will you be coming inside? Sure, let me pass. This way, please. So, Aniki, do I have to call you that? <laughs> Take your seat. And you too, buddy. This'll be fun. And which of your names should we be using for you now? Kiwana? Or do you prefer Kitakata-sensei? Kitakata's a name that's been all but murdered by society. And Ijincho. I'm just a merry old handyman Kuwana-san. If you ask the cops, you're the murder suspect Kitakata. After killing Sawa-sensei, you fled the scene. At least, that's the story the police top brass are passing down through the ranks. Now why would they say something like that about you? Calm down, Yagami. How come you never relax? So Kuwana hired you guys from the start. And you pretended to not know each other in front of me? If that's the case, you really went all out for me. Didn't I tell you? The Liumang accepts anonymous requests, too. Tesso didn't know I was the one who hired him. 
I suppose there's no point in hiding that now. That's just how it is. Nothing to get mad over, bro. You really aren't hiding anything? Did you tell him all you've done? He's a former high school teacher who's going around killing bullies. Can't be much more to hide than that. Do you need more convincing? <laughs> Honestly, I'm at a loss. I worked my ass off to get where you are. And I'm still trying to untangle the mess you've made of it. You've got my student helpers by the throats. So I'm really backed into a corner here. You mean the graduates from Kurokawa Academy? Like Mamiya-san? Very good, Sugiira-kun. So how about it? No reason for us to doubt each other's intentions, right? All the secrets are out in the open now. Fine. Then I'm gonna light up. You were just over at Komijuo, weren't you? RK was looking for me there. The police even lent them a hand. Yeah. Well, now I'm even more confused. I give up. Who in the world could be after me? Who has influence over both RK and the police? Care to venture a guess? They'd be the uneducated guesses of a handyman. You got any bright ideas yourself, Master Detective? I haven't confirmed it for sure yet, but I have a pretty good theory for you. Oh? Uh -huh. Who? Red Knife, as in R.K., the thugs from Kamurocho. I know they're after me, but who's backing them? Why is Kanagawa PD letting them run amok? Right. The real issue is who's behind R.K. Don't leave me hanging. You know something, don't you? Reiko Kusumoto, Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health. She's Mitsuru Kusumoto's mother, your student from 13 years ago. Wait, what? There's a chance she's the one trying to silence you. And public security is taking orders directly from her. Public security? A detective from Kanagawa PD told me. Public security is pinning you as Sawa-sensei's murderer. He was also told to back off RK. If public security is protecting RK, it would explain why they have free reign on a Jinsho. Hey, back up. Why does this Kusumoto lady want to silence Kawana in the first place? Kawana had his former students kidnap Shinya Kawai in Kamurocho five years ago. The same guy who pushed her son into jumping off a roof. Kawai was killed after that. Before you killed Kawai, you approached Reiko Kusumoto about the prospect of revenge, didn't you? Ahara told us that. Before taking revenge on a bully, you'd approach the family about it first. Did you make the same offer to Reiko Kusumoto? What if I did? She's the Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health. She's pretty popular. She's even cleaning up her predecessor's mess. If it were to surface that she agreed to a revenge killing, they'd have yet another massive scandal on their hands. And if you get to go down in cuffs instead of a body bag, that detail may just come out. Before that can happen, Reiko Kusumoto plans to have, have me silenced and use public security to do it. Exactly. Except public security can't just go after you, so they subcontracted RK to do the dirty work. That would explain why public security is trying to cover for RK. I see. Well, the logic starts off soundly enough. Something wrong with it? Unfortunately, yes. Something does stick out. And what's that? I did, in fact, approach Kusumoto-san five years ago about taking revenge on Shinya Kawai. And just as you said, I used Mamiya Kun and the others to kidnap Kawai. And? From that point on, Kusumoto-san knew I was directing Mamiya Kun and the others. She'd seen their faces, knew their identities, everything. So, if Kusumoto-san wanted to go after me, Mama Yakun and the others would be first on the list. But the fact is, public security hasn't laid a finger on them, even now. Which means, Kusumoto-san isn't the one giving them orders. Sure, that makes some sense. Hey, so sorry if this is off topic, but 
What was Kusumoto-san doing when Shinya Kawai was killed five years back? She was standing right there with me. Afterwards, she took three days of PTO, and that was a first for her. Why? Shinya Kawai died at the hands of Kusumoto-san. She drove the knife into his chest personally. She took it slow, making sure he suffered the whole time. Just like Akihiro Ehara, she avenged her son with her own two hands. I admire her. She killed Kawai herself? Afterward, she told me she'd never wash the smell of his blood off her hands. Damn, man. I was the only one who knew that, by the way. The others have no idea. On that day, five years ago, I sent them straight home after they brought me Kawai. And I was the only one with Kusumoto-san when she killed him. This sounds way too crazy to be real. Even so, the fact is Kusumoto-san hasn't betrayed me. Besides, I doubt the Vice Minister is powerful enough to order public security around. Then who is giving them their orders? Well, I'd say your theory's on the right track. I'm sure public security contracted RK. It lines up with what's happened so far. I imagine they're so persistent, because they know I can be used against Kusumoto-san. Either way, whoever's pulling the strings is someone who'll benefit from your capture. So if it isn't Reiko Kusumoto, maybe it's one of her enemies? An enemy? Yeah, like someone within the Ministry of Health. Or maybe even some kind of political rival. Nothing would be more valuable to them than dirt on Kusumoto, right? They're probably trying to take her down. Or, they could threaten and manipulate her as they see fit. Is that why public security has been taking action? If they wanted to take her down, they could have had the police investigate her fair and square. Right. Kusumoto-san can walk away from the Ministry of Health any time she wants. Plus, she has the public's support, especially with the younger crowds. All just more reasons for her to have enemies. I read some article about how even the Prime Minister has a hard time with her. Like, she'll get up in his face every time he signs an order. Dumbass loses so many arguments, he practically works for her now. So the Prime Minister is trying to find some dirt on Reiko Kusumoto? He's just an example. Weren't you listening when we said Kusumoto-san has lots of enemies in her position? Hey, don't be a dick. So whoever's behind this may have been looking for a weakness in Kusumoto-san for a while. They must have got their start after realizing Ehara's case was really about getting revenge on a bully. That puts Ehara and Reiko Kusumoto in the same boat, being that their only sons were bullying victims. And if they discovered that Kawai also vanished five years ago. Regardless, that wouldn't account for the rest of the incidents where a bully ended up dead. You'd know. You're the one going up and down the whole country killing them off, aren't you? Kawai makes number seven. Seven? Damn, man. It wouldn't take much to connect the dots. It leads straight to her. Reiko Kusumoto. Then they'd know that she was among the victims who got her revenge. Yeah. And then... To Ahara's case. The link between him and Kusumoto is clear as day now if you know what you're looking for. That link... Is Sawa-sensei. It took me a while, but I connected the two cases together myself. It was R.K. She never should have even been on their radar. In fact, they traced your name from her. Sawa-sensei knew. She suspected you were involved with the Mikoshiba murder in one way or another, right? You don't care. You see your killing spree on these former bullies like you're doing the country a service. In your eyes, this is vengeance. Actually, no. You'd call it justice, wouldn't you? Except... Sawa-sensei wouldn't have died if it was. That was never my intent. She shouldn't have died. No. You don't get to just brush her off like that. Like an afterthought. You had to have known you'd go down for this eventually. 
and you're fine if all your old students like you and Mamiya go down with you. By then, why would you look back at your trail of blood? Why would you clean up all your carnage? It's not your problem, right? You move forward with one purpose. Send as many bullies to hell as you can. Beyond that, you don't give a shit what happens. Sawa Sensei died in tears. You didn't see what I saw. The fear she must have felt was still frozen on her face. You, Nahara, Reiko Kusamoto, you're all murderers, and so far all of you have gotten away with it. So why did Yoko Sawa end up having to pay the price? Tell me, will you even be able to look her in the eye when you die? I doubt it. That's going to follow me well into the afterlife. So what now, then? March to the cops and turn myself in? You should. If you don't do exactly that, no one will know why she had to die. And that'll be the end of her story. Everyone will keep on dancing around her death. Even though she was completely innocent. Just like the cops are doing. Afraid I can't do that. If I turn myself in now, there's only one thing that happens. Public security takes me out. And worse, Reiko Kusumoto would be compromised. And that, I will never allow to happen. Of all the people involved in this, she deserves to walk free. Her revenge was justified. You think so? All she did was scrape off the scum of the earth that pushed her only son into an attempted suicide. She didn't sit around crying about a legal miscarriage. She took justice into her own hands. No one has any right to indict her for that. So don't go there. Nobody lays a finger on her! Hey, skinny ginger kid. Looks like this is gonna turn into a little more than a chat. Good thinking. So was your plan to kill me too? Anyone who interferes with your justice? We all get added to your body count, don't we? The punishment fits the crime. You're just blind. If you can't see that, then you can go to hell! Stay out of my way! Has this been going now? I lost track. Call it? Nah. They're gonna tire out eventually. 
Beating the shit out of each other is the way some people communicate. I can see that. There we go. Now let's stop. Yeah, it's about that time. Haven't you had enough yet? What? You think it's time to give it a rest? Hell no. Stay out of our way. You're not looking so hot. You got lucky I stopped when I did, you know. I had a move lined up with your name on it. You're the one who got lucky as far as I'm concerned. I was about to kick your ass! <sighs> what a fucking mess, guys. Hey, both of you, eat. Your food's getting cold. One of our higher-ups cooked this himself. It'll look good if there's any left. <sighs> Not a problem. This stuff's great. Mmm, mm, delicious. Man, this is the good stuff. So that means Reiko Kusamoto could be being targeted by public security. Right. It's possible part of the police wants to catch me as leverage against Kusumoto-san on public security orders. But that's only if public security really is behind this. You're the one who said you got that info from a cop. Well, someone up top's been putting pressure on the investigation. That much is clear. But no matter how you slice it, the fact that you're enemy number one while RK roams free is absurd. Unfortunately, all I got out of that cop was that public security itself is who we're up against. Public security is Japan's top intelligence agency. If they're after you, there's no escape. Agreed. Then I guess now's a good time to make a suggestion. Huh? Hmm? Tell me, who benefits the most from you two fighting? Huh? That'd be public security. The more you drag each other down, the easier they'll be able to get the jump on you. By the time you notice, it's too late. They've got you. That's exactly what they'd want, right? But what if you two work together? You watch each other's backs and act before RK and public security do. You might even be able to find out who's pulling the strings. Huh. Yeah. For two enemies to join forces, there needs to be an even greater threat to fight. Sure. I'm on board with that. Fine, but this is only temporary. Once we've finished with public security, I'm gonna make sure you answer for what you've done. Okay, uh, then where do we start? Should we just storm public security at this point? No. First we need to confirm public security is really the enemy we're after. Right. We'll make our move after that. We have the element of surprise. They have no idea we're working together. Then we'll use it to our advantage and outsmart them. <laughs> Aww, look at the boys playing nice. If public security's trying to find some leverage against Kusumoto-san, they'll likely be listening in on her. They're the experts in wiretapping and espionage, after all. We just need a quick confirmation. How? <laughs> we'll just give her a call. Right here? Yes. That way, her enemy will trace the call and pinpoint our location. And public security is the only one in Japan who can pull that off, so we'll know right away if it's them. Huh. <laughs> Good thinking. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hold up! You saying if you call up Reiko Kusumoto, then the bad guys will start pouring in? Can we maybe not do that here? Actually, that might just work in our favor. Huh? Bro, why are you talking crazy? Uh, Yagami-san, you sure about getting on bro terms without Kaito-san? Wouldn't that bum him out? 
Whoa. This is amazing. What is this? Good shit, huh? You've got good taste, bro. I knew you of all people would notice the difference. Kuana, when was the last time you spoke to Reiko Kusumoto? Five years ago, on the night she killed Kawai. We arranged it so we'd never contact each other after that. So you have her number then? If it hasn't changed. What is it then? I have an idea. What? We're gonna set a trap to find out if we really are up against public security. They trace the call and they send people for us, and we know for sure it's them. That's why we're gonna call Reiko Kusumoto using a location that doesn't exist at all. How's that work? We'll use two phones that can't be traced back to us, and we'll relay your voice. Obviously you won't be wherever we do this from. Best to do this someplace with no one around. Once we see who they send in, mission accomplished. Wait, what's happening? <laughs> Don't worry, I got it. You'll catch up, Sugiyura-kun. First, we need to know our enemy. I'll have Tsukumo prep us some burner phones. Which means... a truce for the time being? Only while you're here. Gotta keep things civil for my brother. <laughs> Man, Zhao sounds cooking makes even the suckier situations not suck. Cheers to that! Hey, so Tsukumo-kun's already got the phones ready. They're burners that can't be traced back to us. Two of them, right? Just like you asked for. Nicely done, Yokohama 99. You'll work quick. Ah, just the two I've been waiting for. Excellent work, by the way. Hey, got those burner phones ready? <laughs> of course I do. Who do you think I am? I still don't fully get what's going on. Yagami-san, what are we gonna do with these? Okay, I'll break it down. First, we call Kawana on one phone. Let's say this one here. Then we use this other phone to call Reiko Kusamoto. Using them that way. The phones won't be connected to each other, but their voices will be relayed so they can talk normally. Oh, okay. And then? If public security finds out Reiko Kusumoto's talking to Kawana, they'll trace the call without actually finding him. Then we can see exactly who they send without risk of being seen ourselves. Mm-hmm. I think I'm getting it. Surely you don't intend to do that here, do you? That would put a beacon on us for Kawana-san's enemies. Yeah, we'll do it somewhere remote. We need a place where nobody would raise an eyebrow at an army of public security boys. And it's gotta have a good vantage point. Hmm. There's a building under construction not far from here. It's late, so no one should be around that may get involved unintentionally. Where is it? It's right near Seirio High. There's a crane by the river, too. You'll know when you see it. Okay, you two stay put. I should be able to handle this alone. Uh, you sure about that? Let me at least put out a drone, Yagamishi. Even if it isn't much. I'll use it to capture the faces of Kawana-san's pursuers. <laughs> That'd be good. This must be the construction site Tsukumo was talking about. This is Tsukumo. Yagamishi, I've confirmed your position. Yeah. I think I can spot whoever comes close from here. I'm gonna call Kawana on the burner now. Understood. It's Kawana. You ready? I'm about to call Reiko Kusumoto. Once you're connected, you take it from there. It's been five years since I last spoke to her. Yeah. Can't imagine this won't be awkward. I know. Okay. 
do it. Yes, hello? This is Kitakata, from Kurokawa Academy. What? You'll have to forgive me for this, but the position I'm in required me to reach out to you. I would never have done this otherwise. I should also note, there's a high probability this phone call is being tapped. I see. Very well, then. It's been 13 years, Kusumoto-san. So it has. Kitakata Sensei. I've read about your accomplishments. To think you'd become a vice minister. You never really know how things are going to work out. Ah, uh, but that's not true at all, Kusumoto-san. You were always destined to move up in the world. I've got to be honest with you. A woman as virtuous and as capable as you deserves the world and then some. But... How is Mitsuru-kun? I'm afraid he's still asleep. Nothing's changed. I see. I wish I had the words. What is it you wanted? If you've been watching the news, you've probably already heard. I've become a prime suspect for a crime. They think I murdered Yokosawa in her apartment. I've heard. Obviously, it wasn't me who killed her, of course. Do you happen to remember Sawakun by any chance? The girl from your class. She was the only one of those students who ever came to visit Mitsuru. But even then, that's been at least ten years now. I got a letter from her once. She wanted to tell me she'd become a teacher. But I never did reply. And that was the last I'd heard from her. I see. So back to my question. What do you want? I hope you weren't planning to ask me for a favor. I'm afraid the answer would be no. No, it's not that. It's just... I wanted to let you know that at some point, someone may come to you to ask a few questions about me. I thought I should give you a heads up. I'll make every effort to ensure they won't cause any trouble for you, Kusumoto-san. I'm sorry about this. I'll try to handle it from my side. So in your opinion, then, do you believe anything related to you could cause me any trouble? Don't worry. I'm sure you'll be just fine. We're almost to the signal. Kill the headlights. Two cars inbound. Looks like we were right on the money. This proves Reiko Kusumoto's phone is compromised. And if there's one organization capable of tracing a call and moving on it, it's got to be public security on the hunt for Kawana. Public security is really coming straight to you by car? No. There's no way they can mobilize their people that quickly. My guess? It's gotta be the prefectural police that they've got in their pocket. Or it's just RK. I will say it's been great to hear your voice again. But this should be the last time you ever hear from me. I'll try my best. I understand. Goodbye. Drone. It has a phone attached to it. Shoot it. Shoot it down. You sure? Uh, just take it down. Hurry it up. Hey, what the fuck are you aiming at? I can't hit it. It's too small. Shit. Damn, dude. How the hell are we supposed to chase down a drone? And where the fuck is this Kuana guy? Who knows, man? They called us in to catch this shithead, but how the hell are we supposed to do that? It's fucked up. Do we look like spec ops? Yeah, right? But at least you gotta shoot that thing. 
This is my second time, actually. I took a few shots at some kids in a park. <laughs> I aimed at the ground and sent those little shits running for their lives. <laughs> We're done here. Pack it in! That's six punks and only one gun between you by my count. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? It was you guys in charge. I'm sure Kiwana would have had this whole thing solved a long time ago. Well, then again, I suppose I do have to give you credit for how fast you made it here. That was my gun, asshole! Who's the one giving the orders? You may as well just level with me. You guys are RK's bottom rung, right? It sounds like you must know Kuana. <laughs> well, I guess we're not gonna be leaving here empty-handed after all. Come on! We're taking this guy in, boys! Fuck him up! For real? Who sent you here? The order came from the head honchos in RK. You mean Soma? Not that high up. It was one of the bosses. There's a bunch of them. What did they tell you to do once you found Kuwana? They just said to catch him. Well, they also made it very clear not to kill him. <laughs> like we'd pull the trigger. We never even heard what our cut was. Just another useless grunt. <laughs> Tell me, gentlemen. How would you feel if you found out you were just pawns in public security's game? Uh, we're playing what game now? I suggest you quit RK while you can. Go tell your buddies. Get them out too. Otherwise, they'll keep you in the dark, use you, and toss you aside. And then... You'll end up in a ditch there's no crawling out of. Yes? Pardon me. You would be Reiko Kusumoto, correct? Sir. It's a little late for this. And how'd you get in here in the first place? I've expressly forbid having visitors. <laughs> Come now. I'm a coordinator with the National Police Bureau, but I'm sure you're familiar with my division of public security. Bondo is my name, ma'am. Are you now? Well, I'm afraid coordinator is rather vague. I have a more public-facing title as well, of course. But I'm trying to be discreet here, so let's not get bogged down with minor details. It's in our best interests. I'm afraid that won't help. I've already seen to that. What is this? There's a question I need answered with some urgency, Kusumoto-san. It concerns the disappearance of a certain individual. Huh. About five years ago, a man vanished off the streets of Kamurocho. I'm sure you'll recognize him. A former classmate of Mitsuru-kun here, Shinya Kawai. I believe there are things you might know. I can say that with some level of certainty as a matter of fact. A shadow looms over Yagami and Kuwana. Japan's National Intelligence Agency, Public Security, fixes its gaze on Reiko Kuzumoto of the Ministry of Health. Five years ago, 
Kuana prompted her to take revenge on Shinya Kawai for pushing her son to the brink. Secrets can only lie dormant so long, and upon their waking, chaos ensues. Done it again, Tsukumo. Can't believe you found it. <laughs> I figured Mitsuru Kusumoto would be in one of the better hospitals around the health ministry. That narrowed it down to just a few locations. Then I pinpointed the exact one through sheer determination. And that led you to Toto University Hospital. So Mitsuru is still lying in a coma there? Yep. Reiko Kusumoto has been visiting her son every night for the past 13 years even after she became Vice Minister. If you gentlemen want to meet her in person, that would be your best chance. But Yagami, you seriously think you can convince Reiko Kusumoto to turn herself in? Well, I'm gonna try at least. She's at the top of the food chain. If it comes out that she committed murder, the whole country's gonna lose it. If they hadn't tried to hide it, nobody else would have needed to pay for it. Isawa-sensei. Yeah, you're right. And if she confesses to killing Kawhi, public security will run out of reasons to keep defending RK. So in theory, that should free up the police to pursue Soma about Sawa-sensei. Totally agree with you there. But Kawana-san's against that, right? Didn't he say he wouldn't let her turn herself in? Yeah, that's why he's not in the loop on this. So, you're just gonna show up? You do know she's probably surrounded by public security at all times, don't you? Just means we gotta be prepared for that. Like the professional detectives we are. Prepared? How? <laughs> Just leave it to us. Yagami-san, I gotta go get ready. Let's meet at Toto University Hospital. Got it. See ya. <laughs> so what do you need from me in this, Yagami? You got any old acquaintances in RK? Think you can find out where Soma and Akutsu are? You forget who you're talking to? Why wouldn't I be able to cover that? I knew a few ex-Tojo guys who go in and out of RK on the regular. Thanks. But watch your back. If they find out you're spying on them, they won't like it. I'll be ready. Like the professional ex-Yakuza I am. See ya. <laughs> he's rough around the edges, but in the end he comes through. Yeah. Turns out he's got extra time on his hands. Why don't you hire him at your office, Yagamishi? <laughs> I'll talk about that with Kaito-san once he recovers. Anyway, sorry Tsukumo, but we have to take Sukiura from you again. <laughs> Why start apologizing now? It's all good. We'll talk again soon. Don't worry. I'll give it back to you after this. I'm sure it's bugged, and we wouldn't want anyone listening in now, would we? We'll take a few laps around the block, and then drop you back off at the hospital. I'm sorry, but we just need a bit of your time. Very well. Who are you people? We're just local detectives, but Kitakata-sensei is an acquaintance of ours. We know about Mitsuru-kun. 
and we know that five years ago, a man named Shinya Kawai mysteriously disappeared and died. I have no idea what you're saying. But you do. I know how this must come across right now, so I assure you, we aren't the ones posing a threat. Fine. What is it you want, then? All I want is the truth. In your own words. About Shinya Kawai, and how you carried out his murder. You're mistaken. I didn't do it. The other day you received a call from Kitakata-sensei, didn't you? He goes by the name Kuwana now, and works as a handyman in Ijincho. He made that call because we needed to confirm something. Confirm what? Whether or not you were being watched by public security. <sighs> public security, you say? As it turns out, you are. Your cell phone is bugged. It can even use GPS to trace who's on the other end of the line. That kind of trace is only possible with cooperation from the cellular providers. Unless you're public security, who could pull something like that off in secret. They want to hit you where you're vulnerable. And that's what you are now, after Kuwana. Do you understand, Kusumoto-san? <sighs> you must really be something special. You were never in this job for yourself. It fell into your lap as your predecessors fell like dominoes. That's why you don't owe anyone anything. You're free of constraints. And Mitsuru-kun's tragedy even gained you public sympathy on top of it. Combine all that with a capable bureaucrat like you? There's no telling what you could accomplish. You're cleaning up house, tackling the revolving door problems. Things you know are the right moves, but with no regard for the consequences. I understand even the cabinet gauges your opinion, since you have so much public support. But I think that's also made you some enemies. Most likely whoever's holding public security's leash. I have more than a few enemies. I'm well aware of that. And I have no doubt public security would comply with them. To be quite frank, public security only exists to maintain the status quo. The establishment is made up of various powers which control politics and finance. But naturally, each branch has its own agendas, goals, ideas of justice, which leads to all sorts of issues and hindrances, which you call constraints. The more individuals who make up society, the more unavoidable that is. Are you implying it's public security's job to loosen those constraints? <laughs> there is more to it than that. The world we live in requires all kinds of value systems to coexist, even in chaos. But if you loosen the constraints too far, the fall of the state is inevitable. In that regard, public security's role is to stabilize and maintain the state even while bound by constraints. In other words, the constraints of these powers are precisely what are protected by public security. So the fact that I am not caught up in all that does, indeed, make me something of a pesky foreign object. A pesky foreign object. I see. So to these establishment people, you're something to be excised. Hmm? I guess there's bullying among adults in high places too. Yeah. Now we know why they were looking for any kind of weakness in you. And that's when they turned the spotlight on Shinya Kawai's disappearance. An event that was triggered by Akihiro Ihara's case. You know the one, I presume. Yes. An active duty policeman exacted revenge on the bully who drove his son to suicide. Your enemies must have heard that and thought to themselves. What would Reiko Kusamoto have done to her son's bully? <sighs> I'm guessing that's what prompted public security to make their move. As the details of Ahara's case came to light, a group of thugs calling themselves RK started looking for Shinya Kawai, all to find out that he was kidnapped five years ago, probably killed. I never did anything out of revenge. Even after finding out Kawai disappeared, public security still had to verify it. 
But if they found out you were involved, that'd be a win for them. They'd finally know Reiko Kusumoto's weakness. How long are you going to keep talking? As public security figured out, the bullying cases involving Toshiro Ehara and your son share a common link. That link being Sawa-sensei. She was Mitsuru-kun's classmate and Toshiro Ehara's teacher. Not only that, she was also linked to Ehara's murder victim, Hikoshima. She was his master teacher. So, not long after the murder, RK came to Ijincho and broke into her home. That must have been when they got Kawana's name out of her. I think Sawa-sensei suspected that Kawana was involved in Mikoshiba's murder. Then Soma steps in, with his professional interrogation skills, to beat and scare her into spilling everything. Kusumoto-san, you knew she was killed, right? Kawana should have told you over the phone. Wait, are you... not one of his colleagues? He said he wouldn't cause me any trouble, and that he would never call me again. Kawana and I are competitors on a temporary ceasefire. We're not colleagues. <sighs> Has anybody from public security contacted you? Have you been approached by any strangers? I have my suspicions. What are their names? I imagine what they wanted was to exploit your weakness to control you. Because if all they wanted was to eliminate you, some kind of accident would be easily arranged. Yes. I suppose you're right. Do you have any idea what these people are after? And do you mind sharing? What they want is control of the pension fund, which is under the health ministry's jurisdiction. Pension Fund? An independent agency within the Ministry manages the National Pension Fund. It's taxpayer funded, and it's worth 160 trillion yen. What? And certain groups want to take bigger risks with that money, in order to generate more profit. In other words, they want the Health Ministry to use taxpayer money to gamble. They believe that's the only way to rebuild Japan's faltering economy and secure the future of this country. I mean, would it work? Of course. If the gamble actually pays off. But if we lost the gamble, then we wouldn't be able to guarantee anything for the citizens of this country in their golden years. That's why the health ministry manages those funds conservatively, even if it means the returns are lower. Okay. I'm starting to understand now. You do? Don't leave me in the dust, Yagami-san. To be able to gamble all this taxpayer money to save the economy, they need a change of management. And here's Kusumoto-san, head of the office. And she's beyond the control of even the ministers. Her position has the power to take action, to override the way the pension fund is managed. But not only does Kusumoto-san have the power, she has the support of the people. If a new vice minister were to try it, They'd be stopped cold by the constraints. So that's why they wanted to find her weakness and exploit it? Exactly. And if the 160 trillion yen gamble were to fail, we can blame the whole thing on Kusumoto-san anyway. Okay. Wow. 160 trillion. <sighs> I'm guessing they've already contacted you about it? That's an assumption. I have to ask you about Shinya Kawai. You killed him five years ago. With your own hands, didn't you? I understand what your feelings must be towards Kawai. But was that really the only answer? If you've spoken to Kitakata Sensei, then you must know about the video of how Mitsuru was treated. I do. Aside from Kawai, the other students pretended like nothing happened. They took no responsibility. They put on their sad faces, and they came to visit Mitsuru at the hospital. 
But looking back on it now, I don't think they really wanted Mitsuru to wake up. In fact, that's what they were checking on. And what did I do? I bowed my head and thanked them. It was only later that Kitakata-sensei showed me the video. That's when I knew. That those kids going unpunished was wrong. And your solution was to pull them into the quagmire? Make them accomplices in murdering Kawai? If you already know so much, what more do you need to ask? How's your son doing now? He could wake up any minute now. Of course, that's been true for the last 13 years. I see. We transferred him to Toto University Hospital, just this year, hoping they could spur his recovery. But it turns out they don't do anything much different from the previous hospital. All I can do is wait. I get it now. Let me reiterate, we are not your enemy. Then please, let me go. Anything you want me to tell Kawana? I do. He needs to run. Far away. Public security has their sights on him. His capture is not a question of if, but when. He's in danger if he remains in the country. And once public security has him, they will extract everything he knows. You mean he'd be tortured? Yes. Somewhere well beyond the public eye. No one can withstand what they do. He'd tell them everything. And as for me... They would expose your vulnerability, making you their pawn. Most likely. They'd gamble away the taxpayers' money, and they'd never purge the corruption in the health ministry. I get that. But what does it matter? What? Because in my opinion, you need to turn yourself in, Kusumaru-san. <laughs> you want me to admit to manslaughter? You think I killed a real man? I say he was less than one. Shinya Kawai. He was little more than a subhuman brute. And you saw it. You saw what that brute did to my son. I hated Kitakata-sensei. He was an incompetent teacher. An idiot who turned a blind eye to Mitsuru being tortured. But that changed when he suddenly showed up eight years later. And then he showed me that video. He said, Every bully in that video, they deserved to be punished. That it was the only way to get closure. You took him up on it? But you of all people should have known better. True. You're right about that. I struggled with it quite a bit. It's an unconscionable act, no matter how deep your animosity runs. But Kitakata-sensei's words hung on. I couldn't get them out of my head. I saw for myself. I went to Kamrocha, where I'd heard Kuai was working, at a girl's bar. So you know, after Mitsuru jumped that day, Kuai came to me in tears to apologize. I hadn't seen him in all that time. If he'd frozen in place when he saw me, if he'd been the slightest bit apologetic, I might have been able to stay my hand. I take it he didn't do any of that. <laughs> right. He didn't even recognize my face. And that's hardly the worst part of it, actually. When he saw me, he took me for some bawdy cougar on the prowl for young men. If you've got the cash, I'll show you a good time, he said. All those tears he'd shed years earlier were a farce. But I knew that. Deep down, I'd already known that. That was it. That was the moment I lost all doubt about killing him. And as for those other kids who bullied Mitsuru, they should thank me they didn't share his fate. But that's why. That's why I don't feel like I have any sins to atone for. 
every night. Every night I pray he will wake up. What more can you ask me to endure? Kiwana said something similar. But you think you can repeat all that? This time say it to her. Isn't that... Sawa-san? You and Kiwana can congratulate yourselves. You got vengeance on a monster. But what you're choosing not to see is that your actions have consequences for her. It's vicious. I've seen this before. Justice for one at the cost of another. Someone innocent always pays the price. I won't... I won't just sit here and watch as history tries to repeat itself. This phone isn't being traced by anyone. So, if you have a change of heart, just give me a call before you turn yourself in. That's all I had to say. We're back. Right here, okay, Yagami-san? Yeah. I'm gonna go talk to Kawana. Need to tell him I met with Reiko Kusamoto. He's gonna be pissed, you know? He's gonna try to rip you a new one. <laughs> That's true. So you might want to sit this one out. <laughs> you sure? Because I'll totally take you up on that. Look who we have here. Haven't seen your mug in a while. It's only been two or three days. Where's Kawana? Hmm, how should I put this? <laughs> Would you freak out if he was right behind you? You know, this kind of shit is why you get on my nerves. Couldn't we have done this by phone? I just came from seeing Reiko Kusumoto. I told her to turn herself in for murdering Kawhi five years ago. You what? What did she have to say about that? That she had no sins to atone for. Of course not. Look, what do you think you're doing? Her part in this is done. Don't drag her back into it. This isn't yours to finish. You would just let Sawa Sensei stay collateral damage. How do you think her folks feel? They probably think you killed their daughter. And they don't know why, or if justice will be served. Do they have to suffer like that? All without even knowing the truth? <sighs> Would Sawa Sensei want that? You talk about justice, but she keeps getting left out. You aren't even trying when it comes to her. Say whatever you want, but if you cause Kusumoto-san any more pain, I will never forgive you. That's exactly why I didn't tell you I was going to meet her. Listen, Yagami. She hides it well, but she's never gotten over the fact Mitsuru tried to jump to his death. And she's not sure how to feel about killing Kawai. Unlike me. If she was anything like you, I would have pushed her harder to confess. There's no evidence that she killed Kawai. He simply vanished from Kamurocho, and the police didn't even know about it. Besides, there's no case without a corpse. Point being, she'll never be charged. Even if she did turn herself in, the police wouldn't know what to do with her. Don't think for a second that you're getting a pass here. You've killed, what, seven people now? Do you even hesitate anymore? Hm. You got proof? Running around making baseless accusations. You sure you were a real fucking lawyer? My colleagues in Kamracho are getting ready to appeal Ahara's case. Your actions are going to be put under a microscope. I wouldn't even call that bad news. I want the world to know their bullies are getting what they're due. And by then, I'll probably be going by a different name, maybe even a different look. You're just gonna keep doing this? Did Sawa-sensei sacrifice mean nothing to you? 
Is that the only thing keeping you around? Truth be told, I don't think exposing everything is even in Sawa's best interest. What? Sawa-kun herself felt guilty. I just sent you the proof. What is this? An audio file? After Ahara-san lost in court, she called me. I recorded our conversation. Toshiro-kun came running to the roof. His face was pretty swollen. And a few minutes later, a student named Mikoshiba came up looking for him. I'll never forget the fear I saw in Toshiro-kun's face. He told me about everything. The teasing, the beatings, the theft. How nobody was on his side. And yet, I had to deny all this in front of an entire courtroom. They said there was no hope, that I was the only witness with no proof whatsoever. Believe me, I never wanted to do that. Sawakun's testimony in court was false, and she was racked with guilt over it. And your first thought was to record it? When she was at her most vulnerable? Yes. And then I played it for Ahara-san. He had the right to know the real reason his son killed himself. All you did was light the fires of vengeance in Ahara's heart because you didn't want to be alone. You know, I've heard that bullying is almost instinctive. That's why people who do it never stop. I mean, think about it. Would you stop cleaning a toilet just because it'll get filthy again? Somebody's always got to get his hands dirty. And that somebody's gonna be you? If it means I can prevent another Mitsuru Kusumoto, yes, I will keep killing. These bastards who prey on the defenseless must be punished for all to see. I wish the law would do its job. Because deep down, I don't want to do any of this. I understand what you're saying. But you're taking it too far. Just stop, Kawana. If you really want to stop me, you're gonna have to kill me. And call it justice. <sighs> I thought you guys were gonna start another fight. It was a bitch cleaning up the mess last time. Next time I go up against him, it won't be just a few scratches. Well, when that time comes, take it anywhere but here. Hello? It's Shirosaki. Are you in Yokohama again, Yagami-san? Yeah. Is this about Ahara's trial? Yes. Regarding the appeal. The prosecution says they want to consult with us. Off the record. Off the record? What do you mean? They want to discuss with the judge beforehand whether or not Ahara's murder footage is admissible evidence. The video has gone viral, of course, and nobody's really sure how to handle it. Is the prosecution really going to hold the line on it being a deep fake? That's quite possible. Which is why we're meeting today in the courthouse conference room. I'm sorry for the short notice, but could you join us? Of course. I'll be there. Thank you very much. No need to rush. There's still plenty of time. Just be sure you're there, please. So what you're saying is, Yui Mamiya was not a victim of sexual battery, but rather she conspired with Akihiro Ehara to fake a murder alibi. We've already closed the book on that ordeal, yet now the defense wants to write a sequel? To establish the defendant's motive in the harassment, we need to bring the Mikoshiba murder to light. The groping itself was staged. It sounds like the
Did you walk around the site with your own two feet, Prosecutor? Uh, well, no. But I have been to Shinjuku Station plenty of times. Then you must know they have a mountain of security cameras covering every angle. But if you went there to look carefully, you'd find there are some blind spots. That's a horror running, while Mamiya chases after him. It seems as though the whole chase is recorded, but this area in dotted lines is a blind spot no camera saw. That's the momentary gap in time where Ahara and his double switched places. The victim was running right behind Ahara. She would have noticed if they swapped places right in front of her eyes. Oh, but she knew about the swap all along. They were all in on it from the start. Can you prove that? We don't have to prove the defendant is innocent, Takamasa. What? All we have to prove is that the evidence provided by the prosecution at the trial was insufficient to determine guilt. Because that's the role of the defense counsel. Indeed it is. If the prosecution can't debunk any and all possibility that the train groping was a put-up job, then it's innocent until proven guilty. Then the defense should have brought it up the first time. Although I doubt Shirosaki-sensei actually believed in the defendant's innocence herself. The guilty verdict at the trial was orchestrated by the defendant. It was our error not to have seen it at the time, but it would be another not to correct ourselves now. Stop being so dramatic! He's just a subway perv! That is a statement I cannot abide. The law can't give the impression that a false charge is permissible, even for a subway perv. Right. I take that back. I misspoke. Hmm. <laughs> I do believe this case is worth a trial in the appeal court. If the court was misled by a hostile defendant, then only the court can correct it. Thank you very much. However, I too have seen Ihara-san's murder footage. I believe it would be difficult to introduce it as evidence in this trial. Therefore, I cannot allow it to be brought into the courtroom at this time. Sorry, son. Think you've got this covered? Huh? I'll poke my head in at the office later. Very well. We'll be expecting you. Bando-san, was it? From Public Security? I don't recall saying my department. <laughs> but yeah, that's right. Do you know Reiko Kusamoto? The Vice Minister at the Ministry of Health? Of course. Any particular reason she's under constant surveillance? <sighs> A rather bold question, isn't it? It's just you and me here. I see you know how to cut to the chase, Yagami Sensei. Ahara's trial can't be that important to you. So I have to figure I'm the reason you showed up. You want to know where Kawana is, don't you? Were you finally forced to get off your ass because nobody else can get eyes on him? Kawana, otherwise known as Yu Kitikata, is wanted on suspicion of murder. If you know where he is, please do tell. Wanted for murder? Huh. Because you know, I thought it was RK acting on your orders that killed Sawa-sensei. You think you can hide that fact forever? Even the cops in the field have their suspicions. Do they? <laughs> well, the cubicle workers always resent the corner offices. Officers in the field complain about their superiors. I did the same thing back in my day. Then why did you use thugs as your pawns instead of officers? Is that how Sawa-sensei got roped into this? <sighs> I'm afraid I'm not following. You knew it was going to be a dirty job from the beginning. That's why you couldn't use anybody on the force. Or maybe you just weren't able to find an underling you could fully trust. <laughs> That's a good one. 
Public security is only tricks for surveillance and call tracing. You leave the dirty work to the thugs. And that may be true, but it's enough to crush the likes of you. I'm gonna ask just in case. Where is Soma now? Hand over Kawana to me and there will be no more victims. What? Do you have a reason to protect him? I already know he's going around executing bullies. He's a disturbance to public order. But he wasn't the one who killed Sawa-sensei. I didn't come here to argue. I came to issue an ultimatum. Yagami-san, was everything okay back there? That man, Bondo, I knew something was off about him. Is he one of the men behind RK? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He was trying to find out where Kawana was. I see. That reminds me. Hoshino-kun seems to have heard some rumors about RK. Hoshino-kun, did you pick up what the word is on RK? Yeah. One of the bosses, Akatsu, came back to Kamurocho yesterday. He's back? He's number two in the group, isn't he? Yeah. So he would probably know about Soma. Know where he is? Well, I'm not sure if you're aware, Yagami-san, but RK owns some of the cabaret clubs in Kamurocho. And Akatsu manages them. If a girl makes a lot of sales, or if she becomes a rising star in the club, Akutsu apparently gives that girl a bonus. Personally. How do you know this stuff, Hoshino-kun? <laughs> Our clients come from all walks of life in Kamurocho, cabaret girls included. So to sum it all up, a popular girl has a chance to meet Akutsu? Yeah, but this week nobody was getting that chance. Until yesterday. Which is how I figured out Akatsu is back in Kamurocho. He must have been in Yokohama. Oh, well, that makes sense. But where exactly in Kamurocho is he? That's the part I don't know. RK bosses never sleep in the same place twice. Gotta keep the cops off their trail. But despite the risk, Akatsu still reaches out to popular girls. <laughs> hey, I'm not even mad. In fact... I'm up for the challenge. Awesome, Sarisan. If you can rock the cabaret gig again, you can hook Akutsu. It'd be an undercover mission to infiltrate RK. Super risky. Damn, if I don't want to see Sarisan transform one more time, I can't help it! What the hell's gotten into you? Are there any bars we know for sure that RK owns? There is. You remember Queen Rouge, the place Saori-san snuck into a long time ago? RK recently took over the management there. Queen Rouge? What about the owner? Still the same guy? Yep, he's still there. One of the original employees. Only thing is, it used to be a classy spot, but they've cut a lot of corners. The vibe has probably changed a lot. Really? Well, maybe that means I can afford to go. Hey, totally! I want to go too! This is no time to be idiots. Okay, well, sorry son, you'll need the whole makeover again. I can take point on that. No need, I'll be fine. Huh? Just the other day, Mari-san and I figured out what kind of makeup goes over well with RK. I'll just go with that. With Mari? Well, counterpoint, I think a man might know better what men like. With all due respect, 
don't judge what you haven't seen. Oh, uh, really? Okay, I'll leave it to you, sorry son. Should have just kept my mouth shut. Believe me, I'm not one to boast, but I'm confident my efforts are in the best interest of the mission. <laughs> That's the spirit. With Saurikun here, Gendal Law will have its doors open for another 20 years. True. And we've got Yagami-san's wisdom, too. All right. Should we get on with the mission? Let's do this. You can thank Mari-san. It's perfect. I'm really impressed. Fine. Well then, shall we head over to Queen Bruges? Oh, while you were doing your makeup, I talked to the owner about you coming in. The like Koshino-kun said, there's apparently a system in place where a girl with great sales potential gets the attention of Akutsu. I understand. Basically, I just have to aim to be number one at the bar, right? How confident are you? I can't make any guarantees, but I'll give it my all. Then I'm with you all the way, a lady. Watch out, son. I pass by this place sometimes, but it's been a while since I've been inside. The owner remembered you from last time. Said he wished you were there every night instead of just one. The undercover cabaret girl of his dreams returns. Oh, take this before you go. It's a wireless earpiece. If you end up going somewhere with Akatsu, we can use it to communicate. I'll be there in a flash if things go even remotely south. Got it. I know you have my back, Yagami-san. <laughs> you bet. Good luck, then. It's you! Yeah, looking at you takes me back to better days. You are a cut above, a sight for sore eyes. Nice to see you again. Have you been well? I'm fine. I'm fine! Well, that's a lie. Last time you were here, we were a good place. But times have only gotten tougher. Now, we're just a fast and cheap dive bar, with mediocre service. Yes, I heard a bit about that. Keep this on the down low, but uh, the former owner lost a bet in Mahjong. So we sold the bar, and we're under RK's management now. And ever since they took over, we're just like every other CD place. We don't even make a profit, unless we're shuffling people in and out. Which, of course, impacts the girls' performance. But I hear the girls with promise catch the eye of the RK members. Ha <laughs> ha! So you already know about that. Yes, RK treats people well who treat their bottom line well. If they notice a special girl, they'll give her a bonus to show their generosity. Or maybe Akutsutsan just wants to drink with cute girls. Where do girls usually meet up with Akutsu-san? No particular location. Just depends on his mood, I guess. Ha <laughs> ha! But you have your eye on that bonus, I see. Well, if anyone could get it, it's you, Sari-san. I'm rooting for you. Can you hear me, Sari-san? Yes. So you got in okay. Just so you know, I think I'm gonna call for support. Support? Yeah, so in case you meet Akatsu, we'll be ready to pounce on him. But you'll be on your own until then. So, 
are you the new girl the manager brought in? You are <laughs> kind of older than I thought you'd be. I'm sorry. Nice to meet you. Hmm. What club were you at before this? Oh, I'm usually an office worker. But I worked here once about two years ago. What, so you just come back whenever you feel like it? Like some part-time gig? Really? You treat this job like it's a cakewalk and expect us not to be offended? Oh, uh, point taken. So, I guess tonight I should sit back and watch the professionals show me how it's done? What? Are you dissing us? What? You can haze new girls, but if they give it back, you lose your cool? Excuse me? Now, now. You can't scowl like that when customers are here to have a good time. You little... <laughs> Wow, I thought you were just another snob, but you've got barbed wire where it counts. Magu, you're gonna let a new chick talk to us this way? Old or new doesn't matter. If you've got the goods, I have no complaints. I'm going to do my best, and I'll try not to weigh you two down. Taori-san, Megu-san, Kuriko-san, we have customers! Let's get to work! Well... Time for the new girl to show us what people see in her. <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward to it. Hello! I'm Megu! <laughs> Welcome! I'm Kuniko. I'm sorry. Nice to meet you. Oh, sorry, John. Uh, come, come, sit here. Wow, you're beautiful. Oh, the best of the bunch. Man, I am loving this place. Uh, um, so, how are you? But, you know, I could make any prosecutor shake in his boots just by yelling, OBJECTION! <laughs> That's awesome, you killer lawyer, you. Jeez, why is Genda Sensei getting all the attention? For your information, I passed the national bar exam with top marks. Uh-huh. Oh, what's a bar exam? Oh, you've got to be kidding. You ladies have really never heard of the bar exam? It's the toughest certification test in Japan! <laughs> I've heard of it. Oh, so it's a certificate? Well, I passed kanji level 3 when I was in middle school. That's not even comparable. Kanji aptitude is a very fine certification. Huh? You passed your stupid bar exam how many years ago now? And you're still bragging about your scores? Seriously? What? Um, I, uh... Mm, mm. Uh, sorry, John. You can't talk that way to a customer. No, she's right. It's a dumb thing to brag about, isn't it? But the bar is really hard. Not everyone passes it. There's so much studying to do, day and night. Oh my god, he's crying. Is one's value based on their past accomplishments? I think their future plans are far more important, right? Oh, <laughs> but... Oh, please. Cut Hoshino-kun some slack. His bar exam score is the best memory of his life. So, what's he been doing all this time, then? Oh, now I feel really bad. Poor baby. Uh, th that's a lot of... chest. You know what, Hoshino-kun? I think my best memory was all the way back in middle school. But, so what? It doesn't matter, right? 
Megachon. You just leave those woes to little old me tonight, huh? Shall we drink to that? Uh, okay. I'm so happy for you. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm just going with the flow. I know. And I like the way it's flowing, don't you? I sure do. Let's get some drinks flowing. That goes for you girls, too. <laughs> Yay! Cheers! Really? You're so generous. <laughs> Listen up, girls. This is a heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm having a great time. I tell you, I love cabaret clubs so much. <laughs> Me too, Genda Sensei. Especially this one. The customer service is on point. I wish I could come here every night and stay till morning. <laughs> you two know just how to flatter us. So true. Hey, in case you come back, would you like to reserve a bottle in your name? You guys are lawyers, so I'm sure you can afford it. <laughs> well, we're not a big firm. But you know what? <laughs> Let's do it! Nice one, boss! You're the best! Uh-oh. What's wrong, sorry son? You're looking kind of gloomy there. <laughs> Come on, how about a smile? Yeah, Sour Raccoon. I was thinking, if you could be just a bit friendlier, you'd be the belle of the ball. <laughs> um, do you guys already know Sour Raccoon? You act like you're good friends. Hmm, they do seem pretty close, right? Huh? I don't know. But would it be so wrong if we did know each other? Of course not. But this does happen to be our first meeting. <laughs> Silly sensei. Is it the first time? Is it really, though? <laughs> <laughs> You're both teasing me so much. <laughs> Poor Megasan and Kuniko-san are giving me dirty looks. Oh, I mean, that's because... Something does seem fishy. They're suspicious of us, Hoshino Sensei. Ah, uh, um, what? Uh, sorry, son. But I just can't seem to control myself. Uh, um, um. Oh, am I being too naughty? Hoshino-kun, this, this is inappropriate. Stop this, now, both of you. Oh, uh, excuse me? Uh, can we get that girl at this table too? Yes, sir. You mean Saori-san. Oh, Correct? oh, me too. Wait a minute, what about us? Oh my, <laughs> please, please, everyone. She's only one person. I guess the new girl's a hit. Oh, she sure showed us up. This is crazy. We can see defeat, sorry, son. I'm so sorry we were rude before. Oh, please. I just got lucky tonight. Yeah, right. I don't think I could have done better than you in any department. You're a natural at conversation, and so sexy, too. I learned a lot, actually. And woo, I drink a lot more than usual. Thanks for the hard work, you three. I bet you barely got any breaks. It was one customer after another. What a night! We haven't had this good a take in a while. It's all thanks to Saori-san. No, I couldn't have done it without Megu-san and Kuniko-san at my side. Come on, it was pretty obvious who the MVP was this evening. Boss, seeing as you're here, does that mean Saori-san's getting a bonus? That she is. 
Who would have thought this could happen on our first day? All I can say is, wow. Akutsu-san wants to meet you and show his appreciation by giving you the bonus himself. There's already a taxi waiting outside. Really? That is so awesome. No kidding! So the bonus thing is real, huh? I hope I get one someday. So, where exactly is Akutsu-san waiting for me? Apparently, it's a surprise! He doesn't just let that information out. But I'm sure it's somewhere in Kamurocho. And don't worry, I'm told there'll be another cab to take you home. I see. Well then, I'm looking forward to it. Don't worry, sorry son, I'm standing by. If you need me, I'll be there in a flash. Driver, could you tell me where we're headed? Oh, <laughs> we're almost there, miss. We're not leaving Kamrocho, are we? No, no, no need to worry. I think he's driving to the Thug Hangout, the underground club. That's where I met Soma for the first time. I thought it had been shut down, but maybe they opened it back up. We'll be arriving soon. Sorry, son, I presume. We've been expecting you. You are very beautiful. Akutsu-san will be happy. Thank you for inviting me. RK takes care of people who keep the cash flowing. The fact you're here means you have a talent for it. You're one of us now, Saori-san. If you would follow me... Certainly. Here she is, Akutsu-san. Tonight's heroine, Saori-san from Queen Rouge. Ah, <laughs> and I see why. You're hotter than your reputation. Come here, let me give you some motivation to keep at it. I've heard so much about you, Akutsu-san. It's a pleasure to meet someone so famous. Have a seat. I'm not gonna ask you to pour after a hard night's work. This sake is not cheap. That's cool though, right? <laughs> Gotta show my appreciation, don't I? Oh, there's no need for that. Well, on to the moment of truth. Your bonus. One million yen. Quite a stack of cash for an office worker. Yeah. It's a big pile of money for anyone. Oh, even for lawyers? Shirosaki Sensei? I'm not sure I follow. This lady lawyer came poking around before. Except she was trying to find out about Kawhi at the time. You see, when it comes to Kamurocho, we have eyes everywhere. Anybody suspicious gets reported to us fast. Most of the eyes working for me or Soma are spies in the police force. And now, we've got a law lady in the bag. <gasps> so, what do you want with me? Who sent you here, huh? Well, this took a turn for the worse, didn't it? You're only just noticing that. Kinda slow for a lawyer, aren't you? Oh, I didn't mean for me. It just got worse. For you. <laughs> <laughs> What the? Man, you were harder to find than I thought, Akatsu. Wow, so it was you pulling sorry John strings. Hell of a sight. Some piece of shit ex Tojo man thinks he's king of the hill now? Don't make me laugh. You're the worthless pile of shit, Higashi. Props for having the spine to show up here without backup. And after you barely escaped with your life, Yagami. Hold that thought. 
but this isn't the whole party. Huh? The only guy I really want to fuck up is Soma. But I guess I'll have to settle for you losers tonight. Kaito. Couldn't just stay dead, huh? Nice work, Sari-san. We'll take it from here, but could you ring the gong for us? What? Nothing kicks off a fight better than a beauty ring and a gong. Yeah. Give us something to get the mood going. Okay. Well then. Gentlemen, do your worst! Get ready! Let's go! Hell yeah! Here we go! <laughs> <laughs> Can't run anymore, Akatsu. Can we talk now? Where's Soma? Where's he hiding? I don't know. He moves around more than I do. Really? He really just another one of his pawns? Just gonna cover for him and obey his every word? Soma can tell when someone's lying. He's always been able to. I won't be able to get away with bullshitting him. Friend or foe, if he finds a traitor, he stomps the rat dead. He can sniff out the faintest scent of betrayal. That's why I've always told him the truth. No point trying to BS him. In this business, nothing beats the ability to detect liars. Are you serious right now? You're buying into some bullshit rumors, dumbass. You just don't fucking get it, man. He can practically see the future. He was the first to bail from the Tojo clan. Usually, you need a shit ton of money to leave a clan if you don't want to be killed. That's what it's like to be a Yakuza. Huh. Remember who you're talking to, asshole. But Soma, he somehow knew there was no future for the Tojo, so he jumped ship. With no money and not even a word to the bosses, just a and left. There's no way he could get away with that. That's what I thought. I said the same thing to him when he was leaving. I warned him. They'll fucking erase you. The bastard just laughed. 
He said the clan was finished. No way could they kill him. Then he had the boss to give me advice. Said I should get out too and not worry about it. What did he mean by that? By that point, the Tojo clan didn't have the resources to properly deal with the Vectors. Soma understood that. And sure enough, he left without a word, and nobody ever tried to fuck with him. It's true. Soma was the first guy to slip out. No doubt the dude knew what was up. While the Tojo clan was limping to its grave, Soma went underground and built the arcade network all by himself. And that's how you became his errand boy. What do you expect? I can't control Soma. I'm just the public face of RK. He holds the reins. I've been cool with that ever since I joined. <laughs> At least you're enough of a man to admit what you are. Akatsu, Soma's being used by public security. Did you know that? Public security? Why was Soma looking for Shinya Kawai and Kamurocho? I don't know. All I heard was somebody hired him to do that. Why is he after Kawana? I... Uh... How are Soma and public security linked? But give me something. Doesn't it at least ring a bell? I don't know, man. The fuck you mean ring a bell? I don't know shit! Wait. Nah. <sighs> but maybe... What is it? Doc, is it possible that Soma himself is public security? Soma working in public security? What do you mean? Well, public security trains people to become spies. So they can infiltrate and collect intel. Right wing, left wing, anti-establishment citizens groups. You get the picture. They usually try to find a weak spot in the org. Someone they can turn to their side. So yeah, that's one way to do it. But sometimes a cop who's already in public security goes undercover to infiltrate something like a Yakuza organization. What you get is a Yakuza who knows everything about the police and would be super good at sniffing out liars. You're saying Soma is actually an undercover agent? You heard what this fool said. Soma figured out the Tojo clan didn't have a future, so he ditched them. You think some street punks got that kind of foresight? He couldn't. Unless he had intel from the law. That'd be a different beast. He'd have to know the Tojo clan and Kamurocho like the back of his hand. Including knowing that the Tojo clan would dissolve soon. Yep. And then after he gets out, what does he do next? He makes a place for all the Yakuza coming out of the Tojo clan to find each other, right? Where public security can easily monitor them. That's why RK is still coming to ex-Tojo clan Yakuza like me. In other words, RK was founded by public security to manage all the displaced Yakuza? Sure as hell sounds like their M.O. No matter how many crime rings they bring down, another always pops up in its place. This way, public security doesn't have to start from scratch. They can just keep tabs on all the free agents. But it's mind-blowing that they'd install their own leader. Sure as hell sounds like collusion to me. Soma? An undercover public security agent? Shit. We gotta move! Cut the fucking chit chat! Why? He's gotta be fucking listening in on us right now! If he's public security and heard all that... Get your shit together, Akatsu. What does it matter? Don't you get it? There's no way he'd want anyone else to fucking know! Stop shooting! Found us.
To return justice to the courtroom, Yagami makes a series of bold moves. However, Bondo, the man behind public security, makes a power play of his own, and the murderous Soma is still at large. Soma is believed to be a plant from public security, but that knowledge comes at a fatal price. So the two shooters were dressed as policemen? Yes, they're the ones who shot Akutsu. They couldn't have been real officers though, right? Yeah. I'm guessing Soma gave uniforms to two of his own guys. Regardless of their affiliation, they were there on Soma's orders. Kaito-san's theory is that he's actually a public security agent. Get this talk. In America, they call people who go undercover, moles. <laughs> moles, huh? If this really was public security, I can't believe they'd go so far as murder. Oh. Soma probably thinks he's backed into a corner. Word got out he's been a plant since his Tojo days. Not even being the head honcho will save him. He'd be nothing but a rat. And RK's got plenty of ex-Tojo in it who'd want his head for that. I hadn't considered that. Those fake cops tried to take us out, too. They'll silence anyone who gets in the way. Hey, you think your office could post some officers' agendas? At least for tonight. Sure, I can get that arranged. Shouldn't you guys have protection, too, though? I appreciate the concern. But Kaito-san and Higashi are ex-Yakuza. Not exactly a good mix, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> You said it. Thanks, but no thanks. Soma's probably gonna head even deeper underground after all this. But if we can track him down, we'll get the dirt on public security we need. Then we can do right by Sawa-sensei, and even bring Kawana and Reiko Kusamoto to justice. Alright, we get it. Let's walk saori san back to her office first, though. We'll save the rest for tomorrow. Good idea. Don't worry, saori san You should be safe from here on. Ah, what gives, Sorry. You change up your look and the guys line up to protect you? <laughs> Maybe you should put some effort into it once in a while yourself. <laughs> Are you telling me this isn't effort? rough night. You all right? When I heard Akatsu was shot, I just froze. All I could think was, what if something happened to salary san Couldn't spare a thought for us? Well, we're glad everyone's safe. Yeah, but Soma got the jump on us. He's a bigger threat than we thought. What do you mean by that? We well, think he's working undercover for public security. Undercover? It's a new development. I'm sure it puts a damper on Genda-sensei and Hoshino-kun's big night out. Huh? Well, uh... I only showed up because Hoshino-kun talked me into it. You said you wanted to see what it was like in there, too! Did I really? Hmm. I don't recall that. Incredible. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go change. To put it lightly, Looks like you guys are in for the cold shoulder for a while. Interesting. If what you say is true, a public security agent is scooping up thugs into RK. Yeah, and his name's Kazuki Soma. We haven't confirmed it yet. But if he really is an undercover agent, then everything starts to make sense. 
Public security gets to use RK as their pawns, who feed them intel from the streets. All those scumbags are just working for public security without even knowing it. But that setup is exactly what let Soma and RK grow so successful in the first place. For example, I'm sure the guys who killed Akatsu are RK, but they were definitely decked out in real police gear. Soma's role in public security would make getting that gear easy. If that's true, we can't trust anyone in uniform now. Should we be concerned about the police downstairs? Don't worry. They're here thanks to Muffy. All things considered, can't the police do anything about Soma? Well, according to public security, there's no one by that name on record. So that's a dead end. They must have wiped him from their files already. Soma had to have been in the Tojo clan for ten years minimum. He and Akutsu were both in the Nikyo Consortium. Higashi knows more about that stuff than me, though. Okay. We'll ask him about it tomorrow, then. Hmm. Sounds good. Hello? Yagamishi, this is Tsukumo. We have a problem. The Yokohama Liomong were attacked this morning. What? Attacked by who? RK. They've been boosting their numbers in Ijinsho. They're probably hunting Kawana. Fortunately, he seems to have escaped them. But he's gone completely off the grid again. How bad was it for the Liomong? Several are wounded, according to Tesosan. Did any of them see Soma during the attack? I haven't heard for certain. All I know is that it was total chaos. I see. Okay. What's the plan, Yagamishi? I'm gonna dig into Soma's past. I feel like there's something there. Could you keep trying, Kawana? Your wish is my command. See you. What's up, Doc? Uh, sorry, folks. My shift's starting. One of you take over. Oh, I'll do it, Kaito! Great. Don't forget to block. Got it? I won't. Oh, man. You're a rock star to these kids. <laughs> Crazy, right? You should see Higashi with them, though. Really? Higashi-san, Yagami-sensei is here for you. Lose that sensei shit, you idiot. No honorifics for assholes. Uh, in that case, that Yagami asshole is here for you. Talk about its emotion. Right. Well, I do know a thing or two about Soma's Tojo clan days. He swore under the Nikyo Consortium, direct family. The Nikyo Consortium was a pretty big deal. Even if they did bite the dust with the main family. Right. Among them, Soma and Akutsu were both looking like officer candidates. Apparently, the Nikio's role in the family was to handle off-the-record dirty work. No matter how much they raked in, the higher-ups took their cut and left the mess. Those two got hung out to dry, basically. Nevertheless, they sucked it up and hoped they'd be the ones on top someday. But... As you know, the Tojo clan got hit hard, disbanding before they ever even got their shot. They devoted years to the family, all to get nothing in return. I'd be willing to buy that for Akatsu. But if Kaito-san is right, Soma was working the Tojo clan from the inside for public security. That's how he knew sooner than anyone else that the Tojo was on the way out. Being undercover, he could see the writing on the wall and plan accordingly. That's why he founded the criminal network RK, so he could gather up and monitor all the ex yakuza at once. Okay, now that you mention it, RK has been dipping into the shady side of Kamurocho. They're strong-arming anyone who acts without their blessing first. You want to do shady shit? You need an RK permit these days. Yeah, that's why the Somas and Undercover Agent theory makes sense to me. If we find a concrete link between him and public security, then we'll know for sure. Higashi, who might have known Soma back then? 
Someone with authority who'd know how he joined the Tojo clan. Well, let's see. Would the Nikio president work? President? Not patriarch? Same shit. His name's Irie. But whatever kind of boss he was then, now he's just another champion district drunk. I have some questions for him. Once I have the link between Soma and public security, it'll all fall into place. I don't know, man. You want to meet him, knock yourself out. He spends his days at a joint called Earth Angel. Gotcha. I'll come with you, Tak. Here we are. The former head of the Nikyo's local haunt. He just gets plastered here all day? <laughs> Damn, the lucky son of a bitch. President Irie. Uh -huh. uh, my name is Kaito. I used to be in the Matsugane family. Matsugane? Ah, oh, one of his boys, huh? You knew my boss? He was your classic old school Yakuza. He had duty, dignity, but he couldn't earn. <laughs> Eh, yeah, maybe he was the lucky one, dying before he became whatever I am now. Would you mind if we asked you a few questions? This is my partner, Yagami. He's a civvy, but he was like family to the boss. It's a pleasure. So, what do you want to ask? Could you tell us about Kazuki Soma? You might know him as head of RK now. Huh. <laughs> Soma, huh? Joined the family when he was just a little sprat. Here he's quite the big shot now. Let me buy you a drink. Mind if I join you here? Our lieutenant scouted out Soma back in the day. He'd heard some kid was flushing his money away in one of our casinos. Turned out the kid was sweet-talking ladies into handing him their money. Yeah. Sounds like a model Yakuza candidate. You mean Kamurocho's old underground casino? Yeah, that was one of ours. <laughs> yeah, the cops would keep shutting him down and we'd keep building more. What made you ask Soma to join the family? Was he the one who initially approached you? I think so. He was pretty attached to that lieutenant I mentioned before. So I had no problem following orders. But he had a natural authority to him, too. Makes for a damn good Yakuza. Of course, a violent streak is the other half of the equation. Say, before he joined up, how much digging did you really do on Soma? What's that supposed to mean? You checked his background and everything, right? Well, I'm sure we did our homework. It's not like that was my responsibility. Irie-san, there's a chance Soma was working for public security the whole time. What did you say? Considering he may have been undercover from the start, does anything strike you as strange now? Maybe some suspicious behavior or contacts with people you didn't know. No, I have no idea. The thought never even crossed my mind. He took some really risky gigs. You didn't hear this from me, but he even took at least one hit job. A hit job? Some time back. You know, there was this punk who ratted us out to the cops. And the higher-ups ordered Soma to kidnap the guy and bury him in the mountains. He handled it so well, people were kind of creeped out. Like, it wasn't his first time. At least, I remember Akutsu telling me that. I already got killed last night. <laughs> Word travels fast. Who'd you hear it from? <laughs> oh, darkness runs deep in this city. Never assume you're the only ones in the know. 
Akutsu just realized last night that Soma is an undercover public security agent. That's why he was silenced. Sure, but what's it matter? At this point, I don't give a shit if Soma's undercover. The family's dead and gone now. What happened to everyone else after you shut down the consortium? Half of them went legit. Some of them went and joined the six chairman for his new deal. I guess the rest crawled back underground. The Greener family boys all got invited to RK. So it's none of your concern that your former family is being manipulated by public security? <laughs> Those guys don't even come to see me during bone season or New Year's. They're just spoiled brats now. An arrogant group of thugs. Family my ass. <sighs> All this talk's making my drink taste like shit. I guess the young ones nowadays are pretty wrapped up in themselves. To be fair, though, I don't know anybody who'd want to waste their time with a gloomy drunk. How about we grab a bite together when you sober up? Because if this is really the fate of the Tojo clan's patriarchs, no way those of us who work to make it big are going to live it down. Sorry for that. In Kaito-san's old life, becoming a direct family was their biggest dream. When he looks at you, he sees what Matsugane-san might have been if things had been different. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Hey, you know the Misawa building on North Senryo Avenue? It's got a gambling den with a decent Chohan set up. Gambling den? Yeah, I've actually been there before. What about it? It's run by this group originally from Rapongi. Now RK is saying they're owed a piece of the pie. RK really is putting the pressure on the Kamrocho underground, huh? Yeah, but the Rapongi crew won't pay up. So I hear RK's gonna come down hard on their place tonight. They wanna make an example out of him. Put some guys in the hospital. Maybe even the morgue. Wait, are you saying Soma might be there tonight? <laughs> Who knows? The ones running tonight's show are ex-Tojo. The top dogs of RK showing the newbies how it's done. Who'd you hear this from? <laughs> What did I say before? Don't assume you guys are the only ones who know everything. <laughs> I appreciate the lesson. What else is there to say, Tuck? RK is raiding a gambling den tonight. Remember that tatami room we got acquainted with? Apparently, the people running the room won't pay Soma's gang a cut. So someone there is going to have some answers. Maybe even Soma himself. Yeah. I think it's worth checking out. All right. Sounds like we should hit up Higashi, too. Doc, we might be right on time. Yeah. Yagami! Anaki! What the hell's going on? It's RK. They've got ex-Tojo members running a raid here. Why? Supposedly, the out-of-towners running it won't pay RK off. And there's even a chance Soma's here. It's a surprising amount of context. Right. Now let's get in there. Shut the fuck up, you little shit! Hey! 
Got a minute? There's still more of you! I know that face. Dude was famous in the Tojo clan. For being a maniac. There's more like him in here too? Is Soma here with you? Tell me where he is. Enough with your mouth! No telling where Soma or his arcade goons are at. Gotta keep our eyes open. Is it? Yeah. It's too damn dark to see what's around here. Yeah. But there's no way this is a dead end. Should be a way to get the lights on, right? Let's start looking. What have we? Door interesting. Yo, guessing this is the door we gotta deal with. Just gotta figure out the passcode. Hey, what are we gonna do about this? We might find clues somewhere else. Let's check out this floor. Let's roll then. Got a minute to chat? Please just leave me alone. Oh, I will, don't worry. All I need is the passcode for the door up ahead. Zero five zero eight or wait, was it eight zero one zero? Come on, get a grip. Well, I guess I could try both. Either zero five zero eight or eight zero one zero, huh? Better not forget. Zero five zero eight or eight zero one zero, right? Yeah. Like... Nice. There's gotta be a way upstairs somewhere around here. I'm gonna go look. You two wait here, okay? Yeah. Go handle business, talk. Doc, how's it looking? Hey, just made it to the rooftop and dealt with RK. But you guys are gonna have a hell of a time trying to climb up here. Let me look for another way. Cool. And we'll wait here a bit longer. Okay. <clears throat> Phew. That kicked my ass. Yagami. How the hell did you get all the way up here with your bare hands? Hey! You hear that? More of those guys might be hiding around here. And when we find them, we kill them! Yeah! Got it! What's your call? You taking them down? Yeah. We can take these guys together. Whoa, 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 hang on. That guy in front of the stairs might call for backup. And if that happens, Soma might slip away. I'm gonna have to go stealth on these guys. Go do your thing. We'll jump in if shit hits the fan. Right. <laughs> 
Let's go. That's a good boy. Kaijo-san, I'm in kind of a tight spot. Mind giving me a hand? What you need, Chuck? I'm almost there, but RK's got me kind of pinned down. Can you try to lure him away somehow? Leave it to me. I'll figure something out. Appreciate it. The hell are their cats fighting? What are they screaming for? Well, Tot, worked like a charm, wouldn't you say? Yeah. That was impressive stuff, Kaito-san. Thanks for the assist. Isn't that Kosuke-kun, right? You never learn, do you? Don't tell me you're here with some poor girl's money again. I'm not! I swear I'm not! You're Kaito from the Matsugani family, right? Oh, look who else is famous. What are you doing here? You join RK too? <laughs> Dumbass. Don't lump me in with scum like you. Are you the one who put this raid together? What about Soma? Is he not coming? <laughs> you just stepped into some shit you're gonna regret. Hey! He's got backup! <sighs> Tons of lowlifes, but no Soma. Coming here sure did a fat lot of good. <laughs> you got this, Yagami Detective Agency! Please save my life! At least we can say we saved fucking Kosuke Kun. You know that guy? Lucky him. He's about to get his head split like a melon. Hey! Take care of the latecomers. 
Then we're done here. Ready? Let's go! Sumoto-san, I must say I didn't expect you to invite me here directly. What led you to change your mind? I hope this means I can expect a favorable response. I'm thinking it's time to put an end to this. To what, pray tell? This self-serving black hole of collusion. And how do you plan to do that? By turning myself into the police. <sighs> As you may have suspected, I murdered Shinya Kawai for what he did to Mitsuru. I did it with my own hands. The same day he was abducted in Kamrucho, five years ago, Kitakata Sensei was my accomplice. If you do that, you'll be branded just another killer. That would be quite a fall from grace, considering just how much you've turned the health ministry around. I'd suggest reconsidering that. We can protect your secret for you. And in exchange? I'll have to do as I'm instructed, correct? As with any organization, our government works within a set of constraints. Everyone has their own opinion of what they believe is best for this country. And only once common ground is established, can progress truly be made. However, you've already forged quite a path of progress on your own. Reforming the health ministry, cracking down on embezzlement and dirty dealings. I promise you, both myself and many others respect such accomplishments. <sighs> However, if Reiko Kusumoto were to go from vice minister to murderer, all those achievements would go up in smoke. In fact, the fallout could allow for even worse corruption to take root. As I'm sure you agree, to our country's detriment. <sighs> Everyone who lives has their secrets. If you just let us take care of yours, you can have the peace of mind you deserve. They'll stay buried, deep in the dark. And therein lies the problem. Sawa-san was the only classmate who never stopped coming to see Mitsuru. I was the one who drove her away from my son. Even though she was the only person at that school who never gave up on him. <sighs> I couldn't control my desire for revenge. A good woman lost her life because of that. And now everyone wants to pretend like she never even existed. No better than back then. Mitsuru's classmates pushed him over the edge and didn't look back. I don't care what you say. I'm going to turn myself in. I only regret not doing it sooner. Sawa-san wouldn't have had to die. <laughs> Well, it turns out you're more naive than I thought. More so than I could have planned against. You still won. You should consider it a victory that I have to resign from my post. When it comes down to it, I'm sure that was your end goal. But you just got too greedy. You thought putting the squeeze on me would net you 160 trillion yen in pensions? Well, that's all going up in smoke. When I turn myself in, that'll be a lost cause. Now scurry off and inform your handlers. Despite all my efforts, it seems you were more of an immovable object than I was an unstoppable force. Well, <laughs> you can't reason with someone willing to lose, especially if losing means burning it all down. Mitsuru! Mitsuru! 
So, is that all of them? Yeah. Pretty tough for a bunch of gangbangers. <laughs> Come on, Aniki. Why don't you take the bench for a bit? You're still on the men. Shut the hell up. Whoa. The guy running the game here brought in as many heavy hitters as he could. But RK had so many ex-Yakuza, this place never had a chance. And you guys managed to take them all down. Unbelievable. That's not really why we came, though. You sure you didn't see RK's leader, Soma, anywhere? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he wasn't here. I see. So we did all this work for nothing. The... Uh... You sure you really want to find that guy? If that's the case, I heard some RK members say Soma's giving his orders from Ijincho. Aha. Uh -huh. Then maybe he's been searching for Kuwana over there this whole time. Speaking of which, Tesso's place got raided just this morning. RK was looking for Kuwana. Although, I'm not sure Soma was there either. Well then, sounds like we're done in Kamurocho for now. Should we go back to Ijin show tomorrow? If we meet up with Kuana somehow, I'm sure Soma will show eventually. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, hello, Yagamishi. Hey, you alone? Where's Sugiura? He's out asking around about Kuwana-san. Although ever since he skipped out on the Liomong spot, we haven't found a single trace of him anywhere. We're not even positive he's still in Ijincho. Is that right? Rare to see you in a rut. Maybe we didn't need to rush over here. Did Tesso reach out to you at all? No. All of Ijincho's basically been at a dead stop since you last left. I heard Soma's been running RK from somewhere in Ijincho. Yes, but we haven't been able to pinpoint his exact location. I see. That explains the dead stop. Hello? Yo. I heard you're back in town, Yagami. Kuana? That you? <laughs> I'll send someone to bring you to me. So you really are still in Ichincho? Yeah. But we don't want RK or public security joining us. Make sure you're not being followed first. Shake any tales you might have. How? <laughs> you should know that one by now, Mr. Detective. Get to Sawakun's apartment once you know you're good. Her apartment? Yeah. Later. Hey, bro. Awfully quiet here today, man. I heard RK swept through here. Yeah, they sent two of our guys to the hospital. Busted them up sort of bad. Before we knew it, we were outnumbered. Took one step outside and it was like we were in another city. Do you think they were after Kuana? Oh, no doubt about it. He managed to escape, but we don't know where to. He reached out to me not too long ago. I'm on my way to see him, actually. You serious? Yeah, but if I went straight there, I'd be leading RK right to him. Gotta slip past anyone tailing me first. Right. So that's why you came. Here I was, thinking you were checking on your Aniki. Well, that too, but... Help me out here. You got any secret tunnels around here? You know, for... Gang stuff? Gang stuff? Well, I figured if you did, I could give RK the slip. You with me? That would be pretty sweet, yeah. So you have one or not? Actually, we do. After all, we've got gang stuff to handle. Come on, follow me. Thanks, man. Here we are. Our own little escape route. Juana probably used this when he booked it.
confused. Your escape route is a sewer? We keep it pretty clean, actually. <laughs> you smell any shit? Oh, you're right. Follow it to the end and you'll get out at Fukutoku Park. Now this here's for emergencies only, so don't go blabbing about it. Hey, you got it. Though, I think I should disguise myself before I head down. There's no way RK could pick up my tail if I come out of here looking totally different. Good thinking. <laughs> I like your style. Dang, looking sharp. You do this a lot, don't you? <laughs> I guess I'm pretty good at it by now. Okay, ready to hop in? It's a straight path, but it's dark down there. I could guide you if you want. Nah, uh, I'm fine. Besides, Kiwana probably still feels bad about getting your place raided. <laughs> if that's true, tell him that I don't see it that way for me. RK's the only ones on my shit list right now. I'm booting their asses out of Ijincho for good. I'm sure he'll be happy to hear it. Thanks again. Nice outfit, Yagami-san. Akaike-kun. You really are wrapped around Kiwana's finger, aren't you? Please, just get in. I'll take you to Sensei. Just you today? Or your classmates? Beats me. Seems like he doesn't need much help today. Oh. This is that boat they converted into a museum, right? Yeah. But it's empty around this time, and Sensei doesn't plan on sticking around. Oh, is Kwana fleeing to his next little hiding spot after this? <laughs> That's a question for Sensei, not me. Yo! Sorry to make you come all the way out here. Being a wanted man sucks. Pretty sweet digs for a wanted man. Hey, this place has all the escape routes I could ever need. No one around to get caught in the crossfire, either. Funny time to start caring about how your actions affect others. Akaike, mind giving me and Yagami-san some space? Go ahead, Yagami-san. I feel awful for dragging Tesso into this. RK only trashed his place because I was there. Those damn thugs really don't give a rat's ass about the Leo Mong. It's public security who doesn't give a rat's ass. There's nowhere in Japan you can escape them. By the way, there's a good chance Soma's an undercover public security agent, ever since his Tojo clan days. He's public security? Yeah. If we can drag him out of whatever hole he's in, we might find out who's at the very top of this. And until the truth is exposed, he'll be hunted forever. Well, that's concerning. Sawa-sensei's murder, Mikoshiba's murder, everything has to come to light. And in a way that public security can't sweep it under the rug. I think Ahara's appeal hearing is going to be the perfect time to expose it all. When you say expose it all, you mean Kusumoto-san too, right? I won't lift a finger to betray her. This conversation is pointless. Even if that's what killed Sawa-sensei? Because there is a point. Your judgment's just too clouded to see it. Do you really know what Mitsuru was like 13 years ago? Then you have no right to speak to me that way. I'm facing the reality of bullying head-on. The rest of the world is content to turn a blind eye to the problem. 
Our whole society. They make a show of it when a kid commits suicide. But nothing changes about the reasons why. And every time, some bully with tears in his eyes always has the exact same line. I had no idea they would ever kill themselves. Yeah. They have no idea how their cruelty affects the person on the receiving end. You know why? Because they've never suffered. They don't know what it means to feel unsafe. I take care of that. I show them how much they've taken their safety for granted. Their actions need to have consequences. Even if they don't realize until it's too late. Koana. As we speak, there are kids out there fearing that they have to go to school tomorrow. Like Mitsuru. Every kid like him deserves justice. So I had to become what I am to see it done. I know exactly what you're saying. All too well. In fact, I know so well that it scares me. But... If you let your sense of justice guide you totally unchecked, you'll eventually lose control and end up in a pretty dark place. You'll rationalize the sacrifices. Whatever justice takes. For example, Sawa Sensei's death at the hands of Soma. Enough! Real justice has nothing to fear from the truth. Otherwise, you wouldn't turn away. So come on. Until you and Reiko Kusamoto turn yourselves in, public security won't give up. Don't you get it? If you end up caught by them now, you're gonna disappear for good. Yeah. It would be a good time to disappear. What? I'll do it on my own terms, though. Public security won't find me. I knew the day would come that I'd have to trigger my exit strategy. It pays to have underground connections. Oh, you think it would be that easy, do you? I'm sure you know. A serial killer can't hide. Right. Every person that I've murdered deserved what they had coming. I won't stop doing it. There's dirty work to be done. And I don't mind being society's handyman. Whatever it takes. Thirteen years ago when Mitsuru jumped off that roof, I knew I'd spend the rest of my life atoning. It's the only way I can think of that will give Mitsuru what I didn't give him then. I don't really care what becomes of me either. I owe him. And I'm going to finish what I started. Okay. So why'd you bring me out here then? You seem pretty set. Were you hoping I was gonna pat you on the back for it? Hardly. I wouldn't expect a guy who drew his line in the sand to suddenly come around. But... Maybe that's exactly why I spilled my guts to you in the first place. What do you mean? Ehara-san should be the one carrying this thing. I hate to ask, but would you mind passing it along? You're the only one I can trust with it now. Isn't this... Toshiro? That locket has my final message to Ehara-san in it. I was supposed to help him get justice for his son, but I'm not going to be able to see it through. Well, I guess the rest is up to him. As soon as I'm out of here, my face and my name are going to have to be changed. Were you thinking I was just going to watch as you walked away? <laughs> You're really gonna make this a dramatic breakup? Stop it. I'm not gonna back down on this. Years ago, a girl died because I didn't chase the truth to the end. Her name was Emi Terasawa, and I'll never forget her. Murderers tend to follow a rule. They have no problem killing again to protect their secrets. That's you, Reiko Kusamoto. It's still gonna apply. Called it, I suppose. I half knew that you would pull this shit instead of saying goodbye. If you run, I won't chase you. There may be a trail of death in your wake, but in court, I'd have nothing that would stick. Even if I brought you down, the only thing that'd keep you from escaping are the bars of a jail cell. So what now then? Until you finally realize that you need to turn yourself in, I'll need to be persuasive. For you, Reiko Kusamoto, I firmly believe that the two of you can still be saved. 
lips. I swear. Hmm? Okay, okay. Soma. Arcas here. How the hell could they have figured out where we'd be? Listen up. Kitakata Sensei stays alive. As for Yagami, if killing him means he doesn't escape, that's fine. I made sure I wasn't tailed on the way here. We both did. Neither of us could have led them out here. I know for damn sure we're too careful for that to happen. That means there's only one guy they could have tailed to find us. It was a Kaike. Public security figured out that there's a connection between me and him. Are you aware of the implications of that? Is figuring that out right now really all that important? It's Kusumoto-san. She knows him. She's the only connection between me and Akaike. What? I'm saying Kusumoto-san decided to sell me out. Something happened that caused her to change her mind. Public security, I guess. Remember earlier? Didn't you say something about this ship having a bunch of escape routes? A bunch of escape routes great for a party of one. Fine. Why are you still here? Well, I thought you wanted to persuade me. I admit, I was interested in hearing you spin some more of your bullshit. <laughs> you got it. Now I'll have time to think. What is the holdup? Hurry up and take them. Yo, these guys have a whole bag of tricks up their sleeves. Take out their legs so they can't run. Looks like they finally upgraded us to the RK Big Shots. Yeah, but they're gonna be sorry they messed with us all the same. Are we really struggling to take out two guys? RK is going to be a joke if this keeps up. I thought you boys were the Tojo clan's finest. Your work really shouldn't be an embarrassment. It's a 
about time for plan B. Huh? You saying you've got another trick up your sleeve? Yeah. But it kind of sucks. So I wouldn't get your hopes up. You're not going anywhere. Got to get off me! Ship. Heads up would have been nice. Soma's ties to public security may lead to his undoing. By seizing the puppet himself, Yagami seeks to pull down the puppet master holding the strings. To do so, he forms a temporary alliance with the fugitive Kuana. But Soma arrives to carve a bloody path into a hideaway no one should know about. Reiko Kusumoto's betrayal has proven more volatile than anyone could have guessed. Yenda-sensei, they're calling last night's bombing a terrorist attack. The body they recovered was burnt beyond recognition. That was a Kaikei-kun, right? The one Yagami mentioned? Yes, I believe so. Nothing about Soma or RK in the article either. Could public security be tampering with the press? I wouldn't give public security that much credit. Besides, if a bomb goes off in a deserted public place, it's only natural for the police to assume it's terrorism. Right. I guess when you put it that way. Unfortunately, even if they do identify a Kaikei-kun, the ones responsible are Kuana and Soma. Two guys who are totally off the grid. Any investigation would grind to a halt. Probably end up as another unsolved mystery. If the public learned the bombing was tied to Ihara's battery case, Jaws would hit the floor. Yeah. Anyway, where's Yagami? You heard from him since last night? No. We've been in touch via email, though. He's on his way to a hospital now. Great. What'd he get himself into now? If he's actually going to the hospital, does that mean it's serious? Don't worry, he's fine. He's just going to meet with someone about the case. Who'd want to meet up at a hospital? Reiko Kusumoto. Thirteen years. I still can't believe it. Waking up and finding out you're suddenly thirty. Take your time. You'll adjust eventually. Work again? 
I won't be long. I just need to take a quick meeting. Now put down that mirror already. <sighs> So, you sold Kwan out to public security because Mitsurakun woke up. Does that about sum it up? You waited 13 years for Mitsurakun to wake up. If you turn yourself in now, you'd lose him all over again. There's that. Yes. Going forward, he needs to stand on his own two feet and rebuild his life. It'll take time. And lots of it. There's no real end in sight. He's at a disadvantage as it is. And to brand him the child of a murderer on top of that. I couldn't. this change everything? I think you may want to reconsider what you told me, Kusumoro-san. Alone, I'm sure you could have lived with the weight of your choice, but <laughs> now you have something you'd sacrifice everything to protect. He's so precious, but he's also so fragile he could come crashing down without even a warning. You're going to have to be his shield, Kusumoru-san. We'll do it together. With your cooperation. <laughs> I have to do what I can to protect him. I suppose so, but... You covered up your crimes and it was Sawa-sensei who got caught in the crossfire. On top of that, Akaike-kun's throat was slit last night. Now he's dead too. Kawano will be another body for the pile soon. Hell, maybe I'm in trouble myself. How was he yesterday? Well, as soon as R.K. showed up for him, he knew you'd stabbed him in the back. I can't really say how that made him feel. Until now, he'd been adamant about ensuring you stayed out of this. He said no one could blame you for what you did to Shinya Kawai. Kawana put his life on the line for you. You failed to silence him, and you let him get away. That means whatever happens next, it's his move. And whatever he does to you, none of my business. As for me, I have no evidence on Kawai's murder, so you're off my list too. I only came here today because I wanted to know why you betrayed Kuwana. That's all. I hope Mitsurakun has a speedy recovery.
Back already, Yagamishi. How are you feeling after last night? That shockwave from the blast took you down. Oh, yeah. That was something else, I gotta say. Haha! <laughs> I bet, tough guy. Kamurocho's finest detective never fails to impress. Doc, you made it. We've been asking around if anyone's seen Kuana. You don't want to know how that went. No leads, huh? <laughs> Pretty much. Doesn't help that Arkay's crawling all over the place right now. Soon as they spot Kuana, they're gonna make their move. Kuana gave this to me yesterday. Isn't that Toshiro Ehara? Kuana-san called you out there just to give you this? Yep. He told me to give it to Ahara. What the... Oh man, it looks like it's cracked. Can you take a look at it, Tsukumo? I get the feeling it's no ordinary pendant. Certainly. Not handing it over to Ahara till you know what the deal is? Well, he won't mind, will he? Besides, I damn near got blown up over that thing. Speaking of, Yagamishi, what's the status of Ehara's sexual battery trial? Saori-san's preparing for the appeal. Still no date, but the courts are working as fast as they can. If they accept the case and it goes to trial, they'll find out about Kawana one way or another. And that it put Reiko Kusumoto in public security in the shithouse, right? Right. If Kawana and his murders come to light, anyone connected to Reiko Kusumoto could be suspected as an accomplice. And if that happens, she'd lose any control she had over the pension fund. Interesting. Everyone wants their own brand of justice to come out on top. But enough is enough. If we don't handle this, public security will take out Kawana. And I can't let him die like that. Then, what's your next move? Gonna head to Ahara's trial and back up Sari-san. <laughs> Feels like we've come full circle. I'd argue the opposite, Yagamishi. The circumstances surrounding the trial are completely different this time around. I can't help but consider how grand a task simply seeking the truth could be. Seriously. But exposing the truth is the only way to save some and get justice for others. We can't just stay quiet and watch. <laughs> Sounds like you're seeing the light. Detective work's not so bad, is it? <laughs> Can you guys keep an eye out for Kawana and Nijincho? I need to go over Ahara's case with Sari-san. 10-4. We'll amp up surveillance. We're going too, Sukiyura. Time to get shit done. <laughs> right on! Wow, looks like we've got a full house. Shirosaki-sensei asked me to come by. She said they needed some business handle while you were out of town. I find it hard to believe she'd put it that way. <laughs> Maybe not. Either way, I don't mind helping. Yagami-san, you're just in time. I think we should conduct another interview with Ahara-san. Okay, but what will we talk about? If we want to claim he's innocent of battery, then we need to prove he's the one who murdered Mikoshiba at the same time. But since the murder footage isn't admissible in court, we need something more substantial. Basically, we need new evidence. And that might mean something no one's seen or found yet. So your plan is to meet with Ahara and just ask him? I know it's a long shot, but yes. I'd like to come help, but someone has to check Higashi-san's work. Excuse me? If I have to be Hoshino-kun's lackey, I'm fucking out. I'd prefer if you address me as Hoshino-sensei. Mouth on this kid! Ehara only seems to open up to you, Yagami-kun. So, if you talk to him again, do you think we'll find out something new this time? I'll see what I can get out of him. Having another chat with him couldn't hurt. Sounds good. Oh, and look after Salry for me, would you? Sure, but Mafuyu, should you even be here? Won't the prosecution think you're double-crossing them? What do you mean? 
I am just here to get dirt on the defense. Expect Prosecutor Takano to hear all about it. <laughs> Guess we better watch ourselves. I still have some preparations to make. Yagami-san, why don't you go kill some time? I'll call you as soon as I'm ready. It shouldn't take long. Sure thing. I'm going to try and get in touch with Ahara's wife. Even though they're separated, Ahara may have shared details about Mikoshiba's murder with her. Oh, and Higashi-san will be there to help. Sorry for keeping you, Yagami-san. We should head to the detention center. Where are you? In Kamurocho. How about I take a cab and pick you up? If you please. I'll be waiting. Isn't that just the worst? So the murder footage can't be used as evidence. <laughs> I was hoping it'd be played in court for all to see. Yeah, and if it was, it would prove your innocence and overturn your battery conviction no problem. But the prosecution flat out refuses to accept you murdered Mikoshiba. There's no room for error. You could flat out confess and they would refuse to accept it. Excellent. In the end, they'll lock me up for battery. And I'll get away with murder. Yeah, yeah. We know all about what you and Kiwana planned. We just don't have the evidence to prove it. <laughs> My condolences. Which reminds me, you said you'd confess to killing Mikoshiba after you got out of prison, right? Then, as icing on the cake, you'd admit the battery charge was false and humiliate the law for letting a murderer walk free. Exactly. The public must know that the law can't be trusted. Personally, I hope the media hops all over it. I bet you do. So when that time comes, you'll need some decisive evidence of the murder so your confession holds water. Maybe you've got something like that in your back pocket already? <laughs> Because we'd sure look good if we had some new evidence to take into the appeal. That's why you geniuses came all the way out here. I told you I wouldn't admit to the murder in court. I have no intention of just handing it over. Handing it over? So you're saying there is still a piece of evidence we don't know about? <laughs> what is it, Ahara-san? Even if there was, you'll never get your hands on it. Didn't mean to get your hopes up. Maybe it's a piece of Mikoshiba's body. Would you hide something like that? Well, was he missing any body parts? No, nothing indicated as such. Maybe it wasn't a missing body part. Could be as simple as some hair. Even if it was, that would hardly constitute evidence of Mikoshiba's murder. Hair could have come from anywhere or anyone. That's the extent of what- I suppose that's- The murder weapon. Kanagawa PD said the weapon used to kill Mikoshiba still hadn't been found. Yet it appears in the footage without a doubt as to what it is. A knife. If it wasn't found at the murder scene, it's highly likely the suspect or an accomplice took it with them. Any normal criminal would have just ditched it somewhere. Except you're anything but normal. You got revenge for your son, and you want to publicly humiliate the law for letting you pull it off. Your point? If you were clear to the battery charges and confessed to Mikoshiba's murder without evidence, no one would buy it. You'd need something convincing. Busting out the weapon no one's found yet would do the trick. That one piece of evidence would flip the whole case on its head. Well, look at you go. Then tell me, where do you surmise I've hidden this weapon? Well, right after killing Mikoshiba and Ijinsho, you would have had to book it to Ikebukuro Station. But you had accomplices with you. And if that's the case, there would have been plenty of time to hide the weapon. Yeah, so... That's about as far as I've thought this out. If that's it, then I'm done here. Kawana's vanished, Ahara-san. Public security found out about him. Public security? 
Kawana wanted me to tell you he won't make it to the end of your revenge plan. So, I'm the last man standing, am I? Well, he's already helped me plenty. I never expected to see him again anyway. At this point, he won't be able to outrun them. If public security catches him, he'll get much worse than an unfair trial. Burying him will be the least they do. What do you mean? What's going on? You remember last time? If you don't recall, I said you'd grab the tiger by the tail. And your tiger is... public security? Right. And they're out there on the warpath. Everything has to be brought into the light. We need what you did to be exposed. Kawana can't be saved in any other way. I need your help, Aharsan. Then you lose. I'll never admit to killing Hiro Mikoshiba in court. The system can die. It threw Toshiro away, and I won't lift a finger to save it. Kawana-san knew how this could end. We have our convictions. When this started, we knew it could end up costing our lives. You knew going in, huh? And that's all? Is that what you tell yourself so you can sleep at night? Maybe it is. Yagami-san. Do you remember my original request to look into both the Hara incidents? I asked you to look into the train event, and then I asked you to look into Hiro Mikoshiba's murder. And now, I'm afraid I have to make one more request of you. Do you still carry your defense attorney's lapel pin? Ehara-san's trial. I'd like you to take the floor with me to defend him. It's going to be eventful. I think we should go as a team. Sure about that? <laughs> you know, my legal counsel isn't cheap. I'll let Genda Sensei know about the invoice. You got it. Count me in. You never know when something like this will happen. Check it out. I always have it on me. I know that. Huh? <laughs> you do? <laughs> Hello? Doc, where are you at right now? Just got back to Yokohama, actually. You weren't spying on me, were you? <laughs> you just noticed? Everywhere you went, I know about it. And I mean everywhere. Uh, where are you right now? Over at the Leomonk's place. Hoshinokun and Higashi are here, too. Oh, right. They mentioned they were going to Yokohama to see Ahara's wife or something. Make your way over, will you? I need a full report, and I don't want to hear you were slacking. Well, look at you taking charge. Anything else, boss? Yeah, don't drag your feet along the way. <laughs> Looks like the gang's all here. Everyone but the star of the show. Now that is next level ass kissing, Hoshino kun. <laughs> a good ass kisser is a good communicator. Welcome back, Yagami-san. <laughs> Grab a seat, Tuck. Nice. So you're really gonna stand in court again? Just to give Sari-san some support? Ah, I see. Does that mean I don't need to be present for Ahara-san's appeal? Huh? How would I know? Isn't that more of a Saori-san question? If Yagami's there, I don't see why you gotta be. <laughs> you're on thin ice, Hoshino-kun. You still gonna have a job if you're redundant? I have been plenty useful. At least, a little. Should a lawyer really have to say that? This guy is kind of a rookie, huh? Ha! Ah. Man, the gangster just put the lawyer on notice. <laughs> well, that's all I got. How about you guys? So where's Kawana? Any word on where he's hiding? Yeah, about that. 
You must have asked everyone in Ijin's show, but we got nothing. RK's out there looking for him too. They seem to think I've still got him under watch. On the flip side, that means they still haven't found him either. Well, yes, although that's not much consolation. You think Kuanasan's still in one piece after the explosion? Alive, yes. Unharmed, I can't say. When I saw him, he was already making plans to disappear. But the real problem is what happens next. Now that he knows Reiko Kusumoto betrayed him, we don't know Kawana's next move. I'd never let that slide if I were in his shoes. Maybe Kawana's thinking the same thing, you know? He spent all that time underground brooding and shit. Maybe he's really gonna stick it to Reiko Kusumoto. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Oshinoku, Higashi. You two met with Ahara's wife? Yeah, but we didn't gain much from it. Turns out Ahara and his old lady don't really keep in touch. After her son took his life four years back, she refused to keep living under the same roof. Only reason she hasn't divorced him is because it's too much of a pain to process. She's been living in that same apartment even when Toshiro-kun was still alive. She let us light some incense on his altar, but she was pretty vacant the whole time. Did Ahara's battery charge come up at all? She said she didn't care. She didn't care her husband was out there groping women and killing bullies? Has she even seen Mikoshiba's murder footage? According to her, no. Really? That's hard to believe. Well, there's no easy way to put it, but it felt like she'd given up on everything. Made for a pretty depressing trip, I'll tell you that. What's the word on RK coming down to Eugene Show? Everywhere you look, they're strutting around like they own the place. And they know our faces, too. They stare us down, but never get too close. It's fucking annoying. Plus, they're acting like they're here to stay. They've been harassing the joints we have ties with. Harassing how? You know, shit like pretending to be normal customers, and dying and dashing or complaining to mess with business. Then another guy will come in and be like, need protection? And suddenly they're charging a fee. That's some Yakuza shit right there. Old shit, too. The Yakuza who pulls out today is out in one shot under the anti-gang laws. And Soma? Is he still around town? Nah, there's nothing on him. Even if he is, he probably went underground by now. And Soma isn't exactly a social butterfly like Akutsu. Finding him's gonna be a pain in the ass. Especially if he has public security's help. Unless it's a life or death situation, I doubt he'll show his face. That about wrap it up? Seems so. As for me, I think I'll head out and see what I can find out about Kawana-san. Same. I just hope he's okay. Tsukumo-san and Sugiura-san do some impressive work. Yeah. You don't hold a candle to them, Hoshino-kun. Black belt in karate and you never even use it. Well, I'm just more of a behind-the-scenes kind of guy. Anyway, I'm heading back to Kamurocho. Enjoy yourself, Higashi-san. What about you, Tuck? Wanna call it a night? Tesso said he'll let us stay if you do. No skin off my back, really. So, what'll it be? If I can really stay the night, I'll take him up on that. Yagami, I think I'll stick with Anaki and Tagalog. <laughs> Guess that means I'm helping you guys out. 
couldn't live with myself if I backed out now with a fish this big on the line. Get this, Doc. Tesso asked me to fly the drone. <laughs> Says it's the first time he's seen this place from above. Seriously, it's pretty legit. I picked one up for myself. Really? Good, because Tsukumo-kun said he had something he wanted to show you. He's upstairs. You mind going to him? Tsukumo-kun, Yagami-san's here. Something up? Yes. It's about the pendant Kawana-san gave you. Turns out, it was just a decoy after all. Decoy? For what? For what was inside. This. The cracks in the pendant were hiding an SD card. And on it was some video data. Video data? Of what exactly? It's the footage of Ihara murdering Hiro Mikoshiba. Just like we saw before. No additional scenes. That doesn't make sense. Why would Kawana put his life on the line just to give me that? I mean, RK came after him and everything. And all for a video that's already all over the internet? Yes, except the video on that card is the original. All the others were copies of this source. In layman's terms, this is the master tape. Or in film, it'd be the negative with no additions or modifications of any kind. What do you mean? And how do you know for sure? So this SD card here is a special little thing. You can't usually buy it in stores. It's called a worm, or write once, read many. If you were to take a picture with a digital camera, the images saved on this SD card couldn't be edited or deleted. It's what forensics teams use when photographing crime scenes. Which means what we have here is unaltered footage of Mikoshiba's murder. That means it would qualify as evidence in Ahara's appeal. Yeah, I'd say you have room to negotiate with the prosecution and the judge. At the very least, it beats an internet copy with no origin. Hey, think this will be enough to win the trial? <laughs> well, I can't guarantee that. But it does explain why Kuwana-san took such a risk. The video on here is the sole original. That's why he'd only leave it in the hands of someone he trusted. Kawana asked me to give this to Ahara. Sure, but he had to know we'd turn it inside out first. Maybe it's Kawana-san's way of entrusting you with the evidence you need? After all, with public security after him, he may not live to see tomorrow. And seeing how he's on the run, he had to find a way to get that into Ahara-san's hands. Which I think is why he left it all up to you, Yagamishi. Then it's settled. It's about time I expose everyone involved in Mikoshiba's murder. Ahara, Kuana, and his students. That's the first step to luring public security out in the open. And I believe the SD card will make that possible. So hey, looks like almost getting blown up was worth it. Uh, I guess so. Hey, I'm sorry to bug you. Matsu? What are you doing here? I was talking to the MRC guys earlier. They said you'd be at this detective agency. Everything okay? Well, Akane started hanging out with some shady guys. So I figured I should talk to Yagami-san about this. Sounds like a tricky situation. Please, have a seat. Akane's that girl you hung out with all the time, right? So, want to tell me more about these shady guys? They're these thugs from Tokyo. RK, they're called. They've been flirting with her. Okay, what else? 
They got her so comfortable, she blurted out some stuff she probably shouldn't have. Stuff about you, Yagami-san. Well, that's nothing I can't handle. But rolling with RK is bad news. She needs to stop. Their leaders are ex-Yakuza, you know. I knew it. So they actually are dangerous, then. What's really going on? They asked Akane which student you cared about the most. What? So she... kinda blurted out Koda's name. She did what? Yeah, even Akane knew she messed up. So she called me right after. Yagami-san, you've been mixed up with RK, right? You think they might go after Koda? Can you try to get in touch with her? Actually, I haven't been able to. What about Akane? Oh, right. Uh, let me try and call. Hello, Masun? Akane, where are you right now? The last place Mikoshiba-sensei was. Huh? I'm with RK. We're at the building where Mikoshiba-sensei's body was found. Why? Masun, are you with Yagami already? What? How do you know about that? It's Yagami. Is Koda-san there too? She is. Yagami-san! It's me! Koda! Is Yagami? <laughs> Come on over and we'll play. You know the place, right? Who is this? Not important. Better hurry, or else Koto-chan will have to entertain us. Know what I mean? Hey! Stop it! No! <laughs> Don't! What the hell do you want? Come down and find out. Oh, I'm sure this goes without saying, but if you go to the cops, these girls are as good as dead. Do you guys even understand what you're doing right now? <laughs> Better hurry. What? What's happening? Matsun, you stay here. Tsukumo! I'll contact Kaito-san and Higashi-san for help. And I'll fly my drone out to the scene, too. Perfect. Counting on you. What's up? Yagamishi, this is Tsukumo. My drones just arrived at the scene. Koda-san and Akane-san are with some men. About 20 of them. Where's Kaito-san and Higashi? I've contacted them. They're on their way now. Good. He's here! It's Yagami! <sighs> Talk! This where those RK guys are holed up? He's Soma with them? Nobody's had eyes on him yet. Just a sec. Tsukumo? I've confirmed the enemy position, Yagami Shi. They have our two young hostages surrounded, so a head on assault would be too dangerous. Naturally, I've already come up with some countermeasures we can run. Would you care to hear my plan? <laughs> you always come through, man. Okay, then. Walk us through it. Wow. Look who decided to show up. Too scared to come without all your little bodyguard buddies? Not like you've got room to talk. How many shitheads does it take to watch these girls? I never thought it would end up like this. You believe me, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> but we'll have to save the lecture for after all this is over. You'll be free soon. That goes for you too, Kodasan. <laughs> <laughs> you so sure about that? <laughs> you kidnapped them to get to me? Well, here I am, so let's go. <laughs> we did lure you here. So we can beat your sorry ass to death. Okay then. <laughs> so what was your plan? Throw all these guys at us as soon as we kick down the door? <laughs> We're smarter than that, you know. Yeah. 
We knew you'd have some backup! Here comes! Let's take out the trash! Yagami! Hands where I can see him! And same for you two! Hey, calm down. I've got one more thing. I'm not a big fan of guns. Huh? Shit! Look there! Face the wrath of the angel of Yokohama 99! The wicked shall be smited and retribution shall be swift! <laughs> Did you really think one gun was enough to take out a crew like us? If you did, you were wrong. You two sit tight a little longer. But just to warn you, I'm gonna go hard on these guys. You wanna see some asses kicked? Don't blink, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get going. I want them down before the smoke clears. Yeah. Come on!
I'm so sorry. No. I'm the one who got you into this. It's not your fault, it's RK's. But I'm next in line after them. <laughs> Besides, I'm not the one you should be apologizing to. Coda, I'm really sorry. It's all right. Well, I'm gonna head home. Soma? Uh, what? Who? Connie, get back! Huh? Here all by yourself? What are you trying to pull? Oh, I'm just here to talk. To be honest, Kwana's put us in kind of a tight spot. How so? Well, he's got Kawai's body, Reiko Kusumoto's victim, <laughs> hidden in a freezer of all places. Been on ice for what? Five years? You know about this, Yagami? Yeah. Problem is, he's planning to reveal its location on the internet. If that happens, Kusumoto-san will be ruined. No doubt her fingerprints and other traces are all over the damn corpse. Yeah, but that's for the better. And she won't have to listen to you. Reiko Kusumoto is a capable woman who can swim with the tides. She's irreplaceable. It would be unfortunate to lose her over some low life she had to put down. She's on our side now, and she's accepted it. So it's your duty to protect people like that? I protect order, not people. Consider me a necessary evil. Necessary evil? That's right. If I hadn't gone undercover, the Tojo clan's ex-Yakuza would be spread all over by now. If that happened, we never would have been able to track their current activity. That's why I created the RK Network. To keep Kamurocho's underground under control. Much safer and less messy than wiping them out indiscriminately. But in the shadow of order, there's always a pair of dirty hands. Right. Kiwana said something like that too. <laughs> but if there's one difference between the two of us, it's that I find my work enjoyable. It gives me purpose. When I dirty my hands, it's in the service of order. It goes back to a necessary evil to maintain peace in this country. In my eyes, peace does require violence. It only works when killers are below the surface, keeping it afloat. Sawa-sensei too? Is that the peace you want? <laughs> Yoko Sawa? She did have to die. She almost connected the Mikoshiba case to Kawana. She was getting very close to it. She may even have figured out Reiko Kusamoto was involved. The fewer people who know a secret, the better kept the secret stays. I don't remember even hesitating on that call. And I think that means... Well, you guys won't like hearing this. But it was justified. You asshole! Oh, oh, don't fly off the handle now. I haven't finished what I had to say. What the fuck? Did I mention how much of a pain in the ass Kuana made this? He negotiated for your lives, using Kawai's body as leverage over us. What? So relax, would you? I don't plan on killing you here. Then why even show your sorry face? The trial for Ehara-san is coming up, right? You know the groping thing. I've come here with a request that I hope you'll consider. This from you? Reiko Kusumoto's name is not to come up during the Ehara trial. That shouldn't be so hard, right? Shirosaki-sensei would have to agree to this, too. And if we were to refuse? Nothing. It's Kusumoto-san's request. She is asking nice. What? A mother doesn't want her child branded a murderer's son. Could you give her that much? <laughs> and that's all. I'm sure we'll talk soon. You think so, huh? 
Why put off what we can settle now? Soma! Sure beats the alternative, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'd say he got us good with that one. Yeah. But that was a terrible call. If Soma hadn't been packing a paint gun, that would have been really bad. You two are more important than him. I should have prioritized protecting you. Yagami-san. You've been brave. I'm sure this was really scary for you. We'll need to do things one step at a time, Gaito-san. We can't tackle it all at once. First thing, the Hara's groping appeal needs to become a murder trial that outs Kawana and his students. That way, if public security is our real enemy here, we'll have the prosecution and the courts on our side. That'll be on me. I'll reveal a truth no one can deny. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty much your specialty. Send that asshole to jail, for good. <laughs> You've got this, Yagami-san. Uh, whoa, this is crazy. Why is he so hot? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute ago, she got shot. And now look at her. <laughs> Teenagers. I'm getting ready now, sorry, son. Oversleep? <laughs> ah, I would never... Okay. Yeah. All right, see you at the courthouse. Held on violation of Shinjuku Station's anti-nuisance ordinance, the defendant of this appeal is active duty officer Akihiro Ehara. He was previously convicted and sentenced to six months. However, the defense wholly rejects the sexual battery charge and asserts his innocence. The prosecution points to two pieces of evidence to prove the defendant guilty. One is the security camera footage from Ikebukuro to Shinjuku Station. The other is fiber traces from the victim's undergarments on the defendant's hand. The defense maintains this was not sufficient evidence to issue a guilty verdict. We have prepared counter-arguments to each piece of the prosecution's evidence. How does the prosecution respond? We maintain the original sentence was perfectly adequate. That is all. Then first, let's examine the security footage from Ikebukuro and Shinjuku Station submitted at the first trial. This is footage of Ikebukuro Station on October 7th at 7.43 a.m. The individual wearing sunglasses and a mask is believed to be the defendant. This person remains in the area for over an hour, watching as countless trains make their stops. At 9.06 a.m., he locates the victim of this case that he boards the train and pursues her. This footage of the station platform is from when the suspect and victim board the train car. We already saw this during the first trial. Let's not be redundant. Of course not. 
The victim claimed the defendant moved in a suspicious manner once the train left Ikebukuro Station, ultimately placing his hand under her skirt. After they arrived at Shinjuku Station six minutes later, the victim gathered her courage and grabbed his hand. However, there's a possibility the offender seen here is not the defendant himself, but a different person entirely, a stand-in. The goal was to disguise this event as an alibi for the murder which occurred in Yokohama that same morning. In other words, this instance of sexual battery was a conspiratorial fabrication. The original verdict was issued without taking this into consideration, resulting in an inadequate trial. This is merely speculation. The defense has no proof to support these claims. <laughs> Precisely the issue. Yes, there is indeed no definitive proof that confirms the existence of a stand-in. However, the notion itself cannot be disproved, even with all of the prosecution's evidence. Would you care to elaborate, please? The assailant fled the train and was caught shortly after on the Shinjuku station platform. Many nearby passengers filmed the scene, which then circulated throughout Japan. The impact may have been greater since the defendant was an active duty officer. no mistake that the man apprehended at the platform was the defendant. Upon arrival, station police arrested him and immediately performed a trace element inspection. With that said, there's a very real possibility the offender who ran off the train was an entirely different person, and we have the evidence to prove that. If you'll kindly look at this. What is this? Display it on the large monitor, please. Is that a diagram of Shinjuku Station? That's correct, Your Honor. First, the victim and the offender ran onto the platform as soon as the train doors opened. The train car they boarded is here on this map. We've marked the offender's route with an arrow. The lighter areas on the overhead view are within the security camera's line of sight. More people pass through Shinjuku than anywhere on Earth in a single day. It's packed with security cameras. However, this arrow with the dotted line reveals the existence of a small blind spot. That's where the defendant and stand-in swapped places. I see. So you claim this was their opportunity? Yes. As such, I'd like to question the defendant once more over this evidence. Defendant, when you were issued the verdict in your first trial, you said the following to the judge. In a warehouse about three days ago, a body turned up in Yokohama. If that wasn't enough, you correctly identified the body as Hiro Mikoshiba, despite the fact the police had yet to do so. How did you manage to pull off such a feat? It came to me in a dream. Strange. Miko Shiba-san was your son Toshiro-kun's classmate, was he not? That's right. Toshiro Ehara was found dead in his apartment four years ago. He took his own life. Afterward, the defendant sued the school over Toshiro-kun's suicide. Yes? Ehara-san, can you tell us why you sued the school? There were rumors my son had been bullied. Unfortunately, the court wasn't able to substantiate that claim. And these rumors were discovered on the internet? They were. Of the bullies mentioned, Miko Shiba-san's name was among them. Were you aware of this? I was. Would you say you harbored murderous intent against Miko Shiba-san? Objection! The defense's question is irrelevant. This case is to examine whether or not sexual battery took place. Also, the Kanagawa police are actively investigating Hiro Mikoshiba's murder. The courtroom is no place for baseless speculation. How does the defense respond? 
The timing of the battery incident makes this case an alibi for Mikoshiba-san's murder. We believe there's a very relevant connection. Very well. The prosecution's objection is overruled. And please keep it brief. Just as soon as the defendant answers the question. Did you harbor murderous intent for Hiro Mikoshiba? Of course I did. In other words, Your Honor, it goes like this. On the day Toshiro-kun's bully, Mikoshiba-san, was killed, the defendant set out to synchronize the murder with sexual battery. It became his alibi for the murder, and the prosecution and the court all but approved it. <laughs> A six-month sentence for sexual battery and getting away with murder. That's all the motivation the defendant needed to fabricate this elaborate scheme. His stand-in groped his accomplice, and then they swapped places before getting caught. It's all entirely possible. Then the defense should present some evidence to prove it. Wrong. That's not how this works, is it? The prosecution bears the burden of proof in criminal cases. If we go through all the evidence and discover the possibility no groping took place, then it's on the prosecution to refute that. Fine. Have it your way. The defense's argument about the security camera's blind spot is flimsy at best. While the defendant was running, his female victim was chasing after him. Surely the victim would have seen if he had switched places with a stand-in. Yet the victim provided no such testimony. The victim, Yui Mamiya, was an accomplice in the scheme. Objection! This is an insult to the victim. Such claims harm the integrity of all women. She's an excellent liar. Not only did she deceive Prosecutor Takano, but also the police on the scene and even the other passengers. The court does not look kindly on character defamation. It's people like you who make victims afraid to raise their voices. The victim of this particular crime was a plant, having planned to be a victim the whole time. All as part of the offender's elaborate charade you've fallen for. But for reasons unknown, the prosecution rejects the idea. Probably an intimidation tactic. Excuse me? Defense, please mind your manners. Yagami-san. <clears throat> Defense, do you have any logic behind this claim that the victim conspired with the defendant? Yes, we do. In actuality, she wasn't the only conspirator who helped stage the groping. The bystander who captured the defendant. The witness who recorded the incident on his smartphone. Both men, in conjunction with the victim, were classmates from the same high school. Which means, strange as it sounds, that these seemingly unrelated individuals were in fact all acquaintances. It's clear that this was a carefully organized and planned event. Our investigation discovered they all graduated from Kurokawa Academy in Tokyo 13 years ago. Additionally, Yoko Sawa, the teacher who was killed in Ijincho, graduated from the same class. Four years ago, she was the teacher of the defendant's son, Toshiroku. We believe this indicates a connection between the Kurokawa Academy graduates and this case. Of course, that's as deep as we need to go on that. We've simply presented the possibility that multiple conspirators were present when the defendant was apprehended. And as long as such a possibility exists, the defense asserts the defendant cannot be found guilty. Your Honor, may I speak? What is it? I haven't committed murder. Per my conviction, I am just a pervert who victimized a woman on the train. Everything else is in the defense's imagination. Defendant, 
Why did you agree to this appeal then? You can ask my lawyers that. I simply didn't stop them. How does the defense respond? It's just as the defendant says. However, we believe his recollection may be a bit fuzzy. To refresh his memory, I'd like him to take a look at some footage. Will you permit this, Your Honor? Now what? But please, don't display this on the large monitor. We shouldn't shock the public. It's footage of a murder. Excuse me, wasn't that denied as evidence? As I said, this is solely to refresh your memory. It's up to the judge whether or not we show it. Please proceed. That's just internet footage with no known origins. No. This footage is from the SD card in the camera used to record it. This is a write once read many card, also known as a worm. The police use it to photograph evidence. Anything recorded on it is highly reliable data. After serving your time, you intended to release this to the public. But Kawana can't wait for that to happen. And that's why he left it in my care. Don't kill me! Please! I'm sorry. No sure good. I'll make it up to him. I'll atone for it! I swear I'll try to make it up to him somehow. I'll spend the rest of my life making up for it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Defendant, in that footage, is the person in the white raincoat you? You could say it looks like me. The person you killed is Hiro Mikoshiba. According to the autopsy report, he died sometime after 7.30 a.m. on October 7th. Therefore, it can only be that the person who passed through the ticket gate shortly after at 7.43 a.m. was not you, but your stand-in. As the defense, we cannot allow our client's conviction of sexual battery to stand in light of this footage. May we continue questioning the defendant? How does the prosecution respond? Even if the footage has an irrefutable source, that alone does not prove guilt of murder. I'd just like to state that in advance. So the prosecution is denying the murder? <laughs> Remind me who exactly is defending me here? Good question. The defense repeatedly mentions a stand-in, but where is this person currently? Who even are they? The person on the station security footage was wearing sunglasses, but he looked just like the defendant. We believe he used a mask made from a 3D printer. If you look closely, the alleged defendant at Ikebukuro Station and on the train does not move his mouth at all. We learned this from sources who may have been the stand-in and the collaborators. Then we should call them to the stand to testify. No need. The defendant should know all of this already. I don't know anything about it. He said he doesn't know. So what now? The defendant admitted to sexual battery, not murder. The murder footage has excellent production value, but nothing else corroborates the defense's claims. Your Honor, I would like to request further witness testimony from the victim. Denied. Both the defendant and the victim certified the validity of the battery, leaving no room for discrepancies. It would be unprecedented for a victim to testify further in this situation. By that logic, there's no precedent for using battery as an alibi for murder either. I will admit there is a possibility, but not enough to justify subjecting the victim to further distress in court. I must once again deny the request. But... Defense? I've made myself clear. Your Honor, following the defendant's last statement, we have a few more questions. Understood. Please proceed. What's next?
you're an active duty police officer. You still hold that title with pride. It would be ridiculous to say I do now. But in my past, I took down criminals in the name of justice and tried to make a difference, even around the time of my son's suicide. And, as fate would have it, that same justice system decided no one was to blame for it. If I had to pick a moment my pride as an officer died, that would be it. Not that it matters. That has no bearing. It doesn't mean I killed Mikoshiba. I suppose not, huh? Ahara-san, you're familiar with Jin Kuwana, aren't you? He's a handyman in Ijinsho. Nope. Never heard of him. On October 7th, Kuwana disguised himself as you and boarded a train in Ikebukuro bound for Shinjuku Station. He was the stand-in for the sexual battery mentioned earlier. Your Honor, no evidence has been submitted to verify that statement. The name Kawana was not present on any documentation, nor was the prosecution notified. Kawana is the very person who encouraged the defendant to murder mikoshiba san Defense, as the prosecution has stated, no one by the name of Kawana is known to the court. We've not even confirmed if he exists. Please refrain from this line of questioning. But, Your Honor, Kawana is a key factor in the defendant's motive. Without him, Ahara-san never would have killed Mikoshiba, and we wouldn't be in this courtroom. Am I getting through to you? I... don't know a Kawana. No, you definitely do. Kawana's the one who fanned the flames of vengeance. You'd do well to remember that. Take a listen to this. What is it? It wasn't just some random internet post that made you decide to kill Mikoshiba-san, was it? Even while battling the school in court, you still didn't know for sure who pushed Toshiro-kun to his death. That's when Kuwana came to you with this recording, right? Hmm? That's... Why do you... Toshiro-kun came running to the roof. His face was pretty swollen. And a few minutes later, a student named Mikoshiba came up looking for him. I'll never forget the fear I saw in Toshiro-kun's face. That's the voice of Yokosawa, the teacher Toshiro-kun confided in about being bullied four years ago. It was recorded in secret and played for the defendant by Kawana. He told me about everything. The teasing, the beatings, the theft. How nobody was on his side. And yet, I had to deny all this in front of an entire courtroom. Believe me, I never wanted to do that. They said there was no hope, that I was the only witness with no proof whatsoever. After hearing this, the defendant came to believe Mikoshiba-san's unchecked aggression toward Toshiro was the driving force behind his son's tragic suicide. And ultimately, this became his motivation for murdering Mikoshiba-san and staging his elaborate cover-up. Isn't that right, Ahara-san? Is it coming back to you yet? Afraid not. I see. Then, is that all? Can the defense please get back on track? This recording only came into my hands by means of Kawana. Except, thinking about it now, much like the murder footage, that would qualify as an unreliable source, wouldn't it? What? We live in an age where audio and video footage can be fabricated and easily reproduced. <sighs> what are you getting at? Sawa-sensei, the one speaking in the recording, was murdered only days ago. And the one who recorded it, Kuana, disappeared without a trace. Meaning that as far as this recording is concerned, no one is left who can prove that it's authentic to the court. Or is my understanding incorrect? You would say 
You're completely unaware of the details about your son in this recording. Kawana had it. Didn't he play it for you? I never heard it. Regardless of the content, it has nothing to do with me. So you say. In that case, let's just assume then that Kawana and I are the only ones in possession of this audio recording. And considering that Kawana has all but vanished without a trace, that would actually make this the only copy, and me the sole owner. No backup exists. What are you getting at? If this has no value in this courtroom, then I'm afraid it's never going to have a value beyond today. And being that you claim it's unrelated to you or this case, then it wouldn't bother you if I were to delete it from my phone right here and now. Why would... That's crazy. I wouldn't! Okay. Then tell me why I shouldn't do it. Because... Mikoshiba was a man who should never have escaped being judged. That's the proof of my son's pain. The proof that everyone ignored. That recording is all I have left of him! I took the school to court because Toshiro deserved justice. But all they could say is that the cause of his suicide couldn't be determined. In the end, not a single person was held responsible. No proof, no justice. My son was hung up to dry. Yes. That's all true. All of you. You're all so incompetent. You see yourselves as these paragons of law and justice. Yet the truth slips right through your fingers. And then... My alibi made you a mockery. I made it so real. You passed me off as just another pervert. You were gullible. Every single one of you. Toshiro threw his life away and justice was blind to his pain. Mikoshiba walked free because of you. You condone murder and call yourselves the law. That's why. That's why I did it. I took Mikoshiba's life with my own hands. This is coming in hot. Remember that pervert cop? Turns out he's actually a murderer. To recap, you killed Hiro Mikoshiba in Ijincho, then headed to Shinjuku Station where you and Kawana pulled off a switch, and there you were ultimately arrested as a Grover. Yeah. That's right. Defendant, you bear animosity for the whole system. We can't just take your words at face value. If you're responsible for Mikoshiba-san's murder, can you bring forward any evidence, or just the murder footage? To tell you the truth, I have something that I was holding on to for the impact that it would have. It's very real evidence that the law has failed us. What have you been hiding then? Will it prove you killed Mikoshiba? Yes. Then what is it? If you go to my wife's apartment, you'll find my son's altar there, in it. You'll find the weapon I used for the crime, the knife I murdered him with. It still has Mikoshiba's blood on it. Wait a minute, Genda-sensei. I traded that altar. Well, I guess you can lead a horse to water. Very well, then. We'll open an investigation. Defense. Will there be anything further? No matter how justified, vengeance is not something we can ever take into our own hands. That said, in the case of Ahara-san, our system failed him. We know the law strives to be just, but it failed to prove Toshiro Kun was bullied. That's not justice. Not when no one is held responsible. The law, as well as those who enforce it, are far from perfect. So to the court, I say let this case be a lesson. The law is failing to save people who need saving. It's clear proceedings should be adjourned. 
At a later time when Mikoshiba-san's murder weapon is recovered, we can resume the trial. I'm willing to do that via a special exception. Defense, prosecution, is that clear? No objections. The defense rests, Your Honor. Well, Kanagawa PD called from the Ehara residence. They've recovered the knife. I'm ashamed to admit that I was so blind to his scheme. Well then, that makes two of us. <sighs> Seems I underestimated you. And the worst part of all, I was arrogant. Legal authority and organizational connections should never be held above the pursuit of truth. I'm glad you were able to make me see that again. Thank you. <laughs> nah. You've come a long way. Genda-sensei. Prosecutor Takano's been stubborn as hell from the day he passed the bar. Once he's made up his mind, nothing can stand in his way. Not even his own boss. And he only bows once in a blue moon, so I hope you remember this. <laughs> Typical Genda law. I'm never going to like you. <laughs> you two really pulled it off. Great job. Yagami-san. It's Kusumoto, the Vice Minister. Bondo. He's from Public Security? Right. You handled that with such grace, Yagami Sensei. It's no wonder Kawana holds you in such high regard. What brings you here? Yagami Sensei, would you mind if we talked alone? Why, though? Something we can't hear? The more you know, the more you risk. You'd be endangering your own lives. If you're willing to accept that, feel free to stay. We'll clear the room. At this point, we'd just be getting in Yagami-san's way. It was nearly a month ago that Kusumoto-san received a letter from Kawana. Though we were unable to use it to trace him. What did it say? Soma told you, didn't he? Kawana hid Shinya Kawai's body, seeing as Kusumoto-san's fingerprints and other traces were still on it. If that surfaces, the Ministry of Health will have yet another massive scandal on its hands. As such, we'd like to recover and dispose of the body as quickly as possible. Perhaps we'll need to melt it down. The body was originally preserved to maintain control over Mitsuru's bullies. I never imagined it would be used against me someday. Fine, but why are you telling me this? Because of the letter he sent. Once Eihara-san's trial is over, he wanted to talk to you. Using my phone. Huh? <gasps> Is that Kawana? Kusumoto-san. Is Yagami there? Put me on speaker, please. Go ahead. So... It seems Ehara-san's trial was a big success. He took our failing legal system and turned it on its head. Couldn't have done it without you. I don't know what you're thinking, but public security has to be tracing this call. You have a plan? No, nope, not this time. 
That's why I'm using my own phone. And that's just the way I want it. Can't run forever, you know. The hell are you saying? If they catch you, you're a dead man. That's exactly why I'm negotiating to prevent that. Kusumoto-san. Yes. I'll be up front with you. I never imagined the day would come that you would be the one to betray me. But if I had to guess, Mitsuru-kun must have woke up. If that's the case, then Kawaii's murder, your whole past, you're not the only one it stands to ruin. If all that comes into the light, Mitsuru-kun will be labeled the son of a murderer. Exactly. I can't let that... That's the one thing I need to prevent. I know. That's good. That's exactly what you should be doing. So please, don't stop now on my behalf. Enough is enough. You and your son have been through enough hell. I want to protect Mitsuru-kun too. Almost as much as his mother. Where is Kawai's body? Tell me. I can only assume this call is being traced, so even as we speak, I'm standing somewhere very close to it. You gave us the location. I'm going to dispatch Soma. Kawada! Where are you? I'm an Injincho. If I take even one step out of this city, I'd be powerless. I've got nowhere else left to go. Kawada! After they find Kawai's body and Kawana is taken care of, I'm next on the list. Bondo can act at his own discretion. If he wants me gone, he'll be able to silence anyone who could know too much. Sawa-sensei was just the first victim. You yourself have sealed this fate, you know. Will you tell him? Will you tell Mitsuru-kun about Sawa-sensei? Surely you know it wasn't my fault. Sawa-san's death was a tragedy. I never imagined that would happen. What about Kawana? Can you imagine how his death is gonna play out in a few hours? I can. But I'm not gonna let him go down without a fight. Which means... I'm going to Ijinjo. I can talk some sense into Bando. I won't allow him to kill indiscriminately. So please, don't go out there to risk your life. That's how it works. No promises. Tsukuma, Kawana's still out in Ijincho. Soma and RK are heading there too. We need to get to him fast. Wait, are you sure about that? You should be able to pick up some chatter. Pinpoint the location. I'm on my way. I'll talk to you soon. safe and sound. What's happening? Is RK on the move? Oh, yeah. A picture began circulating on the internet not long ago. It was likely Kawana-san who put it out there. I just sent it over to you. Hang on. Is this Shinya Kawai? That's his body. Indeed it is. I data mined the image and found out it was taken just a minute ago. I also have the location. It's a warehouse company on Yokohama's coast, and Kawana's uncle came up as the proprietor. You mean Siren's owner? Send me the warehouse's address. Actually, Tsugirashi is driving there with Kaito-san and Higashi-san right now. If you want to ride, take Ishizaki Road and head to Surukame Highway. <laughs> Can't count how many times you've come through from the supermarket. <laughs> Just trying to return the many favors, Yagamichi. These RK assholes are like bananas. They only come in bunches.
take it they don't want us getting to Kuwana-san? Guess they were expecting us. Sure are making a big show of it. What are those people doing? Oh, I don't like the looks of this. Should we call the cops? Kaijo-san, we're running out of time. Let's wrap this up quick. Yeah! Can't you see we're in a hurry? Quit stalling and come get some! Somehow they never show up when you need them, but they're right there when it's gonna be a pain in the ass. Think this bunch is with public security? I'm not sure. Either way, we don't have time to deal with them. Hey! Relax, fellas. I can vouch for these guys. Nabe-san. <laughs> the lid came off the Mikoshiba case. We can investigate the connection to Ahara. But what the hell are you guys doing here? Kawana's in a tight spot, actually. Can I count on you? Will the cops help? What do you mean by a tight spot? Take a step back, please. These men are gonna be under our jurisdiction. This has to wait. We're dealing with a matter of life and death here. Be quiet! Hey, I told you I could vouch for these guys. Why don't we all just chill out and let them explain what they're doing? <laughs> hey, what the hell? I suggest you stay out of this. Okay. Name and department! Our orders are coming from way higher up the chain than yours, sir. So again, stay out of this. There's nothing stopping me from arresting a detective. Or do you want to try me? <sighs> and do your orders include going around belting us with your batons? We're about to have a problem here, aren't we? All four of you, put your hands up and face the car! I said, move! Oh, damn! It's Yagami-san! What brings you all the way out here? Matsu? Akane? Hey! Stop that! Whoa! Back off, dude! Hey! Check it out! These goddamn cops, they're jacking my friend's food because they're shady as fuck! I'm no expert, but is that shit legal? Nice. Sugiura, start the car. Okay! Ah! Hey! Those kids aren't even half bad. Let's roll! Hey, stop oh, the car! Stop, shit! Stop. Stop. Hey, stop. Go. Tessa? <laughs> Looks like everybody's on our side. Except RK and the cops. Great. Guana's gonna be waiting for us. I'm on it. Going as fast as I can.
Tsukumo. We're just about at the place. You got a visual? Yeah, the view's great from up here, Yagamishi. From my position, it looks like RK is swarming the whole building. And Soma? I can't confirm his location, unfortunately. Kuanasan either. Okay. So, give me a number here. How many RK we got? I'd say about a hundred. A hundred? It's a massive warehouse, so they need all the manpower they can get. They seem to have fanned out to search for Kawai's body. The good news is, there's no indication they found it yet. Tsukumo-kun, got any bright ideas for where I should park this thing? I'm afraid it won't matter too much. The enemy already knows you're on route. You'll have a welcoming party no matter where you decide to enter from. <laughs> that works. Just means we get to show up and beat down the front door. guys ready? Hey, anyone else getting some good deja vu from kicking a bunch of asses in a downpour? I'm pretty pumped, actually. It's reminding me I'm alive, you know? Come on, man. Are you that bored back in Kamurocho? <laughs> Let's go! Got company. Guess the watch isn't doing their job. What are they so mad about? Not like they're supposed to be here either. Yeah, they're just ransacking the place. This is all to find Kawhi's body. Well, if there's a bright side to any of this, it looks like they still haven't found it. Or Kuana. That's it. Break time, fellas! Let's kill these fuckers! <laughs> See this number. Huh? It's Kuana. I assume you're here? Then all the players have assembled. I mean you're here too? Where are you? What is all this? Put simply, a trap for Soma, using Kawai's body as bait. You must have known he'd show up too. So everything from calling Reiko Kusumoto to this? It was all to corner Soma? Yeah. 
I'm gonna drag him kicking and screaming into the light. He only gets away with his shit because he does it in the shadows, and his friends at public security just watch. If I expose them, Uzumoto-san can lead a happy life. You know she sold you out, right? Look, that doesn't matter. This is the only shot we have at Soma. Alone, I could probably kill him. But there's no way I can take him in alive. If you wanted help, you could have just asked. To deceive your enemies, start with your allies. And besides, if you didn't come, I had a plan B. Listen, I'm in the deepest part of the warehouse, far down as you can go. And so much closing in. And we'll just have to get there first. Oh, man. What kind of plan B could he have when he's got a hundred guys surrounding him? I sure would have liked to see that. Might be some arcade down below, too. Probably right. Won't open? Maybe they barred it from the other side. Hey, what's the plan? Let's see if we can find another way. Hey guys. Oh, you spot a way through? Yeah, let me see if it'll work. You guys keep watch in case anyone's tailing us. Gotcha. You can leave that to us. Be quick, but keep it cool, Tog. You're the man, Yagami-san. Let's okay. roll then. Hey! Hold it right there! God damn. How many of these guys are there? Tak! Sugiyura! Higashi and I'll keep them busy. You guys go on ahead. I'm counting on both you guys. Another pile of shit. Well, Yagami-san, I guess we can handle this. No RK around here. Yagami-san, find a way to follow me from where you're at. Yagami-san! I'm a little tied up over here myself. Go on ahead, yeah? Hey, you all right? I think so. In better shape than Kuana-san, at least. Now hurry up, Yagami-san! Damn it. You better be right behind me. You know I will! I don't stop. Gotta think. Need a lift? Nice job clearing the path. As of that, I found this! Come on board! <laughs> this ought to be good. What do you clowns think you're doing? Your asses are dead! Get out of there! 
Why is this taking so long? Find Kawhi's body, and Kawana will show up. The faster you go, the faster we get out of here. This air is unbearable. Sir, you think Kawana's still around? We already tore this place up. Couldn't he have bailed? Well, he didn't get out with Kawhi's body. No cars have gotten in or out of here since we showed up. Just find the body. We can deal with Kuana later. Soma-san! Go check it out! Kawhi's body. Sir, uh, I uh, think we found it. Do you see? You can do anything if you put your mind to it. Yo, how we doing? Sir, I'm the one who found him. We were just about to pull him out. Ugh, he's so fucking nasty. Good. Get this thing out of here. I've got a buyer ready to pay quite a premium. Good job, everybody. It's Kuana. <laughs> you thought you could hide? Show yourself! Don't you want to try to negotiate? You call this a negotiation? You don't bring a gun to a ceasefire. <laughs> You've led us on a hell of a wild chase, Soma! <laughs> <laughs> well then, how many mice do we have in the maze? <laughs> One appears. The weakest dies first. That fucking hurt! I'm gonna fucking kick this little wimp's ass! You call me a wimp asshole? Out of my fucking room! You made it out alive, Yagami. So, is all this playing out exactly as you planned? If we can catch this murderer here and put him in chains, then I'd say we're off to a good start. <laughs> That's hypocritical, isn't it? You say I'm a killer? What's your body count up to? I'm just a former Japanese teacher. Sounds to me like you've got it all wrong. Well, doesn't that figure? The only teacher I ever hated was in my high school Japanese class. Soma. I don't know if I've ever met a more twisted piece of shit. Undercover agent or whatever. You've crossed the line without giving a damn. Undercover agent? My men don't need to hear this shit. Sawa Sensei died at your hands. You deserve what's coming. I'm afraid that's what you say when you have the upper hand. Guys, turn it on. Now it's time to give them hell. Okay. They're going down. Oh, yeah. Let's get this over with. Yaga 
enemy. Bondo too. He'll abandon you to your fate. To hell with evil being necessary for order. You're rotten to sell for the rest of your miserable life. left to do is clean this shit up. Yo. You might want to stay away from that. Pull it out any further. And it'll set off the bomb I planted. What? It could very well end up going off anyway. But that'll be up to me. Oh. 
now? What the fuck? I can't keep track of how many times this guy has changed sides. As long as Kawai's body exists, Kusumoto-san will never be free. So I'll make sure it's never found again. You guys might want to consider stepping out. Kawana, you can't do it. But I can. This was always going to be the backup plan anyway. If you guys hadn't made it down here, I would have blown up both the body and Soma all in one shot. But still, if Soma dies, I'll never get to the one pulling the strings. And Kusumoto-san will never be free of these goddamn shackles. Kusumoto-san needs to turn herself in. If she keeps trying to hide from all this, she'll be haunted by her past wherever she goes. You'd rather she carry those sins for the rest of her life than all by herself. Because after today, you won't be there to help anymore. You have to leave. You'll disappear. From here on out, you'll need to live deep in the shadows. If she turns herself in, she'd never be able to see Mitsuru again. Her son is finally awake, after 13 years in a coma. Does tearing them apart sound like justice to you? I want nothing more than for everyone involved to get a happy ending. But still, if I turn my back on it now, Sawa-sensei's sacrifice becomes a footnote. That won't work. She can't say her piece without a voice. So if I don't raise mine for her, what justice prevails? Fine. I'll just push the button. Everyone in here can be blown to hell. You really gonna do that? If you guys don't back off, then I will. Do you know how many people I've killed through the years? No. But if you were really that kind of scum, we wouldn't have come down here. You wouldn't be the kind of person worth saving. This one is my fight, guys. The way I see this, Tuck, you and Kuana both have your reasons. Something to consider. But between the both of you, is there really a right answer?
Because the truth was being hidden. That's what led to Sawa Sensei's death, isn't it? Set Kusamoto free. It's time for all this to end. I mean, you've got to already know. When justice breaks, someone's always gonna find a way to redefine it to suit themselves. And from that point of view, everything you do feels justified. That's why... That's why you're able to look past the sacrifice. And the damage you cause. No. I didn't want this. I get that. But who decides what's wrong? Who gets to decide what's right? That's not us. Come on. Sawa Sensei died because you made the choice for her. And you took her truth. Who does that really serve? Tell me who. Why would you want that? The truth is all we have. When the law can't be fair, the truth becomes our last ray of hope. So please, Sawa Sensei's truth, don't take that from her. <laughs> <laughs> Kusamoto san Kitakata sensei <laughs> I couldn't protect you. I couldn't even protect your secret. <laughs> Please lift up your eyes. <laughs> I saw that picture you posted of Kawhi's dead face. <laughs> I took a hard look. This was the man I killed. I saw the pain in his propulsive face. I saw the consequences of my actions. Sawasa never should have been dragged into this. I saw how I betrayed and abandoned you too. Kusumoto-san. I've been frightened ever since. 
I was scared Mitsuru would find out the truth. I was worried he would discover his mother was a monster. And for you as well, Sensei. You carried it for me. You clung to such a dark secret. I made you do this for so long. I never should have gone through with it. And I won't let you bear the burden of my mistake anymore. That's why I've decided. I'm going to turn myself in. I have some bad news for you, Mitsuru. Your mother won't be coming home for a while. Mm -mm. It's not work. But I feel I should warn you. I'm going to be placing a burden on your shoulders. I'm so sorry. Mitsuru? Please don't worry, Mom. If anything, I should be the one worrying about you. Huh? I could tell something was bothering you. You've been hiding a problem for a while, haven't you? I'm sure it's been hard. Especially considering what a burden I've been. No. That's not it at all. Don't worry, Mom. I more or less already know. In fact, let me tell you. I was doing physical therapy earlier, and I managed to take a few steps. For the first time in 13 years. That's... wonderful. It didn't feel like much, really. But still, you know what the doctor said? That if I keep at it, I'll be able to stand on my own two feet. And then I'll be able to walk again pretty soon. <laughs> when that time comes, I'll be there for you. It'll finally be my turn to support you. So please don't worry about me, Mom. Don't let me hold you back. Go do whatever it is you have to do. I'll be waiting. I'm sorry, Mitsuru. <laughs> Thank you. Enter. I don't recall having an appointment with any prosecutors today. Are you familiar with Kazuki Soma of RK? Public security's inside man. He infiltrated the Kamurocho underworld on assignment. As you're aware, he got caught up in some illicit activity. You knew this. Yet somehow his actions stayed off the record. Whatever you're talking about, I have no idea, son. Just so you know, Soma's been arrested by Kanagawa police. The investigation is ongoing. He's the prime suspect in the murder of Yokosawa in her Yokohama home. It's our suspicion that he was acting on the orders he received from you, and that would make you complicit in her death. You wanted to manipulate Reiko Kusumoto, and so you stooped to blackmail. Let me guess why you're here. You want to put all of this out in the open? If it means exposing the truth, certainly. <laughs> you want to burn down Japan? This is bigger than me. It could go all the way up the chain. People of power nationwide would be dragged into your scandal. And some of those people might even be the superiors cutting your paychecks. Yep. But the bureaucracy isn't the monolith you think it is. The more political power you wield, the more enemies you have waiting in the shadows for the opportune moment to strike. We've met with them, and we have their full cooperation on this. As a result, Soa-san's security footage has been recovered. It had mysteriously gone missing when the investigation was opened. Upon further review, Kazuki Soma is clearly visible in it. Who would have the authority to order that evidence to be locked away? That would be you, Bando-san.
For my part, I did the things I thought were necessary. I'm trying to maintain order. It's not hyperbole that I've saved us. My actions. So if you intend to drag me through the mud, I'll see you in court. So we will. That said, we got this far because those detectives persevered. So I wouldn't expect the prosecution to drop the ball now. Hmm. We only got this far because those detectives persevered? Huh. Oh, yeah? Wouldn't have expected that from Takano, much less about Yagami. Yes, but Mafiu said she overheard it herself. He did really say it. In the meantime, Ehara-san has been charged for Mikoshiba's murder, and Reiko Kusamoto for Shinya Kawai's death, too. Both of them are fully cooperating with the investigation. Well, I suppose that ties everything up with a bow, except for Kuana. Yes. Kuana's still missing. He's the last of the loose ends. Hmm. So he is. You think he's still out there? Would he risk his life to keep hunting down and killing bullies? Well, I have my doubts about that. Yagami-san believes he can turn over a new leaf. Things never really change, do they? This place is still filthy. <laughs> Squeaky and clean isn't gonna work for everyone. That's all a matter of taste. I'd say this place just has flavor. You brought some snacks? Yeah. We stopped at the convenience store around the corner on the way here. Come on, Talk. You don't wanna be you treating the boys. Bring in some sushi to show them how generous you are. Oh, should I know? Well, I'm already way ahead of you. Yo! Did someone order some sushi? Only the best for you guys. Courtesy of Yagami Detective Agency. So? <laughs> Good shit, man. You are a true gentleman. Huh? Hey, what the fuck? There's avocado on this shit. Where the hell did you get this from? Aniki, if you don't like it, you don't have to eat it. In fact, that just leaves more for me. Kawaii's body with you. The cops can have him. But then I'm out. I gotta disappear for a while. I'll fade back into the shadows. Like hell, man. If he's arrested, public security would have his head. They'd charge him with the one murder he didn't commit. Sawa Sensei wouldn't get the justice she deserves. And worse, they'd find a way to silence him. Besides, you don't have any proof that I'm even guilty. Anything they could charge me for would never stick. Just what are you getting at? You said yourself that you spent the last several years taking out bullies all over the country. That's gotta count for something. I never left a single shred of evidence behind. So good luck. The cops and the prosecution would have nothing to go on. In a legal sense, all you guys can really do is stand there and watch me walk out of here. <laughs> the law has never been very good about being flexible. The whole system is hollow. It can't judge who needs to be judged. It can't save who needs to be saved. I'll expose that. Every action I take serves that goal. As long as kids like Mitsuru continue to suffer out there, I'll do it for them. Even if it means I have to keep my hands dirty, I don't care. Goodbye. You're right about one thing. The law is hollow. As it stands now, the system does fail people. All the same. The law evolves. 
we have to make it better. But it takes time, and the work is never done. That's why. That's why as long as the law lets people fall through the cracks, I'm gonna be there. Except, I won't do it anything like you. We already know you're the one who snitched. You didn't think we'd find out. Come on, don't you have anything to say, huh? You owe us an answer, don't you? I'm sorry. And there it is. I knew you were lying all along. You are a lying piece of shit, huh? What do you have to say for yourself? You think your apologies are gonna cut it? You're in deep shit, girl, and that's not how this fucking works. So look over here real quick. Say, I'm a bitch and a liar for the camera. <laughs> Do it, or it's gonna get a lot worse. Wow, isn't this gross? What are they doing to that poor girl? Three against one? That's so freaking weak. Pretty fucked up to gang up on her like that. Who said that? Shit. Come on, move it. You don't have to. You've got no reason to go with these guys. What the hell? Mind your own business, assholes. Do you really think we're the ones being assholes? Yeah, that's pretty rude. You guys gotta learn when it's time to give it a rest. Who the hell are you guys? Hey, you three. You need to leave. And stay away from that girl. Terrible kids. I'm so glad someone finally stood up for that young lady. I know. Aren't those Serio High students? Hey, let's just go. Come on. Are you okay? I'm sorry. No, don't be. I'm sorry. Really, I just wish I had seen what was happening earlier. You'll be fine. So to our breaking news. After an anonymous report, the Tokyo Metropolitan Police have announced the discovery of five murder victims. Found in areas across the country, all five victims have evidently been deceased for several years. According to the anonymous tip, the common thread between these victims is that they were all at one time accused of malicious school bullying. The police are working quickly to identify them and an investigation task force is being launched immediately. This task force's first challenge will be to secure the cooperation of law enforcement across all of the prefectures involved. Coming down here to meet me wasn't too inconvenient for you, Hoshino-san. I'm Senda from Bato Detective Agency. Uh, so, you were kind of vague on the phone. What were you trying to get at? You really don't know what this is about? Rocking those shades at this time of night is telling me a different story, son. Mark of a guilty conscience. I assure you that's not the case. Anyway, what did you want to discuss? It's what I was telling you over the phone. We got a request from Saori Shirasaki to look into you, but I figured I'd do you a solid and let you see what I found before I reported back to my client. Yeah, but 
What's this? <laughs> you don't recognize your girl? We snapped a quick pic when she came to the office. No way. Why would Sauri, son? The way I hear it, you two are getting engaged soon, so you can finally tie the knot. But sometimes women get cold feet, you know? They just want to know what they're getting into. I see it all the time. You... Okay, then. So, what did you find, sir? I haven't done anything that would incriminate me. And this is a violation of detective client privilege. You're breaking the rules. Oh, no, that's a pretty good one. As I'd expect from a lawyer. But Hoshino, you really think you can bluff your way out of this shot? <gasps> well, well, well. I do believe that's you strolling out of a Kamurocho love hotel, Slugger. Uh, One last fling before the big day? <laughs> Hope you made it worth your time. What the... This is... You've got it all wrong! Whoa, whoa! Take it easy, would ya? Come on, Hoshino-san. We don't have to play by courtroom rules here. It's simple. I can make this whole thing disappear for you. Only reason lawyers don't go to hell is because they can afford not to. In other words, you're saying I have to pay you now to delete that picture? Nothing I love more than a fast learner, kid. Four million yen. This goes up in smoke, and the client never has to hear anything to the contrary. Four million yen? I don't have that kind of money! Your whole damn future is riding on this deal I'm making you. It's a small price to pay, isn't it? Yeah, but... Hey, Hoshino. Would you prefer that I send this to your office with a nice little bow? I... So, you take the client's money up front. Then you shake down the mark for another four million on top. Man, you corrupt detectives really rake it in, don't you? Who the fuck? Shit. You were... You were in the Matsugane! And you're Shiro Senda. You were a former lieutenant in the Bato family. And right now, you're on my turf. Kaito-san! That was my acting. Not bad if I say so myself. Huh? Acting? One of your old clients came to us to help her get her money back. As it turns out, your little extortion racket has been getting around. And that's why Hoshino-kun and Saori-san put together a three-act play that got us everything we need. All that's left to do is bag your ass with it. Ain't that right, Hoshino-kun? Yep. I got the whole thing on tape. Hey! <laughs> All right. That'll be four million yen you took from your client, plus 300,000 for annoying me. You need a hidden ATM? <laughs> Get back here! You ain't getting away. Good. Still in one piece. Ugh, shit. Now then, send us some. Your office is in Kamurocho, right? How about you give me a little inside tour? Senda! the hell's this about? Boss, I... I kinda screwed up. I know you. You're with the Matsugane family. The name's Kaito. And I'm with the Yagami Detective Agency now. <laughs> you call this dump an office? 
It's got the scent of illicit Yakuza business all over it. You trying to scare your clients? I take it you're not one of those clients. What do you want? You the head honcho around here? Igarashi's the name. I'm the Bato Detective Agency's chief consultant. You mean the Bato family, right? Didn't you guys used to call yourselves the Tojo Clan R&D? You dig up dirt on cops and their families. All the twist, the long arm of the law. Seems going legit hasn't taught you a damn thing. And it's making us real detectives look bad. That shit won't fly around me. Hate to burst your bubble, but we got a customer satisfaction rate of over 80%. So kindly take your bitching and blow it out your ass. Then why don't I cut to the chase? I'm here for the million yen you grifted out of my client. Plus, 300 grand for the trouble. Make it snappy, and I'll leave a souvenir. You're screwed more than sideways if the cops hear it. Send a you clusterfuck. <sighs> Real sorry. Well... I suppose I should give you credit for leading a competitor right to us. We can throw down, but fair warning, I'm tacking on extra for the ass whooping. All right, cut the yapping. Shut this idiot up permanently! Looks like our total comes out to one and a half million. Pretty lean for a business that was about to go under. You'll get yours someday, Kaito. Mark my words. <laughs> That's what they all say. I can't believe you got my money back from those crooks. How can I ever thank you? No need. I was just taking out the town garbage. Your husband wasn't even cheating on you, was he? No. But they still threatened to tell him I booked an investigation. Believe me, you're not alone here. There's been a recent uptick of con artists operating as detectives. See, normally, ex-Yakuza have to wait five years before they can open a detective business. So they'll often skirt the law by setting up a civilian to be the agency's owner. I see. Actually, I did find it strange how much cheaper they were than other agencies. Well, with a Yagami detective agency, we don't charge a yen until you see results. We're a name you can trust. So, next time you need to keep tabs on your man, don't hesitate to swing on by. <laughs> I think I'll be fine for now. I've chosen to trust my husband, but thank you. By the way, Hoshinoko, Everything's really going with Saori Saw. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I'm in it for the long haul. But sometimes I can't help but wonder if we're actually even together. You guys have been dating in what? Three years? Never thought about getting hitched? Of course! At least I, I have. As for whether Saori San would be receptive to the idea. 
Doughton's only gonna drive her away. Show her you're a man with a plan. Yeah, maybe you're right. I'll make it happen this year. And I'll be rooting for you, pal. Great. On that note, I'd better get going. I still have some work left at the office. here. It's Tuck. Good word, Kaito on a key. Just thought you might want to go have a drink. Right now? Yeah, thing is, I kind of have a dinner meeting tonight. A dinner meeting? <laughs> Sounds pretty fancy for an arcade manager. Yeah, you're telling me. See, the thing is, we're opening up a new location in Eugene Show. Managed to hit it off with a guy who rents us our equipment. Turns out he's a CEO looking to invest. Whoa, so you'll be the owner of two arcades? Looks like it. Damn, look at you moving up in the world. Yeah, well, to be honest, I'd rather knock one back with my Aniki. Nah, you do your thing. Some other time, okay? Sounds good, Aniki. Oh, almost forgot. I heard this from one of the part-timers at Charles, but apparently some kid came looking for you. Some kid. I guess. I wasn't the one who saw him. But evidently, this punk had some fight in him. Our guys chased him out before he could start any shit. What the hell's a kid like that want with me? You tell me, man. But not right now. I, I gotta prep for that meeting. Yokohama 99. Yo, it's Kaito. Wanna go get drinks? You, me, and Sugiura? Ah, uh, I'm afraid Sugiura, she's not available. Right now, he's out looking into an affair. Huh. Okay, what about you? It's been a while, you know. Ah, uh, well, I do appreciate the invite. Tonight's not good for me either. It's not? How come? Because tonight is reserved for anime, a very special one. It's the premiere of Love Star 3, the movie, Director's Cut Edition. <laughs> I can hardly contain myself. Oh, come on, an anime? Can't you just record the damn thing? I don't think you get it, Kaito-san. A premiere only happens once, and then it's history. You have to watch the stream while it's live and keep the chat turned on. That's the experience. You gotta do what now? Oh, I know. Kaito-san, if you like, I can add you to our Love Star community. That way we can voice chat online while you have your drink at home. It's a win-win. I'm sure my friends would love to welcome you. Yeah, Tsukumo, I don't know. This sounds like a lot to me. I think I'm gonna sit this one out. Gosh, I was just about to give you a breakdown on Love Star's deeper themes. Oh well. Oh, the stream's about to go live. Until uh, next time. Kaito-san? 
Is everything okay? Yeah, just thought we could grab a drink. Oh, well, uh, like I said before, I still have work to do. Hell, you're not done yet? Not even close. Plus, sorry, son needs my help after this, so... Yeah, I get it. Can't tear a man away from the love of his life. Something like that. Anyway, let's try it some other time. Well, I could always show my face at Tender. Maybe I'll bump into someone I know. Oh my gosh, was someone murdered? Dunno. Could have been a Yakuza, maybe. But I thought the Tojo clan was long gone. Kaito-san, come join us. You by yourself? Yeah. Talk's out of town helping Gendo-sensei. Says he'll be gone another couple days. Aha. Uh -huh. So is the sidekick getting lonely without the leading man? <laughs> In your dreams, Mari. Masuda, the usual. You see any shit going down outside? I overheard someone talking about a murder. Ah, that. Apparently, the victim was a young executive. Actually, there was a similar case a few days ago. It caused quite a stir. I believe the man was a CEO. Some killers out to eat the rich, huh? Who knows? Crazy world out there. Uh, speaking of which, did you finish the job I found you? Oh, I kicked the crap out of those swindlers. And Hoshino-kun put on quite the show. Really? Oh, I wish I could have seen the pros at work. Know what else? I think Hoshino-kun and Saori-san are just about there. Fellow was all riled up, saying this'll be the year. By that, you mean they're tying the knot? Yeah. The question is... Will Saori-san give him a yes? <laughs> I'd say she needs more time. If he rushes it, it might not turn out well. Yeah, I suppose your gut's usually right, Mari. What about you, Kaito-san? Any romance blooming in your life? <laughs> Whoa! Since when was this about me? <laughs> because you clearly have no trouble talking to women. But I never hear what happens in the end. What happens in the end... is rejection. Yeah? Well, maybe I like being a free agent. You call it rejection. I call it release. And even if I do keep getting shot down, so what? Every beauty who walks away is only making room for the next one. Oh, Kaito-san, you're gonna grow into a lonely old man at this rate. Honestly, Mari, that's all talk. Once Kaito-san falls in love, he falls so hard he can't even see straight. Why, I recall a time he even considered getting married. You're kidding! Kaito-san, a husband? Yo, could we not go there? Oh, shoot, her name was on the tip of my tongue. I suppose it's been over a decade now. You two were living together, right? I think her name... Masada, look, that's a long story. Some other time, okay? Hmm? Oh. Sure thing. By the way, you got any more gigs? We've been dry thanks to those fake detectives, so if you could hook it up. Actually, that reminds me. A man came by asking about you. He said he was looking for someone. He wanted me? Specifically? I don't know the details, but he wants to meet you. 
He's the CEO of some tech company. Oh, a tech company, eh? What's the offer? He said he's prepared to pay two million up front. Two million? Well, well, that's mighty generous. Apparently, it's for any investigation expenses that come up. And when it's done, he'll pay an extra 20 million. Uh, 20 million? Depending on the outcome, he might pay even more. <laughs> he must be swimming in cash. Holy hell. Sounds like a tempting offer, but do you really want to do it alone? Especially with your boss out of town. True. <laughs> One look at you and the client might drop the case and run. Right? At least find a smart-looking jacket to cover... whatever that is. <laughs> Indeed. You'll need to dress for the occasion, that's for sure. Man, you guys have no faith in me, huh? Well, I'm not putting on a show for him or anyone else. True style doesn't change with the tides. Not to mention, it's the heart that counts. Watch me knock this guy's socks off, just being plain old Kaito. He's about to expire. Hey, Bonaki, what's with the suit and tie? What? I thought I'd pull out all the stops for today's climb. Dress for the occasion and all that. After all, the pro's gotta look the part, too. I mean... <laughs> Yeah? You never give a rat's ass about that stuff. So I start now. Today's just special, all right? Oh, there. Okay, but do you really need me here? Don't you get it? If I'm busy talking this guy up, who's gonna offer some tea? A landlady? Besides in the Matsugane family for years. The boss loved your tea, remember? Whoa, hang on. That was a long time ago. Well, I'm counting on you today. I'm paying you 50,000 just to serve two people. Coming from you, that's pretty generous. How much is this gig worth, anyway? Uh, that's a matter of, uh, detective client privilege. Come in! Hello there. I'm Kyoya Saramoto, CEO of Image Interactive. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. I'm Masaharu Kaito, an investigator here. I'm Higashi, just a part-timer. It really is great to meet you, Kaito-san. I've heard so much about you. Good things, I hope? Of course. You're a legend in these parts, aren't you? I'm not so sure about that. Oh, but first, please, take a seat. Enjoy. Ah, why, thank you. Well then, shall we get down to business? I understand you're looking for someone. May I ask who? That would be my wife. My deceased wife, actually. Your deceased wife? Can you give me 
some more details? I was under the impression she went missing. Well, I lost her about two years ago. She took her own life. I see. I'm very sorry. Let me rephrase then. You want us to find her, even though you know she passed away? Yes, well... Why don't I start from the time she died? Two years ago... My wife left a suicide note at home one day, and disappeared. As you can imagine, I went right to the police. Upon finding nothing, she was declared a missing person. Six months later, they recovered a body, possibly my wife's, on a riverbed in the mountains of Chiba. There's a large waterfall nearby, which she likely jumped. Her body was decomposed beyond recognition, but authorities later identified her based on something she was carrying. And what was that? A photograph. In it was her and our son. I see. But was that really enough to ID her? Wouldn't they have done some sort of analysis? Yes. I requested a DNA test be performed. Lo and behold, my wife was a near-perfect match. Then, at that point, her death was all but certain. Yet, you still believe she's alive? About a month ago, my wife's friend said she saw someone in Kamurocho that looked like her. This woman, according to my wife's friend, was with some unfamiliar man. And when the friend called out her name, she froze. Then she immediately fled. Is it possible this was all just a coincidence? Believe me, I'd considered that. The DNA test had more or less cemented her death in my mind. But then I started doing my own research, and I found that DNA test results aren't always set in stone. Especially in cases where the body's in an advanced state of decomposition, the results can vary widely. I even came across an astonishing article in which someone's lost relative showed up after a DNA test said they died. After reading that, who wouldn't have hoped that their dear wife is still somewhere out there? <sighs> Mind you, this woman was the spitting image of my wife. Her voice was a perfect match too. And this is coming from a friend who's known her for years. As she herself put it, there's no way it wasn't her. If I could inquire about the compensation, my contact at Tender quoted two million in advance, plus another twenty million upon completion. Yes. Regardless of the outcome, I intend to have at least that much prepared. When you say at least that much, you mean... If you manage to find my wife safe and sound, I'll throw in another 10 million. So, a, a grand total of 32 million? Hey, Anarchy. Just checking. I'm being paid 50,000 today, right? Yeah, 50,000 for serving some damn tea. Got a problem? Oh no, it's fine. Now I see where all that generosity is coming from. By the way, uh, may we request any photos of your wife you may have? <sighs> Sir? I've actually approached other detectives about this, but none of them could turn up any leads. Then I heard you were working as a detective, in Kamurocho no less. Immediately I thought to myself, if anyone could find my wife, it's him, considering how well acquainted you are. Huh? You saying I know her?
Anaki, isn't that... Mikiko? Yes. Mikiko Natsume was her maiden name. I understand you used to live together long ago. And that sums up why I'm here. Because of how intimately you know her. You're really going to go? After what they did to the boss, I can't just sit back and do nothing! But you might actually get killed this time! I'm sorry. So your family is more important than me. Believe me, I understand how bizarre this request might be. But I know you can get to the bottom of it. You lived with Mikiko in this very town. You knew her better than anyone. Kaito-san, I'm begging you. Won't you bring her back? I'd heard rumors. But I never thought they'd be true. Sadamoto-san, are you sure Mikiko took her own life? I mean, she did leave a suicide note. Why, though? The Mikiko I knew would never do that, no matter what the reason. Honestly, I wish I knew. The note was sparse on details. The hell does that mean? Aren't you supposed to be her husband? <sighs> For what my memory's worth, Mikiko seemed to have some anxieties about her job. And I was so busy with my own work at the time, I failed to give her support. I was hardly even home half the time. It was only when she left me that I realized how poorly I treated her. <sighs> so, let's say Mikiko is alive. Then what? It's gonna be one big happy reunion? I don't really have an answer for that. I doubt she'd even want to look at me. But then again, we do have our son to consider. He's 14 already. His name's June. So, Mikiko's got a kid and everything. Yes. And he's just as rambunctious as his mother. He took off once he heard she might be alive. Even though I specifically told him to stay put, the moment my back was turned, he was gone. Wait, he ran away? He did. About two weeks ago. I thought he might pull something like this, so I set up location tracking on his phone. But, being that he left his phone in his room, he must have figured that out. Outsmarted by a teenager, I swear. Two weeks on his own at his age? At 14, he's what, in middle school? June pulls this kind of stunt all the time. He hangs out with these delinquents often couch-surfing for days at a time. Of course, I'm one to talk. Since most days, I missed the last train. And since I'm at a hotel, I won't even be home to notice he's gone. Well, how about that? Look, that's all beside the point. Right now, I need your help. Hate to break it to you, Sadamoto-san. But I don't think I'm your guy. What? May I ask how come? I just... don't think I'm cut out for it, is all. Come now! That's final.
Fine. Fine. I know when a mind's made up. What a shame that is. Key. You sure you want to let this guy go? That's 32 mil walking away. Not to mention the truth about Mikiko. I know what I'm doing. Okay, you're the boss. job down the shitter. I think that calls for a drink. You, uh, want somebody to tag along? Sure, but weren't you slammed with the new opening and all? Well, I mean, yeah, there's work to be done. I'd have to go inspect the place after. Right. Then you better go deal with that. Glad to hear business is good, though. Sorry about that, Anaki. Oh, and about that 50 grand I owe you. Don't even worry about it. T was on the house today, man. When my Anaki says poor, I served the best damn cup you ever tried. That shit hasn't changed. Oh, Higashi. You wonderful bastard. Huh? Hey, Anaki, that photo. Damn it. Don't just leave your junk in my office. <sighs> Should I just toss it? Well, wouldn't be the first gig I tossed. Better head on down to Tender and see what else Mossida's got brewing. Yanaki, you got a minute? What's up, Higashi? Yeah, so I just got a call from Charles. Remember how I told you about that kid who came by looking for you? Yeah, what about him? Well, he's back and causing problems like usual. Can you go take care of him? He's just some punk ass kid. Why don't you take care of him? Because I got meetings and shit to deal with. My employee's in there on her own. I really gotta handle some kid? What? You just gonna abandon a college girl in trouble? Huh? Oh, I see. You almost got me with that one, dipshit. You think I'd lie to you? Seriously, she's young, she's single. Cute, too. You sure about that? Yep. Oh, did I mention she's way into beards? She says she likes him bearded and burly. Guess I have no choice. If a lady, uh, uh, if my bro needs my help, I guess I gotta go save the day. You're a lifesaver, Anaki. I'm counting on you here. I'm not messing around! I'll kill you, you little whip! Damn. Talk about a shit show. You can relax now, miss. I'm taking over from here. <laughs> Are you Yakuza? No, actually, I was sent by the owner, Higashi. 
What's going on here? Oh, well, those men were being disgusting, but then that boy stood up for me. I'd rather be a wimp than a total piece of shit, not to mention an ugly one. Say that again, you brat! Go! <laughs> Too slow, dumbass! That's it. I'm carving you up! Step back, bud. <laughs> Hey, I said step back. You don't want to get hurt, do you? Uh. Hold up. Did you just pass out on me? Hey, miss. Mind getting this kid out of the way? Uh, uh, okay. You taking his place, ape man? Then I'll just have to carve you up first! Shu, take your dumb asses outside. Damn it! Hey, up and at him. Huh? Listen, you're a good kid for helping people, but taking on two grown-ass men is another story. Wait! Hey, you alright? Hit your head or something? What? Do I know you? Or, uh... Holy crap! It's you! You're Masaharu Kaito from the Matsugane family! Huh? Uh, yeah. Well, I've been out of the family for a while now, but, uh... Man, I've been looking all over for you. I'm Jun Satomoto. Satomoto? Why is that name... Uh, uh... You're... Mikiko's kid? <laughs> Guess we meet at long last! I heard you used to roll with the Matsugane family, so I've been asking people who looked apart what they knew. <sighs> Should've seen my face when I found out you guys broke up. Okay, well, wanna tell me why Mikiko's kid is going around looking for me? Here's the deal, Kaito-san. I want you to find my mom. The, uh, say what? Yeah, I thought you might have a clue where she is. You two used to live together and all. Uh, uh, kid, let me be frank. I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told your pops. You're asking the wrong guy. Wait, my dad came to you about this? Going home. Wait up, dude! What the heck? I thought you were mom's ex. Don't you care about her at all? She's nothing but a stranger to me now. But listen, we haven't heard from her in two years. That's if she's still alive. Don't you think she's in some kind of trouble? How should I know? Maybe she's having the time of her life without some brat all up in her business. What the hell? Okay, back it up a sec. My mom would never desert me. Then where'd she go, huh? Get lost already. <sighs> I bet you just don't want to see her because she ditched your sorry ass. No. I read all about it in her diary. How mom wanted you out of the Yakuza so she could marry you with a clean conscience. Then you went on some kind of dangerous mission. Better die a henchman than live as a husband, huh? And now you turn your back on her again? <laughs> no wonder you two are strangers!
What? You wanna go? <sighs> Might wanna ease up on the grown-up act, kid. Anyway, your mom and I are ancient history. So unfortunately, I can't do anything for you. <sighs> what if I told you I'm your son? Then what? You're still gonna walk away? What did you just say? I said, you and Mom might have had me. Wait, wait. This is total crazy talk. It was written in Mom's diary, around the time you broke up. Her diary? Yeah. I read what happened after you went on some raid and you guys split. Apparently, she didn't get to tell you that I was a little fetus at the time. You gotta be shitting me. I am not shitting you! I actually think you're my dad. But then why? After all this time? Listen, why else would I be busting my ass to find you? Now come on! You and I are gonna go find Mom, and then she'll tell you herself! It was just another day in Kamurocho. After resolving a local incident, Kaito is approached by Kyoya Sadamoto, who asks him to search for his late wife Mikiko. Mikiko was Kaito's old flame, who parted ways with him long ago. Kaito turns Sadamoto down before any past wounds can reopen. But he soon finds himself face to face with Sadamoto's son, June. That's when June tells him the unthinkable. That Kaito might be his real father. Back in the day, the Matsugane family was on real bad terms with a rival. Like, waiting for all-out war to kick off bad. One day, I got a call from the office saying they need me right away. So of course I hauled ass over. Hey! What's the situation? Some lady busted in here. It seems like she means business. Huh? You called me over some lady? Not just any lady. A real hellcat. Says she ain't leaving till the boss gets back. Look. I'm not messing around! Oh, for the love of God, it hurts! Let go of me, you crazy bitch! Listen up! You lay a finger on Maho, I'll snap his arm clean off! Uh, hey, sis! This is bad! It's real bad! Hey! What the hell? Am I seeing this right? Why is Hoda getting his ass wet? I take it this gorilla is your muscle? You gonna try me or beat your chest? You're the one calling me a gorilla? <laughs> Guys, what the fuck happened? It all started with the girl on the floor. She racked up quite a bill at one of our host clubs, but when the check came, she couldn't settle. We were gonna have to work it off at a cabaret club, but... This chick busted and it went fucking ballistic. What? Wait. How exactly is any of this our fault? You tell me, man. I wash my hands of it. You're running the cabaret club starting next month. You deal with this shit. Oh, come on. Hey, Hoda. Let's hear your side. She barged in here out of nowhere and came straight at me. Out of nowhere, my ass. I had to do something. For real? You two have to get your story straight. 
This right here. Hey, hold up. What'd you do to end up like that? Fuck, I don't know. She just burst in the office and told us to give her her sister. Hang on. So her sister was already here? Yeah. She was supposed to start working at one of our cabaret clubs. When this one busted in the door, she was already demanding to see the boss. When I said he wasn't here, she yelled at us to call him and let her wait in his office. Obviously, talking to you assholes won't get me anywhere. Huh? What are you staring at? Just wishing I could have met a foxy lady like you outside of here. What? Tell you what I'll do. I'm gonna take you to the finest bar in town. And we can hash this all out over drinks. Oh, and I've got just the place in mind. It's real cozy. Just try hitting on me again. Oh, sorry. Hey, what happened here? Uh, well, it happened so fast, I don't know. As soon as I came in here, this was happening. How does nobody know what happened? Was it nap time in the office or something? Fine. Guess I'll have to take a look around and make the call myself. Take another step and his arm goes snap like a twig! Find out if I'm lying? No, 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 I hear you. Let's try and simmer down, shall we? Alright. I see what's going on here, Mikiko Natsume. I figured a gal wouldn't bust in here without reason. If anything, you and your sister are the victims. Well, here and now. Not for the host club stuff. Huh? I'm saying these jerk-offs never learn their hospitality. I'd like to apologize for the rough reception. Okay. What's your angle here? I know you didn't come here just to drag your sister off and leave her dead unpaid. At the very least, I'm sure snapping off limbs wasn't your first intention. You see this? You're the one who brought those sweets, right? <laughs> that alone tells me breaking Hoda's arm wasn't your plan A. Well, well. Guess you're the smartest ape of the bunch. So what? Well, I can also tell how your negotiations broke down. The evidence is right here in front of me. It was your sister. Look how her top got messed up. Even though you kicked things off polite, it seems Hoda got hands on at some point. Which explains why you got him crying uncle in his own office. <laughs> not bad for a Yakuza. You sure you're not a detective in disguise? <laughs> if they ever kick me out, I may just consider it. But listen, Mikiko-san. You have to admit, your sister is partly responsible. If you're gonna play, you gotta pay. It's just basic business, you see? I know how business works. And I never said we wouldn't pay you back. Okay. Then what's the issue? The issue is... Maho's enrolled in college back home. If she ends up stuck as some hostess in Tokyo, she may as well kiss her education goodbye. I just want to see her graduate, find a career, and live a happy life. Can't your parents loan you the cash to get her out of this? No way! They'd freak if they knew I went to host clubs, let alone got into debt over one! Well, that part's all on you. Look, I get it with you people. Three million yen is a lot. I actually came to discuss repayment. But then this douchebag grabs my sister like some barbarian! God, uh, I only did it because your sister got shitty with me! Then, Mikiko-san, what's your real plan here? You got a lead on three mil somehow? Well, I work in Shinjuku. Just a desk job during the day. I 
nights are pretty much free. And in college, I worked as a server. I even got employee of the month a few times. Now, I know I've never been a hostess, but it can't be that different. At the very least, I'm a lot more qualified than my sister. Wait, are you saying... I'm saying I'll work for you instead. I'll even give you a start date. How's that for basic business? And that's how I met Mikiko. She was just so headstrong and full of personality. That tenacity of hers pushed her to the top in no time. Not to mention, she was a real ball buster. She'd take it upon herself to punish bad customers. And, since it was my job to look after her, I'd step in when things got ugly. Which happened a lot. So this Mikiko chick's covering for her sister. It's not a bad plan. It's rare to see someone go that far, even for flesh and blood. Apparently, a car crash took their parents out when they were little. That was their only family. After that, they were lucky enough to get foster parents. Seems they're one big happy family now. Interesting. But is the boss gonna be cool with a swap? Says he doesn't see an issue. Long as we get paid. Fair enough. Just make sure she doesn't skip town and make it an issue, Anaki. Nah. <sighs> She won't be a problem. Rough as she is, her heart's in the right place. Hey, what the hell was that for? You know the rules. No touching, no exceptions. Oh, come on. I am a paid customer. Who are you to tell me what to do? And who are you to feel up our staff? Nothing gives you that right. It's okay, Michiko. Really. Uh, let's just go inside. I'm handling it, Momokotan. <sighs> we kicking this chick to the curb or what? Yeah! Curb stomper if you have to! Call you back later, Higashi. Break time's over. Uh, uh, Anaki? <laughs> Mikiko! want to get hands on tonight start with me you heard that boys this fucking bastard take him down <laughs> Let them get away with what they did. No problem. Your safety is my job. <laughs> then I guess I'm in good hands, Mr. Bodyguard. <clears throat> Yo, what's with your office? No guns, no family crest? This place is lame. Oh, for the last time, I'm out of that life. This is the detective agency I work at now. Oh, yeah. Whoops. But damn, it's grody in here. You guys never clean up? Kid, just take a seat, will ya? My name's June, not Kid. Hey, that's... Something your pops forgot to take home. Huh. Weird. Anyway, where are we at so far? Oh yeah, you were saying you're my kid. 
You know, you could call me your son, since that's what I am and all. <sighs> Look, just tell me what you know, all right? Uh, about your mom. Your pops filled me in on some of the details. Said something about how she might even still be alive. Yeah, it always seemed off to me. I just can't imagine her taking her life. But the DNA test said it was her, right? Feels like the odds of a mistake are pretty low. <sighs> I think Mom got caught up in some deep shit. Deep shit? As in... I don't know. But I think her suicide and the DNA test were faked. She's gotta be out there somewhere. As for why she can't get in touch, maybe she just can't. You sound like you thought this through. Any idea what happened? Uh, maybe something went wrong at work. Or she got kidnapped by some criminals. Uh, doesn't sound all that convincing. But now that you mention it, your dad did say she might have been anxious on the job. What did she do for work? Oh, she ran a cafe. Her cafe. No kidding. Is she run it all by herself? Yeah, she was doing real good too. She knows how to handle people. That's for sure. Though with her personality, I can also see her making a few enemies. Well... She would have bad customers from time to time. There were also these people who tried to buy her out. But I can't think of anyone who'd want her dead, you know? So, you think you're my son? And it says this in your mom's diary? Yeah, she writes everything in that diary. This one she wrote 15 years ago, I think. It was right after the two of you broke up. What exactly did she write? Um, stuff like... I don't know if I should keep it. I'll never see Masaharu-san again. I should get this taken care of, though. Oh, hell of a thing for you to read. Honestly, I get how she must have felt. After all, the man she loved walked out of her life and into a life-or-death situation. How could she marry and have a kid when her husband could get killed at any moment? Yeah. Tragic, ain't it? Then she decided to listen to her parents and marry the guy we all thought was my dad instead. But at some point between your breakup and their marriage, she found out she was pregnant. That's probably why you never got word of it. Uh, okay. Uh, for the sake of argument, Let's say you are my kid. That means your dad got married, knowing your mom was carrying another man's child? I guess so. Yeah. He's really the type who'd commit like that? Could be. Maybe he was just that into her. I mean, sure, but, uh... June, you said your name was. What kind of mom has Mikiko been to you? What kind of mom? I guess I'd say she's been pretty cool. She's been... cool? Yeah. Like, she would always lend a hand to someone in trouble. Even if it was some nasty flirt or a big hulking thug, she'd get right in his face and tell him off. A couple of times, she almost threw down right in front of us. Dad would freak out big time. <laughs> Sounds about right. Anyway, are you gonna help me find my mom or what? Remember, I am a professional here. That means I get paid to work. And I doubt you can afford my services. <laughs> oh, I think I've got that covered. <laughs> what? You gonna pay me in... Watches? <laughs> I swiped it when my dad wasn't looking. Hmm, sure is a nice piece of work. How much do one of these run? A 
About 20 mil, give or take. Wait, how much? 20 million yen, man. Ha! <laughs> 20 mil for this? Fat chance. I've seen shit just like this at Block Over for only 30k. <laughs> you mean to tell me some idiot coughs up 20 mil to check the time? Never bullshit a bullshit kid. Don't believe me? Look it up. The brand's right there. <sighs> okay. How do you even pronounce this? <laughs> Bet it's some knockoff. Huh? Holy shit! Damn thing's over 19 million! Is this part of some vintage collection? Nope, that's just the standard model. Dad's got a ton of them lying around, too. What? Real? How long would it take to earn that? <laughs> what was that about being a bullshitter? <sighs> so here's the deal, old man. Give you the watch, you go find my mom. What? Not good enough? It's not yours to give in the first place. Put it back where it belongs. You're really gonna say no because of that? Hey! Come on! Don't leave me hanging! I'm leaving to go find Mikiko. You coming? Oh, man. You can call me Kaito, not man. Ah, you got it, Kaito! So, where do we start? Kamurocho's not exactly a small place. There was this one spot your mom used to go all the time. Cafe Alps, it's called. Yeah, I remember. There she'd be. Sipping on coffee, reading a book. No noise from the city to bother her. Okay, and do you think she might have went back there? Only one way to find out. Congrats, Maho-chan. <laughs> Gotta admit, I was getting a little worried when you started hitting the host clubs again. <laughs> Sometimes a girl has cravings, you know? Sometimes this girl can be a headache. Even so, nice work landing a job at a bank. Right out of college, too. Uh, it's just a desk job. Besides, it's my parents who know the board of directors and all. <sighs> All I'm going to say is please be careful. You never know what kind of people you're dealing with. I don't know if you've noticed, but weirdos seem to flock to you like creepy pigeons. Remember that one stalker you had at the convenience store? That's just one example. Oh yeah! Yeah... Next time some crazy guy bothers you, you tell me right away. Oh, sure. Like you'd rush all the way back home just for that. I would if I had to. See, this is why I don't tell you things. You never end up treating me like an adult. I mean, I get that you're worried about me, but you don't have to breathe down my neck all the time. Says the girl who went broke over some stupid host. How could I not worry about you? Why, just the other day, you were eating up some sleazeballs pyramid scheme. You said it nearly changed your life. Well, it felt right at the time, okay? Hey, a catch like you ought to be more careful. Take your sister, for example. She knows when to keep her guard up. <laughs> I guess I'll take your word for it, Kaito-san. Wait, did you just imply Mikiko's a catch, too? Huh? Uh, what'd I say? Oh, 
Oh shoot, I forgot they were waiting. I never said they had to be outside. I mean, they could at least come in and say hi, right? Ugh, so rude. <sighs> Sorry about them, Masaharu-san. Don't be. If I were your folks, I'd probably feel the same. Oh, don't say that. They just haven't seen what a good guy you are. I'm gonna have to give them a talking to. After all, I'm a modern-day Cupid. I brought you two together, didn't I? Now watch as I work my magic. <laughs> Good luck wearing them down. No sign of mom. Guess that'd be too easy. Yeah, it never is. But for now, we ask around and see if anyone recognizes her. Think back to ten days ago. What do you remember? You're uh, a regular- Yeah, but I've been studying. I don't know who's around me. Still, you have to have noticed something. Just think back. There isn't anything to think back on. Hey, you got a minute? Oh, what's up? Has this woman been by here recently? Mm, not that I remember. Are you sure? She would have been here in the past two weeks. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, last week I was out of town with my girl, so I really wouldn't know. Oh, yeah, you could always ask the manager. Is he around? I mean, shouldn't you know? Oh, for sure. I just don't know where he is now. I did see him before. You know what? I'll go find him. This right here. I'm stuffed like a cheese rangoon. <laughs> Still not enough? I can't get any louder. And if I get rougher, I'll break something. Is this it? you be good morning to you too I just had a quick question uh, okay uh, what is it I'm Kaito from the Yagami detective agency I'm after a missing person uh, who's missing? This woman. She been around lately? I remember she was a regular here for the longest time. Uh, oh, this lady. Uh, you've seen her? Uh, not recently, but she certainly was a regular. Mikiko-san was her name. Good, so you know her. What else do you remember? Uh, actually a lot. She stood up for me on multiple occasions. <laughs> I'm sure you know the types we get around here. <laughs> if anyone started making trouble around her, she'd march over and walk them right out. <laughs> yeah, she was a pistol, all right. Oh, and you! You and her were together, weren't you? That's right. You two had your favorite spot by the window. Hey! I told you, put it out! What now?
Can't you see there's a baby in here, moron? Now either put that shit out or go smoke outside! Pipe down before I bust your face, kid! Shit a lesson. Of course. Hey, I'm his guardian. You got a problem with the kid, you talk to me. I'm gonna guess it's not talking you want. Aniki, you hear this dipshit? Oh, I've heard enough. Let's put the fear of the Aragaki brothers in him. your head sometimes. Not everyone's gonna go down from an arm lock. Yeah, read you loud and clear. Although, your technique was spot on. Where'd you pick that one up? Oh, Mom taught me that a while back. So that was the Mikiko special. Yeah, she knew all kinds of stuff. Kickboxing, self-defense, you name it. Mom was badass. Reminds me of a story your mom once told me. Some little shitheads were picking on your aunt, right? And instead of telling the teacher, she trained herself at a dojo till she could take him down herself. Guess you two had something in common. You both kick ass. Boom! Pa! You fire off punches like a rocket launcher. You seriously gotta teach me how you do that. <laughs> Why? So you can pick even more fights? Self-defense is all a kid like you needs. Ah, <sighs> weak. <sighs> Thank you so much for what you did. As I was saying earlier, guys like them always come around making trouble. Glad I could help clean up. Shall we continue our discussion? Right, right. Damn punks made me lose focus. So, can you tell me anything about Mikiko? Sure. I'd say this happened, oh, about ten days ago. A woman came in and ordered coffee. She was seated by the window, too. At the time, I thought she looked familiar, but I wasn't 100% sure. But when you showed me that picture of Mikiko, I immediately thought of that customer. Was it her? Well, I can't say for certain. She wore sunglasses, so it may have been someone else. Got it. Are there any other details you remember? Hmm. What else? Oh, this one's about Mikiko-san herself. I remember she used to bring a friend fairly often. Maybe she might know something more. I believe she knew this friend from a cabaret club. Oh, you don't mean Momoko-chan. Momoko-chan, that's the one. I haven't seen her in a few years, but she might still be around. Last time I heard, she was running a bar in the Champion District. Yeah, Momoko's. I used to pop in there sometimes. Nice! Then I guess we know where we're headed. Thanks for all your help today, boss man. Oh no, this was the least I could do. Please, come back again. By the way, Kaito, I've been curious. How does one join the Yakuza anyway? Say what? Maybe I want to find me a family, so I thought I'd ask the expert. 
Is it just like they do in the movies, where you swear an oath to your boss over a cup of sake? Chu, please don't tell me you're serious. Yeah, and what if I am? Then you're even dumber than I thought. No kid should even think of wanting that life. Well, I'm not a kid anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, really! Okay. Then say goodbye to having your own bank account. Or a place under your own name. Any Yakuza you see is probably dead broke. That's how bad the police have them now. Trust me when I tell you. Give it up. Not sure I buy all that. You've been out of the game for a while, right? How much wax do you have in those ears? Ha! Found you, little bastard! I knew I'd track your skinny ass down! You a friend of yours? Oh, this asshole? I caught him beating on a homeless guy, so I figured he needed a lesson in empathy. Didn't last long when I twisted his arm, though. You just love getting into shit, don't you? Listen up, shit stain! It's time I got to payback! What, you want round two? This time I'm breaking bones. And I'm chopping limbs! Get ready to bleed! <gasps> June, allow me. Oh, hey, you with me? Oh, ugh. What is the deal with you? You better back the fuck off, man! Unless you want to get hurt! Let's just take his ass down already! This kid really knows how to choose him. <laughs> Jew, you okay? Tell me, I... Passed out again? Yeah, you sure did. You want to tell me what's up with that? I just can't handle that shit. What shit? Knives, man. When I see one, my brain just shuts down. The hell? You got some sort of knife -a phobia going on? Don't tell me you got stuck at some point. Not exactly. See, I was messing around with my dad's knife collection one day. And, like a dad, he warned me never to touch them. But, as a kid, of course, I was gonna. Okay. Well, as you can guess, my dad walked in on me. And man, was he pissed. Which naturally got me pissed, so I started talking back. That's when he put the knife to my arm. You saying he cut you? A little. Enough to draw blood, anyway. You get it now, June? Knives were made to hurt. A person can die if they're not careful around them. I don't want you touching these ever again. Understand? So that's what did you mean? If you ask me, he took his lesson way too far. Yeah, no shit. Guy has no fucking clue how to be a dad. All he does is work himself sick in his office. Though, he did apologize later. After he found out how bad he messed with me. Said he was out of line. No kidding. Hey, you think the Yakuza would still take me even with the fear of knives? If you pass out the moment you see a blade... I don't think you'd last long either way. Yeah, you're right. Fainting on the job in that line of work's a death sentence. Besides, it's not like you can always swoop in and save the day. I gotta get over this bullshit. Well, you can save the pity party for later. We're out to find your mom, remember? Right, yeah. That way, huh? Hmm? 
Hey there, Momoko-chan. Oh, Kaito-san. Gosh, it's been ages. Oh, who is this young man? His son. The name's June. Really? Oh my goodness, Kaito-san. When did you... Don't listen to him. He's actually... Uh, it's kind of complicated. So, Mikiko-chan might be alive? You're sure? Well, we're not, but apparently a lady who looked just like her was spotted in town. I came here hoping you might know what that's about. After all, you two were pretty much inseparable. Before she disappeared, did she reach out to you at all? Hmm... I can't really say she did. All I remember is she never forgave herself for what happened to Maho-chan. Wait... What happened to Maho-chan? Oh no... You haven't heard? I think it was... 13, 14 years ago? Anyway... It was tragic. Without even seeing it coming... Maho-chan passed away. You... You're kidding! Oh... Not Maho-chan... How'd it happen? Well... According to the reports, it was arson. Imagine your last moments being trapped in a fire. Arson? Oh, God. What a way to go. Their foster parents died that night, too. Why these horrible things happen, I'll never know. Mikiko-chan took it especially hard. <laughs> of course she would. Her sister was really all she had left. <sighs> After that, Mikiko-chan changed. It's like all the sadness in her heart evaporated from that point on. She'd say things like she'd kill the bastard who did it, as if the only thing driving her was anger. Did they ever catch the guy who did it? They did. Apparently it was a stalker who'd been after Maho-chan a while. He hung himself immediately after. Bastard just did himself in, huh? Mikiko really hated that. Yeah. Mikiko-chan got so depressed. <laughs> it was hard to watch. Not only did she lose her little sister, she lost the people who took her in. Even though they weren't flesh and blood, they may as well have been her real parents. And all that goes away in a night. <laughs> to someone she can't even hold responsible. <laughs> June, did you know this? Well, kinda. It happened right after I was born, though, so I never heard much details. Damn. <sighs> you okay, Kaito? Yeah, I'm fine. We've got a job to do, don't we? Right. Where else in town might Mom have gone? <sighs> hey, what about your special spot? Have you checked there yet? Huh? What special spot? Oh, seriously? I'm talking about Kamuro Theater. And Mikiko-chan told me all about it way back when. Although, wasn't it called something else back then? Oh. Hey, uh, what was this special spot of theirs? Hmm. It's where Kaito-san asked your mom to go steady. Whoa! For real? <laughs> mm-hmm. If I remember right, he took her to a movie and confessed at the downstairs cafe. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, the place has been remodeled since then. The cafe's not even there anymore. But isn't the place itself still important? Those memories will always be there. I mean, maybe, but would Mikiko even go there after all these years? She might have if she came all the way back to Kamurocho. After all, she described it as one of the happiest times in her life. Huh. Did she really? Well, it's not like we have any other leads. It might be worth a shot to check. Yeah, I suppose we could.
So, what's our move? I guess we head inside and ask around. Although it is a long shot, considering we're looking for a look-alike here. The odds of some random moviegoer knowing her don't sound too great to me. How do we go about this, then? Well, we gotta play it smart. Find someone who might have been here a month back. You really think we'll run into someone like that? Well, we're about to find out. Hey, fellas. Can I bug you for a sec? Yeah, what's up? I'm looking for somebody. Either of you seen this woman this past month? Huh. Well, think I'd remember if I saw her. She's gorgeous. Yeah, I haven't seen her either. And I'm out here all the time. Gotcha. You know, you could always try asking that girl who works at the cafe. Since she works the counter, she's got a good view of the lobby. She sees everyone who goes in and out. Thanks. Not a bad idea. Hey, you have a sec? I'm looking for the woman in this photo. Uh, who's that supposed to be? My mom. She's actually gone missing. Oh no, I'm so sorry. The thing is, she was seen here in town about a month ago. We wanted to know if she's dropped by. You recognize her? No, I can't say I do. I see. Oh, but I know somebody who might. Who? Our cleaning lady. She's been working here forever, and she's really good at remembering people's faces. Hey, that's some good news. Where can we find her? I saw her heading toward the roof not too long ago. Okay, the roof it is. Really appreciate the help. Well, no cleaning ladies I can see. Did we miss her already? Maybe she went somewhere else. Miki-chan! Come out, come out, wherever you are! Kaito, you hear that kid? She was calling for a Miki-chan just now. I highly doubt some little girl is out here calling your mom. Come on, we should at least ask. Not like we have any other bright ideas. Hi. Sorry to bother you, but did you just say Miki-chan right now? Yeah. She got separated from me. She your sister? No, my cat. Your cat? Oh, man. Hey, are you by yourself? You're not lost, are you? No. My brother's downstairs helping me look. The nice cleaning lady's helping, too. Cleaning lady? You happen to know where she is right now? She said she'd look around the building next door. Next door would be the Millennium Tower, huh? Hey, Kaito, why don't we keep an eye out for her cat? Sure, no harm there. We'll let you know if we find her, little lady. Okay, thanks. Ma'am, uh, can I bother you for a moment? Hmm? May I help you? Oh, goodness, that must be Miki-chan. Now, how'd she get up there? Ah, right. Uh, Miki-chan's that lost cat, huh? 
Oh, are you also out searching for the little deer? But perhaps we can work together. Well, sure, but I'm actually here for another reason. I need to ask you some questions. <laughs> then they'll have to wait till afterward. The kitty comes first, understand? We might as well help out, Kaito, seeing as we're already here and all. Yeah, you got a point. Seems like we won't get far otherwise. Hey, I think she likes it. We did it, Kaito! Nice one! Oh, Miki-chan! Ma'am, would it be all right to ask you a question? Certainly. What can I do for you? I'm Kaito, from the Yagami Detective Agency. We're looking for the woman in the picture. My, what a sweetheart. Who is she? She's my mom, who's been missing. Missing? Oh my, that's awful. Thing is, she may have been sighted here in town not long ago. She has a bit of history with Kamuro Theater, so we were thinking she might have stopped by. And since you work here and all, we were wondering if you've seen her. Oh, I've been working here about four years now. But I can't say I've seen her around. Damn. Although, now that I think on it... What is it, miss? Something good? Oh, I remember. It was that picture. The same? Yes. This was nearly two years ago. A, a man was going around with a picture asking if the woman in it had been found. What you're doing right now reminded me. Really? A man was looking for her two years ago? A year and a half, to be precise. It seemed serious. Wait a minute. Mom disappeared two years ago. If someone went looking for her half a year later... Um, wait, what does that mean? Ma'am, could you describe this man you saw? What exactly did he ask you? Hmm, it has been a while since we spoke. But you know... What is it? He did give me his contact information, in case I learned anything relevant about the situation. Really? Do you still have his information? I do believe so. Now, where could it be? Oh, I, I imagine it's tucked away in a drawer back home. If you have it, would you mind sharing that with us? We'll even pay if need be. And wait till you're off the clock, of course. Here, my number. That ought to do. Wonderful. It won't be long until I'm off, so I'll look for that info the moment I get home. That'd be great. Thanks so much. Oh, hope it helps reunite you with your mother, kiddo. I right, talk to you soon. And with that, we head back to the office. Okay. Oh, hey. If it isn't that Bato agency shit for brains. Kaito? Wait, what's that kid with you? June here is my client. What do you care? Are you acquainted or something? They're kidnappers, Kaito. Or at the very least, stalkers. Are they now? Yeah, they've been following me around since yesterday. Bet they know my dad's loaded and want me for the ransom. They say shit like, we're decent people, just come with us, we'll even buy you some video games. Bunch of creepy old geezers, and he's their head idiot! Hey, watch your mouth! Monikey's not a head idiot! That's right! 
You're the head idiot here! Can you two shut your pie holes? You're not making us look any smarter. First blackmail. Now kidnap me. There a crime you won't do? Makes me sick to think you call yourselves detectives. I ain't here for a lecture. Just give us the gate, or you're in for a world of hurt. You're not laying a hand on my client. You want him? You have to go through me. Oh, you are such a goddamn pest, you know that? Boys, exterminate this asshole! <laughs> 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 get away with nabbing a kid his age. Worth a try. Everyone be cool, and nobody gets hurt. <laughs> the classic misdirect. with all the boxes. Is this it? Thanks for calling Kyushu number one star. Uh, uh, sorry, wrong number. Next time I'll call with an order, okay? Detective Agency, yes? How can I help you today? Oh, uh, see, I actually lost the address to our new place. People say I have the memory of a goldfish, so... <laughs> gotcha. No worries. Happens all the time. Let me go ahead and pull up your info. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's see. It says here it's on Senrio Avenue. As for the building number... One moment...
careful now. I'm gonna check on the kid. You keep an eye out here. You got it. out. Shh. How'd you know where I was? Cause I'm a pro, that's how. Oh, come on! How long have you been here? We were just on our way out. <laughs> no. Well, I suggest you stay and play. I brought in a special guest for the occasion. Should I even bother to ask? Put us on! See him? It's that Kaito schmuck I told you about. You're up! Uh, he, your heavy hitter? As a former Omi Alliance Patriarch, he's as heavy as they come. See, after his clan went the way of the dinosaur, well, we figured we ought to put his talent to work. Better say your prayers! Just hearing the name Fudo the Killer in Kansai makes people piss themselves on the spot! Not to mention he's built like a brick shithouse! You're just a little skid mark to him. Uh, Kaito? These dickheads might actually have a point. Can you take him? In a heartbeat. So, you heard you used to roll with the Tojo clan. Is that right? That was a lifetime ago. I'm just a detective on the straight and narrow now. And that brat must be your kid, huh? Well, not exactly. The name's June, you big oaf! Ha! You. Well, I may not know what brought you. But unlike you, I don't get paid to think. I get paid to ruin me. So don't hold it against me when your son sees me rip you apart. You done posturing. Then let's do this. Get me! Don't fuck with me! <laughs> Kaito, you're a beast! Well, look at you. Someone just doesn't stay down. <laughs> what can I say? The man stays true to form. Ha! You haven't seen shit from my dad yet. He was just warming up. Uh, Fudo-san? Your name's Kaito, ain't it? <laughs> yeah? You got a good kid there. My son should be about his age. But he's done with his old man now. 
I didn't take this job to ruin more families. So from here, I'm calling it quits. Uh, huh? Bastard. Looks like I've got no choice. I really hate to do this, but the kid comes with us no matter what. Even if you die. Kaito, meet me in the batting center. What? Hey! If you want me, then come get me! <laughs> you bitches couldn't catch me if you tried! Bye! Sup, Kaito? How'd you like my little escape plan? Pretty slick, right? Dumbass! You nearly got yourself killed! What if that guy shot you, huh? Yeah, well, thanks to me, no one got shot. I totally pulled my weight back there. Don't you realize those were ex-Yakuza? They wouldn't hesitate to dump you in the ocean if they wanted. So what? Was I supposed to stay put? Tell me how you planned on getting out of that. Well... I was working on that, okay? See? You would have been toast if it wasn't for me. Admit it. Also, you know they need me alive for a ransom, right? I wasn't in danger at all. <sighs> you know what, kid? Where's your house? Huh? Why? So I can walk you home and leave your ass there. No matter what I tell you, you keep getting yourself deeper into dangerous shit. And I'm not gonna be held liable. Come on, don't be like that. What about my mom? I'll find her myself. And when I do, I'll give you a ring. How about that? Dude, chill. Why are you flipping out on me? I was just trying to help out, okay? God, I'm glad I don't have kids. Okay, where the hell did I put your dad's car? Ah, here we go. Stop! What's gotten into you? I'm not going home, damn it! <sighs> Kid, I get it. You're committed, really. But what would your old man think if you died out here? My old man? <sighs> My old man wouldn't give a flying shit. If I was dead, it'd only make his life easier. His job's all that matters to him. <laughs> that can't be right. Sure, that's not just teen angst talking? No, man. I swear I'm not making this up. He genuinely does not care about me. Like, I was gone for a whole week not too long ago. When I got back home, he didn't even notice I'd left. Well, you ever think it's his position that keeps him occupied? He's in charge of an entire company, right? It's not just that, man. I've lived with him long enough to know what he really thinks. Ever since I was little, I could tell the way he looked at me was off. It's like, yeah, he put up with me when mom was around, but now? He doesn't even pretend to be a dad. Bet he's glad I'm out of his hair as we speak. There's no way he'd think that about his own son. That's the thing, isn't it? I'm not even his son to begin with. 
Mom's diary told me that much. Sure explains why my dad hates my guts. We don't even know that. Well, I'd place my bets on it. And I'll do anything to find out for sure. That way, all these years would finally start making sense. Also, there's another thing. The way Mom kept writing about you in her diary made me want to meet you. What for? Mom described you like some kind of real-life superhero. She said that you had a knack for knowing whenever she was in over her head, that you'd swoop in and take out anyone giving her shit. Her diary was full of cool stories about you. I'd spend hours poring over it. But maybe don't mention that to her. She really talked me up that good, huh? Yeah, she did. That's kind of why I ended up hoping you were my dad. I just needed it to be true. Uh, hang on a minute. Don't tell me I'm why you're all hung up on the Yakuza. Well, yeah. Who wouldn't be after reading all that about you? Listen, I get where you're coming from. But give up on the Yakuza thing. Not many are cut out for that life. Plus, you've got way better options out there. Are you saying that as my Yakuza senpai? Or are you trying to give me a dad lecture? Call it what you want. I'm still not changing my tune. A bad idea is a bad idea. You say that, but how else am I gonna get strong? Strong enough to protect the people I care about. You wanna get strong, June? Then focus on what's in here. What do you mean? Just keep that fire burning in your heart. And it'll all make sense one day. Well, then I'm gonna tag along with you until that day comes. Sound good? Uh, all right. Just do me a favor. No more stunts that could land you in the morgue, okay? Deal! So, where were we before all of this? Good question. Let's figure that out at the office. The cleaning lady might have gotten in touch. Right, I forgot about her. What have we here? What's up? Well, darn. It seems I lost my key. No way. Really? How about you come help me look for it? Maybe we should go to the police, see if anyone turned your key in. I never lost the key, June. Huh? I could smell cigarettes coming from the office. And not the brand we smoke. Oh, that's weird. All the brands smell the same to me. H hang on. You better not be smoking. Uh, well... Look, is that really important right now? Besides, who cares what brand it is? Who cares? You mean someone's been smoking on our property. Like I said, who cares? I'm saying someone might be in our office, and I'm pretty damn sure I locked the door. You don't mean... You think it's those bogus detectives? I do. And I'm gonna use the drone to find out. How slow can his giant ass be? He was right there when he said he dropped the key. Ah, he'll be back soon. Knowing him, he'll probably just give up and kick the door in. Hey, 
Go unlock the door for the big galoot. Okay. Talk about a close call. What now? We do the smart thing when dealing with burglars. Hello, officer. I got a problem here. Some armed robbers just broke into my office. to tuck and roll. Oh, and you owe me for the window. Hey! Freeze! Solves that problem. Bet they'll think twice about pulling that again. Huh? got a lead. It's from the cleaning lady. What she got for us? So, the guy who was going around looking for Mikiko? Apparently, he's a doctor. He gave our cleaning lady friend his number, too. Looks like a landline. So if I do a little search... Bingo! Got ourselves a homepage. Runs a clinic in Shiba. That's way out in the sticks. So, is that our next lead on Mom, then? Could be. Nice! Then let's get going! Right. So, about the detective and that kid looking for Mikiko Satomoto. What next? Hail him. Don't let him catch wise. On it. Kaito and June take to the streets to discover Mikiko's whereabouts. But the clues don't come easy, as Mikiko was reported dead two years back. Eventually, a doctor by the name of Yasutaka Shirakaba turns up. It seems Shirakaba had been looking for Mikiko as well. Following their only solid lead, Kaito and June head to Shirakaba's clinic in the remote countryside. Yet an unknown danger threatens to end their investigation early on. Wow, I even moved the alarm and everything. Turning it off in your sleep is a talent. <laughs> if you're hungry, I suggest you get out of bed and help set the table. Breakfast is almost ready. Good morning, sleepyhead. Back here? Wasn't I just out looking for. <sighs> Still in dreamland, I take it. You do always sleep like a rock. Now come on, breakfast is almost on the table. At least give me a hand with the plates. Uh, sure. Alright, dig in.
thanks for cooking. on your mind. Mikiko, we gotta talk about the raid. Huh? Listen, the boss is like a father to me. So if it came down to it, you know... Meal time is a peaceful time. No drama at the table. We established that when we first moved in together. Right. I guess I forgot. Sorry. Oh, nothing. Just thought you looked nice this morning. Okay, what are you hiding? What am I... Uh, nothing. Okay, so you were just sleep talking. Hey, I'm wide awake, you. Then tell me, did you wake up for me or the food? Ah, good question. Gee, way to ruin the moment. Say, Mikiko. What? Would you make me breakfast tomorrow, too? I suppose I could. Uh, let me wash those. Sure, that'd be helpful. Um, Masaharu-san? Can we talk about today? What's up? Actually, never mind. You sure? Mikiko, listen. The last thing I want to do is screw up what the two of us got going. I've been thinking about things, and... I decided I'm gonna talk to Matsugane-san. I know he'll hear me out. What? See, when I swore that oath to him, I figured I'd signed my life over, too. That's why I can't forgive those pricks who went after him. But the last thing I want to do is... Break your heart. Wait. Masahara-san. Wh what are you saying? I'm saying... I'm out of the raid. That's final. Now, going clean's gonna be another story, but uh, I'll take care of it somehow. As long as I can keep waking up to you, it's worth it, Mikiko. Am I interrupting something? Uh, huh? June, I thought I wouldn't see you today. Sleep well? Well, yeah, but it's Dad here who's always sleeping in. In fact, he's asleep right now! How long are you gonna doze off anyway? Gotta wake up to reality sometime! Huh? Kaito? Kaito! Hello? Anybody home? <sighs> We're here. Uh, oh, I gotcha. What were you dreaming about anyway? You were smiling like a little kid almost. W was I? Huh. Don't remember. It must have been a real nice dream. <sighs> if you say so. Hey, my mom's still out there, right? Well, she sure wouldn't have done herself in. 
You and I both know that. Right. There's no way she'd disappear without a good reason. Here's our clinic. And apparently, someone's residence. Think we'll get some clues about my mom here? We don't know that yet, but we'll see. Uh, yes? Uh, uh, sorry to bother, but uh, I'm a detective out from Kamurocho. The name is Kaito. Uh, what would a detective want with me? Well, this is where my search took me. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Does it have to be me, specifically? W what is this about? I'm looking for a lady by the name of Mikiko Sadamoto. <sighs> She's my mom, by the way. I thought she was dead, but it turns out she might just be missing. You're her son? Um, give me a moment. Thanks. I came on behalf of the Yagami Detective Agency. Very well. I am Yasutaka Shirakaba, a director of the clinic here. So, you're really Mikiko's son? Yeah, my name's June. I take it you're familiar with Mikiko, then? Uh, well, that depends on what you mean by familiar. Uh, here, why don't we all have a seat? I apologize for not inviting you in. You see, I've been living alone so long. My place is an absolute mess. Don't sweat it. After all, we did show up out of the blue. Now, let's talk about you and Mikiko. As I understand it, you were looking for her as well. This was a year and a half ago in Kamurocho. Yes, there's no denying that. Can I ask... What for? I was trying to confirm her identity. Her identity? Care to explain that? Deep within these mountains lies a waterfall. An infamous suicide spot. Perhaps I should start from there. A year and a half ago, a woman's body was discovered downstream. All right. Due to exposure to the elements, her face was too decomposed to identify. However, a photo was found in her jacket. It appeared to be taken at the Millennium Tower in Shinjuku. It was of the woman and her son. No way. Me? But since that was her only possession, it wasn't enough to confirm her identity outright. As such, the police opened the case and began investigating. Unfortunately, progress was uh, slow, if not stifled. So thinking I could help move things along, I set out for Kamurocho, picture in hand. Whatever you heard about me was likely from back then. That would mean you're the one who analyzed Mikiko's body? Yes, uh, that was me. Her husband had requested a DNA test. Is there a chance those results were wrong? Not at a 99% match. I hate to say it, but that body was Mikiko Saramoto's. <coughs> Kaito, this can't be right. What the hell is he even talking about right now? Hello? Earth to Kaito! <laughs> Don't just ignore me! Say something! Didn't you hear? It's time to go home, kid. This was all for nothing. Mikiko. 
Your mom is gone for good. What? No. Let me ask you this, Shirakawa-san. Are you sure her death was suicide? No signs of a natural trauma were detected on the body. And the police had confirmed it wasn't murder, so... I'm afraid there's no other explanation. <coughs> God... Damn it! God damn it all. Mom! Why'd you do it?! I certainly wish I had better news to give you, especially since you traveled all this way. The least I can do is call a cab and save you a walk to the station. Wait... The Millennium Tower? Kaito? One last question, Shirakaba-san. Yes? About that photo they found on Mikiko's body. Was that the only one? Just her and June at the Millennium Tower. Nothing more? I believe that should have been it, yes. <sighs> I'll be damned. What? Okay. Now we got a problem, Shirakaba-san. Your story doesn't add up. I'm sorry? Don't play dumb here. If all Mikiko had on her was a photo at the Millennium Tower, and you never knew her alive, then what you told me was grade-A bullshit. Think back to when you went to Kamuro Theater. Maybe you'll recall a certain cleaning lady. It seems you approached her a year and a half ago about Mikiko. You knew the place meant something to her, right? Uh, Problem is, how would you even know that in the first place? Everything you knew about her came from a single photo, taken at the Millennium Tower. In fact, that was your only clue to her identity. Didn't you say as much? Uh, uh... I'll tell you right now. Mikiko did have a connection with Kamuro Theater. But that's nothing a stranger, much less some random doctor, would know. Unless, of course, you found that out from Mikiko herself. Uh, well, I, uh... Quit blubbering and tell me the truth! <laughs> I, I... I understand. I'll talk. I think we should all go inside. That alone might help clear things up. Huh? Please make yourselves at home. More tea will be ready soon. Be real with me, Kaito. You think... You think he's got Mom locked up somewhere? This guy's a real creeper if you ask me. I don't know. But I wouldn't rule it out. It'd explain the lack of contact, at least. Right? Dude, what if he lured us in to get rid of us? For all we know, he could be a total psycho. <laughs> Is this it? This right here. Huh? Where the heck's it coming from? Hey. That smell. Yeah, got some for you too. Sweet. 
to wear her hair short. I guess it could have grown out since then. Who took it, though? Then why is it here? Wait a sec. If this was taken after my mom disappeared... Then yeah. She's still alive. But this shot alone doesn't say much else. This right here. Mikiko, alive and well. Shit just keeps getting stranger. Why would Shirakawa lie about her death? And why hasn't Mikiko reached out to her family? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I'd say Four Eyes owes us some answers. Mikiko is alive. I got that right? Yes. She's alive. No health issues to speak of either. Awesome! You hear that, Kaito? <laughs> Tell me then, what's Mikiko been up to for two years? Why hasn't she hit up her family? And where is she right now? If you're assuming she kept her family in the dark, I... I can assure you that's not the case. What do you mean? She developed dissociative amnesia. Uh, in layman's terms, uh, severe memory loss. She... what? It was two years ago that I found Mikiko-san at the river bank. I rushed back here to give her treatment. But when she came to, she couldn't remember anything. All she could tell me was her name. Damn. If it was amnesia... No wonder we never heard from her. Okay. Can you tell us where she is now? Uh, well, uh... I don't quite know where she is. She left some time ago. What? She's gone? You've got some beans to spill, Doc. And I ain't talking at Amame. If Mikiko's really alive, then let's get this out in the open. You faked Mikiko's death. That I did. It, it was to protect her. To protect her? How's that work? It was right after I rescued Mikiko-san from that riverbank. Some unfamiliar people showed up in our area. Real unsavory types. And they had a picture of Mikiko-san. They went around asking all the locals, Have you seen this woman? I was no exception. But then Mikiko-san, who had seen them from a distance, started trembling. What'd they look like? They were young, in their late twenties to mid-thirties. They had numerous piercings, uh, dye jobs, and flashy clothes. Intimidating would best describe them. In all honesty, they looked like a street gang. People you wouldn't want at your doorstep. Damn it! I bet they tried to kill my mom two years ago! I had similar thoughts. Perhaps Mikiko-san ran afoul of some very bad people in her past. And to make it appear as suicide, she was pushed from the top of a waterfall. But afterward, they couldn't find her body, and her death was never reported. That's why I assumed they came snooping around, to confirm whether they finished the job. So... that's when you went ahead and faked her death? Yes. But only to throw those people off her trail. Got it. So, rather than holding her against her will, you were trying to keep her safe. 
Something doesn't sit right, though. Why didn't you call the cops straight away? Another thing. Mikiko-san was very hesitant about me getting the law involved. Actually, to be more precise, it wasn't the police that scared her, but rather the outside world. It was as if she were terrified of, of someone out there discovering she was alive. How? I thought she lost her memories. Let me give you a little background on that. When a person develops amnesia, they don't lose their memories. Rather, they lose touch with them. This can happen for several reasons, but for dissociative amnesia, it's usually triggered by extreme stress or past wounds. In any case, an amnesiac may avoid a perceived danger without quite understanding why. But the condition doesn't grant a clean slate. Those painful memories will still be alive in their head. And sometimes they'll resurface as instinct, directly influencing their actions. Huh. Well, you're the doctor. Guess I'll take your word for it. Some doctor out in the sticks. You sure are slick faking a death good enough to fool the cops. Well, I am the local police's medical examiner. So it was well within my ability to find another body as a substitute for Mikiko-san. We are located by a suicide spot, after all. Morbid as it is, we're not exactly in short supply of corpses. Come to think of it. Sadamoto-san said something about how the body was too decomposed to be identified on scene. Yes, I had to put quite a bit of work in to make the substitute appear authentic. I chose a body with a similar build to Mikiko-san as well. The photograph served as a convincing personal touch. And you did all the DNA testing too? That I did. It was a matter of swapping out specimens here and there. You really pulled out all the stops, huh? That's a lot of risk you're taking there. Maybe what I did was unacceptable. But I assure you, this was all for Mikiko-san's safety. You mentioned Mikiko was gone earlier. Could you tell me how that went down? It was about ten days ago. I had finished work for the day, so I came back to find Mikiko-san rushing out of the door. It was all very odd. The TV was left on, she uh, didn't seem to have anything on her, and the look on her face was startling. What I think happened is her memory suddenly returned. Just like that? Yes, though I couldn't tell you what prompted it. She never gave me a reason as to why she went away. All she said was, uh, I have unfinished business to deal with. Unfinished business? What could that be? Hard to say. All I know is that the Mikiko-san I saw right then was completely different from the one I knew. Her face was always so kind and gentle before. Yet there she was. Glaring like a woman possessed. And her eyes were filled with hatred. Hatred? You sure that's what you saw? That's precisely what I saw. Something altogether deadly had consumed her. That look she had. It was enough to burn a man alive. Perhaps whatever she went through threatened to destabilize her mind. So she shut herself off from that event for an entire two years. All to preserve herself until she recuperated. That being said, I believe the group who came looking for her in the beginning must have been involved. Back it up a sec. If Mom's got her memories back, how come she still hasn't contacted us? Got a point there. My only guess is she's trying to keep a low profile. Perhaps. 
What if Mikiko-san intended to commit some sort of crime? What gives you that idea? Well, if that is the case, I figure it'd be more convenient for her to be considered dead than alive. If Mikiko-san is on record as deceased, she could do whatever she wanted without ever troubling Junkun or her husband. And since the crime wouldn't be linked to her, her family wouldn't have to live with any stigma. All right, this is getting way too crazy. Kind of freaking out here. So, uh, back to Mikiko. She really forgot everything but her name? As far as I'd observed, yes. She couldn't recall her address, her date of birth, loved ones, nothing. I discovered Mikiko-san with nothing but the clothes on her back. She had no personal effects that could point to her identity. In all likelihood, the Rapids had washed most of her belongings away. Wait, but I thought she had that photo. Uh, yes, I'm getting to that. A half a year or so after I had taken her in, I found a woman's jacket downstream of the waterfall. This photo was in one of the jacket's pockets. Ah, oh, yeah. This is when we took a trip to Kamrocho. That's with the Millennium Tower in it. So why'd you go asking about Kamaro Theater instead? If Mikiko had amnesia, you wouldn't have known the connection. So how'd you find out? There was a special on TV about the development history of Kamurocho. Part of the program featured the former Kamaro Theater, to which Mikiko responded immediately. Responded? How? Her eyes filled with tears, but they were happy, as if she were lost in memory. <laughs> Although her memories didn't return in that moment, I knew that place must have been important to her. That picture over there was from when I took her to see Kamro Theater in person. Roughly two years had passed since I'd found her, but her memories were still buried away. Fortunately, she'd gotten well enough to venture outside every now and again. I personally found it risky, but alas, Mikiko-san was determined to see Kamro Theater for herself, come hell or high water. Shirakaba-san, how was she when you took her? Did she maybe act different? I'd say so. And mind you, the venue had undergone drastic changes since she last saw it. Nevertheless, she still seemed quite nostalgic. I think deep down in her heart, she knew what she was seeing. The peace on her face told me that. That's so. So, let me get this straight. A year and a half ago, a photo of Mom and me washed up. Only then did you go around asking about her identity, right? Uh, um, well, yes, uh, that's right. After that, you swapped or rearranged a corpse or whatever. I get why. You just wanted to keep Mom out of trouble. But why didn't you at least reach out to us? You could have gotten contact at any time. Oh, uh, you see, I, uh, um... Kid's got a point. You didn't even tell Mikiko herself who she was, did you? Even though you knew for quite some time. <laughs> hey! Something else you want to tell us? <sighs> Forgive me! I know making excuses won't help. But you see, from the moment Mikiko-san came into my life, don't tell me. You're in love with her. What? Uh, uh, yes. Ah, oh, jeez. When I met her, it was love at first sight. Soon enough, I was utterly smitten. Nothing could take my mind off her. 
It wasn't long before I began wishing her happy little life could continue forever. But that's when that picture of her washed up. I thought if Mikiko-san remembered who she was, well, she'd walk right out of my life without a moment's hesitation. <sighs> that short, blissful time we shared was a blessing I didn't deserve. A man who knew nothing but loneliness was graced by an angel from above, one radiant and pure as snow. Forgive me! Forgive me for being a hopeless fool! But I promise you, I kept things decent. I didn't touch a hair on her head. Even a selfish man like me knows where to draw the line. I would never take advantage of her! Not sure I'd buy that. You call hiding her away for two years decent? <laughs> Please trust me! It was only to keep her out of harm's way! Uh, I get that, Shirakaba-san. I don't blame you for wanting to protect someone. Especially when trouble comes knocking. Fact is, you risked your neck to keep Mikiko safe. Not many would. That aside, you didn't tell her who she was when you had the chance. And that's your big mistake. No wonder you two had a happy little life here. You took her other options away. Do you have any idea what kind of hell you put her family through? I know that whatever I do, it'll never be enough to atone. That much is clear. That all you gotta say? Then I suggest you apologize to Mikiko at the very least. Of course, she might knock your ass out when you do. Hey, what the hell? Greetings! Is, uh, Mikiko Sadamoto-san around? Who the hell's asking? Ever heard of Crimson Lotus? We're a friendly group from Shinjuku just swinging by for a visit. Anyway, I'm Nishio, the group mouthpiece, if you will. Crimson Lotus ain't ringing any bells. You supposed to be some kind of gang? Actually, I believe they're the group who came asking about Mikiko-san two years ago. Really? Weren't you looking for Mikiko Sadamoto too? Over in Kamurocho? Funny thing is, we need to find her too. And fast. Pardon, but uh, didn't I tell you last time? Mikiko Saramoto-san unfortunately passed away. I just finished telling these people the same. There's nobody left to look for. Nice try, nerd. But you ain't playing us today. Your bluff might have worked last time, but now I've got people telling me she's alive and kicking. And we can't just let a killer run free, can we? A killer? Yeah. Fucking broad had the nerve to bump off some of our higher ups. Huh. <laughs> Quit talking out your ass. Dude, I shit you not. You really never heard of the young elite serial killings in Kamrocho? The victims are our founding members. Legendary badasses, all of them. And there's evidence of that chick at the murder scene, so. Yeah. We're trying to pull the plug on this bloodbath. Impossible. Don't tell me. This was Mikiko's unfinished business? To get back at Crimson Lotus. Right. Anyway, we're gonna need to peek inside the house now. Thanks for being chill about it. You won't find Mikiko in here. Take it from us, she's nowhere. <laughs> I call bullshit. What are you gonna do to Mikiko if you find her? Ooh, those plans are a bit above my pay grade, but 
I do know it won't be pretty. If I had to guess, it'd be like... Torturous death? I mean, she freaking went and killed ROGs right when they were peeking. That's fucked up. So, yeah. She's got a ticket for a nice long trip to hell. It's only fair, you know? Oh, yeah? Then I'm sending my foot on a nice long trip up your ass. Come on! Why'd you have to go for the face? I freaking went to a salon today, too! We've got a mixer tomorrow, you know? Chirikawa-san, watch Jude for me. Uh, okay. Damn it, why you gotta be so stubborn? Who even are you? Just an old bodyguard of hers. <laughs> huh? So, which of you punks wants it first? Is that karate? And not half bad by the looks of it. Yeah, thanks. I've been practicing a while. Hey! You assholes got started without me! I thought I told you to wait till I got here. Shuchan! This guy's a pain in the ass! So let me take over for you. Better clear me a path, boys. Yo, it's on! <laughs> Yo, I'm fucking ready! Serious? You're just drunk, dude. And you must be Kaito's son, huh? I'm the front man for Crimson Lotus. Ken Mochi is the name. Just so you know, I've never been defeated in the underground fighting circuit. You're looking at a real fucking champ. My boys are ready for you versus me. Maybe we should have sold tickets, yeah? Huh? Let's give him a good show, huh? Oh. 
sorry about this, big guy. Aren't you a tough bastard? Shushan, please get a grip. Any more and you'll start barfing blood. Why don't we just call it here? No! More! I need more. Gentlemen! Hate to be a buzzkill, but party's over for now. Handshakes all around and to all a good night. I should probably call the cops in case they come knocking again. Hey, Kaito. What they said about Mom being a killer? You think that's true? Hmm. Doesn't matter. Our goal is to find Mikiko, whatever she's caught up in. I mean, I know that. I'll drive. I'd like to get to the bottom of this as well. Oh. You sure? Shoot. <laughs> That'll save us big on train fare. <clears throat> Doesn't look like we're being followed.
So, uh, uh, what sort of uh, relationship did you have with uh, Mikiko-san? Huh? Where is this coming from all of a sudden? When Mikiko saw Kamuro Theater on television, she looked like she was lost in the past. And the moment I told you that, you wore the same look. Except yours was more sullen. So, I'm guessing Mikiko's connection to the place had something to do with you. Perhaps you two were involved romantically? Good guess. So, you were then? <sighs> there was a time I thought I'd be with her forever. Forever? You mean marriage? What happened? Well, I happened to be with the Yakuza at the time. As you can imagine, Mikiko wanted me out. Easier said than done. My boss had taken a bullet that nearly prompted an all-out war. I couldn't just up and leave. Do you mean to say you chose the Yakuza over Mikiko? In the end, yeah. That's what it was. And for Mikiko, it was the last straw. I was out on a raid when she left. Came home to a note in an empty apartment. Kaito-san, let me ask you something. Do you still love her? Even now? Love her? You know she's got a husband, right? That isn't what I'm asking. I'm asking how you feel in your heart. Ethical issues and legal ramifications aside, you can't always choose who you love. So I think it's okay to be honest with yourself. At least listening to your feelings isn't a crime. Uh-huh. Besides, I'm sure it wasn't easy letting a woman like Mikiko-san go. Am I wrong? Yeah. And what makes you think that? Call it a hunch. But am I wrong? Thing is... I always figured I was over her for good. Gotta let the past be the past, you know? But then... Once I started searching for Mikiko with her kid... These thoughts kept coming at me. Like... Maybe I could have done things different. And now... I'm stuck thinking of a life I never had. As you may be aware, Kaito-san... I too have feelings for Mikiko-san. And if she never returns them... Then I fully accept that. That said... I wouldn't hesitate to give up everything for her. My own life included. <laughs> You're serious about that? Completely. I've never met a woman like her in my life. So if we do end up finding her... I intend to propose to her. Wait, what? Well, before you get carried away, don't forget she's legally married. I'm aware. But if I don't at least share how I feel, I'll regret it for the rest of my life. As for right now, I'm giving this all I've got. <laughs> Not a bad resolution in my book. Perhaps? Those punks earlier? They were screaming about some boss of theirs getting killed. Hmm. I wonder if it's related to the young elite serial killings as of late. <laughs> Either way, I hope my boss gets it too. <laughs> hey, fellas. Did you see a building on fire? Oh, uh, yeah, actually. I think around Tenkaichi Street? Kaito-san! Yeah, let's move!
Hey, stay back! Kaito-san, look up there! Mikiko! What is she doing? Yo! No, let us through! I told you it's not safe! Crap! I should be able to get up through there. Shirakawa-san, watch June for me! Huh? Where's the woman? We can get around her from up here. Hey, the blockades are Crimson Lotus, right? Huh? Oh, shit, it's that guy from the doctors. Sorry, but your little plan's getting shut down. God damn it! I can't tell what's going on from here! Get out of my way, asshole! Hey, that's my line! Now get me! Now, Chuck! Where are the others in Crimson Lotus? Uh, I don't know! After I cut my ties with them, I lost track of all the guys in that gang. The fact that I'm even here is just a coincidence. You're a liar! Uh, hey! Where's that backup? If they don't get here soon, then Nishimura's dead! Mikiko! Masaru-san? Tell me why. Mikiko. They killed them. My whole family. They took my mother and my father. Mo! They burned them alive! What? Are you sure? I thought Maho Chan's stalker was behind them. That's just the lies they told me. They're the ones who really killed them! Unbelievable. Azizaki-san! Damn you! <laughs> Die! Oh, he's up. Wait, where's Mikiko? What happened after I went down? Well, the owner of that security company got shot to death on the roof. His name was Ashizaki. His office was burning up too. You think it's the killer's work? Not sure. 
I can't find those details anywhere. Gotcha. Oh, and to top it off, Nishimura, a man who was visiting Ashizaki last night, was found dead in an alley this morning. They killed them. My whole family. They took my mother and my father. Mo! They burned them alive! By the way, Kaito, the police came by earlier. Uh, they said to contact them once you're up. I think they wanted to question you. Uh, just what I needed. Uh, uh. You'll live. That bullet only grazed your shoulder. And by some miracle, your bones are still intact. The doctor was amazed you're still alive. Said that fall would have at the very least paralyzed anyone else. I say it's time to get back at it. Uh, Kaito-san? Lying around on my ass won't get me closer to Mikiko. Plus, I'd rather not deal with the cops. Let me go with you. All right. Kaito-san, take a look at this before you go. What's all this? Profiles on the four victims murdered in Kamurocho. I put them together last night after a bit of research. Oh, nice work. In summary, all the victims seem to be ordinary people. But that may only be on the surface. According to the rumors on the internet, of which I unearthed a substantial number, many of the victims had rather suspicious backgrounds. Some may have even changed their names. Sounds about right for one of these little thug groups. Unlike the Yakuza, they don't have a family to answer to. Take that blue-haired dipshit from before. He acts like he's in some college club without a care in the world. So it seems. Uh, here's another interesting tidbit. Some of the victims had a fighting record, meaning they competed in underground tournaments. But each one was found successfully subdued, even showing signs of force consistent with interrogation. Mikiko did always know how to handle herself. Yeah, she kept it up with the workouts and the kickboxing, even after Dad came into the picture. She could totally take some thug one-on-one. -on -one. Mom's tough as nails. Hot damn. Anyway, what's our next move? Right. We should probably go investigate the crime scene. What crime scene would that be? Where the murder took place last night. Might be some clues left to find. I see. Though I imagine the scene's still quite busy. Will the police really allow you on site? Oh, I'm hoping to avoid the cops altogether. I'm gonna sneak into the place. Ah, well, I suppose that's one way to do it. Catch you later, then. Mind serving as our alibi while we're over there? I'll give the police a good answer. Just... Make sure you find Mikiko-san, and keep her from dirtying her hands. June! And... Kaito-san? What is this? Ugh, crap. Oh, don't worry. We can explain. But, uh, what brings you here, of all places? Well, one of my police contacts got in touch. Said a boy here matched June's description. Ah. Uh... Well, June? What do you have to say for yourself? After you go wandering off for days on end? Yeah, like you even give a shit! Just go back home by yourself! June! Can we just... <sighs> Never mind. Actually, you and I might want to have a talk, Sanamoto-san. It's about June... and Mikiko. But what's going on with Mikiko? Well, I'll just put it out there. Turns out your wife's still alive. She's alive? My Mikiko? Where is she? Is she all right? All right's not exactly how I put it. It's pretty complicated to explain. Complicated? To think all that was happening. And 
Mikiko? Possibly a murderer? I know she's out for some kind of revenge. She's aware it was really Crimson Lotus who burned her family alive. I see. That's very difficult to process. We had always believed it was Maho Chan's stalker that did it. Yet now some sinister group emerges. Kaito san, does Mikiko really believe Crimson Lotus orchestrated this stalker story or whatever? That's what she said. It's likely the stalker got pinned as a scapegoat for the whole thing. Now, can you give me anything on your end? How's Crimson Lotus fit into all this? Nothing's making any sense so far. It couldn't be. What? What's wrong? To tell you the truth, this may have been set into motion even before the arson. You see, Mikiko's family had been under pressure from a certain real estate broker to unload their property. As I recall, that broker was flush with foreign capital and seeking land for a sizable new complex. Mikiko's parents stood to profit quite substantially were they to take the offer. But I was told they rejected whatever came their way. This went on for quite some time. And then the tragedy happened. Got it. So Crimson Lotus really was behind it all. Mikiko's parents had to die because of some land deal? Yes. Although a group like that may have planned to kill them all along. Anyhow, once Mikiko's family was gone, their land was inherited by a distant relative. And since they wanted nothing to do with any stigmatized property, they sold it to the broker in the end. So maybe Mikiko got too close to the truth, and it nearly killed her. Yeah, that ought to explain it. Then, if that is the case, then Mikiko's in the right. If I knew who killed my family, why, I'd hunt them down myself. Taking lives of innocent people, all for profit. What monsters! Sadamoto-san, there's something else I've been meaning to ask you. It's about June's biological dad. I know. He thinks you're his real dad, right? Or at least, he hopes you are. Uh, how'd you know? Well, June and I got into an argument once. And he said as much to me at the time. Sorry to hear that. Well, make no mistake. June is definitely my son. Yeah, I believe you. Deep down, I'm sure June understands that as well. This fantasy he spun up to feel better? Symptoms of a typical teenager. You sure he knows what's what? I am. This is nothing but a phase he's going through. I think it was right around elementary school when it started. He began stealing away Mikiko's diary, reading it over and over in secret. And you, the Yakuza with a heart of gold, were his favorite character. Right. June told me that himself. It's because I let work take priority. Even when June was little, I never spent the time with him I should have. And whenever the stress from work got to my head, well, let's just say I reacted poorly, even to a child seeking daddy's attention. So I fully understand why he latched on to Mikiko's writings. It's nothing I'm surprised or jealous about. The boy needs an actual father figure. That said, I hope you'll forgive me for letting him believe what he wants, at least for now. Of course, it's pathetic for me to be saying that. Uh, shoot, it's from one of the board members. I don't mind going after your son, sadamoto san And when I find him, I'll send him on home. But you're gonna need to set him straight. Excuse me. Yes, this is Sadamoto. Right. Thank you for your help with that contract. 
send me an invoice for your expenses. I'll cover them. Yes, that sounds excellent. Although there's one small issue. You see that shit? It's always the same. Who'd want a stuffed shirt for a dad? Don't say that. He's a busy guy. Well, now that that asshole's gone, how about we get back on the case? All right. Next step, getting onto that murder scene at Tenkaichi Alley. What are we gonna do if the cops see us? If it happens, it happens. Let's move. Deep in cops. Can we get around them? Only if we make that I sneak in. June, you wait out here. Any Bato guys show up, just shout for the cops and they'll scatter. Right on. Good luck. Careful now. This right here. Huh? Hmm. This right here. Pretty 
sure I recognize these guys. Checkmate. What? That's impossible. How'd you do that? Easy. I thought you said you won your precincts tournament. Yeah, and lost to a prodigy. What shogi club are you with, kid? None. Never even had lessons. I guess I'm just a natural at it. Yo. Kaito, what's up? What have you been up to? Just stomping a cop at shogi. That sort of thing. Well, time to stomp on elsewhere. We got us a lead. Oh yeah? Where to? Wherever we gotta be. Oh. Okay then. Hi. How can I be of service? Tsukumo. You're good with computers, right? Think you can handle pulling some data from a burnt-up hard drive? Hmm, it all depends on its condition, but it's certainly not impossible. Well, you mind taking a look? And make it quick if you can. Sure, not a problem. But I have to ask, what sort of case did you find yourself in this time? Right, about that. I should probably fill you in. I have a feeling I'll be asking more favors. Here's the deal. I see. So a group of inconspicuous thugs murders a rich family to gain access to their fortune. That's quite a story. Well, let's start with analyzing that hard drive. I've sent a motorcycle courier to your location. Figured it'd be faster to pick it up that way. Once I get my hands on it, I'll tell you what I find. Good shit. Thanks for the assist. Right. Now, let's go have us a stakeout. With any luck, your mom will show up. A live stakeout? I've seen that on detective shows before. Don't they get boring after a while? Well, if that's your attitude, you can just hang back at the office. No, I'm going to. Hey, aren't people going to think we look weird? Huh? Well, I figured we looked like father and son coming home from a ball game. Yeah, I don't know about that. Hey, there he is. Looks like he just clocked in. So you really think my mom's going to show? I wouldn't hold my breath, but it's possible. After all, Kenmochi's next on her hit list. Guess we'll be stuck here for a while then. Huh? <laughs> 
Who'd have thought we smoked the same brand? Yo, didn't I already tell you you're too young? Knock that shit off. Man. Come on, let's change up locations. What for? I raise some eyebrows if we stay in one spot too long. We gotta change our clothes too. Let's tail him. All right, let's go. Remember that old geezer I told you about? A stubborn one, living alone, who wouldn't leave. Oh yeah, what about him? He's got this dog he loves like his own grandkid, right? So I snatched the little thing up. Aw, that's so mean. <laughs> oh, it gets better. After that, I gave the old fart a hot dog. And when he wolfed the thing down, I told him it was dog meat. <laughs> got him so spooked. He puked! <laughs> wow, Shu Chan. You're terrible. Please tell me that dog's still alive. Of course he is. He's with Nishio right now. <laughs> Guy loves pets. We'll give him back once the old geezer falls in line. Anyway. Nishio tells me he's discovered the magic of blind dates. <laughs> Horny bastard must be pretty desperate. He's the one who goes to all those men's salons, right? Yeah, not that it does him any good. He'll be a dirty rat dog till the day he dies and all the ladies know it. I tell him it's his mind, not his looks, that needs polish. I'd take that boy on a spiritual retreat or something. Ooh, what if he has some kind of revelation? Can he still be in your gang? Oh, come on! Gang's just a figure of speech. We don't do any bad stuff, the haters say. We're nothing but a good bunch of friends. You know we even donate to charity. But do you? I'm impressed. Get away from her! Can't you tell she hates it? Hmm? Huh? Stay out of this, kid. I said get away! He's at it again. Give me a freaking break. You goddamn brat! Go on. You should get out of here. Thank you! Who the hell do you think you are? I'm gonna have to teach you a lesson. Hold up. You got a problem with him. Then you gotta go through me. The hell? It was dad or something? And you're both gonna get a lesson together. Damn it! I won't forget this! Sorry. I know we should be going after Kenmochi. True. But you made the right call, so don't sweat it. Oh. Okay. Anyway, Kenmochi shouldn't be too far. Let's hurry up and find him. Yeah. There. Found him. Ooh, remember Ashizaki, the guy who died? He had his little fella pierced. You think they take it out before cremation? Oh, um, wouldn't they normally? But I mean, even a funeral director wouldn't beat down behind his nuggets. 
So, maybe no one noticed. His nuggets? Yeah, his dumplings. You know what I mean, don't you? Um, his earlobes? You're using some kind of Hosaka slang, right? <laughs> For real? Now you're just being abstruse. You mean obtuse. Uh, never mind. I forget there's an age gap between us. Still got much to learn. Hurry and find Kenmochi. Hey, you know, Crimson Lotus used to be just nine of us in college. And now look where we are. It really is amazing, Shu Chan. I'm sure it's your personality that attracted all those people. <laughs> Not to mention, we do things on the level. No bosses, no grunts, just one big happy family. We all got nicknames, too. No sons or sirs allowed. That formality shit makes me sick. Ooh, you're so egalitarian. Eh, I wouldn't exactly call us eagles. We're more like a wolf pack. We're all real tight, you know? We help each other out when we're in need. And if you mess with us, we all come get you. Anybody even giving us the stink eye gets their face rearranged by the boys. Oh, uh, and you're free to join or leave whenever. Our policy's not to tie it down. Do you still keep in touch with those who leave? Absolutely. That's why we gotta take out the lady who's been killing off our old buddies. We ought to cut off her skin and feed it to some dogs. It'll make for a real good time. Shuchan, that's so wild. <laughs> You really are a true friend. Hey, where are they going? Uh, nowhere you should worry about. Huh? Isn't that... What's up? I knew it! That's Mom! You sure? Yeah! I bet she was tailing Kenmochi! Shit! They set her up! What? That bastard got himself tailed on purpose to lure her out! Let's go! Mikiko-san! <laughs> ah! Damn it! What do we do? No time to waste. I'm busted in. Wait a minute. What about me? Just head back to the office. Shit's about to get ugly. <laughs> All right. Just get Mom back safe, okay? Kaito boys? <laughs> Kaito, what are you doing here? You were with Mikiko earlier. 
What the hell for? I tried protecting her. It's what a detective would do. Please don't tell me. Mikiko's your client? Yeah, she is. Save the details for later. Where is she now? <sighs> Upstairs. This entire hotel is Crimson Lotus turf. There's nowhere to run. Like I'd ever do that. I'm sorry I couldn't save her, Kaito. Please, get her the hell out of here. Not like you had to ask. Guess I shouldn't overstay my welcome. You're not gonna be much use like that. Go on and head outside. <sighs> I hate to admit it, but you're probably right. The elevator stopped at the top floor. The rest, you'll have to figure out. Junk, no holes barred! Breaking their bones, smearing each other's blood on the goddamn mat! <sighs> it's all coming back. My days chasing glory and spilling guts in the underground! Can you feel the adrenaline? Then show me what you got, Kaijo! Bastard, I'll make you pay with your life.
You don't know when to court it. <laughs> Hey! What the? I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I never meant to kill anybody. The fuck are you saying? Nobody was supposed to be home. He said they were on vacation. But then... I burned them alive. after you went ape shit <laughs> priceless <laughs> nearly made me forget all the pain come on take another shot make it go away please I can't take it I don't want to hurt anymore Kinmochi I hope you hurt till the day you die. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, Mikiko. You're safe now. <sighs> A series of brutal murders rocks the young elites in Kamurocho. Each victim was a founder of Crimson Lotus, a group of thugs for hire. Mikiko lost her only sister at the hands of these thugs, along with her foster parents. And to get revenge, she takes matters into her own hands. Like a phantom in the night, she attempts to kill the Crimson Lotus founders one by one. However, Ken Mochi lays an ambush for Mikiko, fearing that he might be her next target. Kaito bursts in on the scene and returns Mikiko back to safety. Seeing her safe and sound grants him a moment's repose, but their ordeal is far from over. Hey, is she all right? They didn't do nothing to her, did they? Yeah, she's fine. She's just out. Oh, that's good. Get in, Kaito. We're taking Mikiko-san somewhere safe. Fine. But you better be ready to talk. Uh huh? As you can see, we're packing up. Excuse the mess. Crazy to think you were working for Mikiko all this time. Why didn't you just say so? Because we only found out who she really was the other day. We had no idea she was June's mom, either. Even though she's your client? All she gave us was a job, not her name. Said to protect a June Sadamoto. Kidnap him if you have to, but make sure he stays safe. That's the long and short of it. Yeah, 
I'm not following. So, she hired some crooked detectives and left her husband and kid in the dark? Just, what the hell was she planning? You're aware she's been trying to get revenge on Crimson Lotus, yes? Yeah. So, what if she needed a babysitter? After her deed was done, all she'd need to do was swing by here, pick up June, and hightail it out of Japan. Bullshit. <laughs> oh! Mikiko-san! Mikiko. Masaharu-san? Oh, you scared the piss out of me. You saved me again? <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot. I'm supposed to be your bodyguard, remember? <laughs> All right, Mikiko. Tell me, did you really kill those people? I intended to, but I never got the chance. What do you mean? Well... Someone else was always one step ahead of me. No matter who I was after, they were killed before I even showed up. Ashizaki, the man in the burning building, same deal. He was dead by the time I arrived, and the place was already up in smoke. So then, you're saying you're not a killer after all? Correct. Though I'd give anything to do him in myself. Bastards. Any idea who might be beating you to the punch? I wish I knew. I see. Mikiko, there's a lot I want to ask you. Are you okay to talk? Yeah. Why go after the Crimson Lotus founders? Was it really out of revenge? You mentioned Crimson Lotus being responsible for killing your family. What set this all into motion? It all started with Kenmochi. He was some kind of real estate broker way back when. He was making a fortune too. And that was before the bastard went after my parents. Right. Sadamoto-san mentioned something like that. Except... There was no evidence that they ever started the fire. The police pinned it all on the stalker and left it at that. Meaning it's up to me to get justice. Mikiko. Two years back, you disappeared from your home, leaving a suicide note behind. The cops believe you killed yourself, but obviously you never did. Of course not. Besides, I can't just die and leave my son behind. It was Crimson Lotus who framed my suicide. Must have been convenient for them. I figured that was the case. But still, I can't believe you lived. They seriously pushed you off a waterfall? To this day, I have no clue how I survived. I was apparently knocked out at the time. Maybe I have the devil's luck. Anyway... When I woke up, Shirakaba-san had already taken me in, but I couldn't remember anything. What made your memories come back? I was watching TV. TV? Yes, and Kyoya's face was on there. Right, your husband. He's been on TV a lot lately. I think I saw him on some morning show. Anyway, he was chatting with a celebrity. Looking real smug. And that's when it all came back. What Crimson Lotus had done to me. And what they took away. Was there a reason you didn't contact your family right then? Sadamoto-san and June were worried like hell. <sighs> Let's just say I had some unfinished business to deal with. The kind a woman's family doesn't need to know about. Okay then. Let's say you had taken down Crimson Lotus. Then what? You really meant for these dopes to take June? <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures. That's all I can say.
Mikiko, why'd you want to stick June with these shady assholes? Because I needed a detective who'd take an anonymous job. I couldn't let it get out that I was still alive. The last thing I wanted was Crimson Lotus hunting me down first. And while detectives are supposed to maintain confidentiality, I can't just take that at face value. Besides, any legit detective would turn down some random woman asking to snatch up a specific kid, right? True. Guess that explains why you go to ex Yakuza. Yeah, except Igarashi-san figured out who I was midway through it all. Sorry I had to pry, Mikiko-san. But I always vet my clients. I'll admit, I was shocked to find out a dead woman hired us. Not to mention one who was hell-bent on taking out Crimson Lotus. Those disgusting bastards. But hey, that's the most exciting shit that's happened to us in years. Why wouldn't we go all in? I appreciate the help, Igarashi-san. Your people have had my back since day one. And Senda-san, I'm sorry my actions put you in harm's way. <laughs> How'd you even afford them after being gone two years? You have cash stored away somewhere? After all I went through, I still managed to have my wedding ring. Pawn that off right away. Apparently it was enough to cover my fee, and then some. You know, your boy June ended up paying me a visit. He wanted me to help him find his mom. I knew about that. Igarashi-san had told me he was with you. It didn't take me long to figure out what he was up to. He also thinks he's my son. Of course, I beg to differ, but... Uh... Right. That's all in his imagination. Yeah. That's what your husband said, too. I guess June was reading your diary from when we were together, and got some ideas in his head. He said you wrote, I'll never see Masaharu-san again, and I should get this taken care of. I wrote that? Huh. I wonder what I meant. Come on, you really don't remember? How could I? That diary's as old as time. And even so, wait, uh, you don't mean... Bring in some bells? Remember that time I borrowed 50,000 yen while we were out shopping? I forgot to grab money from the bank. But there it was, the cutest coat I had ever seen, the last one on the rack. And of course, I left my card at home too. Oh, huh. know what? It does sound familiar. Hold on. Don't tell me. Mm-hmm. I never gave you your money back after we split up. So I was stuck thinking about whether or not I should pay you back. It would have been pretty awkward after the breakup we had. So yeah, that was stressful. What? You mean to tell me that's what all that meant? If you want, I could give you 50 grand right now. Uh, no thanks. Really? <laughs> okay, you're the boss. <sighs> Easy, Mikiko-san. They might have put drugs in your system. Why don't you take a rest in the back? Sure. I'll take you up on that. Your guy, Sendo. He's into Mikiko, isn't he? That obvious, huh? Well, yeah. What can I say? The guy's a big softy. I always tell him not to get too close to clients. What about you? Mikiko got your attention too? For a crooked detective, I'd say you're pretty devoted. Maybe I am. I've always respected fearless women like her. And besides, it's devotion that got our customer satisfaction rate topping 80%. That said, 
The guarantee applies to real customers only. Suckers don't get the same deal. <laughs> Corrupt and methodical. Gotta have a system, right? Hey, Kaito. You think Mikiko-san's into sweets? Oh, yeah. If memory serves, she always liked dessert with her coffee. Noted. Thank you. Kaito here. What's up? Guess what? I was able to salvage the data from that hard drive, damaged as it was. No shit! Oh, nice going, man. Anything useful on there? <laughs> well, I did find something intriguing. Scans of some under-the-table transactions. Though, whether they're useful to you or not, that I cannot say. Well, wanna fill me in anyway? Okay, so these scans showed questionable wire transfer records. It seems it was a security company that burned down. But 17 years ago, it received very large sums of unspecified funds over the course of seven years. And the source of these funds was a smartphone app developer called Devonir. So, some smartphone company illegally funds a security firm. What for? That, unfortunately, I could not find. I tried combing through their email history, but still nothing came up. All right. Oh, and this Devonir? It doesn't seem to exist anymore. In fact, there are hardly any records of it operating. I'm tempted to think it's a dummy corporation, Kaito-san. Huh. Now tell me that's not fishy. Indeed. Alas, that's about all I managed to recover. However, I do intend on looking into this Devonir a bit further. Seeing as there isn't much about it on the web, I'll likely have to do some extra digging. I appreciate all the help, Tsukuma. Of course. Just ping me if there's anything else you need. Guys, this is bad. It's Mikiko-san. Where is she? I don't know. The window was open when I got here. Where the hell did you go? Is she seriously going after Crimson Lotus again? Oh, not good. You know something? No, oh, uh, no? Numbnuts here doesn't know a damn thing. He can speak for himself. Now talk. Well, it's just that Mikiko-san might be... Sanda! Whatever she decides to do, we see it through to the end. That was the deal, wasn't it? You trying to turn Mikiko into a criminal? You know detectives are supposed to protect their clients, right? We are protecting our client. By not letting you interfere with her work. You know, Igarashi, I really can't stand the sight of you. I'll just have to beat the truth out of you, then. I'd like to see you try. In fact, I've been dreaming of the day I get to cave in your skull! Let's go, Kaito! Run off to. 
talk! <sighs> you really think you can save Mikiko-san? The guy who left her in the dust for the Matsugane family? Fuck you. Believe me, Kaito. Her anguish runs deeper and darker than you can possibly fathom. She's fueled by a hatred too hot to be contained. That is, until she kills her target. So what do you know about Mikiko, huh? A lot, actually. Collecting June wasn't all she had us do. There was another thing she asked us to look into. Which is how we learned of suffering that'd push anybody over the edge. Tell me. I'll ask you again. Do you really think you can save Mikiko-san? You got the balls to face the misery she's going through and accept what she's become? My mind's already made up. I'm gonna save Mikiko. Don't give a rat's ass if I die trying. Well said. Then let's go. Huh? Go where? To Ijincho, Yokohama. I'll fill you in on the drive. Any unfinished business you have, go take care of it now. Where's mom? Don't worry, she got out all right. Turns out she never killed anyone either. What do you mean? Whew, that's good news. Glad to hear my mom's not a killer. You still don't know who the culprit is, though. And I'm running short on leads. Wait, then where is mom now? About that. She's still got some stuff to take care of. But uh, she said she'll be back once it's all handled. Um, yeah? What kind of stuff would that be? Hmm, uh, that I don't know. Maybe shopping? Shopping? Now? <sighs> okay then. So, what are your plans? Actually, June. You and I are gonna hang for a bit. We are? Yeah. After all you've been through looking for your mom, I figure we could both use a break. Grand tour of Kamurocho sound good? <laughs> Hell yeah! Let's do it! Then let's hit the streets. Okay! Takayuki Yagami. I call him Todd. He's my boss and, uh, sort of like a partner in the biz. Is he strong? Well, to an extent. But there's no way he could take me. <laughs> Whoa, he must be pretty tough, though, if you're working for him. Tough enough to count on in a pinch, yeah. I'll introduce you when I get the chance. Man. Imagine seeing Kaito's boss in action. Sounds awesome. All finished up on your end, Kaito? Yo, look out! Don't worry, he won't bite. Turns out your mom asked this bum to look after you. Yeah, right. Like I'd ever buy that.
freaking way. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Didn't know you were Mikiko's kid when this all started. You tried to kidnap me on multiple occasions, by force! I hope you get struck by lightning! I was only doing my job. You should have just came along quietly. Seriously? Who'd be dumb enough to just go along with some shady Yakuza? You even have a brain in your head? Well, of course I do. You're the brainless one. All right, kids, settle down. Senda, don't we have places to be? Ah, right. The boss is waiting. You ready, Kaito? Good to go. Okay, let's hit the road. Oh, but the kid's gotta stay. Boss wants to talk mano a mano. That right. What? Why can't I come with? Because I said so, twerp. <sighs> Jerk. Be that way. June, just chill in my office and I'll get you a souvenir. Sound good? <sighs> Fine. Oh, and by the way, Mom's not really out shopping, is she? <sighs> You'll bring her back, right? <sighs> you bet. Okay. Then I'm gonna hold you to that. Make sure nothing bad happens to her, got it? That's a promise. You'll see her again real soon. Remember, you promised. God, what an annoying little punk. Cocky as hell, too. <laughs> Damn right. So, Igarashi, why Jincho? Wasn't everything going down in Kamurocho? It just so happens that Rhizome, the precursor to Crimson Lotus, is having a reunion today. The venue's a hotel in Ijincho. And every founding member of that group will be there. At least the ones who are still alive. I'm guessing Mikiko wants every last one of them dead, doesn't she? Uh-huh. On top of that, her final target's also planning to show. The one she wants dead the most. You mean, outside of Crimson Lotus? Who? The one going around killing the founders of Crimson Lotus before she can. What the hell are you talking about? Why'd Mikiko want to take out who's ever killing her enemies? They've got a common goal, don't they? Hell, you're a detective. Try using that old noggin of yours, why don't you? Primitive as you are, I'm sure you can piece it together, knowing what you know. Plus, Ichincho's an hour away. How about we make like detectives and go over what we know? Yeah, sounds a bit too buddy-buddy for me. Besides, I'm a punch-first, go-over-shit-later kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. However, if you were to, say, arrive at the truth on your own, then no one breaks confidentiality. Fine, fine, I'll bite. So, a real killer, huh? Huh. There is one thing that's been bugging me. That security company owner, Ashizaki. His office was set on fire. But the point of burning the place wasn't to kill him. After all, he was shot up on the roof. So the killer must have torched it for another reason. Oh, starting with the motive. Not bad. Go on. So there's our problem. Why would the killer want to burn the office? I'm thinking. There was some evidence that would incriminate the killer. So they burned the place to get rid of it. Hmm. 
Interesting. And? I think I know just what the killer was trying to hide. I asked a buddy of mine to pull the data from a burnt hard drive I picked up at the scene. What he found were records of illegal wire transfers to the security company. And the company sending the cash was a smartphone app developer that isn't around anymore. I'd wager the killer would want to have these records erased. Hey, you're good. Didn't think you'd get your hands on those. By the way, that smartphone app company... You're talking about Devonir, I assume. Okay, how the hell do you know? It was thanks to Mikiko-san, really. She requested we look into a certain someone. Over the course of our investigation, we learned about a dummy company called Devonir. And, as you can guess, Devonir was created as a front for this certain someone. He used it to directly employ Crimson Lotus cover-ups to customer service. They handled all sorts of trickier-than-usual jobs. So you're saying this guy's the one who's been killing off the Crimson Lotus founders? That's exactly what I'm saying. Now, who could it be? Here's a hint. Miki Gosan approached us anonymously. Why do you think she'd do that? Well... You guys could have broken confidentiality and let it slip that she was alive, right? After all, her plan was to take out Crimson Lotus without leaving a trace. Sure, but that's just one reason. There's someone aside from Crimson Lotus who she doesn't want knowing she's alive. As a matter of fact, Mikiko-san never even contacted this person about it. Even though, you'd think this would be the first person she'd run to after getting her memories back. Uh, wait a goddamn minute. All coming together? Shoya Sadamoto? You're saying he's the one killing the founders of Crimson Lotus? Yep, you got it. And Mikiko-san has the same idea. What? So then, he was trying to erase his ties with Crimson Lotus? No. No, hang on. Crimson Lotus's founders were the ones who set fire to Mikiko's family's house. Why the hell would Saramoto have connections with the guys who burned his wife's family alive? Oh, so you picked up on that. Then you'll like this next bit. Saramoto's dummy company, Devonir. It had records from 17 years ago of illicit wire transfers to Ashizaki's security company. Know what that means? Yeah, I figured that out too. Actually, it's weird. 17 years is way before Mikiko and Sadamoto got married. But Sadamoto and Crimson Lotus were connected back then, right? So what the hell's going on? Just think of it like this. The Natsume family arson falls under questionable ties between Sadamoto and Crimson Lotus. But that was... It's crazy! Sadamoto was involved in the arson? Bingo. What happened two years ago was Mikiko-san learned the truth. And Sadamoto and Crimson Lotus tried to silence her. <laughs> All right, Igarashi. No more guessing games. Just who the hell is Kyoya Sadamoto, really? The fucking devil. The type who'd make a Yakuza piss himself. The devil? 
How so? It all started with Rizo, an event club Ken Mochi started during his college days. Rizo was like any other event group. You get together with friends, throw parties, go on live tours, and make a little cash. Guess they weren't making much back then. Then enters Kyoya Sadamura, a business admin major at the same college. He started showing up as their advisor and turned everything around. They all ate up Sadamoto's words and expanded their services into some pretty gray territory. Since Sadamoto considered himself their advisor, he wasn't officially part of the group. But his talent, his accomplishments, and charisma had them wrapped around his finger. And that Rizo bunch went on to found Crimson Lotus? Yeah, mainly around Kenmochi. Sadamoto already started his own business as a student. By the time he graduated, he was asking Crimson Lotus to do his dirty work. On the outside, he ran his business like some typical ambitious startup. But I'm sure he had guys coming after him. Probably made himself lots of enemies. It's what happens when you straddle both sides of the law. I bet it wasn't uncommon for him to deal with unhappy customers. Yes, it must have been convenient having his own personal cleanup crew. Bet your ass it was. Sadamoto's company saw steady growth because of it. But eventually, that growth started to fizzle out. What was once a promising startup with tons of investment capital found itself in dire straits. That's when he set his sights on Mikiko-san's parents, the Natsumes. When did she figure out what her husband really was? About two years ago, Sadamoto got hammered, rare for him, and fell asleep in his study with the computer on. That's when she stumbled upon his email exchange with Ken Mochi. Of course, that set off alarms in her head, so she dug through more of his inbox. It wasn't long before she knew the ugly truth. But then Sadamoto woke up. When he realized what she saw, he got violent. I doubt Mikiko would go down easy to some pencil-pushing civvy. Well, it turns out she did go down easy. We're talking about a guy who deals in the criminal underworld. He's very likely accustomed to using force. Then, what happened after Mikiko got attacked? She said her memories got fuzzy after that. She was probably drugged, and Sadamoto had Crimson Lotus clean up his mess. So you're saying you know for sure Sadamoto had a hand in the arson? Yes. Though it'd be more accurate to say he was the primary offender. It was about 15 years ago. Sadamoto heard about a property development plan from Ken Mochi who was a real estate broker at the time. Would have been a mighty lucrative deal, but the Natsumis were the only ones who wouldn't sell. Which led to threats and burning the place down. Classic land shark bullshit. Oh, if only it had stopped at that. Now listen. What makes Sadamoto such a devil is what he did with the info Ken Mochi brought him. He reworked it into a plan to fix all of his own company's problems in one fell swoop. How's that work? Kaito, the Natsume family was one of the richest in the area. If you include their property and stocks, they were worth tens of billions in assets. And since Sadamoto was struggling with funds at the time, he decided to help himself to that fortune. I couldn't pull that off in this... No way! Yeah. Marrying Mikiko-san was all part of his master plan. That's... insane! Clearly the man has a way with people. Call it an uncanny knack for charm. His college circles treat him like a guru. They say he's a living legend. Even his company seems to be under his spell. And as we know, 
Crimson Lotus was always ready and willing to take up any of his dirty jobs. So, you can see now how the Natsumes must have fallen for his honest young businessman facade. After he had the parents eating out of his palm, he discovered their younger daughter had a stalker, while the older one was dating a Yakuza. Wait, what do I have to do with this? You should know, Kaito. Sadamoto used you too. Me? How the hell could Sadamoto use me at any point in time? Well, when Mikiko-san first met him, she told him she was seeing someone and thinking of marriage. Now, how do you think he responded to it? Surprise, surprise. He actually supported it. He did? Well, he figured if you were serious about her, you'd quit the Yakuza. If you needed cash, he'd go convince her parents. If it was a lawyer you needed, he would have arranged one. He had lots of reasonable suggestions. He really offered all that? I'm sure Sadamoto knew how hard it was for a Yakuza to leave the life. Not to mention, the Matsugane family had its own problems at the time, right? In any case, he knew you were locked in, and convinced Mikiko-san of the same. You both did exactly what he wanted. Huh. Then, once you were out of the picture, Sadamoto made his move on Mikiko-san. I imagine her parents might have even encouraged it. And after the marriage was official, Sadamoto simply had to bide his time until the Natsume house burned down and their fortune was his to claim. <gasps> Guy's a monster in human skin, right? And it seems his marriage was more of a shotgun wedding. I'm almost certain the kid was conceived as part of the plan to push her into marrying him. In other words, June was nothing more to Sadamoto than a tool for making money. Feel terrible for Mikiko-san and June. Gotta say, I'm impressed you did all that research. No wonder you called yourselves Tojo Clan R&D. Well, that's what happens when you know society like the back of your hand. The whole R&D thing might have been my idea. But it's only because we know our shit. Huh. All right. So, how's it feel? That asshole Sadamoto played you like a fiddle and tore you apart from the woman you loved. It doesn't matter. I made my choice. Ha! <laughs> That's the lamest shit I ever heard. I thought you'd blow a fuse. That said... I'll feel a hell of a lot better if I can just clock him one time real good. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Go knock his goddamn lights out! So, this is the spot. Yeah. They do this reunion every year. And apparently Kyoya Sadamoto shows up to everyone. All the surviving founders of Crimson Lotus are probably in here somewhere. I gotta go find Mikiko. Before she does something she can never take back. Receptionist. I guess you gotta have connections to get in. What's the plan, Kaito? I'm gonna roll the way a detective rolls. Meaning? By sneaking in with a disguise. You? Disguised as what? You're still gonna look older than anyone here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to mull that one over.
Oh, are you one of Rhizome's alumni? Yep, sure am. Okay, what year did you graduate? Huh? Uh, like, ten years ago? And your name? It's Kaito. Hmm. Your name doesn't seem to be on the list. You know, I just remembered. I gotta go take care of something. Excuse me. Huh? Just a second there. Sorry, but who are you? Hi, I'm with Yagami Electronics. I got a call saying the Banquet Hall's AC is on the fritz. I'd like to pop in and take a look for myself. That all right? I didn't hear about any repairs. Either way, that's not gonna happen right now. The party will start any minute. Got it. I'll see if the repairs can wait till later then. This right here. Hey. Uh, no, is that well? Yeah. Hey, where's the new guy? Uh, probably in the smoking area. I saw him heading down there a minute ago. Uh, really? He steps out for a cigarette when the party is about to start. Go get him, will ya? No way. That guy freaks me out, man. He looks like an ex-thug who can't seem to reintegrate into society. Besides, I, I don't have the key to the smoking area. You do it. <laughs> Hell no! He freaks me out too! I'm not equipped to deal with his type. <sighs> well, he's a responsible adult. I'm sure he'll come back once the party starts. Yeah, no need to bust our butts just to check on him. <sighs> oh shit! I dropped the key to the back door. The smoking area? Dude, if they find out, they're gonna be pissed. Well, they haven't found out yet. Oh man, what am I gonna do? Okay, okay, I'll help you find it. You have any idea where you might have dropped it at least? Uh, the first floor bathroom, I think? Or, uh, was it the second floor? Actually, it could have been the third. Okay, so it's in one of the bathrooms. Is this it? What have we here? Huh. Huh? Is this it? thing I want to do is serve people and it's been nothing but punk kids all day and they've all got some crap attitudes hey you you got a sec huh aren't you whoa that you Tashiro Kun Kaito why the hell are you here why the hell are you a waiter it's that bastard Yagami's fault. Talk? What are you talking about? For the past few years, I was a producer doing events for a solid company, and I was totally killing it! Thanks to Yagami coming around, the company heard about my fuck-ups and fired me! Well, I don't know all the details, but if you got out it sounds like you got what you deserve, don't it? Sh shut up! This all started from you guys! The moment you ripped my favorite clothes off my body, my luck went straight down the shitter! Yeah, sorry about that. On that note, do you mind if I borrow those clothes for a bit? What? What the hell? You got some balls asking me that! I need it for... reasons. 
Come on, I'm not gonna keep it forever. Fuck that! Why don't you just strip down yourself? Huh? Why would I do that? Because I want you to feel the same humiliation I did. Now, if you're not gonna strip, I'll make you strip, dickhead! Whoa, hey, knock it off. I already said I was sorry, didn't I? Shut it! Do you even know how it feels to get your ass kicked and tossed out into the freezing December cold, butt naked? I won't rest until I strip you down to your bare junk! Better be ready! Fine, have it your way. An ass whooping it is! Excuse me. Mind if I have a word? I'm looking for someone. Ugh. Uh, ma'am? Hey, can't you see this is a bad time? I'm catching up with an old friend here. I'm awfully sorry, but it's about a very important guest. Oh! An important guest, you say? As in one of the Rhizome founders? Because if that's the case, I'd love to meet them. Oh, no. They aren't. Ah. Well, then, can you go away now? If you please, it's just... Ah, oh, Nishio-san! You're here! Sorry to bother you, but uh, have you seen this woman? Oh, her? Um, I think she was here earlier. Are you sure? Where is she now? Hang on, maybe I'm not remembering correctly. She didn't talk to anyone and left her seat pretty quickly. Got it. How about a man named Kyoya Saramoto? Sadamoto san? Oh, the living legend. Oh, I've always wanted to meet him, but he said he had an emergency and couldn't make it. You can't make it? You're positive? Yes. Apparently, he has a meeting he simply can't miss. His schedule is always packed every single day. But I suppose that's just how it is. What do you mean I can't get in? Ah, uh, it's just that Amina Masuda-sama has already checked in. And I keep telling you, I'm Amina Masuda! How could I have already checked myself in? Something the matter, ma'am? Well, I literally just got here, but this bonehead of a receptionist says I'm already checked in! So, Masuda-san is already inside the venue. Y you sure there's no mistake? Yes, I even checked the list. This woman, the one who said she was Masuda, is this her? Oh, 
Yes, that's the one. She was gorgeous. I knew it. Where did she go? Well, she entered the venue. Oh, but just after that, she came out and made her way to the restrooms. The restrooms, huh? Thank you. came in out of nowhere and attacked me. And was that woman Mikiko Sadamoto? It, yeah, that's right. But how? Who are you? Where'd she go? She... she was looking for Kyoya san Kyoya Sadamoto? But I heard he couldn't make it. No. He was scheduled to appear as a surprise guest. He was in the green room earlier, but he went up to the roof for a smoke. And then Mikiko went up to the roof too? Yeah. Hey! Uh, may I help you? I'm very sorry, but there's an urgent issue I must attend to. Don't play dumb with me, Kaito. I know a rat when I see one. Why are you here? Well, guess I gotta force my way through. I'm not kinda in a hurry, so I ain't pulling punches. Come on, boys! Let's get him! Need a hand? Let's clean them up quick! Appreciate it, fellas! Huh? What the hell do you think you're doing? I'll kill you! So, did you figure out where Mikiko-san is? Yeah. Looks like she chased Saramoto to the roof. We can't afford to get caught by them again. Let's climb up here. Oh, shit! Wait, aren't you... Damn it! We can't let him call for backup. We have to take him out, quick! Hey! They've gotta be around here somewhere! Find them! Huh? Guess we're already Jincho's most wanted. Damn! How many of these guys are there? Come on! 
There should be a guest elevator somewhere around here. We can take that all the way to the top. Perfect. We can take this guy all the way to the top. There they are! Found them! God damn, they're still coming! Hey, Kaito! You go take care of Mikiko-san! Just leave these guys to us. We got this. Huh. You better, tough guy. We can take this many of them ourselves. I owe you one. Thanks! Uh, isn't this a little more than we can handle? Pipe down! Now let's do this! Seek. Nowhere to run. You're dead. Here we go. Go! Stay back! Come near and I shoot! Come now, Mikiko. You would really shoot your husband? That's the only reason I'm here. Very well. Then perhaps let's settle down and talk this through. talk about well try putting this all into perspective are you sure you want to kill me can you kill me oh I've got an answer to that <laughs> but what about our son what would June think would he condone his mother's actions as a killer have you even considered the thought <sighs> of course you have Compassion comes naturally to you, and guilt's enough to freeze you in your tracks. After all, that's what gives this woman her charm. Wouldn't you agree, Kaito-san? Sinister fuck. Unfortunately, nice people don't make money. Business opportunities are all around us. Most fail to seize them let alone comprehend they're there. Why? It's simple. They're inefficient at drawing wealth to themselves quickly and competently. Instead, they sate themselves on worldly affairs and superficial relationships. They're worthless. So, you cut down your old pals and burned her family alive. They meant nothing to you. 
Precisely. You catch on quick. I like your potential. Now I'll admit the Natsume family ordeal was a risky choice. But the results really spoke for themselves. It was a brilliant idea, if I do say so myself. You human bastard! Chuya! You think you'll get away with killing my parents? My sister? You're dying right here! Right now! How curious. You actually seem like you mean it. Well, at least you came prepared. Glad I took the steps to confirm that. Uh, damn it! Let me go! June! A tad late, Kenmochi. Uh, my bad, Kyochan. Settle down. You move and June dies. Understand? <laughs> Can't move, can you? He takes after me, that's for sure. Never know when he'll catch his old man off guard. Seems I was right to discipline him the way I did. Asshole! That's your own son right there! Now then, Mikiko. The real party's about to begin. What? First, let's dispose of any unnecessary baggage. Shoot Kaito, and I will release June. No. <laughs> Away with this, Sadamoto! You're gonna lose that position you worked so hard for. Well, of course. I'm aware of what would happen if this goes public, but I'm acting with that in mind. You can't be a venture capitalist if you aren't willing to take a few risks now, can you? Even if you have to cut a couple losses, the payoff is always worth the effort. Only those who pursue their goal relentlessly, without hesitation, can rise to the top. Mochi, you still think Mikiko was the one taking down Crimson Lotus? Of course I do. The hell are you talking to me for? Because there's something you might want to know. Each time Mikiko went to take out your buddies, someone else had gone and done him in first. They were dead by the time she got there. Get out of here! With her memories back, and a plan to kill Crimson Lotus, Mikiko became a huge threat. Enough to scare the killer into action. And by killing his old pals, he could erase his dark ties and pin the crime on Mikiko in one fell swoop. The fuck are you yapping on about? Still don't get it? It's the guy standing next to you. Your legendary guru is a traitor. What? Hmm. <sighs> I hear Sadamoto's been making the rounds on the media lately. Earned himself a reputation as a CEO in demand. It's why he can't afford having his connections to you guys surface. And on top of that, he needed to act fast to keep Mikiko from ever reaching out to you guys. What? What are you saying? Mikiko knows some dark shit about her husband's past. And Sadamoto didn't want you spotting any discrepancies between her truth and what he fed you. Had that happened, you probably would have gone after him yourself, Kenboji. Fact is, Sadamoto was the one taking out Crimson Lotus, not Mikiko. Huh? But you said that already, didn't you? Uh, right, after fuck if that well. You said it 
was an accident that Maho Chan and her parents were burned alive. Nobody was supposed to be home, right? Well, yeah. I was told they were on vacation. The place was supposed to be empty. Let me guess. Sadamoto gave the order. Told you nobody get hurt. So what? What are you getting at? Your guru made it loud and clear before you showed up. He said, the Natsume family ordeal was a risky choice, but the results really spoke for themselves. He knew Maho-chan and her parents were home that night. And he still had you burn the place down. No. Since you guys were just after the property, you had no reason to burn anyone to death. Even a hardened criminal might flinch at such an order. But Sadamoto's no ordinary thug. He wanted the Natsume's fortune for himself. And for his company to survive, he needed them to die. That's why he lied to you. After fixing up his own alibi. Bullshit. He's lying. Right, Joe chan Huh. You've hit quite the sore spot. Sonomoto. You only had me find Mikiko. So you could get to her before Crimson Lotus. But when I found her, you planned to lock her up and wipe out Crimson Lotus yourself. Then you could wait for the perfect time to finish her off and make it look like suicide. Sound about right? <laughs> I knew I liked your potential. Shujan! What's this guy saying? It's all lies, right? The night of the arson it was Maho Chan's birthday. <sighs> The Natsumes and Mahochan were big on wine, so I sent them a vintage Bordeaux to celebrate. After all, what's a million yen between friends? Chuchan! Meanwhile, I was enjoying dinner at a restaurant with my lovely wife. From there, I gave Mahochan a call and wished her a happy birthday. She told me the wine was delicious. Even the Natsumes, who were notorious wine snobs, enjoyed it. I was worried my secret ingredient, sleeping pills, had altered the taste. But to my relief, it all turned out fine in the end. What? If it's any consolation, the Natsumes were dead asleep. I'm sure they went out painlessly. Kyoya! How could you? Hey, Kyochan! It's just one of your jokes, right? Hmm... Should be any moment now. Delayed, I suppose. That's more like it. Finally, the stuff started kicking in. Big relief. Shoot shot! This is bad! The whole party's... Oh no! It appears to be taking a bit longer than I'd have liked. Okay, Sadamoto, tell me. What the hell did you do? <laughs> I imagine this will go down as one of the deadliest dinners in history. Would you like to see? <laughs> Aren't I thoughtful? Oh, God! Oh, wait! She's oh, 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 o
Excellent! I've just killed the final four members! A resounding success! You piece of shit! You poisoned their drinks? Yes, I used the slow-acting stuff. A quicker poison wouldn't do for taking out a large group at once. Anyone who gets a drink later on would find out it's poisoned and refuse to touch it. Even so, I was starting to worry I'd miscalculated, since the effects took so long to show. Terribly sorry, Kenmochi. I'll hold a grand funeral for you, so try to rest in peace, okay? You even targeted innocent people! I wouldn't say I targeted them. There was a designated table for everyone in Crimson Lotus. I can't help it if some non-members stopped by for a drink. So, at that point, I would say it's on them. Besides, wouldn't it make more sense for a vengeful, hate-fueled killer to pile on a few extra casualties? The public is much more liable to eat up a dramatic story, after all. You're out of your goddamn mind! And now, Mikiko, the curtain rises on you. The time has come to kill Kaito. Do it! and I'll spare you and the boy. Why in the hell would I listen to you? Ah, right. Perhaps this scenario merits a bit of explanation. As for tonight, I'm technically not supposed to be here. Well, I was supposed to make a surprise appearance, but only a few people know. Anyway, I left your hair and fingerprints in the kitchen where the poison was prepared. And on the rooftop, your ex-lover's bullet-riddled corpse will be found. That'd be you, Kaito-san. On top of that, I've arranged it so a news leak will soon reveal Crimson Lotus as the masterminds behind the Natsume arson. As the story goes, you took the lives of each one out of vengeance. This party was held to clean up any stragglers. And when your old boyfriend caught wind of the whole affair, you gunned him down too. That is what the cops and the media will learn. It was you all along, my dear. <sighs> but I won't just leave you to dry. Kill Kaito and I'll throw in a hundred million yen. You could use that to flee overseas with June and live a comfortable life. <coughs> Though, I imagine that wouldn't appeal to you. How could you murder an innocent man? So, once Kaito's dead on the ground, I suggest you kill yourself as well. The hell? If you go through with it, I'll even add another hundred million for June. <laughs> At least I'm offering child support, more than a lot of fathers do. <laughs> now hurry up and shoot him! You are itching to kill someone! Weren't you? Take too long and June will be the one to die. He really was the devil after all. I was naive. I'm so sorry. I dragged you into this mess. <laughs> Mikiko. It's okay. I'm here. Huh? Well, 
this changes things. Your little storyline just took a twist. What are you playing at? How about I rewrite this scenario? A dirtbag husband commits mass murder, then gets caught and tries to pin it on his wife. So a Yakuza steps in and puts him down. <gasps> I go to jail and it's happily ever after. Just stay out of this. You can't get blood on your hands. June needs you in his life. <clears throat> can't imagine I'll miss at this range. <laughs> you say that, but how else am I gonna get strong? Strong enough to protect the people I care about. You want to get strong, June? Then focus on what's in here. Huh? What do you mean? Just keep that fire burning in your heart, and it'll all make sense one day. Knives. 
were laced. <coughs> uh, Mom? was bullshit. I guess you got what you wanted. To think I lived under the same roof with the monster who killed my family. My only sister. How does it feel right now? You calculate this too? Goddamn coward! Mickey, go. Don't do it. I should have ended this. Revenge! It nearly killed me. I realized what was precious was right in front of me. But then I went down the path of vengeance for the boss of the Matsukane family. And now, here you are, doing the same thing. Why, Mom? What happens now? You're gonna get yourself locked up? <gasps> You're leaving me again? What was it you said? Everything was a lie! Was I a lie too? Sorry. God damn you. It's all your fault! <laughs> Why, huh? Why'd you do it, Jojan? Why? Again! <laughs> you suck, Higashi san! Shut it! I'm letting you win, you know. Let's run it back. Okay, but I'm still kicking your butt. Hey! Kaito Anaki! <sighs> Don't push yourself too hard yet. 
You came in here pretty banged up. You've been out for three days. That long, huh? Where's Mikiko? Is she okay? Yeah. Mom was looking after you the entire time. She nearly passed out on her feet. When she said she was feeling lightheaded, Shirakaba-san took her to get some rest. You didn't want to go with your mom? Nah. I'm cool right here. And Yagashi-san's been keeping me company, too. Ah, oh, well, I had time to kill, so... And... Sanamoto? Uh... He, uh... Didn't make it. He didn't. Oh, those are from Yagami. He's back from his business trip. He came by earlier, but saw you were out like a rock. That put him at ease, so he left this and went home. <laughs> nice touch. <sighs> Easy now, Anaki. It's no problem. No problem, huh? You're practically split at the seams. I think I'll hold together just fine. Uh-huh. Just try to stay out of trouble, okay? June. You free to talk? Oh, uh, sure. How are you holding up? Fine, I guess. You know, my old man wasn't the greatest either. In fact, he was a nasty drunk. Yeah? Yep. He barely worked. Used up our money on booze. And every swig he took meant a swing at his family. I couldn't live in a home like that. So, I ran away. Then, I got kicked out of school, and after doing some more dumb shit, I ended up in juvie. After that, it was clear what kind of life I had coming. Huh. No kidding. Growing up, I wish the old bastard would just drop dead. Deep down, I took out all my problems on him. He was why my life turned out fucked up. But in reality, those fuck-ups were mine alone. Huh. Sure, my pops was a no-good loser who destroyed himself with alcohol. But when I got word he died, for some reason, all I could think of were the few good times we had. Huh? Stupid, right? Why? After hating his guts my whole life. <sighs> Sorry. I know this ain't making it easier. Actually, there was this one time my dad took me out for a drive. Thinking back. Maybe he just felt like cruising around in his brand new car. But he asked me if there was anywhere I wanted to go. And then he took me far away, just so I could see the ocean. <laughs> June, take it slow, okay? You don't have to worry about me. I'm fine now. For real. You sure? <laughs> you know what, Kaito? I've been thinking. I never really wanted to be a Yakuza. It was something different all along. Oh, yeah? And what would that be? 
not a detective. I want to be the kind of guy you can depend on. Someone who's strong. Someone like you, man. So don't worry. As much as it hurts, I'll be okay. <laughs> June, I know it's tough. I can take it. And besides, I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> What are you going to do now? Go see your mom at Shirakawa-san's place? Yeah, someone's got to go pick her up. Oh, speaking of, Shirakawa-san asked me to give you a letter when you woke up. A letter? For what? You know. Kaito-san, as I've mentioned before, I intend to propose to Mikiko-san. I won't do it right away. She and her son need time to process. But I will say this. If you still have any feelings for Mikiko-san, I suggest you pay me a visit. Yasutaka Shirakawa. What a guy. So, what's it say? Hmm. I think it's a challenge. And that means what exactly? Actually, June, I'll come see Mikiko with you. You sure? I can get there myself just fine. Trust me, I know. Huh. Okay then. June? And Masahoro-san? Hey, uh... I told him I could get here myself, but nope, he insisted on tagging along. Did you? Well, thanks for seeing him off. Uh, don't mention it. I, uh, wanted to see you too. Oh, really? So, we're finally getting to sit and talk. We sure are. Were you okay? Well, I mean, maybe that's a weird thing to ask someone who had amnesia. <laughs> maybe a little. I'm very happy for you, June. You got to go on an adventure with your hero. Oh, uh, guess so. You've gotten so strong since I last saw you. Remember how you arm-locked that one jerk into submission? Yeah. I'm lucky to have learned that from my mom. So, Mikiko, what's your next move? What do you mean? Well, I was wondering about your living situation. I figure it's tough staying in that house after everything. Yeah, you got that right. What am I gonna do? I haven't given it much thought yet, but... But... Yeah, so... Shirakaba-san mentioned he'd take June and me on vacation. Just the three of us. Vacation? Uh, where to? He said, anywhere in the world, anywhere at all, for as long as you like. <laughs> I'm sure he was just kidding. Oh. Okay, then. I, I don't think he was joking. That dude's a doctor. He looks pretty loaded. <laughs> Unlike Mr. X Yakuza here. Watch it, kid. Uh, Mikiko-san, why don't we head inside and watch a movie? <sighs> I read your letter. So then, what are you here to do? What am I... well... Hmm... <sighs> 
Migiko-san, wait right there, please. Okay. I've been saving something for you. Huh? Migiko-san, will you... Hold it! What is it? Uh, well... Actually, I'm here to take Mikiko home. Take her home? Where? To your dirty little hovel of an apartment? Yeah, if that's okay with her. And my apartment's tidy as hell, as a matter of fact. I clean up every now and then. <laughs> Kaito-san, I understand what you're feeling. This is the one thing I can't give up on, no matter what you say. I hear you. Let's talk this out. Oh, we won't be doing any talking. Huh? Then what are we doing? Settling this like the men of old. With our fists! What? Oh, come on. You trying to have a duel in this day and age? What about how Mikiko feels? This fight is for my feelings, Kaito-san. I told you from the beginning I was giving this my all, didn't I? Man... Mikiko-san will never share her heart with me. I've already accepted that. However... If I can best you, the one she sees as her hero... Then perhaps... There's a chance she'll acknowledge me. So please... Give me this, Kaito-san! When you put it that way, fine. But don't blame me if you get hurt. You needn't worry about that. Hell, you get so beefy. After those thugs came, I vowed to do whatever it takes to get stronger. To build myself into a new person. One who would never let harm come to Mikiko-san. So these past two years, I've made the gym my second home. And on top of that, I've practiced every form of martial art available to me. What I've learned is this. With the insurmountable will to protect the ones you love, even a frail physician can rise up and become stronger than any threat that comes knocking. All right, then. You made your point. Guess we're throwing down. Let's do this. Shirakawa! Come! Kaito-san! Get me! Now Give me all you got! Come on! Don't 
Seems you've had enough. We squared up now? Yeah. Now it's out of my system. Thank you. <sighs> Why do men have to be so primitive? So then, where do we go from here? Uh... Didn't you say you were taking me back home? Uh, um... Yes, I did. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Where to start? So, uh, when I said my place was clean and all, sorry, that was a big lie. Even on a good day, it's about as clean as a farmhouse, and the bathroom's moldy. Yeah? And I'm flat broke. Seriously? Being a detective doesn't always pay the bills. Pretty often, I'll be months behind rent. Sometimes I can't even afford dinner. Well, you're gonna have to fix that, aren't you? I'll try. Will you still join me? Gladly. <laughs>